It sounds like when you're at work, you're working about as hard as this guy. So I just have a couple of random things with our friend Stuttering John this week. <laughs> yeah. Stuttering John was on somebody else's show called The Hole with Rob Sprance and Lori Levine. Hmm. And I saw this clip because somebody posted it in our subreddit. And God bless you people who find these random clips. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Because they're talking to Stuttering John about what would have made The Tonight Show better. Back when he was on oh, it. Can you guys I mean, guess yeah, what uh, the answer is? Yeah. Uh, if I was in way more yes. segments. Yeah. <laughs> According to Stuttering John, the show would have been better if he was sitting on the couch with the guests. Uh. Berg still says he's like, man, they only listened to me and put you on the couch. It would have been hysterical. Because I know it would have been. Yeah. Because whenever a celebrity gave some bogus ass answer... Like, I would have done just what I did on the Stern Show. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Tell the freaking truth already. I don't know. The if... director was a dick. I love that that's his examples of great jokes he would have told. Yeah. If I was there, I'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Come on. Come on. I would have pretended to punch him in the face. Get, get over here, <laughs> you piece of shit. I love that he's dealt with all these publicists. He knows how Hollywood works. You get big guests on tonight on the Tonight Show because it is not the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> they know exactly what they're going to talk about. They've already done a pre-screener. They're going to say, "Oh my gosh, the entire cast was amazing." Yeah. I'm best friends with Mike, uh, the the director. I'm best friends with all my co-stars. And John's like, "And I would have told him you're full of fucking <laughs> yeah. shit." Yeah. <laughs> what they don't do is let some degenerate scumbag sit next to them and right. tell them they're doing a bad job. <laughs> that would never have happened. That would not have flown. On the Tonight Show, I don't know why he thinks. Also, it wouldn't have made the show better. Him trolling the guests would not have made the yeah, show better. Can you just see somebody like Burt Reynolds, like sitting there looking at him, like just they would, you would just punch him in the face, just staring at him yeah. blankly. <laughs> well, also, how would himself. how would Jay Leno react to that? Yeah. Jay Leno's trying to fucking run a show, and he's, he's got John heckling the fucking guests. So is the whole a podcast about people that just fucking suck all the energy out of a fucking experience? I, have, I just got no here. idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What else was going on with Stuttering John? He talks about how he has Hockey Puck monitoring our subreddit and our Discord for people talking shit, which is a weird way to live your life, to have like some guy you don't pay any money to who already admins your show and kicks trolls out live while you're doing a show. He also has to spend the rest of his time reading on our fucking web properties what people are saying about Stuttering John. <laughs> you know, it's so weird. Um, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll just tell you guys this. There are like some people, some trolls on like these sites. I only know it because Sean Hockey Canada 25 will go on and he'll let me know. Yeah. So he finds out secondhand that people are talking shit. And then he gets all upset. <laughs> yeah. And guess what John wants to do? You guys will be amazed by this. You'll be shocked. <laughs> he wants to sue everyone. Oh. Yeah, I know. Go figure. <laughs> so he explains that the law will get involved in this. But if they're going to keep going out and saying these lies, then I promise I will seek a legal way to shut their fucking mouths. I mark my words. Okay. Because these kind of lies are not only untrue, they're damaging. If you're going to go out there and put these lies out there, then you will suffer those consequences. Because it's slanderous. Oh, it's slanderous. <laughs> okay. So this is interesting because this is what Stuttering John, he's has this conflict with himself where he says he's famous. And he says Sirius XM owes him money. Because they're putting him on their airwaves, and he's famous, and they're making money from him. But then he also says, and if you lie about me on the internet, I will sue you. I'll read this from a little website called Wikipedia. Oh, nice, okay. <laughs> In the context of defamation actions, libel, and slander, as well as invasion of privacy, a public figure cannot succeed in a lawsuit on incorrect harmful statements in the United States unless there is proof that the writer or publisher acted out of actual malice by knowing the falsity 
or by the reckless disregard for the truth. The legal burden of proof in the defamation actions is thus higher in the case of a public figure than is in the case of an ordinary person. Right. John, you can't sue us. You're a public figure. You're stuttering fucking John. If you want to just be a nobody, then we'll leave you alone. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be fine with that. Yeah. Happily. Also, you're lazy and not smart. Yes, also you're an idiot. You're not meant so you lied about that, you lying liar. Go get a job at the Home Depot across the street since your bike won't start up. <laughs> Fucking loser. Oh, ho- hockey puck. Oh, hockey puck just told me that Carl said I was a, a, a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hockey puck. Dude, what are you doing? What are you do- You're reading what everybody writes on the internet? <laughs> you know how exhaustive that is? <laughs> Holy shit. I think he and I would get together or uh, get along really well. He's reading other people's subreddit and I'm just watching Jerry Banfield play video yes! games. Yes! So tell him, give him my email. Yes, we're living the same <laughs> life. Carl's turning red like Ric Flair. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. But why are people making fun of Stuttering John, guys? Why? Just know that there are, there are those out there who are going to keep on lying because they're jealous of me. And, and they can't stand the guests that I get the caliber of the caliber of guests that I get. And in some ways they want to be me. Nobody wants to be you. <laughs> Nobody does. It's because you're terrible and arrogant at the same time. Yes, I've got beer. Why. I've got a balcony. I did watch our, I did try and watch. I think it was on Thursday. Uh, I was just sitting in my car waiting and hell the sparse tracks. was, the on John's show. Yeah, he normally Because Hell Sparks has bad decision making skills. Yes. He hasn't figured it out yet. But it, w- it was interesting to listen to Hell Sparks talk about how his career went nowhere. He was like documenting step by step how he, he did a pilot that came out. Uh, they were like, oh, we're going to try Friends and we're going to try this show with Hell Sparks and Hillary Swank. And they went with Friends and not Hell Sparks. It was so there are smart executives in Hollywood. It was interesting <laughs> when John was not talking, you know? Yes. That was the best part of his podcast, when he's not on it. And how far has Hellspark's career gone down tubes? <laughs> he's now on the Stuttering John right, show yeah. as a regular. Yeah. I got nothing against Hellsparks. We were talking before about this fucking thing where it's constantly asking for donations and thanking people for donating. And I have to play this. As soon as his guests leave on his most recent episode, he goes into that mode. And there's a name brought up here that uh, is a fan of WATP. Nice. So I have to ask, what's going on here? You could also give me super chats. I want to thank uh, Mark P. and Good as Gold and Fudge Sickle 2018 for their uh, uh, super chat and PayPal donations. Fudge Sickle, you've been great on PayPal. I appreciate it. So this Fudgicle 2018, I've seen him post. I forget where it was. I've seen him post. I've never donated to John. He keeps saying I'm donating to him. I am not <laughs> donating to him. And I wonder if this is like some expert troll that John's doing to fuck with people. <laughs> people that he knows hate him. He'll be like, oh, yeah, thanks for all that money you donated me. <laughs> like, is anyone donating him money? Maybe he's just making all of it up. <laughs> yeah, but that's that would be great. Fudgical, what's He's the not deal, smart man? Smart enough to do that, that. What? That's the equivalent of putting a five dollar bill in your tip jar. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna grease the pump by mentioning yeah. a bunch of people's names. Yeah. You're a cheap fuck. Look, somebody put five in here. Two more clips that I want to play because John was regaling us with a story about his Christmas. Now, John couldn't have his kids over because one of his buddies at the pub had COVID, <laughs> and then he wasn't sure if he had COVID, and he wasn't able to get a test. You can't chicken. So. What he ended up doing was hanging out with his neighbor, Juan, and his, and Juan's family. Jesus. Okay, he went over to Feliz Juan's... Feliz Navidad, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> he went over to Juan's place Christmas Eve and hung out with them. And he talks about how he made this the poor kid wrap all of his gifts for him. Now, there's a couple things going on here, and I'll explain after the clip. So they invited me over, but I hang out with the kids. I, I got his youngest son... I paid him a dollar each gift that he wrapped. So I owe him 25 bucks. First off, he hasn't paid him yet? Dude, you're never getting that money. And he wasn't invited over. <laughs> but why is he... 
Why would he say that? I paid him, so I owe him 25 bucks. <laughs> and you didn't pay him. <laughs> you live right next door. Go grab your wallet. He, How difficult would that he's be? He's hiring illegal, undocumented immigrants to wrap his <laughs> fucking Christmas presents. A wand of He's Obama. sewing up my wallet right what, now. What, what? You changed the Wi-Fi password. Uh, 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 while I'm here, uh, you're having a party. <laughs> it's the season of giving. Can you turn the Wi-Fi back on? But also, <laughs> notice the way he subtly humble brags. That he bought 25 gifts for people. That's where I'm like, that's 25 gifts. And then he goes on, and I don't have the clip, but he goes on to explain that his oldest son, he Venmoed him money for Christmas. (laughs) Great dad, thanks. (laughs) My broke dad Venmoed me 13 bucks. I'm glad Fudgical 2018 was generous this year. The giver Venmoed, it says like why you're sending it. It's just like a a gif of a Christmas present. (laughs) The gift was he didn't have to talk to his fucking dad. Would you prefer a super chat? <laughs> no, we we also know that John likes to use barter in his ad reads. So we know that he was getting weed from Speedweed, and that's why he was doing those ads. <laughs> right, right. So he's also re-gifting things that he's getting for free. But I was excited because my son's Manscaped came in time. It came right on Christmas oh uh, my God. Eve or on Christmas Day. You sure it wasn't a transcape? <laughs> yeah. 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 Wipe your fake vagina with this ball wipe. <laughs> <laughs> These pub napkins. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh boy. So stuttering John, just continue to be you, buddy. You're the best. We all wow. love it. Speaking of assholes. Gagia. Stuttering John, what has he been up to lately? Well, he's telling elaborate lies on his podcast. He's such a fucking moron. He needs to move a piano or store a piano or get a piano fixed for some fucking reason. This is a big topic that's going on. Pat, you probably haven't heard this yet because you don't, you don't subscribe to Stuttering John show, right? I, I do not. <laughs> I, I just guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, guess. I want you to listen to this story and see if you can figure out the problem with this anecdote. The piano has some sentimental value because... Um... I, I, uh, uh, okay, so it was in my first house, and, you know, I really wanted the piano, you know, because, you know, I knew I was having kids, and I think my mom, as a gift, as a housewoman gift, bought the piano, but not only is it sentimental to me because it was in my first house, it's also sentimental because it has the handprints of a married couple that that lived in that house years and years before from 1955 so it kind of had a special you know sentimental value to me that doesn't make any sense rick his mom bought him the piano as a housewarming gift are you following this path baby baby that's the best part it has sentimental value and i think my mom bought it for us but it imme- doesn't have sentimental value. And then Im- you don't even know who bought it. He doesn't it. even know. And then immediately afterwards, he says, it has the fingerprints of the people who lived in my house previously on it, which means the piano came with the house. And also, these are people who lived in your house before you did? Why is that sentimental? What does that have to do with that? Like, there's people who lived in my house. I never met them. I don't know these fucking people. I, I still get their mail from time to time. Other than that, I don't give a shit. About these people. It was like other, that was other people's sentiment. It's not yours. <laughs> yes. Like, I can't have that. I'm looking over at a pool table. Now, the pool table came with the house. I assume the people who lived here before me touched it. I don't give a fuck. I wouldn't want to, like, carry this to my next house because the people who lived here before me touched the fucking pool table. What does that even mean? What's you're he talking gonna, about? I'm going to leave it in your will to, like, your children someday <laughs> because they found it in your house. Oh, my mo- I think my mom got it for me, but it was there when I got there. <laughs> He's so stupid. Got this done. It's a piano. I don't, it, it's very important to me. I can't remember where it came from, who gave it to me, or why I have it. And I don't even play the piano, but it's very important. <laughs> and it's broken. It doesn't even work. This is, It's the stupidest thing. And I love the trolls that are talking to him because they have the best names. This one's great. Uh, 
<laughs> wearing Crocs in public. John, store your piano at Leno's garage. God knows he's got the room. He does, but there's no way I'm asking Jay to store my piano there. <laughs> Wearing Crocs in public. Well done, sir. That, that's fucking funny. So John is shilling. He needs money. He's raising money because he has some goals and he needs money for something very specifically. Uh, Patty Summer, are you actually looking for donations to pay to move a piano? No, I'm not. I, I was just telling a story about this piano. Oh, this is why the piano. See, here's the, here's the thing. I had a piano. It was in my first house that I ever bought in Babel, Long Island. And the donations are not paying for a piano. The donations are hopefully going to pay for Final Cut Pro, which I'm going to get so I can edit promos for the show and try and get my fat ass on, like, a news network like CNN, MSNBC. I don't care. So I, Final Cut Pro is about $400. I like to get a camera. That's about $500. I'm not using your money to pay for a piano that I promise. <laughs> All right. None of this makes any sense to me. So he's trying to raise as much money as possible. I assume he has bills. He has other needs. Does he take the money and put it in a separate account and make sure that only goes towards software? And also, and I'm not trying to be a big shot here, but he can't afford fucking software. He has to raise money to buy the software that he needs. He can't afford I'm not going to waste your money with something stupid like moving a piano. I'm going to do it with a chance for me to somehow be on CNN. Yes. You're not going to be on CNN. What are you talking about? Oh, my gosh. This is such a harebrained idea that he has. I love the fact that he has to raise money for a camera and software to which he says is less than $1,000. You don't have a, you don't have a credit for $1,000. You can't buy, you can't physically buy this shit now. That's amazing. First off. But then his delusions of grandeur, listen to this, and this is a little bit of a longer clip, but this is him explaining that he has three goals. This is why he needs to raise this money. And I really want to thank you uh, all for all the super chats. Uh, it, it was great. I mean, I appreciate it. It's It all goes to a good cause. I mean, I got two goals. Well, I have three. I have, I have the, uh, I have to get the Final Cut Pro. So I could edit things and keep putting them up so I could promote this show on on social media and also cut a nice reel and give it to my agent so I can get it out to some of the networks. Cause really. All right, I'm gonna I just paused it for a second. John, just having Final Cut Pro doesn't create a reel for you. You also have to be able to have good footage to choose from and learn how to edit with the software. I don't know who's going to do this for you. John's terrible with computers. He's going to start using Final Cut Pro? That's going to be his first take on using software? Here's how stupid Stuttering John is. Hey, John, this is real advice. Carl's been doing this for you for a year. <laughs> He's caught every funny thing you've ever said. You just don't realize it's funny because you're stupid. He's made you a real clip. Go through every show, take all the cuts that he does of you saying dumb shit, and sell that to people. If they think you're doing it on purpose, you'd get hired. Ask some one of their subreddits to do it. They'd, be, they'd do it pro bono for you. It'd be a fun project. Literally, you cut his clips for him every week. <laughs> This is so fucking funny. All right, I'm just backing that up a little bit. Let's listen to the rest of this. Really, think about it, people. Who would be better for a CNN or MSNBC to have in Washington to confront all these politicians than me? There is Literally everybody. Literally every single person would be better at that than you. There is no one more tenacious and able to sneak in to, to places I've done it before for Howard Stern. I will do it again for America because I really think it's necessary. <laughs> and so I'm, so I need that. I need my camera so I could look a lot cuter than I do already. And I need a phone system. <laughs> Those are the three things. So I appreciate everyone donating through super chats. There's my PayPal. There's so much wrong with this clip. <laughs> He, he's been talking about this phone oh, system. Oh, you did it 20 years ago. Yeah, you, the yeah, real exists. It's already on there. It's already on the internet. Everyone has seen you interview celebrities. It, it's already out there. They know you.
Yeah, and by the way, no, I know offense, but no, nowadays nobody wants to hear you just go, hey, uh, how's your balls? Like, that's your interview process. Right. It's kind of tired now. Right. And he says, he's been saying this for close to a year. He needs money to buy a phone system so that he can take calls on his show. And this is the guy who needs Final Cut Pro. Do you not know that you can just get a Google voice number? And allow anyone to call you at any time. There's so many ways to do this with software. Skype can take fucking phone calls, you moron. What do you think? Why do you need a phone system? What are you talking about? Does he have no staff at all? No, everyone's abandoned him. When he started doing this podcast, he had his buddy Royce was his co-host. And he had another guy who was actually an engineer and producer. And they were in a studio, which was in Royce's arcade. He has lost everything. He is by himself. Says. <laughs> It does make sense. <laughs> it it's, does. it's how it should have happened. I was actually sadder that if there were people there believing in him, I feel better that no one believes in him. Well, he does have these moderators, and he talks about Nikki B, and, you know, poor Nikki B. She doesn't know any better. But there's this other dude who I call Hockey Puck, and Hockey Puck has been modding for him, but not only modding for him, he comes into our Discord, into our subreddit, he listens to our show, and he goes back to John and says, this is what they're saying about you. And Carl said this and, and this happened and that happened, which I find, I just, I don't like snitches. I don't like tattletales. I find that very annoying. If John wants to know what I'm saying, he can just listen to the fucking show. Would that be the easier way to Fuck you, do? hockey puck. That's Pat Oates. Yeah, mention me on your stupid show. <laughs> so here's something that's interesting, though. People have been noticing that uh, hockey puck has been missing lately from the show. Love it. Nikki B is here. Thank you, Nikki, for being my moderator. Now that Sean is out of the country. Sean is out of the country. Now, this is weird because Sean lives in Canada. Hockey Puck lives in Canada. And he's like, well, he's out of the country. What does that have to do with moderating YouTube? What does that have to do with the internet? What country is he in? Antarctica? Where, where is he not getting the internet? It doesn't make any sense. I think he's abandoned them. That's what my guess. I'm hoping. You need an international phone system so I can speak to him? <laughs> uh, you, Wi-Fi can't reach across the Atlantic, dummy. <laughs> the signal doesn't you think, reach. You think, you think Wi-Fi has a car? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Oh, man. And then, uh, and then Stuttery John threatens once again to uh, sue me. And, and it's so weird. He's talking about me. This is Andy the trucker who gets him going on this. But he's so stupid. Um, Carolyn Garman, Andy the trucker, thanks for the two ninety nine. dollars uh, Some show went after my grandchild today. Well, well, that would be kind of impossible since I don't have any grandchildren. But, uh, yeah, if, uh, you know, but thanks for letting me know. Because if they do go after any of my kids, they're going to have a lot of problems. And I do know where that idiot lives. I have his address, phone number, and everything else. He is talking about me right now, by the way. So he will be served, if that's the case. Um, My kids are minors, okay? Just keep that in mind, you idiots. And, uh, and they don't ask to be in the public eye. They do not, uh, you know they're not you know out there on tv this is what pisses me off and this has happened before i've seen this a lot of times someone talks about their children on their show and then you talk about them talking about their children it's like, you're going after my kids no you made this the conversation i don't give a fuck about your kids i like goofing on your show it sucks so when you talk about your kids couldn't make it over for christmas because they thought you had covid i'm gonna talk about that that's funny and I mean, a good thing that his kids don't want to be in the public spotlight because they are Suttering John's kids. Oh. So they never will be. So it's fantastic. Right. Like it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny. He thinks he's a celebrity. He's like, my kids didn't ask for this level of celebrity that I have. What are you talking about, John? You're a has been. What, what, what do you mean? to a celebrity, you address it to the masses. You don't just go, hey, Carl, cut it out. <laughs> like, that's what you're doing. <laughs> Well, it's cra it's crazy to me because I there was this other podcast that I had a little feud with years ago who the same thing like somebody put in the comments section of their podcast this woman talks about her kids too much and she got on her show she's just like this woman's talking about my kids we got to take her down she doxed her because of it it's like dummy you're talking about your kids on your show you're making it the topic it's it, I just did uh, a show I just did an appearance with Drew and Mike 
and we were talking about Busy Phillips. Busy Phillips gets on her podcast and talks about how her 12 year old just came out as gay and goes by the pronouns they, them. It's like, D what are you doing? Why are you talking about your 12 year old's personal business? Why are you making this part of the show and, and part of the, the conversation that we're all having, you fucking moron? Keep this shit private. John, keep your shit private with your kids if you don't want us talking about it. If you don't mind us talking about it, then please tell us all about it. I'm happy to use it as fodder. So you want us to listen to it, but we can't discuss it. Right. We can have an opinion on it, but we have to listen to your drivel. It's ridiculous. Either let your kids talk about themselves and we'll listen to them, or shut the fuck up. Or shut the fuck up. And then, once again, and I brought this up before, but when you get sponsors to your podcast, they will send you product so that you can use it and talk about it and know what you're talking about. So John got Manscaped and decided that was going to be the Christmas gift for his son. I want to thank my sponsors, Manscaped. Uh, I can't wait till my son comes over tomorrow or Sunday to open up his Manscaped kit that I bought for him. I want to thank betonline.ag. <laughs> to open up his Manscaped kit that I bought for him. You fucking liar. You just said I want to thank my sponsor, Manscaped. And they're like, and by the way, I bought him a Manscaped. That would be a break even for you, John. That's probably how much they paid you to read their ads. So that doesn't make any sense at all. You just gave him your free swag. Yes. Like, you just you gave your kid. I, anyway, get... I thought his kids weren't old. They're minors. He's shaving his balls. I know. <laughs> None of it makes any sense. That's why we have to talk about it, man. <laughs> and your kid's not coming over. <laughs> That's why we have to talk about it. <laughs> well, my kid comes over Saturday, Sunday, or whenever my kid finds out I exist. Then he's going to come over and shave his balls with me. I got two uh, nose trimmers, which, by the way, are an amazing product. But I got two of them for Manscaped, so I gave one to my brother as a goof. And <laughs> I wasn't just like, hey, look what I got for you. I was thinking about you all December. Check this out. Hey, son, I've been thinking about your dick a lot. Um, here's, <laughs> here's a gift. You're not going to believe what I got you. It makes your dick look bigger by comparison. Now, our, now ours look the same, son. <laughs> Shave down the bush. The chicks love it. Fuck. Speaking of stutter, oh, thanks for Shar for sending that in. Speaking of stuttering, John, AJ Benza put out an episode of his podcast just yesterday, and he went off on John. And this is fantastic. This was sent to me uh, by Ryan from the Worst of the Best podcast. Also, Anthony from Miami sent it to me. I saw it in a couple other places. It's amazing. It's oh, somebody Pro just put in our. Dis I'm, I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted, but Pro just put in our Discord. My wife hates me, Patreon, the number of patrons they have. And when we reviewed them, and then the decline of people who will pay for that shitty show after we reviewed them, it's really fucking funny. They were at 115 or so. Now they're down to 10. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I, I'm usually more professional than this. This is AJ Benza, who was a recent guest on Beer on the Balcony with Stuttering John. And if you'll remember... We, we reviewed that show, and I even pointed out that A.J. Benza did that move where he's like, you know, my phone's about to die here, John. I'd really like to hang out with you some more. But, and, he, and he complained that John took forever to get set up, and then he goes on his show and he says this. And it's just it's so spot on. It's just perfect. Are we all white supremacists because we wanted a man who put the interests of America first? Of course not. But this is what assholes like John Melendez, who... By the way, downed a six-pack of Coors Light when he had me on his show last month. That's all they think about. I was always warned by people who knew him and worked for John, uh, worked with him, especially Artie Lang, who hates John. Whenever I do his show, they tell me, AJ, stay away. He's, he's fucking Brutus. Why are you doing his show? He's a bitter, no-talent guy who thinks he wrote, wrote jokes for Howard and didn't. He didn't. Whatever he wrote wasn't used. Howard put words in his mouth, and so did Benji and Fred. All those interviews when he stuttered across multiple radio shows, those weren't his words. Those were words they put in his mouth. That's the only reason why people think he's funny. He didn't write anything funny for Jay Leno, and yet he thinks some type of famous person uh, is going to come up and recognize John as somebody who's talented. Nonsense. In reality, Jay Leno only hired him to stick it to Howard's ass because Howard used to always grouse that Jay stole his comedy bits. So luring John away to be the Tonight Show announcer was one more way of pissing off Howard. That's what Jay Leno did. 
Stuttering John is unemployable. He hasn't worked since Leno and his Tonight Show ended. Sure, he does some comedy around different clubs across the country, but no one goes to see him headline. He's tried several different podcasts, and in all of these failing efforts, all he's good for is drinking excessively and talking shit about people, mainly Howard Stern, the guy who took this stuttering mess and made him a name. So he's an asshole who needs to just wrap it up and live off his pension and call it a day. AJ Benza. Well yeah, said. Other, other than that, what do you think about it? <laughs> Holy shit. He pretty much summarized everything there is to know about Stuttery John in about 120 seconds. That was well done. AJ, open invitation if you ever want to come on this show and talk more about our friend John. I can't wait to hear John's response to this. You know he's going to be so pissed off about it. I agree I'm with sure, everything I'm you sure said. I'm sure it'll be very... <laughs> yeah. Magnanimous. I'm, I'm sure, sure it'll be very articulate. <laughs> of course it will be. I wrote down 12 points that I want to make to... Uh, no, no, I'm just kidding. I just got drunk. <laughs> um, all right. Real quick. Oh, we should probably do this. What has Stuttering John been up to? One of the things that he's done recently is dyed his hair using the cheapest just for men over the counter CVS pharmacy product you could possibly buy. It looks terrible. He's even like combing his hair like an adult now. It looks so bad. It's like he's pretending to be an adult. I don't know if he needs employment, probably. He's going on job interviews, what's what the deal is. But he comments on it, trying to be self-deprecating. And remember, this is a guy who thinks he's a comedian. Listen to his comedic instincts here. Yes, Night Owl, I I did my hair with some over-the-counter crap, and it looks like I painted it on with, uh, you know, <laughs> some bad paint. But um... <laughs> it looks like he painted it on <laughs> with some bad paint. Good one. Good one, John. <laughs> uh... Oh, Doug, you've been listening to Stuttering John lately, right? Yeah, I, I've got a couple clips from, I think it's his most recent episode. Uh, out of context, we'll just plow through them real quick. I, number 38, I called this clip, Sputtering John is a COVID super spreader. Why go to the Alamo? Does he know what happened there? <laughs> why Why does he go to Texas and pick the Alamo? <laughs> There's so much slobber. <laughs> God damn it. That's why he has to drink so much. He's losing most of that. He's dehydrating, <laughs> He's dehydrating just by talking. Just by talking. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody put um, together a video supercut of saliva just pouring out of his mouth. Because he does these shows and he can't keep it in his mouth because his teeth are falling out because he's a drug addled alcoholic. And it's really funny to watch just saliva pour, like, like a, a waterfall coming out of his mouth. I, I can't watch it a lot. I can't watch it before dinner. <laughs> but it's it's fun. All right, what else you got, Doug? Uh, 39, he was talking to his guest about something that he tweeted. Well, I don't know if you saw what I tweeted. I said, waiting for Joe Biden, you know, waiting for the inauguration is like, you know, a kid counting the days down to see Santa. Twitter has a fucking character limit. There's no way he tweeted that. <laughs> You think he's more articulate I, in his tweets? <laughs> what, what I tweet, I don't know if you saw it. The government, if you if you seen what dot dot dot, if you seen what I did, <laughs> that's not even a good joke. And to think that he has to recount, this is another Patrick Michael thing. You should have seen this funny thing that I wrote on social media. Like that's put it on social media, call it a day, and then when you do your podcast, come up with other things to talk about. Or or here's another quick tip. Don't even say you tweeted it. Just use your joke again. That might work also, but it seems really stupid when you're like, you should have seen this tweet I put out, and then it's not even funny. You're like, okay, would you get four likes? Are you proud of it? What, what is, what's going on right now? All right, so my, my clip number 37, so it's a stupid story, but I want you to pick out the details that he put into this story that didn't need to be there. I don't know how to roll weed, and I was driving home from a gig, and somebody gave sure. me a... Bu- Somebody gave me a bag of weed, and I just ate, an asshole. and I just ate the weed. 
while I was driving in my brand new Jeep. It had a five speed. So I just ate the raw weed and I woke up next to my wife like, oh, my God, my heart's racing. So we had to call an ambulance. So he wanted to brag <laughs> that he was driving a new Jeep. <laughs> Is that what he's talking uh, about? Five, five speed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but he did, he couldn't afford the automatic. That's fucking funny. I'm calling bullshit on the eating weed getting you all fucked up, too. Yeah, that's not how that works. No, no. It, so I I did some investigation. A told I'm not me it doesn't real, work. I'm real familiar in the... I'm not real familiar in the weed culture. Uh, so I checked, and it is, in fact, untrue that if you eat weed, you get any effects from the THC. Well, producer Chris happens to know a thing or two about it, so I'll take his word out of it as well. An older producer yeah. told me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny that that's the thing that he remembers from when he was married and lived in a big house and had a job. He's like, <laughs> yeah, and I, I was driving a new Jeep. I drive a new Jeep. It's not that impressive. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> this is also really funny. He's talking to Hell Sparks about how he has a friend, quote unquote, who hasn't received their unemployment checks in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> By Trump holding up the um, stimulus checks, did that cause unemployment? Everyone's got to reapply? Uh, uh, it depends on the state. Different states have different rules. Um, some of them just rubber stamped it right through. Other ones want to make it as hard for people to get uh, unemployment as possible. So they How about California? Know, they add a layer. Said that he hasn't got a check now in like two weeks. Uh, well, well, I don't care about other states. What about California? Do I got to reapply or not? And then he... I got a friend that he spits a lot when he talks. He's got roaches in his apartment and, <laughs> and he does. So this is really funny because now after he did that, he tries to play it off and make a joke that he actually applied for unemployment twice. Notice Hale's reaction to this. He doesn't think for a second that John is making a joke. Not even for a second. Um, but California, you have to do that every week. You have to sign on on like, you know, the weekend or whenever you do it. But I, I don't know. I, I applied twice. Yeah. I didn't get approved. <laughs> well, um, uh, I mean, ultimately... And if you watch, because I watched the video of this too, I, I applied twice. I didn't get approved. And he's like giggling, like that's the joke. And Hal goes, yeah. And he's like, no, no, that was a joke. Like, anyway, what you want to do is you want to apply every single week. Let him know why you don't have employment. And I just, I love it when John gives away what's really going on. Because the truth wants to come out. You can't, not everything out of your mouth can be a lie all the time. You know what's going on. Or saliva. <laughs> yeah, it's either a lie or saliva with this guy. Everything out of his mouth. Uh, oh, this is funny, too. John talking about someone else bragging about their success. They must be a liar. And this is, again, him projecting. This is the only thing that he knows. This is how he acts. He talks about how many... I mean, I don't know how many times I've documented where he talks about he's got a million listeners and hundreds of thousands of downloads. And we're all looking at how many people view his videos. It's a couple thousand. There's no way. There's 100,000 people listening to your show but he brags about these numbers that he doesn't actually have and then he projects that on other podcasters and then what his guest says at the end is also very fitting then he starts like because someone said that he's a has-been and so and then he starts going i just want to finish this he goes i make twenty one thousand a month on my podcast and two hundred thousand a year C come on anybody who brags they're making that much not making that much money you know what i'm saying richard it's like if i was saying i'm a billionaire i'm probably not a billionaire you know what i mean yeah, yeah. well but i mean like, at the end says, Trump says he's a billionaire it means he's broke <laughs> hey if you're making money on on basically you know peddling to these friggin' jackaloons on the far right because you know that they're going to believe anything you say that's not something to really be proud of you know it's like saying look i'm the king of the dorks i mean <laughs> you're still a friggin' dork at the end of the day and isn't it ironic don't you think a little too Judd's only become a little bit successful since he's gone totally far left and has bashed Donald Trump on every single episode that he does. And he gets these lunatics who come on and give him five bucks to read his, their question because they're also crazy people. And this guy's going, yeah, but what about those assholes on the far right who do that? Like, well, you all suck. You all of you suck. You're all taking I, advantage I was, of people. I was fully expecting John to, to do something like, uh, you, you know, 
you're you're full of shit. If you, oh, I want to thank Podcast Hitman for the two dollars super chat. <laughs> uh, you, yeah. You're full of shit. Uh, a, tr- a trucker, Andy. Yep, I know the dotard sucks. <laughs> uh, Doug, what else do you have on Stuttering John here? Uh, just him mispronouncing a couple words. Oh, if I you want it. to hear it, I love it. Thirty-five. As I was punching it in, I turned off the Wi-Fi so it's hooked up to the Ethernet. Okay. <laughs> cooked up. Hey, everything's cooked up. It's like my meth lab. And number 36 is him trying to pronounce guru. I saw that, that where you pulled that clip from. I was watching that. So apparently his internet wasn't working very well. He was clipping or it was freezing. And everyone in the chat on YouTube was going, it's not working. He's like, that, that's impossible. I have my ethernet hooked into the internet directly. <laughs> into the internet directly. <laughs> Fucking idiot. All right. <laughs> 36. <laughs> My technically savvy guru. <laughs> guru? What the yeah. fuck is that? <laughs> oh, Johnny boy. All right. This is my favorite thing of the week from Stuttering John. So I'm going to end this segment. And this is the fact that John has been <laughs> having some issues lately where people are getting kicked out of the the room or the stream as he's broadcasting on YouTube Live. All of a sudden... Dozens of people. So he'll have like 350 people in there. And then it's down to 289. Just like that. And he's talking to Hell Sparks about this. And Hell Sparks gives him the reason why this is happening. Now, Hell Sparks has no idea what he's talking about. But John believes everything Hell says. I got to ask you a question. Because people said, and I noticed it. Because because we went from like 560 people down to 460. People said that that the chats were disabled temporarily. What is going on with YouTube? I mean, how, I mean, how could that happen? I'll t- well, I, here's the thing. They're checking. F- we're talking about the, the bad stuff. So I don't doubt that there's algorithmical bumps and shit like that. Yeah. So um, I, I think they're worried that, you know, cause you, it's hard to talk about the Q crowd and not have the algorithm running. Cause they, you know, basically what they do is, they put up whatever a video is, they feed it into the algorithm, and they turn on uh, closed caption. And the closed captioning wow. takes whatever we're saying and gets the closest thing to it. And initially, the, it'll redline. It'll go, up. Oh, they're talking about some shit that's dangerous. Because they've got, you understand that YouTube and Facebook Live and all these things and Twitter and all this stuff, they have to monitor their sites for, like, suicides and, uh, and armed robberies that people film. And Yeah, but I get that. But look, everybody's saying that... Um, uh, it's disabled, and then it goes back on, and then it's disabled, and then it's going back on. I'm trying to explain that. I was explaining that to you. <laughs> no, I I know, but that that was... <laughs> no, no, I know you were explaining, but it has nothing to do with me, right? <laughs> no, it has to do with either the topic or how they're viewing the algorithm you know, at any given time because we're talking about those folks. And so they go, oh, shut the topic. Like These people might be – because it's a dangerous thing. A, you know, so they, they'll pause it for a second. Like uh, somebody's a human has to check. I just want to point out real quick. Hell Sparks just said that speech is a dangerous thing. Fuck you, Hell Sparks. You're a fucking moron. Has to check. It's basically what happened in those moments was the algorithm said, "Whoa, these people are saying they're mentioning Roseanne." <laughs> you know, like, and then and then a person went over and they watched for a minute and they're like, "Oh, they're talking about what an asshole those people are." Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So according to Hell Sparks, this is what's great. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is this is what's great. They're on YouTube Live, and what they're doing is in real time. They're um, transcribing the audio, and then there's an algorithm that's catching specific words or phrases, you know, like pizza shop in Washington or whatever the fuck people are talking about. And then when that happens, somebody has to walk over. Now, remember, if you there's millions of live videos going on on YouTube. Most of them have more viewers than Stuttering John. But when that happens and it catches something that you said, someone walks over and watches the video for a little bit to determine whether they should shut it off or not. And then they determine it's okay and they keep it going. How would that, ex- first of all, it's nonsense, but how would that explain the fact that dozens of people <laughs> are getting kicked out of the broadcast at a time? What, why would the algorithm be like, oh, we only want 78% of the people to watch that. <laughs> oh, we got to cut this one down to 62% of the audience. How does that even make any fucking sense? Okay, so so the funny thing is, you you could tell that he had no idea what he was talking about. Yes, but John said, "Yeah, I get all that, but what about me?" <laughs> I know that was great. John's just like, "Well, yeah, yeah, we all know that." And then he goes, "Well, hell, has this ever happened to you?" And hell goes, "No." 
<laughs> and uh, I know the reason why this is happening. We happen to have, you know, fucking with people. I'm not usually for, but with Stuttering John, it's, I'm okay with it. Somebody figured out a way to hack into the back door, and they're actually able to kick people off of his stream while he's doing it. <laughs> I've been, oh, I've been messaging with this guy who's doing this. It's fucking brilliant. And when he does, he tries to time it around times that he talks about right-wing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it makes it seem like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have mentioned that. I just lost another 300 people <laughs> from the stream. <laughs> and so John's, like, freaking out now because he thinks that YouTube is targeting him because this keeps happening to him. Uh, so here's a clip of him freaking out about people getting kicked off. Mark P got booted from the chat again. I don't know what's going on, Craig. I'm having some... YouTube is pissing me off, man, because now I just went to, from 360 people who are watching live now down to 308 in one second. YouTube is purging my own show. I mean, it's like, this is ridiculous. Did we say anything that was... No, and who do you who do you call to talk to? Who do you call and say, hey, is there any even a person you can call and, and bring this up to? Yeah, I'm going to have to go, what are you guys doing? You, you, you are purging <laughs> my show, and we're not, you know... You know, we're yeah. not a show that's making any of the names that or words that are are considered insightful in fact we're Fuck. doing the exact opposite we're condemning those that incited violence and then youtube is is, is taking it out on me i'm sick of it <laughs> you're a stupid dumbass this is great because he thinks hell sparks is the smartest man alive so if Hale Sparks said it's true, then it has to be true, which is why I decided to even explain this, because we could have kept this going for a while. I don't think anyone's going to even believe that this is what's going on. He's going to continue to think that YouTube and their algorithm is kicking people off of his broadcast while he's streaming, which is fucking hilarious. Anyway, Stuttering John. So much fun. Right, you think we're winding down. We're winding up, my friend. <laughs> So I want to thank our friend Jackie Marlowe, who sent me over a beer on the balcony with Steve Grillo. Steve Grillo from the Aftershock XL show, formerly a Howard Stern show intern and employee. So this is where Stuttering John gets to big time his friend Steve. Steve is in New York. He is actually at a club or a bar where there's a comedy show going on. So you're going to hear a lot of noise going on. And Stuttering John gets a call from Spectrum. Now, as you know, Stuttering John's internet ain't working so good. So he's pissed off with Spectrum. He thinks it's Spectrum's fault. He gets a phone call from them in the middle of the show and takes the call. And this is hilarious. Well, hold on. You know, of course, this is probably Spectrum now they're calling me, which is just ridiculous. Here, watch, yeah. watch. Here, 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 watch. I'm going to take this, watch. Okay. Hold on. Yes, hello. Yes. Yes. Yes, it's having issues and 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 I'm I'm a podcaster and I'm having the congressman from New York on tomorrow. I pay for the super expensive Wi-Fi, and it's been out now three times this month already. So, first off, he has to say, let's have a podcaster with some pretty big guests on the show. <laughs> but then he kind of ruins it by saying, I'm buying these super expensive Wi-Fi. I looked up on Spectrum's website. If you want to get the fastest speed, which is about a gig per second, $90 a month. Well, I'm not paying for it. Uh, show support is actually paying for it. <laughs> the super expensive Wi-Fi. John, <laughs> you give them $90 a month. You are not on their radar as a big customer of theirs. <laughs> so then John has to flex and tell this woman who, God bless her, she's just doing her job. And you'll even hear Grillo going like, ah, be nice to this poor woman. But John has to explain to her all the amazing guests he's getting on his big show. The 24th? Do you realize my business? My business is the internet. 
Do you understand that? It's how you make a living. That's how I make a living. I can't wait till the 24th. I got guests, congressmen from Rhode Island, congresswomen from New York, and you're telling me you can't get here until January 24th? Are you guys out of your mind? What's hilarious about this oh. is this is Los Angeles. Spectrum deals with actual celebrities who actually <laughs> talk to other celebrities on their shows. They're not the ones calling Spectrum. Conan O'Brien isn't on the phone with a Spectrum rep going, listen, I got to put out Conan O'Brien needs a friend. I got some big guests coming up. <laughs> Only John would think that he's a big deal. You're not a big deal in Los Angeles. I can promise you that. So then he decides he needs to talk to a supervisor. That's not going to work for me. That's not going to... Is there a supervisor I can talk to? All right. He needs to talk to a supervisor because January 24th to come by and fix his internet is not going to work for him. He is a big time celebrity. Yes, 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 please do. This is my bread and butter. The, the, every day that goes by, I don't, I don't have internet, I lose $10,000. Ask her how our family's doing, John. All right, and just please, and, and please let them know that I have over a million Twitter subscribers. I am a big time celebrity, and believe me, they don't want any, they don't want me tweeting about this. Dude, this is so funny because, first off, he has 50,000 Twitter followers. He says he has it's over close. a million. Close, really close. And he says he loses $10,000 a day when he doesn't have his internet. I mean, this is obviously... What? This is obviously made up. And he's just being a cunt to this woman. I have a, a buddy who used to work for ADT. He works support for them. And he actually covered the LA area. Celebrities in this area are not a big deal. When you're a rep... You talk to celebrities all the time. That's where they live, is Los Angeles. John thinks he's going to big time this I, I make $10,000 a day. I have a million Twitter followers. She's like, whatever. The 24th is the first time we have an opening to get someone <laughs> to your a shitty... He's in a fucking apartment. She knows where he lives. He's in a shitty apartment complex in the ghetto. Sir, I'm sorry about your bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, you literally meant bread and butter. <laughs> this is my beer can chicken. <laughs> it's my bread and butter. Is there, is there a chance that you might just have some boxes stacked on your Ethernet cord? <laughs> Did a cockroach maybe eat through the Ethernet cable? Shoot through it. <laughs> Nothing else to eat. Oh, so then, thankfully, because he does have people, I think, about... 13 people watching him do his beer on the balcony. Somebody calls him out for his obvious lies to Spectrum support. Good as gold. I'm not getting 10,000 a day. That was me fucking around with Spectrum. Well, anyway. Well, you know, we'll see how long this goes for before the hot spot goes. No, Mark P, I'm not on hold. I, you know. Sorry. They're supposed to come back. They're supposed to try and figure out there's somebody in my area. And by the way, I don't have over a million uh, followers. Yeah. We all know you were lying. Yeah. And then he always tries to point it off like, oh, I was just fucking around. It's a good joke, though, right? A million Twitter followers. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll make sure that I tell them Spectrum sucks. <laughs> That's pretty funny. How long into this did Grillo consider hanging up? Dude, Grillo is a cuck. There's one point, and I didn't even pull it, where Grillo starts talking about a guest he's going to have on his show. He's like, yeah, actually, mm -hmm. on Aftershock XL, we have... And John goes, yeah, but never mind that. What we're talking about. And it's like, dude, Grillo is spending what? an hour of his time talking to you. It's going to reach about 40 people because this is one of his, you know, Patreon, YouTube subscriber-only shows. And you won't let him fucking do a plug? It's one I, of the I... few guys John can bully, and he takes full advantage of it. I was waiting for him to address anything that AJ Benza said, but I didn't hear any of it in in the podcast. I mean, I was skimming through. Maybe you found something, but I think he kind of like dropped that. Yeah. So AJ Benza, somebody tweeted it, John, about that. And yeah. John responded, he wasn't pissed off about him being on beer on the balcony. He said that John, John said that he posted something on Facebook about Trump and AJ Benz is a Trump supporter, and that's why he's pissed. So, what? so John just decided, like, well, it's nothing to do with me. It's just politics. You know, he's just pissed. 
So he's just dismissing it. He's, he doesn't want to address any of it because it was yeah. all real. All Everything AJ Benza said was real. John's not going to bring that up. Yeah, AJ Benza was basically like, I should have listened to people that told me not to go on this loser show. Like, what? it had nothing to do with politics. A- AJ and John have a history. They have hated each other for a long time. For sure. Yes. So AJ was doing the guy a favor. And I, I think he knows that. But yeah, I know. I, I wish John would have said something about it. And, uh, you know, maybe someday someone will ask him. Maybe with a super chat. Hey, you guys, you're being real cheap today with your super chats. Oh, who's AJ Benza? I've never, never heard of him. <laughs> so this is funny. They get into Jackie Martling talk with Grillo. And uh, you might remember, as we've talked about, Grillo was the one who told John that Jackie had a seizure. And then John decided to go on his show and tell everybody on the internet about Jackie's... He's got an incurable disease. Did anybody <laughs> know that? You shouldn't have hired this guy. He might collapse on stage. It's like, dude, why are you telling people shit about their, their health history? Or their medical records? Like, this is... Have you never heard of HIPAA? Like, you're not supposed to talk about this shit on also, the internet. Also, his personal email and address <laughs> and phone number. If you want Chad Zubox home address, here it is. So... I don't know why he's pissed at me. Again, he's, he never knows why anyone's pissed at him. And this is Grillo talking about Jackie's not talking to him anymore. Uh, Jackie's not talking to me because of uh, uh, this comment oh, I made oh, on your oh, show. Oh, please tell everybody why Jackie's not talking. I, 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 I'm not going to say it's what It's the happened. most ridiculous okay. thing in the world. Something happened to Jackie. I'm not going to say what. No, and, I'll say what. He had a seizure. Jesus Christ, John never <laughs> fucking learns. My God. If, 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 he should write an autobiography called I Never Fucking Learn. I've never learned a goddamn thing from any mistake I've ever made. I don't know why Jackie doesn't like me anymore. By the way, he had a Caesar. <laughs> and this gets even funnier and funnier because now John starts projecting big time while talking about Jackie. This is unreal. The only person that Jackie could blame for all his problems is Jackie. Jackie has always been a guy who can't get it out of his own way. Do not even feel any regret about Jackie because the only person Jackie cares about is Jackie. Yeah, just so like, was... you know, just like Trump. He only get ca- Jackie only cares about Jackie. So you literally could replace oh. the name Jackie with the name John Millen. Actually, I did that for you. Here you go. The only person that stuttering John Melendez could blame for all his problems is stuttering John Melendez, stuttering John Melendez has always been a guy who can't get it out of his own way. Do not even feel any regret about stuttering John Melendez because the only person stuttering John Melendez cares about is stuttering John Melendez. Yeah, just so like, was... you know, just like Trump. He only ca- stuttering John Melendez he cares about stuttering John Melendez. All right. <laughs> you ready for even more projecting? And this is impressive even by John standards. Jackie was the biggest alcoholic known to man. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie That's was so the great. biggest alcoholic known to man. And as you know, Jackie stopped drinking. John still does. And guess what? That's why John doesn't like Jackie anymore. Really, the only problem I have with Jackie is he's one of those guys who stopped drinking and then starts preaching about the evils of drinking. Well, if he was the biggest (laughs) alcoholic to ever exist, then that's a good thing that he'd be trying to help others and telling them (laughs) drinking is bad for you. (laughs) I know. it's You can't even comment on this shit. Yeah, it's just it's It's comedy without me even saying anything. You you get how ridiculous this is. I don't have to explain it to anybody. Oh, my God. And it continues. Somebody once told me, I'm not going to mention... Uh, I won't mention the name, but a friend of his told me that he had sent out a mass email asking people to give him money because he was hurt. It's like radio. <laughs> is he, is Stuttering Jabalundas really going to explain to us that Jackie is broken begging for money? This is crazy. <laughs> I mean, this is really I know. crazy. I know. I didn't want to go this deep on a Beer on the Balcony episode, but everything he said, I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? So, I <laughs> for the super chats, I'm on my 12th cause Light. You know who's an <laughs> asshole? <laughs> and so, obviously, 
he started processing. He's like, wow, did I just say it's pathetic that he's asking people for money? So then he has to say this right afterwards to uh, clarify. But uh, no, I'm not going to go, you know, I'm not going to, uh, uh, you know, start emailing people individually, you know. So he says, yeah, no, I asked for money too, but I don't email people individually. I literally have a screenshot of him asking Heather W. for money so that he could pay his mortgage. <laughs> no. He literally texts people directly asking for money. You know, this janky guy is so pathetic. He's asking people for money. What a fucking asshole. I mean, at least I only ask Heather W. when I'm on your show. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, like, this is just like Seamus saying that people are alcoholics or that their dad left them or that they're not a good father. It really is shocking. It really is shocking. So Grillo says, I'm outside of Manhattan. I I think he's upstate a little bit. He's at this bar that's having a comedy night. And he goes, yeah, you know, um, there's some comedians here. Chrissy Mayer is going to be doing comedy. So John goes... (laughs) Oh, Chrissy Mayer is going to be there? I got a good one for that. These are all my Patreon and uh, YouTube subscribers. Oh, what's going on? I want to let everybody know I'm at the Hilltop tonight, Chrissy Mayer is performing. I'm not doing anything. I got invited up here just to get out of the city. But, you know, it's just so weird because, like, New York City's all shut down. But up here, they're able to open up. And uh, everybody, they got everything social distance. And it's a really big place. And they got tables scattered throughout here. And uh, it's their first co- comedy night they're doing here. Yeah, do me a favor, you know, go up to her and say, uh, Suttering John said, uh, hey, Gums. Okay. She, uh, she said, uh, she might be here. She might be here by the time. Uh, oh, no, no, here. I don't want to talk to her. Just say, hey, just say, hey, Gums. She, goes up and she loves when you call her Gums. Oh, okay. I don't know her, so uh, I'm going to get slapped, ain't I? No, but yeah. just, you know, just say, hey, uh, you know, I, I was, I just did, you know, my buddy Suttering John, and he just said, hey, Gums. Because he says he knows you love that. Okay. So this was about nine minutes into the show. Then about 50 minutes into the show, and I'm not going to play it for you because it's it's literally two and a half minutes long. John repeats again. When you see Chrissy, tell her your good friend Stuttering John said, hey, gums. No, no, you got to tell her I said, hey, gums. And no, no, no. You got to do it. Trust me. It's you thought it was the funniest fucking thing. There, there are five words the gorilla will never say. My good friend stuttering. John. <laughs> Correct. Who would say that? So of course I sent this to Chrissy and I asked her, "Hey, did you meet Gorilla the other week?" She goes, "Yeah, I met Gorilla at this this comedy show I was doing." And I said, "Any chance he said hey gums to you?" And she says. He said, hey, I'm Grillo. By the way, Stuttering John said to say, hey, Gums. And then I replied in front of about four comics, Stuttering John is a fucking loser. (laughs) Then he asked my opener if she could drive him back to New York City. And then she whispered to me, hey, that creepy guy asked me for a ride home. Let's get the fuck out of here. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. That story checks out. And then, so I'm chatting with her a little bit about Grillo. Grillo uh, was supposed to have her on his show last year. And then was like, oh, can we just hang out first to Chrissy? Ooh, so Grillo's ooh, a fucking creep, I don't too. <laughs> That's terrible. Grillo, what are you doing? <laughs> such a creep. Wow. I just thought that was funny. So now Grillo's off the show. He's going back to hanging out at the club or whatever he's doing, asking for rides. And uh, John decides to start railing on Chrissy and uh, Anthony Cumia. She asked me to do a show. Now I'm a nice guy. I'm like, yeah, sure, because she's on. That's when I I thought, like, everything was cool with me and Anthony Cumia, which turns out it wasn't because Anthony Cumia is a two-faced pock face prick. What? And I didn't <laughs> understand that the guy was going to trash me. I thought we were all cool. But he's he's not a real man. And I don't mean that in the sexist term. He's just not, uh, like, how do you say? He, he He's not an honorable person. Anthony Kumi is not an honorable person. You know what he is? A competent broadcaster. I didn't edit that. That's how John <laughs> talks. That's what John puts out as a show. 
It's unbelievable. This guy thinks he should be behind a microphone at any point in his life. I don't I don't mean that in the holistic alpha male sense of the term. So then he goes on to explain that Chrissy is terrible at interviewing. While I'm getting interviewed, this girl is the worst interviewer that I've ever, ever experienced. But I'm not going to call her out on it. The worst interviewer. <laughs> this is a guy who asked Casey Armstrong if he drinks and smoke weed thrice on his show. A guy who's now sober because it's a problem. Yeah, but you could have a couple beers though, right? Or smoke some weed, Casey. <laughs> He's going out Chrissy for sucking at interviewing? Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about, uh, oh, John doesn't like to do other people's shows anymore. So hello, it's Husey had John on. I actually was on that show too. This is a, a guy out of Ireland who's done interviews with a lot of, uh, podcasters and comedians, pretty good lineup of people that he's had on the show. And he talks about how that was a mistake going on his show. This is what they do. This is why I refuse to do other people's shows because that's all they want. I used to do this guy's show from Ireland. You know, I thought it was a nice thing to do. It's Ireland. You know, seemed like a nice guy. What does this guy do? Starts to do the same thing so he can get his 10 seconds of fame. And then he starts doing other shows and then has people on to trash me. This is why I don't do any of these people's shows. And this is why I keep it just to us. Why is it that I'm able to do Christie's show, Husey's show, all these shows, and I don't embarrass myself? Why is it that only John goes on these other shows and then regrets it? Is it maybe because of John? He thinks everyone's out <laughs> to get him. No, you just <laughs> suck. You suck. It's never his fault. It's it's everyone. Right. It's so weird how he's just like everyone's against me. It's it's you. There's one common thread here in all of your stupid stories, and it's you. Right. But what's great is that the people who are chatting with him reinforce that he's a good guy. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Thank you. Good as gold. They use me, and they do. They use me because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> That's why, that's the problem. He's just too nice of a guy, Doug. Just, when you're going to use somebody, it's for some sort of benefit or some sort of gain. <laughs> I mean, what are you gaining by using Stuttering John? So Jackie Marlowe sent me these clips and some notes, and he said, uh, with that clip, he said, Side note, Good as Gold, who John thinks is a legit non-troll fan, posted the following in the live chat box. Do you have your own washer and dryer, or do you have to put on your Crocs and walk down the hallway to coin machines? <laughs> So obviously, good as gold is on the right side of history with this one. Here's another fun thing. Somebody asked him, it might be good as gold again. What other options he has for internet? Because obviously he's having problems with Spectrum. Canadian bacon, do you have another choice for internet at home? Not really. I could use my neighbors, oh, but because of the walls, it's not going to be that clear. You're a stupid dumbass. Other options means <laughs> other ISPs. Is Verizon in your area? Yeah. Is there another yeah. option for internet? He goes, the only other option I have is stealing my neighbor's Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's not what he meant. That's not what the question like, meant. I do want to hear an episode where he does his podcast from his neighbor's kitchen while they're all having dinner. <laughs> <laughs> or Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Juan, tell your kids to shut, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Okay, a couple more clips real quick. I thought this was funny because this is where John exclaims that Donald Trump, I don't know if you know this, killed uh -huh. every single American in this country. She goes, why don't you like Trump? I go, well, let's start with the fact that he is responsible for the deaths of over 360 million Americans. Uh-oh, <laughs> retard alert. <laughs> retard alert, class. If that's true, this Trump guy's a problem. <laughs> wow. He wiped out all of America? Fuck. And then... I, I haven't been feeling right. I, didn't, I thought I had a cold. I didn't know I was dead. Trump killed you, Doug. He's I'm killed dead. us all. <laughs> and then this is the thing that really pisses me off. And I hate this celebration of censorship that's going on right now. And I'll say it. It's not, this isn't a political show, but it seems to be coming from the left. The left seems to love when voices are silenced that they don't like. But, dude, what comes around goes around. I don't know why you would react like this. 
I love it, Sally Beaver. Breaking news. Twitter has permanently suspended Trump. I knew it. I was tweeting about it all morning. Twitter, oh, you! I love it. All morning I kept tweeting. Twitter, are you allo- why are you allowing this guy to stay on here? I, and I kept doing it, and I kept, and then I even tagged Twitter safety. I go, safety? Really? Really? A guy inciting violence? I love it. Uh, so John's taking credit for this, too. Right. He's That's taking- the craziest part of this. I, I love it. This fucking <laughs> asshole is like, this is because I was tweeting at them. I was the tattletale who got the guy censored. John, what do you think is going to happen to you? You're not exactly fucking PC, you moron. I I don't get it. I don't understand why people think that this is okay. Did you listen when he was talking about uh, YouTube and how they were quote unquote kicking people off? And you got to the you know you got to the root of what was actually happening. Yes. And the fact that he gets on and he's like, it's because I mentioned election fraud. But from now on, I'm not going to use the term election fraud because when you say election fraud, I'm like, what are you? Even if you think this is real, what are you doing? It's so stupid. It's so dumb. It's amazing. These are all of the words I will no longer be saying on the show because I think it will get me banned. Trump is great. Proud Boys are awesome. Election fraud is real. Stop the steal. <laughs> all right. Oh boy, I think it's I think it's time. Yeah. Big news in the Howard Stern world. Yeah. Shuli Egar is no longer with the show. Shuli is out. Shuli is out. And so somebody asked Stuttering John, are you going to get Shuli to come on the Stuttering John show? Joseph Corson, did you ever get a hold of Shuli? I DM'd him and, you know, and the pussy didn't get back to me. Huh. And I just wrote to him. I just said, you're such a fucking pussy. Oh, I wonder I mean, why really, John Deff, he would be interesting, but he, he doesn't want to do the show. I don't know why. I know why. Yeah. So I am supporting our friend Shuli. Yeah. He has a Patreon now. He's putting out Patreon episodes. I watched episode number one starring Shuli, where he talks about leaving the Howard Stern show and yeah. what's going on. And he mentions Stuttering John, but not by name. Oh. Not by name. Try to uh, read through, read between the lines here. I'm sorry if you're waiting to hear Venom and just nasty shit, but a lot of the people who spit that shit these days, that's all they got. <laughs> you know, they're, there's a group of dudes that are like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite, right? <laughs> this fucking guy's wearing his varsity jacket from high school. He's setting up a fucking video camera. He's throwing the football. He's stuck. He's stuck in the past because the past was his peak. That was it. That was it. It was as good as it was going to get. And there's a group of people out there that that's all they do. That's all they know because that's all they got. And I'm not that guy. He's talking about centering John. Probably Steve Grillo is getting thrown into that mix as well. Yeah, There's a lot of guys who peaked on the Howard Stern show who are trying to keep it going. And it's just not not working for him. Do you remember that video? Maybe it was like two-ish years ago where Stuttering John found Shuli in the airport. Yes. And was like found around and calling him a pussy. Why don't you talk to me, you faggot, or whatever. It was yeah. like crazy. Say crazy it was just so weird because John actually put it out. Yeah. He yeah. was like, no, this is embarrassing you, you idiot. Shuli's ignoring you. And then he's like, I wonder why Shuli won't talk to me. <laughs> I know. I can't believe he doesn't want to come to my show. Just because I chased him through the airport until he went to security and said, this crazy person is following me. Can you get him away? I wonder why he won't talk to me. You know what it was? I think it was the hotel they were staying at. He was stalking. Stuttering John was stalking the hotel where all the Stern staffers were because the Howard Stern show went out to LA for a week. Oh. And Stuttering John thought that he'd be welcomed back with open arms. Hey, yeah. John, get on the show. Come over here, buddy. Perfectly normal. Perfectly healthy way to <laughs> behave. Perfectly healthy way yeah. to behave. So we know that Brent Hatley left the show. Yeah. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Centering John said, I have sources on the inside. I know people. I still talk to people over the Stern show. Brent was fired. Yeah, I remember him saying that. And Shuli tells us this. Brent Hatley 
left the show on his own accord. And the way you can tell that is the fact that he can talk about that (laughs) and he can say he left the show. It's one of the reasons why I left the show because I knew from him that going out, because the reality of it is you get fired, you're getting an NDA to sign. So this is interesting. I didn't know this, but basically he breaks this down with the NDA thing is if you get fired, you'll get paid a severance package if you sign an NDA saying, I will not talk shit. Okay, but you got to sign it to get the severance package. Okay, that explains it. So you either take the money or you take the content with you. Yeah, no shit. So Shuley is explaining that when he moved to Alabama, he moved out of New York because New York's going to shit and he's got a young family. So he moves to Alabama. And when Howard re-signed, they made him an offer. You could stay on part-time. They weren't going to involve the whack pack as much, and that's kind of what Shuley does. Yeah. That's yeah. his beat, is the whack pack. They're not going to involve him as much. They're going to give him part time work. He'll have to take a pay cut. He'll lose his benefits, but he can still podcast and he can still do other things on top of that. And then the offer changes, he describes here. And then things changed where, you know, now I could broadcast, but. I couldn't talk about, you know, Sirius or uh, Howard or um, the show or anything in any way. Boring. Yeah, that would suck. So that's why he left. He decided, no, fuck it. I don't want your part-time gig. Yeah. I want to leave and I want to be able to talk about shit. And I've mentioned this before, but he was going to go on Drew and Mike when he was doing stand-up in Detroit. And Drew was like, oh, sweet. We'll get uh, Shuley from the Howard Stern show. They're like, yeah, but you can't talk about Howard Stern. You can't talk about Sirius. You can't talk about any of, any of that. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, then why am I talking to Shuley from the Howard Stern show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we can't, it, it would be weird. Yeah. Not to say that Shuley isn't a talented guy and he's funny. You notice how I'm kissing him out of the ass right now? I do. All right, well. I'm noticing that. All right, well, I've been saving the best for last. This is also something that Shuley said about his show um, that he's, he's going to start building. I understand yeah. This show isn't going to be a smash right out the gate. I get it. I'm hoping to get it to a point where Carl from Who Are These Podcasts trashes the shit out of this. I really do. (laughs) We're not there yet, but we're going to get there. Oh, Shuley, you got it, buddy. We'll definitely bash the shit out of you. And if you ever want to come on here and bash the shit out of Brent or Stuttering John. Especially Stuttering John. Especially Stuttering John. But he used to have a thing with Brent. I don't know if it was real or not. I don't know if it was pro wrestling. Yeah. But he used to really fuck with Brent, and they used to get into it. So I think that would be a lot of fun. Getting back to Stuttering John, he is having some uh, some issues with YouTube. Oh, really? Yes. YouTube is kicking people off his show who are watching the show. Yeah. And listen, so he's decided he's going to send out winks individually to people so that no one else can find it. And listen to all the projection that goes out in this clip. I will I will send you all my personal email address and this way for all the YouTube people I will be sending you the links uh, uh hopefully with the help from Sean Hockey Canada 25 maybe even Nikki B and and then we will get those links out to you so this way we could stop the trolling and uh and that's what's going on people I mean you know we're getting trolled People don't like, there are a lot of right-wing lunatics out there who don't like that this podcast is growing in popularity, and they're trying to do their best. They contact people on Twitter. They are constantly trying to take take me down. So this is funny because we know for a fact that John reaches out to listeners and tells them to troll people. Yeah. This is something that John has done. I've seen the text messages to Heather W. Oh, yeah. Hey, Make sure you go troll Chrissy Mayer because I don't like her now. Call her guns. That would be so funny. Funny. She loves. She loves it when you call her guns. <laughs> so, Stuttering John gets out of the show and says, "These people are all fucking trolling me, and it's because they're all fucking crazy people. So I'm gonna have to like hide from them and send out my link." specifically and then he goes on about how youtube is fucking with him yes be buccaneer youtube is again uh screwing with me i don't know what happened this time 
but he's asking, did anybody else see the chat disconnected a few minutes ago? The chat numbers went down. I'm taking a screenshot of that so I could send to the schmucks at YouTube who consistently screw with my show. And it is getting more and more ridiculous. So John's got this thing figured out where yeah. he is saying things on his show that YouTube disagrees with. And so what they're doing is they're kicking people out from viewing his show yeah. on YouTube Live. That's the way that YouTube oh, yeah. fights against the speech that they really disagree with. Oh, of course. Oh, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. Yeah. It makes perfect sense that you would take out a percentage of the audience listening to something that YouTube disagrees with. And uh, this clip, I don't know if John's living under a rock or if he's just this stupid, but this is impressive. It pisses the f*** out of me. Why are they messing with my show? Do they not like the liberal talk shows? Do they have a problem with the liberal talk shows? What? Why do they mess with my show and Hal Sparks' show? Why? Why? Because we tell the truth? Why? Because we're not trump Right, John. Big Tech is silencing the liberal voice and promoting Donald Trump. That's exactly what's happening right now. See I'm glad all, you're paying attention. See it all the time, Carl. See it all the time. I'm this, gonna this retard yeah. goes, YouTube is censoring me because I'm telling the truth about how Donald Trump sucks. Oh, I'm going to mangle this phrase. Is it delusions of grandeur? Is that so, the phrase? Something like that. That's what he's got. I am so fucking important that YouTube yes. is coming to get me. Holy shit. Yes. Dude, you're an asshole in your basement. <laughs> you're a fucking multi He doesn't even own a basement. They're, they're a huge corporation. He's not I even know. that liberal. Don't they get, they get like hundreds of hours of video uploaded every minute, yeah. I think, is the statistic. Now. Right. I'm sure they're fucking worried about you, John. Oh, they're coming to get you. Talk yeah. about delusional. Oh, he's so delusional. He's spending the whole time taking screen grabs of people saying, I was kicked out two times during the show tonight. Yeah. This is his evidence that he's mounting, Ugh. that he's going to email to YouTube. And this is what he's going to say to YouTube in that email. Because I am going to, because I'm going to go, look, guys, stop it. You take 30% of my money every freaking month. Stop screwing with this show. I got loyal people who listen to this show. Stop it. Well, that'll solve them. He's going to tell YouTube <laughs> to go fuck themselves. And I love that he goes, he, they take 30% of my money. His only income is from Super Chats. Yeah. They take 30% of his money. What maybe, could that be? Maybe you shouldn't rely on Super Chats for an income. Jesus I don't know. Christ. I'm just throwing that out there as a yeah. possibility. You played a, uh, it might have been last week or before, where he was on the phone with Time Warner. He took a call <laughs> from Time Warner. Yeah, Spectrum, yeah. And he left it in because... It showed how much of a big shot he was and how tough and how strong he was and how he told those people, God damn it. And he also lied. Oh, he lied off his ass. Yeah. But to listen to that with anyone else's ears, we've all had a job where you had to deal with the public, yep. whether it's a restaurant or phone or whatever. And people gas are, station. Gas station. Or gas station. <laughs> and people are coming at you with fucking crazy shit. And it's not your fault. He's yelling at a customer service rep that makes 12 bucks an hour and reads a script off of a page. They didn't fuck with your internet. They couldn't even fuck with your internet if they wanted to. They certainly couldn't fix your internet even if they wanted to. They're a fucking 18-year-old intern or co-op sitting in a fucking cube farm. And you're yelling, I'm a big time. I'm a motherfucking star. And I get all these millions of downloads. Like, dude, even if any of that was true, which is not. Yeah. That only makes you an asshole. Right. And anyone with an earshot thinks you're an asshole and the fact that you think that it, it shows your fucking strength you're so fucking strong because you told those idiots where uh, dude you're fucking way out of there it's it's even uh, oh even grillo I, who's a retard yeah was on there with him going john be nice to her ask her how her family's doing he kept I, saying that over yeah. and over again like what are you what are you doing oh i was yelling at my speaker and I, i'm I listening know. to you guys play and i'm like ah, 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 fuck man holy shit but other than that i have no feelings on that call it really does show his true character, though. He's willing to lie in front of everybody. I have a million Twitter oh, followers. Yeah. I yeah. make $10,000 a day from the internet. As if they're going to be like, oh, I didn't realize how important you were. I thought that our next opening was January 24th, but yeah. now I oh, see that yeah. it's the 12th, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'll get somebody in right away. He's definitely the guy yelling at the Burger King clerk because his dollar menu cheeseburger didn't get there fast enough. For sure. And then turn to the people behind him and be like, see, I told them. It's fucking pickles on this thing. Yeah. 
Do you know how important I am? You're putting pickles on my yeah. cheeseburger? Yeah. Yeah, Guaranteed. Here's, here's a secret. If you want to maintain your VIP status, never ask for one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So this is John actually taking screenshots. And whatever software he's using makes a noise every time. So this is over and over again as people are going, yeah, I was kicked off. I was kicked off. I, I don't know if these are trolls or if they're real people. Yeah. Who cares at this point? Again, Jillian, New York City, 212, thrown off just twice. Thank you. Oh, my God. I'm going to email it. I'm going to say, what are you doing to my show? All right? We have a loyal fan base. Uh, Joseph Corson, keep getting thrown off. I got that. So he, every single time somebody say they got thrown off, he's taking a screen capture of it because people in a chat room, obviously, that's what YouTube's going to look at and be like, oh, shit, all these people said this happened to them. We got to stop doing this. He's pointing his iPhone at a laptop and taking a picture. <laughs> yes. That's not a screenshot. Yes. That was <laughs> right. that was an point. iPhone. Oh my god, you're right. That was an iPhone camera <laughs> a few feet from a microphone. Oh my god, I was giving the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was lying go. about that. Yeah, that's a fucking boomer's boomer. Wow, right you're right. <laughs> Holy shit. And he probably printed it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Faxed it to somebody. <laughs> and it's not great show content. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> it's not the best. When I'm tuning into someone's podcast, I don't want to hear them yelling about how the chat doesn't work. I, I mean, maybe it's just me. I'm crazy. So John's trying to figure out what he's saying that's getting his listeners kicked out, and he's got it pinned down to one magic word. Uh, you know, I like I know what the you know I know what the magic word is, but I don't want to get you guys freaking thrown off. But we didn't even mention the magic word, and we still got thrown off because they're doing something here. I don't know what the they're doing. But they're pissing me off. What do you think the magic word is, Crouch? I have a guess. Him biting on the F word so hard makes me think it's like profanity based. But what? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's QAnon. Oh, I think yeah, that, maybe. So what happens is there's a guy. I don't know who the guy is. He has nothing to do with WATP. There's a guy who's figured out how to hack into his show and just kick people off. Yeah. Whatever he wants to. And he picks certain times when they're talking about right-wing concepts. <laughs> so if they bring up QAnon or, you know, stop the steal or yeah. election fraud, then all of a sudden all these people get kicked out. Oh. And the guy's just fucking with John. It's, it's amazing. At, at, there's an old Twilight Zone episode where the aliens are turning off people's power and they're turning it back on and all the neighbors go crazy and turn on each other. That's yeah. what this guy's doing. <laughs> He's just kicking people out of the chat and just watching the fun. <laughs> But he waits until it, it'll cause trouble, you know? I fucking love it. Oh, I love it, too. I love it. I want to give some closure to the piano storage story. Ooh. Remember we talked about this? He has this piano. He doesn't know what to do with it. The piano that was there when he moved into his house that his parents gave to him 30 years ago? Yeah, a lot of, yeah. Sentimental, a lot of yeah. sentimental value. Yeah, that piano. Yeah. All right. Uh, and by the way, I found the place to put my piano. The curb? It, it, you know... Uh, my friend's gonna let me keep it at his uh, in his garage for three hundred a year. Screw it, I'll take it. All right, Chris, I have a question for you. So he's in LA. His friend's gonna put it in their garage. Musical instruments. Is that a good place to store them? A garage. Before I answer that, I would like to remind everyone: pianos are literally free. <laughs> Whatever town you're in, go to Craigslist, click the musical instrument. There are free pianos. You, there are more pianos than you can get. I mean, you couldn't even get all the fucking pianos in your area, and it doesn't even matter where you are when you hear me say this. They're free. <laughs> you can get a piano for free. But yeah, you should leave it out in the garage. Make sure the moisture gets to it. Make sure the changing humidity. That's real good for stringed instruments. They love that shit, especially when they're wood yep. and uh, you know they're exposed to the elements. Mm, perfect. And fortunately, tuning a piano is not expensive at all, and John could easily afford it. Piece of cake. So, yeah. Oh yeah. So that'll be fine. Remember Noel Castler, centering oh, wow. John's uh, sidekick there for That's a little a while from the past. Yeah. Right. Right. Somebody asked, "What's up with Noel? Is he going to be back on the show anytime?" Uh, sees the root. Sees the root. Have Noel Castle. Look, I asked Noel to come on again. He said he's swamped. I'm not going to contest it. I just, you know, he can come on whenever he wants to come on. If he doesn't want to come on, that's fine, too. <laughs> yeah. Noel is <laughs> donezo with Stuttering John. Yeah. Can't imagine why. He's obviously too busy. All right, last clip that I want to play. Somebody asks John about specific guests that John should get on his show. Remember that John is a liberal voice on the internet oh yeah he's taking down the dotard known as donald trump he has a growing in popularity liberal show 
So you, I'm sure he knows about the other podcasters out there who are doing similar things. Uh, Mark P. Stuttering John. How about John Lovett or John Favreau? Uh, I've tried with John Favreau. John Lovett would probably come on. I used to do my shows at his club. Uh, let's see. Anybody else? Um, he just mistook yeah. John Lovett, the former speechwriter for Obama, who's on Pod Save America, for John Lovitz, the liar guy from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, from 30 years ago. Yeah, he yeah, didn't yeah. know, especially because he goes, would you have John Favreau or John Lovett on? That context should be there. John Favreau is also a host of Pod yeah. Save America. How does he not know that it's not John Lovitz? <laughs> and wh- why would you get John Lovitz on your show? Who's looking for John Lovitz yeah. to be on their show at this point? Holy shit. Is he even still alive? I don't even know. And imagine him calling up dudes who do like a serious political show and be like, listen, I'm a drunken asshole and I yell about my chat room. You guys want to come on and take down the dotard with me? Yeah, I'm guessing John Favreau and John Lovett are probably passing on that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It stinks. They have a much larger <laughs> audience. All right. All right. What's going on with this asshat? Stuttering John is claiming that he doesn't have time to make burner accounts on Twitter. He's just got the one account. People think he's Sal D. He's not Sal D. He doesn't have time for that shit. Hi, Sal D. He's a super fan. Now, he calls me his lord and savior. I mean, you know, it's a little over the top, but he's a friend. Now, all these lunatics on social media keep thinking it's me. I don't have time to have burner accounts. Now there's this other guy, some Canadian guy, and he's, you know, tweeting in support of me, and they think it's me. It's like, I don't have time to have burner accounts. I have one account at Stuttering John M. That's funny because Mm. we have a guy coming on next week. There's a little bit of a tease. We have a guy coming on next week who used to work with John pretty closely. And he sent me a little DM back and forth between himself and stuttering John Melendez. Mm. This is the note from John to him. Troll Jason Ellis. This was back on April 12th of last year. Oh, Troll Jason Ellis. And this person responds, sucks that he's being an ass, but you're doing a good job trolling him from your Yankee fan account. John goes, lol, how'd you know it was me? He goes, I forget what originally tipped me off. I think you might have said something about it on your podcast a while back. John goes, whoa, keep it on the down low. And the guy responds, of course, John is a fucking pathological liar. He's always lying. I don't have time for burner accounts. You have nothing but time. You have nothing but time. It's it's why you're an alcoholic. Yeah. Because you have nothing but time. So he obviously has burner accounts. He's admitted this in these DMs. It's been proven. It's been proven now. And uh, I thought that was hilarious. Let's listen to John. You know that he's a recording artist. He was on a major label. I want a shitty song of the week to do Talk My Way Out of It. They did. Oh, did they? Yeah, when I was on their show. Maybe I should listen to that show. (laughs) I know. (laughs) You just declared they haven't done it. I went on their show. We we did Shittiest 90s Song. I did Cumbersome by Seven Mary Three. And Brandon did talk my way out of it. Oh, okay. Same yeah. episode? Same episode. All yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally remember that now. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. All right. So this is uh, John singing a tune for us here. I get knocked down, but I get up again. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> what's he? Wait. How does it go? Oh, uh, my sixes? God. I get knocked down, but I get, a, but I get up again. You ain't ever going to keep me down. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You ain't ever going to keep me down. This is my (laughs) You ain't ever going to keep the rhythm. (laughs) This is a dinosaur. We have a whiskey drink. We have a vodka drink. We have a cider drink. We have a vodka drink. (laughs) We, have, we think the times that we think about the good times. We think the times that we don't think about the bad times. <laughs> oh, Danny boy, Danny boy, 
Danny boy. Of course he I knows all the drinks. Down, but I get up again. You ain't ever going to keep me down. And I get knocked down. But I get up again. You ain't ever going to keep me down. That's right. That's right, Tony Macaroni Chumbawamba. That's a great song. I used to play it when I had the oh, kids in the car all the time. Never quit. He played it when he had his kids in the car all the time. That is a song about binge drinking. Yeah. The the lyrics he didn't understand were pissing the night away. Pissing the night away. <laughs> this guy's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that song is about drinking until you fall down. He's like, I play that for my kids. It's a very inspiring song. You know, they wrote that about me, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. That would make more sense. So I went ahead and put together something that I am calling Stuttering John's most amazing musical performance ever. I get knocked down, but I get a, but I get up again. You ain't ever gonna keep me down. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You ain't ever gonna keep me down. This is my <laughs> This is a We have a whiskey drink. We have a locker drink. We have a cider drink. We have a vodka drink. We have to stick the times that we think about the good times. Stick the times that we don't know about the bad times. Oh, Danny boy. <laughs> Danny boy. Danny boy. I get knocked down. But I get up again. You ain't ever going to keep me down. I get knocked down. But I get up again. You ain't ever going to keep me down. Well, that's just drunk talk. Sweet, beautiful drunk talk. Very poorly done, Jeff. Is that like a recent episode of this? Oh, yeah, it's this week. Oh, my God. I'm going to sing a song from 25 years ago and Andy, as a drunk mess. On he the gets pal- blackout drunk on his show. And then we get to make fun of him because he's blackout drunk on his show. Yeah. That's the beauty of Stuttering it's John. fantastic. The other thing that's great about Stuttering John is that Hell Sparks has to hold his hand through life. John doesn't know how to do anything. There are... Multiple hour-long videos of Hell Sparks teaching John how to use the internet. I'm not even joking about this. It's enraging. John doesn't fucking get it. I started watching one of them, and he was explaining how to put a logo in the corner of your video. And Hell Sparks is like, well, if you have a JPEG, the background of your logo will appear over the video. But if you have a ping, then it'll be transparent. And I'm like, oh my God, if you got to fucking explain what a JPEG and a ping is, just fucking forget about it. <laughs> That's kind of the bare bones of this. And John's like, oh, how, how do I know? How do I convert my JPEG into a pay? Hell Sparks goes, just send it to me. I'll, I'll just do it. <laughs> I swear to God. That's what this fucking video is. It's an hour of that. I, poor Hell Sparks. I don't know, I don't why, know why he's, he's like doing wasting this. wasting his fucking time with this guy. I don't know why he's doing this. But listen to this. This is John thinking that YouTube's against him. Because it's always like, not, it's never his fault. It's not like he doesn't understand how shit works. It's just that everything's against him. And then Hellsparks is like, that's not the case, John. Yeah, I just want to read you the exact quote they told me. So, Stage dog. Stage dog. He says, did anybody notice when dropped from YouTube that you see a message that chat is not allowed on content for kids? So someone has changed my thing. No. No, nobody has changed it. You have to say that. You have to tell YouTube it's not content for kids. That's your part. So, of course, after that, John said, oh, my fault. Thank you for teaching me that. I will be better in the future. No, he did not say any of that. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, don't know, like, I did have it out there. I don't, I don't know what's going on. So, of course, my, my favorite thing that's happening right now with Stuttering John is that people are getting kicked out of the room while he's broadcasting. Right. At big chunks at a time of people, and hundreds some, of people. Someone is doing that to him, right? Someone is hacked into the back end and is just knocking people out. And Southern John knows for a fact that YouTube is doing this. This is a long clip because I was going to clip every single piece of this. I'm like, I'll just play the whole thing and we'll just pause it as we go. Uh, I'm glad everyone enjoyed the show. And I'm, thank you for all the super chats. It does help. The 11th is when they cut off. And you know what? I got to say it again. I'm really freaking pissed at YouTube. They purged the show again. I saw it happen at least three or four times. I don't want you guys to think that I'm not seeing your chats where you say that you're, you've are you been purged. Because what I'm doing is taking a screenshot. And I just sent 11 screenshots to YouTube support while the show was going. And going, what the f- are you guys doing to me? I go, the next thing I'm going to do is legal action. Oh, 
of course. <laughs> Stuttering Suya John is going to take legal action against YouTube because YouTube is purposely kicking people out of John's chat room because they want John to, to fail. Right. Obviously. Nobody's monitoring this. Because you can't show. keep kicking people off of my channel. So believe me, I got your back. Now, if YouTube doesn't want to do anything about it, then I'm going to have to think about Twitch. And, you know, and that might be the next step because I'm not going to let YouTube, <laughs> you know, I, I'm using their pe platform. They take 30% of everything I make and yet they purge my chats. All right. So let's think about this, John. YouTube is getting 30% of everything you make and they're also kicking people off who are giving you money. How does that make any sense? Do you think maybe that's not the case and that you're wrong? <laughs> because logically, a business wouldn't do that. They wouldn't block revenue from happening. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Also, they don't need your 60 cents per super chat or whatever. The fuck. You're not on their radar. <laughs> I am no so fucking sick of it. It's nauseating to me. Look, I'm the little guy, okay? I'm not freaking Adam Carolla. I'm not Joe Rogan, all right? I don't... Isn't it funny? All right, listen to this. I've got a million viewers or listeners, but the... <laughs> Isn't it funny how when it's convenient for him, yeah. he's the little guy, but when he's on support with Spectrum, right. <laughs> he's got a million Twitter followers, make $10,000 a day, I'm a big shot, and then it's like, YouTube's fucking with me. I'm just, oh, I'm just a victim. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do anything wrong. What's I going on? I want it both ways. He, he's fucking both ways, Johnny. <laughs> both ways, or Johnny. Or listeners. But the people I do have are loyal, okay? And they support this show, and they like the truth and facts. The truth and facts! <laughs> this guy's a liar! He is constantly lying about everything, and sometimes he says things that are not true because he doesn't even know any better. So I'll give oh, him the yeah. benefit of the doubt. It's not that he's always lying. Sometimes he's just stupid. Yeah. But facts! Facts! And love, Come peace, on. and harmony. And I'm sick of YouTube. You, tube screwing with my show stop kicking out people out of my chats i'm serious <laughs> because i do I and mean, i'm listen, drunk <laughs> yeah you know i do have a very i do have a large amount of friends that are attorneys oh boy here we go again i have friends who are attorneys you don't want to get my legal team involved do you YouTube has a bigger legal team than you do, John. I thought he was a little guy. Is I'm the little guy! Bigger? I'm the little guy with all the attorneys! Watch out! Who will have no problem taking up a fight with YouTube if they're singling me out. What are they? Anti-Puerto Rican? Anti-stuttering? Oh, he's such a victim. <laughs> YouTube hates Puerto Ricans, and that's why they're kicking people out of streaming, or his uh, his live streaming room. Because they hate Puerto Ricans or they hate stutterers. John, you know this sounds like you're an idiot, right? This is nonsensical. I know. Do they not like my politics? What is it, YouTube? Tell me. Why are you purging me? Oh, yeah. YouTube hates your politics. You're anti-Donald Trump, who they've kicked off their platform. Yeah. <laughs> they hate that. What the hell is it? Do you not like the truth? <laughs> you don't want to mess with me, YouTube. All right, I want to point something out. I'm going to fight YouTube. I'm going to box YouTube. Let me, let's play that part again, because this is very... This is the funniest thing John said on his show in three years. You don't want to mess with me, YouTube. You do want to mess with John. <laughs> I've been messing with John for three plus years. He does nothing. Yeah. He threatens legal suits. He threatens people are going to come break your yeah. legs. His, he does nothing. Yeah, his face gets beat red. That's yes. what happens. You can fuck with John all you want, YouTube. And I put it out there for everybody. Fuck with him all you want. He will do nothing. He's a powerless alcoholic. <laughs> See, John Doe, I just got kicked off. So there we go. There's another <laughs> screenshot. Uh, yeah, listen. Keep the super chats coming. It supports the show. I'm getting a new camera as per Hal. And uh, also, join me at Patreon, patreon.com. Slash stuttering John. And feel free to complain to YouTube. You guys can too. Tweet, you know, just tweet them out, tag them, 
He's telling people to complain to YouTube on his behalf. Yeah, of course he is. I'm going to get the Melenders after YouTube. That's going to shut him down. He has to get somebody to do everything for him. Yes. Of course he's doing that. Of course. Hell's box, will you sue YouTube for me? <laughs> you know, Andy sue? has a knack for calling people and getting through on messages and all that. Why don't you just call him and say, hi, this is YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is Mr. YouTube. <laughs> I'm calling on behalf of YouTube. We hate Puerto Ricans. Stop telling your blunders to tweet at us. We can't take it. Yeah. We can't take it anymore. Say to them, why are you purging this show? You know, I work hard on this show. I know that a lot- No, of you don't! <laughs> John, come on! You do not work hard on the show. You bring on libtards who will say yes to anything because they just want to spout about their libtarded views and try to sell their books or whatever they're trying to do. And you don't even talk. They talk the entire time. Yeah. Googling how to troubleshoot technical difficulties would be evidence that you work hard on the show. Right. You never do that. He doesn't that. even do that. Yeah. You're you... not working hard on the show. You're begging for money and you're getting by barely in life by getting Heather W to pay your mortgage. Yeah. And Hell Sparks tell. works harder on your show than you do. <laughs> We're caught in this show. I know that a lot of you could tell because I book guests, try and get different people. I have a, I have a congressman coming on next week. Oh, that that I'm looking to forward to. He's, he's, he, he, he's a congressman that are, um, uh, that is, uh, <laughs> A real proponent. I haven't done of... the hard work of researching my own guest yet. I know. You can have, all tell. I have a congressman who's a, who's a congressperson. Climate change legislation. Uh, let's see. Good as gold. I can't ask a question anymore on a super chat. Well, try it out, good as gold. You know, let me see. Even if it's just... I, I got an idea. Everybody give me money. Let's see if this is working or not. Yeah. Can everybody just start giving me money? It's a dollar. I just want to see... What would happen if you super chat a dollar and if it comes through? If anybody Maybe can I try can it, I just want to see. Pack. Now let's see if you guys say $20. <laughs> my, my Patreon is fucked up. Can everybody please go on my Patreon and just sign up for a year? I just want to see if it's I working or not. I want to see if it's working, yeah. Speaking of which, did I mention that our um, review girl, Casey, got her t-shirt wet? <laughs> and that is on Patreon. <laughs> if they're even screwing with my super chats. Cause that's really gonna piss me off. Cause that's revenue, and that's how I, and that's what pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Super chance pays your bills. You're failing in life, John. You're failing. And that's how I keep this show going. Oh god. And how's uh, I got a, I got a long list of stuff I gotta buy. Uh, switchboard. I gotta get a. I don't know, the, you know, an adapter dig. Don't need oh. any of this shit. Why does he always have stuff that he needs to buy that he can't already afford? And I'm sorry, I'm not poor shaming anyone. He made a half a million dollars a year for 10 oh, yeah. years working for Jay Leno. And he can't afford an adapter without your super chat? I know I sound like a broken record, but what the fuck is wrong with Why this guy? Why does he have to list what he needs on his show? <laughs> <laughs> I, I need a I need a brain. I, I need a heart. Yeah, the very a pony. I, the very idea of my income being dependent on YouTube super chats it gives me anxiety to think about just everybody jumping ship and realizing it sucks. Yes. And all of a sudden you have and you're nothing done. coming in. It would almost bring you to drink eighteen course lights <laughs> a day. That type of anxiety. A uh, switchboard. I gotta get a. I don't know. The, you know an adapter dig. A whole oh. bunch of stuff. Dignity. I <laughs> see. <laughs> Sense of humor. <laughs> oh, stuttering John. God damn, he's the fucking gift that keeps on giving. No. So next week, we're going to have somebody on who used to be the mod for stuttering John, who's got an inside scoop on things. Fascinating. I am very excited about that. It never gets old. It never gets old because this guy is such a pathological liar, so untalented, and so unaware of both of those things. <laughs> It's shocking. It's great. All right. It's teased done. this on, on last week's show. And then Stuttering John got word that one of his former mods was going to come on our show. And so John decided to try to get out in front of this. And he made a video talking about uh, this mod. But then something happens. He starts trashing me on social media out of nowhere. <laughs> so I call him. And... He didn't know it, but Sean Hockey Canada 25 was 
on the phone call because I always like to have a witness. I did the same with that <laughs> crazy chick, Heather. I always like to have a witness. So anything that they say, you know, I have a witness to the whole conversation. So John's suspicious of this guy. He thinks maybe he's turning on him. And so he wants to threaten him in case he says anything bad. The guy already proved to be a traitor and a backstabber and a loser. I know where he lives, you know. Oh, Uh oh, sounds menacing. Oh, a threat. A little threat. Yeah. So, Ryan, are you there, buddy? Hey, hey, Carl and Will. Big fan. Big fan. Hey, hey, Ryan. Nice to meet you, man. Thank you. Ryan, thanks for joining us today. So, Ryan Sherman's on the show. He was a moderator on YouTube for Stuttering John for a few months. I want to get into that, but first, let's warn everybody that we don't want to go doing anything slanderous or libel because <laughs> as we know, I promise not to do anything libelous. Yeah, right. You don't want to you don't want to do anything libel on a podcast because as you know, Stuttering John has his attorney listening. You're an asshole. And you're a dumb fuck. But listen, Ryan. Wow. Don't come to any of my shows. I'm sure you're going to go on some idiot show yep. and make up lies. But don't worry. My lawyer will be listening. I won't be. I don't even go on Reddit. I won't be listening. But my lawyer will. Oh, yeah. The one that you just. Yeah. Don't worry. You better not say anything that's libel, slanderous, or lies about me. <laughs> just be careful. You pussy. All right. So. John obviously is nervous about this appearance because he says he's now there's no way in hell he has an attorney listening to WATP. He wouldn't pay for that. I hope the attorney heard everything that happened before this. That would be hilarious. Yeah, right. Let's I, I hope I want to make this segment as long as possible just to cost John all of his super chat money for the week. Perfect. For the month. <laughs> Honestly, what could you possibly say on a podcast that would turn into a lawsuit? What do you think he's going to come out here and be like, you know, I saw John diddling kids, but, you know, I'm just saying. That's a joke. Guys. That, was a, obviously yeah, a joke. that was the strangest thing. And it's like that, how Kumia says that scorched earth policy of just like immediately saying he's like going to come to my house and beat me up. And I haven't even said anything about him yet. You know? Right. I know. What's funny is he goes, he's, he called you crying Ryan because he learned from Trump how to Very do Very Trumpian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But why would it be... Lion Ryan. Crying Lion's gonna go out there and lie about me. He's like, John, you were so close to the right thing. You just you missed it by just a hair. Jesus. All right. So Ryan, I want to get your story. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun because you have defected from stuttering John. You've decided that he is no longer a guy that you want to devote any time to. I'll give you Indeed. sent me over all the background information. I read through it last night, so I'll just give a, a quick recap and then we can kind of hit the, the major points. Basically, Perfect. you're a Howard Stern super fan. You've gone out to see all the guys, Artie, when he comes by. You're out, in, uh, I think, on the West Coast. When Artie's there, you're out to see him. Stuttering John, mm -hmm. Jackie the Joke Man, whoever. So you went to see uh, Stuttering John, and you struck up a friendship with him. And eventually, he asked you to be a moderator on YouTube, and you agreed to do that, right? He just made me a moderator without asking, and oh. I didn't have any issue because I was going to be watching the shows. And what does it what does it entail to be a moderator for Stuttering John on YouTube? What's your job? So for a while, he was getting you know accounts that would come in and just spam the N word or spam something about his kid, and we would just block that. I didn't know if I was supposed to block someone if they you know just called them an idiot or like what the line was. I never got any direction from him, you know, in that regard. Um, so it was just basically keeping out, you know, people that were, you know, really vicious, not, and spamming. Now, did you have to learn who the characters were of WATP? Because a lot of the trolls for <laughs> Stuttering John have names like Vic's Japanese stepfather and things like that. They would like clue you in if you were in the know. So as I became more of a fan, I did start putting, you know, realizing like I, first I didn't know who Patrick Michael was right. until, you know, listening and then, you know, interacting with someone named Patrick Michael in the chat, you know, so yes, there were occasions like that. So things were going fine with Ryan and John. And then the beginning of the end was you disputed something on Twitter and instead of responding to you on Twitter, he immediately DM'd you and scolded you for not having his back. Someone, you know, messaged him and said, hey, someone made a reference about you on the Stern show today, and they cut it out of the rebroadcast. So I, you know, fired up my Sirius app, listened to the rebroadcast, heard the mention, 
And I, on Twitter, not through a DM, I disputed him. I'm like, hey, no, it's on the rebroadcast. You know, you're getting wrong information. And he DMs me and, and I'm like, he's like, why are you disputing me? And I'm like, because it's a lie. Like, it, it didn't happen. <laughs> it's not true. So uh, he, he goes, I'll send you the link of the video clip or something. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not on the rebroadcast. And what he was referring to is it was a 30 minute segment. Someone brought up Stuttering John, you know, just said his name. And then they took that and cut it down into six minutes to put it on the web as like, you know, a little thing that happened on the show. And the, the mention of John wasn't in that. So, you know, they didn't cut it from the show. They just cut it from like a clip highlight clip, you know, and so he was kind of <laughs> upset about, he's like, well, why didn't you just DM me that? And I'm like, well, who cares? You know, you're, you're wrong about something, you know, like just say, oh, I was wrong, you know, and they should have included it in the highlight, you know, clip or whatever, not, you know, just doubling down. So that's how wow. sensitive this guy is that he can't even have somebody just say, by the way, you're wrong about this on Twitter without like immediately snapping and freaking out at you. So, wow. He went on, and this was another thing that he did. He thought that his YouTube got hacked and that there was a interview with Tom Arnold that was taken down off his YouTube. And so he started freaking out. He's like, oh, my YouTube got hacked and someone took down the video. If somebody has it, can they send it to me? And Ryan, you're claiming that Royce, his former co-host, was the one that took this video down? I don't know the full background story, but I just know what I sent you that John told me that Royce took it down. He was, Royce was trying to monetize John. You know, it had gone very long without an income being generated by the show. So he was trying to put the show behind a paywall on his own site. And John just kept putting it on YouTube and letting it, you know, getting exposure, worried more about the exposure than maybe putting it behind a paywall. And from what I can tell, Royce just got angry that like, hey, let's try monetizing this. Royce had paid for the website and had set all this stuff up. And then I guess it came to a head when they couldn't agree on how to monetize or what to do with the show and had a falling out. So, so John and Royce are not speaking anymore? They had a complete falling out? I don't know enough about that to say whether they are or not. Okay. Because you never hear about Royce anymore. The guy was the co-host of his show for so long. And then he's yeah, just not is, even brought up. Strange. It's always always a good sign when the last co-host like is nowhere to be seen or heard from or anything. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean this has happened time and time again with Stuttering John. He had Noel Castler who won't talk to him anymore. Sammy yeah, Pascali. He had that Vince guy who was his attorney who was going to sue me, who was really just yeah, trolling yeah. him the whole time. Ryan, you even tried to tip him off to that. Can Can I ask yeah, Ryan a, a question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Will. It, what was the thing? Was was it just initially like to work with John? I imagine like with everybody, it's like, hey, I want to work with this guy who I grew up listening to on the Stern Show, right? Like, and who I exactly. And, and I'm on the West Coast, so I don't usually get to interact with anybody from the Stern Show. So you know, being able to tweet him and having him send me, he would send me DMs like, hey, can you Photoshop this for me? And I'm like, dude, I used to listen to you, you know, constantly every day, and now he's asking me to like help him out on Twitter. It was really. You know, so, it, was, it was interesting. Yeah, I it was never totally... a friendship. It, it wasn't like we had a good back and forth. Everything was, hey, can you do this for me? Can you do this? Can you troll this person? Can you, you know, do this? Not dispute me on Twitter. That kind. Of... Did you? Um, first of all, I under I understand that like a lot. Like when you meet when you meet these dudes from that you were grew up being a fan of, it's like it's you know some of them live up to like what you want them to be and other times you're like oh my god like i can't get away from exactly. this dude fast enough like, exactly. john takes full advantage of people who who used to enjoy him and look up to him he did the same thing with heather w and if your attorney is listening john then please dispute this i'd, I'd love to hear your side of this because i know exactly yeah. what you did with heather w and i know exactly what you did with our buddy ryan here yeah it's a common thing yeah, it's it's a thing that like that's why uh, Kumia was like he he's like everything he's like as funny as you want him to be he's like as a nice guy as you want him to be, and it's like a lot of people not everyone lives up to that sort of thing you know but I was wondering did you ever meet him or was it all through like Zoom and uh on or in, in Twitter and stuff? I saw him at a comedy show before we started like uh, interaction and just had him sign a copy of uh, Howard Stern's book and then I saw him at the uh, comedy show he did where uh you know i thought he'd be like oh good to see you or you know nice to good talking to you or thanks for coming and he goes did you bring any weed uh that's the first thing he said to me so very standard dickhead uh watch yeah. that i move he said that at that show i brought stuttering john merchandise to be signed 
which I think is hilarious in and of itself saying like somebody showed up with like, what does that even mean? Yeah. But it yeah, was John that brought stack of eight by tens. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. John brought his LPs that he sold and signed for $20 each. And it was funny because like even Dunkelman was like, what you're signing, you're, you know, selling LPs. Like, you know, like it was such a oh. random thing. It's yeah. uh, that's, that's what I was curious about. Cause it's really funny when you, when you meet someone who is like your hero and then there's like this time, there's like a first time you put their number in your phone and then they call you and you're like, oh my God, like, I can't believe, you know, like this person's calling me. And then there's like another moment, like a month later where you're like, if this fucking person calls me one more time, I'm going to fucking kill myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's so funny. That it's like, you went from like, you're like, if stuttering John calls me one more time, I'm <laughs> going to jump out of a fucking window and you can't well, even believe that. The fact that he's doing rants on me on his show, like who, like M Mark P, these people in his chat don't care, you know, who I am, you know, they don't care to hear about crying Ryan and what he says on Reddit, you know, it's just, it's super weird, you know, out of all the people, I think John was the easiest to just, you know, like ha have it turn out this way, you know, like another person, they would just be like, who the fuck cares? You know, I'm moving on, you know, he was my mod and, and now who cares? But with That's John, it's turned into this like personal vendetta. Well, and I got to give Ryan credit because after that video where he's threatening Ryan with legal action and he says, you know, I, I want to take care of this stuff the New York way, but I got too much going on, you know, saying he was going to kick his ass and whatever else. <laughs> he even says, the New York. He, the he New goes, York I'll way. give you my address. You come to my house, Ryan. We'll talk about this. So Ryan called the guy. He's like, all right, oh. let's, let's talk. So tell that story. Yeah, so I, I just thank you to the guy who posted it in the subreddit because I don't watch his show anymore. I, I, you know, can't stand it. And I was like just blown away by, you know, him saying that he had my address and everything. And, and you know, we can settle it like gentlemen. So I had his number and I, I, you know, I've never doxed him or anything like that. I kept his number. He called the one time that we spoke before and I called him up and got his voicemail immediately, left a message saying that you have my number and you have my address. So, you know, you can find me. And uh, he called me back. It was very strange. He first had me like verify who I was and which <laughs> you would think the number would have done that. I think maybe he was buying time for Sean to get on the phone call because he has another guy record it, you know, right. so uh, well, but who knows? I don't I can't, you know, say that for sure. And uh, I just kind of, you know, went back and forth with him just because like, again, saying like who what, I'm like, you need to move on, you need to get a life, you need to not look at Reddit, you need to not look at the discord, because he accused me of stuff that was only in the discord, you know, like, it, who's looking at that? Why are they telling you this? This is high school drama, you know, like, do your show, move on, you know, and uh, it was just really surreal. And he just kept trying to argue with me. And finally, I'm like, and he started whining about something. I'm like, uh, perpetually the victim. And he goes, what? Oh fuck you! And hung up. You know? Wow. So, yeah, Good for you, super, Ryan. Super... Good for I mean, you. I know Ryan's a stand-up guy. He's like, dude, I did all this work for you. And meanwhile, John's not the kind of guy who's going to be like, dude, you've helped me out so much. I'm going to throw you a special thing, or you know, here's some tickets yeah. to the show. Like Ryan had to pay for everything, even though he was yeah. also helping him out. He had to pay for his merchandise. He had to pay for tickets to go see him do stand-up. It's like, what exactly. the fuck? It has been said online that I like paid to be his mod. I did not pay to be his mod. <laughs> I did, however, buy merchandise while I was his mod that you would think that he might have been like willing to give me for free. It's... You might not have paid with money, Ryan, but it sounds like you fucking paid, bro. You yeah. paid with... <laughs> Indeed. So you paid with your soul, motherfucker. <laughs> so Ryan shared with me a DM that John sent him that said, I'm very surprised at the stuff I saw on Reddit. Now, if anyone's a liar, it's Stuttering John who claims all the time, I never go to Reddit, I don't read Reddit. He's in our Discord, he's in Reddit, and whether it's Hockey Puck who's pulling screen grabs or whatever, he's still reading Reddit sure. either way. And, so what yeah. were you writing on Reddit that got John all upset, Ryan? Uh, that first time, I think I had meant, someone asked about what happened to Royce and I just put what I thought was the, basically from what I knew what had, what had happened. And then uh, they started fudge the cult in the, you know, he's in the Discord right now, started asking me like more questions, just curious, you know, and I started answering them, telling my story, you know, not putting a spin on it, not lying, not, you know, being, you know, slanderous or <laughs> libelous, but uh, just, you know, basically saying what happened. And that was the thing that he, you know, set him off. Like, it's so I, weird I, that his first instinct is people are going to lie about me. What motivation yeah. would anyone have to go around lying about Suttering John? He's such a loser sack of shit 
You can just tell the truth and it's <laughs> endlessly entertaining. Why would you posit to make up fucking stories about this loser? It doesn't make any sense to me. What's strange is on his podcast, he said stuff that's way worse than I could ever say. Like he said right. he hired a plumber and the plumber wouldn't come into the house until John cleaned the litter box. <laughs> and then when the plumber got to the kitchen, he told him to hire a different plumber because the guy needed to get down on the floor and the kitchen was so disgusting. That's like so John wow. said that with no like thought, hey, maybe I shouldn't tell that story. <laughs> no, that's a good that's a good point. When Heather was on here, she's like, oh, yeah, every time I talk to John, he'd be really drunk like every day. I was like, well, I don't, do you know that for a fact? He's like, it's like, oh yeah, no, he, he talks about how he drinks 18 beers every single day. It's like, oh, okay. Well, he says yeah. it on the show. Then I guess, I guess we can say that. That's fine. Oh, sure. The only footage I've seen from him in the past couple of years, he's been drinking beers and talking about how many beers he drinks. Like, he's <laughs> he's so proud of himself. So then Ryan, yeah. you actually had me ban someone in the discord who was doxing you. And I assume that was either John or maybe hockey put hockey puck up to it. Well, what was funny is on the phone call, I pointed out that I've had my address texted to me anonymously. I had a, f a phone call f that was spoofed of my local police department with a recorded message that told me to look out my window. And Jesus. I got a wake up call at 3 a.m. from a stupid website. And I got uh, that, you know, person trying to dox me in the discord. And when I brought that up to John, he's like, that's not me. I'm like, what? So it's a coincidence? <laughs> yeah, Someone right. just decided to dox me? Like... Oh, well, okay, yeah. so this brings up something that I think we can connect some dots on. So we know for a fact that John tells his moderators to go ahead and fuck with people. Mm -hmm. he, has sent, yes. he has sent you notes saying to troll how many different, like, what different people has he told you to troll? Chrissy Mayer, Mitch Vitell, uh the Goldberg guy, the director that he was arguing with. Jason um, Ellis. Yeah, Jason Ellis, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, so John tells wow. people to troll people, but at the same time, John is using sock accounts to troll them himself. This is something that John denies on his show, and he's a fucking liar. I saw the back and forth between him and Ryan, where he told Ryan to troll someone. Ryan writes back and says, I think Yankee fan is doing a good enough job. You know, wink, wink, I know that's you. And John's like, oh, how'd you know that was me? Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Yankee fan is what he came up with. No, no, no. <laughs> Dude, get, get this. Get this, Will. He's got these two sock accounts. One's Yankee fan. The other one's Maple Leaf fan. And both of these oh, wow. accounts, I know, really creative. Both of these accounts, all they do is talk about how amazing Suttery John is. And all they do is rip on people who don't like him. No, oh, wow. I mean, of course. That's like. <laughs> what, what are the chances? Yeah. Uh... Uh, one time I had a guy one time log into like every member of his family's Facebook account to send me an angry letter. Like it was like all the same letter from like, and everyone had the same last name. He was like his wife, his daughter. Oh my he God. Just, yeah. The, the I, Maple Leaf fan tweets. It's so obviously John, like the way it's all written and everything. It's just like a drunk John who's enraged on his couch sitting in filth. Just recently, think, he did a thing where he was like, oh, John, you know, I'm really, that sucks about all those trolls you have. And then John logged in and said, hey, man, don't worry about it. And then the John uh, logged in with the other account and was like, oh, no, you don't deserve that. And John's like, hey, thanks for being a fan. <laughs> I was like, just picturing that, just picturing that <laughs> happening. Like, it, it yeah, it's That's terrible. the definition of a loser. That's the it's definition the Melendez. of it. No, it's not, guys. It's the Melendez system, and you got to fucking respect. All of his personalities are named <laughs> John. <laughs> the melendez system yeah maple leaf fan is a such a jerk but really supports his friend john <laughs> i think it's funny how the reason why he's so paranoid and the reason why he thinks everyone is such a piece of shit is the same way like someone who cheats on their husband always thinks their husband is cheating on yes, them it's because exactly projection he's, exactly it's like they must be doing what i'm doing so exactly. if they're doing what i'm doing I'm fucked because I'm a, you know what I'm saying? It's yes. like, it's a cycle. Yeah. And it's not difficult to figure this shit out. Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm not saying that you're not an astute person, but it takes, no, it I takes mean, listening to Suttering John for I mean, just a couple episodes. I want, you're like, <laughs> I want credit for that psychological <laughs> observation <laughs> of a Freudian level that I just fucking discovered right there. guys. Sometimes I think people are mean because they hate themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Go figure. Uh, Ryan, you said you, had a fun, you said you had a fun story that you wanted to tell. I don't know anything about yet. Oh, yeah. So um, back when John and Royce were doing their show, um, they started talking about how they were trying to get Jackie, Joke Man, to come on and do his own show that they could put behind their paywall and, you know, make some more money with Jackie. And 
when they would talk about him, Royce and John would just like trash him. They would just be like, oh, Jackie's, you know, Jackie, he's, you know, can't see the good stuff. He's holding himself back. He's this, he's that. They would tell like stories that you shouldn't be, you know, saying about someone you're trying to court for a, you know, show. And so I emailed Jackie and I put timestamps and links and transcripts saying, you know, hey, just so you know, this guy who's trying to get you to do a show is bashing you, you know, publicly on this podcast. So Jackie thanked me and then Royce didn't hear anything from him and nothing came of it. And then a few months later, John announces that he's doing a show with Jackie, uh, doing a tour with Jackie and Mitch Vitell. And it was funny because he announced that without, they had no dates booked. Like they had just decided they were going to do a tour and he already started announcing it. Yeah. So Jackie was like, yeah, Jackie was like, Hey, you know, it's a little premature. What are you doing? You know, we haven't even booked anything. Let's, you know, why are you doing this talking about it? And again, John and Royce started bashing Jackie. Oh, Jackie doesn't know what's better pre-promotion. It's, you know, it's the right thing to do. Jackie's an idiot. Jackie this. So again, I emailed Jackie and saying, hey, you know, I'd love to see a show with you and John and Mitch Patel, but just so you know, this guy Royce and Jack and, and John are just trashing you publicly, constantly, you know, knowing or not expecting that Jackie would ever hear about it. And then so Jackie said something about it and John got super upset and was like, you know, well, those are just trolls sending, you know, Jackie the wrong information when in fact I just sent him transcripts of it and everything. And uh, then Mitch heard what John had said and was like, you know, you're be you're being really mean and hurtful to Jackie for no reason. I don't want to have anything to do with you either. So that ended that. John didn't know I had, you know, contacted Jackie. But then it's funny, his his Maple Leaf fan account <laughs> tweeted at Mitch Fattel <laughs> calling him a loser and saying, oh, you said mean and hateful things about stuttering John, but you're worried about him saying mean and hateful things about Jackie Martling? Like, no one else except John would tweet that. Like, you know, <laughs> Who else would even know that? Inside thing. No one would know. <laughs> you know like, so when I saw that, I just cracked up because I was like, yeah, you know. You yeah, should post that in the Discord because I know you have that uh, that tweet. That's yes. fucking funny. That's <laughs> funny. What an idiot. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know what's funny about that is that John, the thing about John that I've learned is that he never learns his lesson. He does something that fails, and he does it over and over and over again. <laughs> That that pre-promotion thing, he was going to do a comedy tour with Ron Jeremy and Brian Dunkelman, and they right. posted it out. They're like, this comedy tour. And then instead of having dates, it said, email us to book it. Like, well, that's, right. how this works. that's how this works at all, you idiots. <laughs> He's like, I got so much heat. Someone just wants to hire me. We just got to wait till uh, we just got to put the word out. <laughs> So yeah. I assume, Ryan, because you're on the show and everyone knows about it, that Nikki B and Hockey Puck and Mark P, they're all listening to this right now. They're still currently mods for Stuttering John. And do you have any advice for these people? I I really don't know what their end game is. You know, like for a while I was like, oh, you know, John, he's going to like introduce me to other celebs. Maybe I'll go to Jay Leno's garage with him like he took other random people. You know, and by the end, I realized it's drunken phone calls with John, you know, like that's, that's, that's the end <laughs> that's game. A, and that's and I don't a know, fucking I a quote right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a family, you know, I don't have time to, to be John's, you know, shoulder to cry on or whatever oh Sean is God. doing for him. That's a show so, title. Yeah, I, I wish them luck, and I do want to say, I, I'm done. I'm not going to be worried about John anymore. I'm moving on. So if John wants to send me a cease and desist or some other ridiculous waste of money, no need. So Fucking yeah, right. Look at Ryan. Ryan, man, show business, man, right? It's not for chickens, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. It's hard in here, man. You yep. got it. Meet your heroes. Look what happens. Got to know when to get out. You and Hockey Puck <laughs> didn't get along all that well. What's his deal? He seems like a normal dude. I don't know where he, how he first interacted with John. I don't remember him back in the, you know, chat rooms back when we became mods. We became mods at the same time. He, you know, made both of us. And I let him, you know, he was pretty quick. He, you know, he blocked people a lot faster than me. So, like, that was fine. But then he was kind of an idiot on Twitter. So I just blocked him. And then John was upset that I blocked him. Like by making us both mods, he made us friends. You know, like, it was a really weird disconnect there. So, I, you know, I I assume the guy. I, I have no idea. He, I guess he has free time. Like, I did think about it. If I was younger and had less responsibilities, I would maybe still put up with you know John's crap. You know, with this idea that it, maybe it'll turn into something. But 
I'm a lot older and wiser now, and I know that it's going nowhere. <laughs> so, well, yeah, okay. one of the things that you told me was John doesn't know how to use YouTube. I mean, we all know that he's very confused by the internet and technology. So at one point he was trying to do something on YouTube. He couldn't figure out. He wanted to give you his login credentials to YouTube so that you would do it for him. And you're like, that's not a good idea, John. I'm going to get your Gmail. I'm going to get everything that's yeah, exactly. connected to Google if yeah. you do that. Please don't do that. And that was that was a warning sign to me because I'm like, he's going to give this out to someone who's going to screw him over. You yes. know, like He's not a good judge of character sometimes. So I'm listening to the episode last week, and he had Scott DePace, Doug Goodstein, Mike Gange, and Steve Grillo on. It was this big Howard Stern reunion show that he was doing. And of course... Because he thinks that YouTube is screwing him over and stealing his audience away from him, he's all concerned about the videos being set for children or not. You know, that's a big thing on YouTube now. And so immediately he puts his mods to work. And this is, I clipped this from two different places in the beginning of the show. As soon as he sees one of his mods there, he puts him to work. Nikki B, Nikki, if you can, please check and make sure that it's not for children. I already checked. But if you want to check, uh, uh, please do. Uh, just, I just want to, Sean Hot Kid Twenty Five. Please make sure in my settings that it's not for kids, because you know they. I, I get purged by YouTube because somebody, I don't know, something happens and it changes. These are unpaid interns, for lack of a better term to use, and it's just constantly telling them to do shit for them. It's not their job. Yeah. It's not what yeah, mods it's crazy do. Crazy that they both have access to his account to do that. Yes. And that he still thinks that that's happening. Like his his explanation for that is so funny. Like he's forgetting to set it to kid mode. So midway through the show, it's kicking random people out, but not everyone. You know, like he's so confused with what's going on on YouTube. It's hilarious. Oh my god, he's so he's so fucking stupid. He's so bad at running a show too. So he has these guys on to talk about the good old days on Howard Stern, and of course he makes everything about him. Every single thing they talk about, including Scott DePace meeting his wife and Doug Goodstein meeting his wife. He takes credit for both of these things. And so I called information and got the number. Talk to her. Yeah, but okay, but you met her thanks to me. Sure, <laughs> I'll give you that much. Doug Goodstein has a similar story. His first date with his wife uh, was on a date with me. <laughs> Who interviews people like that? Why don't you tell the story about how I set yeah. you up with your girlfriend, huh? I mean, I can hear some Bud Lights, like, trying to fight their way out of his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. you, can hear, you can hear him swallowing down like, uh, uh, oh, fuck it, I won't vomit for the 10th time today. It's not going to happen. Uh, uh. So John has to make it seem like everything that happened on the Stern Show is because of him, and he talks about how he discovered a lot of the whack packers. Yeah, him and Beetlejuice, probably. Beetlejuice, I I sort of discovered in that, uh, you know, downstairs, he was outside doing the, the tossing, I said, and then I told Gary about him. <laughs> well, I discovered quite a few of those guys. So good, Doug Goodstein's telling the story about how we discovered Beetlejuice, and John, instead of saying, like, oh, really, what was going on? He goes, well, I, I discovered Wack Packers, too. And then he tells and the story funny, about how he discovered wait, Jeff the really? Drug. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead and play that clip. It, it ties in. It's, yes, uh, this is so funny because it's like, well, how did you discover these whack packers, John? And here's the answer. Well, I'll tell you what I can, I can thoroughly take credit for, and that's Jeff the Drunk. Because he would call in, and for nine months, every show, Scott, I would walk in and go, Howard, you should really pick up I-9, Jeff the Drunk. The guy is like, you know, and Howard would never pick him up. And I would I try every day. Took nine months before he finally picked it up. <laughs> he was the phone screener. He's yeah. acting like he's discovering these people. The guy was calling into the show. <laughs> <laughs> also, like telling someone to do something for nine months and then them doing it, that doesn't mean like you got them to do it. It just means like they randomly picked up a call after nine months. <laughs> that, that's a good point. The fact that it took nine months means that you had no authority there. No one trusted your judgment. I knew that this alcoholic guy, I somehow found some humor in a down and out alcoholic. I don't know what it was. <laughs> this show was so long. It was like two and a half hours long. And John is talking about his time in the Tonight Show. He's telling them about how he was on the Tonight Show and shit. Like stuff that you're like, okay, whatever, John, you're the best. Moving on. They talked about a time <laughs> when Gary played a prank on him and said he was fired. 
And John mm. got really upset about this. And now he's trying to pretend that he was in on it all along and he gets called out, which is funny. The whole time I knew it was, good, was probably a bit, but I had to fake that I was really upset. I swear, Scott. Oh, hey, dude. Oh, on my oh, life. You were ready to start crying. What are yes, you that's how good of an actor I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So John's saying, yeah, no, I was acting. That's how good I am. They all start laughing at him. So then Ganji says, are you still getting residuals from Dude, Where's My Car? Which stuttering John was in. And John makes a quick joke. And then listen to Grillo. He calls him out here. And I got to give Grillo some credit on this one. Wait, do you still get paid for that? How much is your residual for that? I think I'm down to 32 cents. <laughs> which is still more than I got on the Stern show. <laughs> what about one too many? Yeah, hey. Hey, uh, Scott, do you remember when... He had to change the subject as quick as possible when one too many was brought up, which was a movie that John wrote and starred in that was a disaster. Oh. One of my favorite Artie quotes is that John is overacting on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> One Too Many is so bad. It's got Jeff Ross as like his buddy and his only mission yeah. is to like have a threesome. It's the stupidest premise. He thinks he's Adam Sandler. He's playing guitar and uh, singing in it. It's so embarrassing. Oh, uh, I think I've seen it. I think I like saw it way back in the day. Didn't it come out years ago? Like, like 2008. Like 10 years ago? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, a couple other things I wanted to play from this show that I thought were fun. The the fact that these guys call out John for being the cheapest asshole ever, I believe this completely. John, every time, 99 out of 100 times you see him in a bar, bu 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 buy me a beer. Never buy this one back. Like, hey, you know, if I keep tabs on how much money John owes me, hey, Doug, let me 10 bucks. Tell me, I, John probably owes me thousands at this point. Uh -huh. You just know that's what's happening. <laughs> By the way, John does not even try to deny this. Because he knows it is true. He's a mooch. Because he's planning on asking for more at the end of the fucking call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, that was a really good show. You want to buy me a 12-pack? <laughs> yeah, I, I, for real, though, uh, I, can use, I can use 100. <laughs> I love that Scott DeFace is on this show because him and, and John do not get along all that well. And so DePace calls him out. What John does is he has about 15 jokes that he's written throughout his entire life. And he uses them over and over and over again. If you listen to a show, if you see a stand-up, anything he does, he shoves in the same jokes. And Scott DePace calls him on this. He's talking about, Scott DePace is talking about his dog that just passed away. And I guess he had a dog before that. But wait, was, was Cookie before or after the one that you named after David Duke? Oh, my God. <laughs> that, John, that joke never worked 25 years ago. When he used it, but, and he still uses it to this day. So that was right after Duke. I love that someone finally called out John. Yeah, he always like, cracks himself up the most when he tells the same joke over and over. Yeah, he reminds me of a few guys I know. I mean, he sounds like a lot of old comedians, you know what I mean, who are just they they kind of lost their fastball, but they still want to act like they they still want to act like dickheads and like boss people around and kind of sort of pretend to be like a big shot. You know, he's like he's like almost like a like a like a kid who's had too much sugar pretending to be what he thinks a big shot is. Well, that's the funny thing about Stuttering John is that he was never a big shot. And so yeah. when he was on the Howard Stern show, he was the stunt boy. He was the intern. He was the stunt boy. That's what they paid him for is to make an ass of himself. And they'd all laugh about it. So John goes to Scott DePace and he goes, hey, remember that time when you told me I was hilarious? On the, he loves to do this type of thing. Remember that time I was hilarious on the, on the Stern show? So John brings this up and... Uh, I, I got to play these two clips for you because it's so funny. You once told me, and I'll never forget it, after the that hour show, which is one of my favorite hours, and that was the hour where I talked about Artie's diet, Artie's, what he ordered at Steak and Shake in, in Columbus, Ohio, and then it changed to my orange juice maggot story. And I'll never forget when I walked out, the, out of the stage, Scott, you said to me, John, that was one of my top ten favorite moments on the it, show. It really was. Who interviews someone like that? Like, could you imagine if Leno had a guest on? He's like, "Oh, you saw me do stand up. What was the favorite joke that I did? Could you re recall my, my funniest joke?" Uh, but the best part about like this, this, the payoff of this is the reason why it was funny is not because John is a funny person. It was a story where you were drinking some orange juice out of the refrigerator, and it turns out there were uh, maggots. 
bottom of it. <laughs> and you couldn't get to the word maggots. You kept going. There was some more juice in the amber. <laughs> and then I went <laughs> kept doing that face and we were like what you did what and then you eventually got it out and it was just it was hilarious Artie was going crazy I was literally crying while I'm trying to direct the show <laughs> so Artie was goofing on John and yeah. that's why it was a funny bit <laughs> yeah it's not like it's like this moment of great radio where your stutter was really really bad that day <laughs> You were amazing that day. You were such an idiot. It was great. We yeah. were laughing our asses off. <laughs> All right. I should promote John's stand-up gigs in Florida. He's got those coming up the end of February. Hopefully he can crash with Richie Wilson, unless, of course, it's a school night for Richie's kids. That's right, John. I know more shit about you than you realize, you fucking pathetic <laughs> loser. I hope your lawyer explains this part of the show to you. You should have taken your roast in stride, you fucking moron. I bet he represents himself and he's just listening to it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he knows how to listen to podcasts. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Ryan, thanks so much for coming on, buddy. We really appreciate oh, my it. My pleasure. And thanks for supporting uh, WATP. Ryan, it was nice to meet you, man. Yeah, you too, Will. Thanks. If I ever get invited to Jay Leno's garage, you're my fucking plus one. Oh, That's a guarantee. Oh, Thank you. Maybe we should start sucking up to John. He's got that Leno in. I mean, I'm sure Leno loves having John and his buddies around. At his mansion. Yeah, I have no Leno connection. <laughs> sure, sure, you just love that. Oh, yeah, Will, yeah. what have we done today, my friend? I think we hit some highs. I think we made fun of uh, some mentally ill people, and we had some yucks. We did. I we think. talked about the True Bell system. We talked about Manscaped. We talked about Opie talking about Anthony. Governor Cuomo called in. We had a bit of a swing and a miss with the <laughs> Governor Cuomo OB conversation, but that's fine. You know, we can we can give it out and we can take it. And then we, I think Ryan, I I found that interesting, and I, I uh, I'm glad I heard like the inside. You know, you don't really think about who mods are and like what the drama behind being a mod is. And uh, Ryan got a fucking taste of it, that's for sure. Yes, and I can't believe that John keeps finding these people. He shits all over them. He shits them out one at a time. The people who help him out and like Hale Sparks will be the next one. They put so much effort into helping out John. John gives nothing back in return and they all yeah. end up just like going, I'm done with this guy. I can't deal with it anymore. And John never fucking learns his lesson. It really is spectacular. Stuttering John had more trolls than usual on his Thursday show, mm. which I thoroughly enjoyed. They were having a little bit of a troll problem, as John calls out here. Getting uh, tons of troll alerts today, but I'm not mentioning any more people. That's all they want is to just be... Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So Tom Cruise is coming on any minute. What? Uh, He's so flustered by the trolling. He thinks he's having Tom Cruise on his show. Oh now, Krillage, this is going to shock you. He did not have Tom Cruise on his show. Oh, really? No, he had Tom Arnold. Oh, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Very, very different oh, person. Wow. Than Tom Cruise. Yeah, a bit of a chasm between those two. So you might have heard in that clip, he says, I'm not even going to talk about this trolling. We got to just ignore this and just push through. And then yeah. later on, he says this. So here we go. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let's pay no attention to the trolls, please. Don't even mention them. That's all they want. You know, it's probably probably crying Ryan or somebody. Who knows? It doesn't matter. I have no idea who it is. But please don't even comment on it. They're trolling. I guess Sean and Nikki can't get them off because they became a, uh, a YouTube member or something. But there's nothing I can do. So just block them as you go. And I'm not going to mention them anymore. Okay? They obviously have a hard on for me they're obsessed with me uh, it's probably uh, crying ryan because there's only one person who doesn't like me oh my god no there's actually a lot of people who don't like you i want to read some of these usernames yeah, that people do. signed in with this one's my favorite one i'll start with that 
John's show sold two tickets. Ha 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 Was one of the usernames. Oh, that's marvelous. In the chat room. Another one was poopy, 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 poopy. Mm. Another one was the F slur over and over again. Another one was the N word over and over oh, again. Uh, schizo lefties burnt and looted stores in 2020. <laughs> this guy, Sesqui. I don't know who Sesqui is. But he wrote, I believe Heather W. and I believe Ryan. Centering John takes advantage of women. Hashtag me too. The fact that you need mods to delete comments shows that you're guilty. Yeah. So sad. Wow. Centering wow. John, I bet what you're wondering, Crouch, is what's John's take on Rush Limbaugh? Oh, that's what I've been dying to hear. Yes, right. Everyone wants to know. And this is amazing because you would think he was describing himself. You know, I mean, I'm not going to goof on the guy. But he did lie a ton and really said a lot of horrible things. Oh, like the fact that you don't have sock accounts, but we know for a fact that you do. Or the fact that you don't sick people to go troll people that you don't like, but we know that you do. Or tell Artie Lane to kill himself. Like horrific things like that, John. Yeah. Well, He's mad at Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, that's crossing the line with John. You can't be dishonest ever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. He takes uh, honesty very seriously. Just oh, like yeah. Patrick Michael takes comedy very seriously. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the exact same way. I got to point out, I don't typically listen to the parts where John's talking about his political nonsense with his political nonsensical guest, but I had to watch him with Tom Arnold. It got me so angry. The interviewing skills of stuttering John Mullins at this point in the game should be better yeah. than they are. And Tom Arnold's difficult. He's not an easy interview. All right. I'll, I'll give him that. But listen to these interviewing skills. Tom is talking about the pedo from the Lincoln Project. Okay. You know, that whole big story that's yeah, been yeah. going on the last week or so. And listen to John interrupt him to ask this brilliant question. You know, when it comes to what men's behavior, they do look the other way. They're like, well, that's man, man, you know, and it's awful. So there is, you know, more needs to be said about that in any kind of corporate world. And this John Weaver was just especially awful. And more needs to be more needs to come of that. And I know the FBI is investigating it. We'll see what we'll see what happens. And but Tom, did, did yeah. you ever meet Trump? Yes. Yes, I, I met him. You know, I met Trump. I've known him for 35 years. And, uh, and was he always a piece of crap? Well, I mean, you know, the guy's talking oh. about John Weaver. The pedophile and, who's been outed, FBI investigation. Well, and, and and Tom Arnold's been public about this. He was a victim of childhood sexual abuse. I mean, yeah. this is it's something very serious to him. He's trying to make a serious point. Did you ever beat Trump? Also, okay. the Lincoln Project was funneling money to their friends. They were taking all these donations. They were up to a lot of shady shit. The Lincoln Project was a fucking disaster for everyone involved. John has another guest on his show I forget what the name of the organization is, but he says this about the the guy's organization. In the meantime, I'll bring up some really American. These guys are doing the Lord's work, much like uh, the Lincoln Project. John, did you not get the memo? See, these guys are great, just like the Lincoln Project. You mean the pedophilia ring that they're uh -huh. trying to break up right now, you moron? All right, here's another great interview question for uh, our friend Tom Arnold. Did you ever see uh, Trump do cocaine? I don't, I don't, I never have no idea about that. See, John, the way that conversations work is you start telling stories, you get someone to open up about an event or something, and then <laughs> things come out of that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then this, this one time we were at the Playboy Mansion together and Tom tells this story. He's like, I was with Trump and he was with his wife and his daughter and they were like underage girls there. Someone brought their daughter or something. And, and Trump was looking at a 14 year old and John's like, What? That's outrageous. Uh, did he ever do coke? <laughs> what? Jesus Christ. Yeah. But did, did, did you ever see a, a, a rape a chick? Yeah, right. That's literally the questions. He yeah. goes, yeah, did you hear him use the N word? <laughs> okay. Uh, here's another fun one. Unbelievable, man. Yeah. What's the most egregious thing? Uh, like besides the, you know, which the 14 year olds is just, just unbelievable. But is there anything more egregious i mean is there any give some more egregious crap that trump did in, in your presence i'm just curious well i mean i i did i didn't roll with him you know <laughs> I mean, in my presence i mean the most egregious thing i don't uh i never 
I haven't had a drink since 1989. So, so basically, what Tom Arnold is saying is, if Trump was up to some crazy shit, I wasn't in the picture because I was trying to be sober. Yeah. I mean, it's also well known that Tom Arnold had a cocaine and drinking problem. Yeah. And yeah. then he needed to sober up. He doesn't appear to be sober, but he says that he is. Yeah. But of course, Stuttering John, who's the dumbest fucking person on the planet, wraps up the interview with this. All right. Thanks, Tom, for coming on. Please come back again. Thanks, buddy. Uh, all right, man. I'll see. You. Oh, Tom, uh, where do you live? In L.A. Oh, let's get together and have a beer one of these days. Let's get together and have a beer one of these days. I haven't drank since 1989. And John goes, let's get a beer. Hold on, it gets funnier. Oh, yeah, you're, are you, is that, that's your real backdrop? Oh, no. I didn't know you there. Uh, uh, but I'm in the valley. Are you, are you in the valley? I No, not yet. I, I haven't followed that far. But let me just say this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be, I don't, as I just said on your show, you probably forgot. I haven't had a drink since 1989. No, but I know, but you can. I'll have a Diet Coke. <laughs> that's so fucking funny. I was like, I, I just said this. You probably just forgot. Yeah. Uh, I don't drink anymore. I'm sober. And uh. Stutter John goes, oh, I know. I know. I just want well, let's get together and then I'll drink all the beer. Yeah. You can watch me drink beer. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so after he has Tom Arnold on and the guy from that other thing, he's talking about how great a show that he did. And he's bringing up the fact that now Tom Arnold I remember him on Howard Stern back in like 2016, mm -hmm. 2017, maybe after Trump was elected. And Tom's like, I have the tapes that are going to take this guy down. We have all of the footage from Celebrity Apprentice that didn't make it to air. And we're going to take this guy down. Now, Tom, I think, had a TV show or something and it went nowhere. It They didn't have any damning evidence or footage or anything. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, John says this. MGM has those tapes. Of, of the outtakes of the Celebrity Apprentice, which could be so damaging to Trump. Does he know it's 2021? Does he know that there's nothing that could be more damaging to Trump than the last four years? Yeah, seriously. How the fuck does he think we're finally going to take down Trump? The guy was impeached twice. He's out of office. He can't do business in New York City where he lives. What are you talking about? We're finally going to take down Trump, too. The battle's over. You won. Uh, 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 this guy's like running around like John Rambo. Nothing is over. Yeah. You don't just turn it off. <laughs> seriously. It's over. Seriously. Yeah. It's over, Johnny. I should have grabbed that clip. It's over. Yeah. The, the, does he not know? Maybe he's in queue. He thinks the, the impeachment was, or the. <laughs> he's going to come back in March. He thinks the inauguration was fake. Yes. Yeah. The real inauguration is going to be in March. Yeah. Because that's what it used to be. Yeah. All right, so now John has to justify what a great show he did, which I love how much attention he pays to his chat room. You can get in his head so easily. For some reason, he was talking with Tom Arnold about nonsense, like sports and shit, for uh -huh. a little while, and people are giving him uh, a little grief for that. So if I have Tom on and we talk a little sports, come on, he's from Iowa. That's Field of Dreams, one of my favorite movies of all time. You just got to relax, you know? It's all gonna, it, It's all going to work out. And I knew I had that. I, I knew I had Justin coming on. And I knew Justin was going to be great. Uh, and, you know, so I think it was a great show. <laughs> he thinks it was Holy a great show. Fuck. Oh, relax. He's from Syracuse. They had a basketball team a couple years ago. We'll talk about sports. It'll be great. Can you imagine Jimmy it's Fallon at the end of the show? He's like, all right, guys. Well, listen, I know that that interview I did in the first one wasn't great, but the band was pretty good. I, th I think that was a great show. I, I uh, the bit kind of landed flat, but I, I mean it was pretty good, right? Like, who would talk like that? And then John starts talking about his Patreon. It reeks of desperation. The way he promotes his Patreon, I've never heard anyone else talk about their Patreon like he does. So, and uh, I don't know what I mean. What people are waiting for to get on the Patreon? I mean, I mean, you know, I'm getting more and more people, but let's get this thing going because. I'm going to be doing more and more celebrity driven shows only on my Patreon. No, you're not. And you can get in as little as $5. So, I mean, Oof. it's not a lot. Yes, it's it not a lot. He doesn't understand why there aren't more people supporting him on Patreon, Crouch. He can't Christ. fathom why people wouldn't be doing that. And he even says, just ask someone who's already a Patreon member. Thank you so much for the super chats. But seriously, guys, I mean, you know. I'm telling you, 
You will not regret being a Patreon member. If you talk to Good as Gold, if you talk to Mark P, or any of these people, <sighs> you know, they'll tell you how much fun the Patreon shows are. I mean, I let my hair down. Um, the Patreon episodes are so much fun, Carl. Oh just ask, ask around. They're even less structured than this bullshit that I'm doing. <laughs> All right. What a fucking hard sell that is. A man. hard sell. Jesus. And then this is my favorite part of his push for getting people to sign up for Patreon. When he lists the people that could potentially be on a future episode of Beer on the Balcony. And don't forget, you know, we're going to have guests like, you know, I'm trying to get Rain Wilson on. I'm reaching out to a lot of celebrities. I asked Greg Grun Grunberg from Star Wars. He couldn't do it because he's been busy <laughs> shooting stuff. But I'm going to keep on going. Larry the Cable Guy. Oh. I mean, you know, all my friends, you know, Guy Fieri. And, you know, like all my celebrity friends. I already had Jay Leno. Well, maybe I'll have Jay on again. You know, Jack Black, David Spade. So become a Patreon member. Because I, you know, I do have these guys' telephone numbers, and I will get a hold of them. I just, I just started the Patreon, so it's, oh it's just taking God. me a little longer. <laughs> Join my Patreon. I just name dropped seven celebrities who I have in my phone who might want to talk to twenty-five people. Who knows? Maybe oh. David Spade wants to stop performing on the road and doing TV shows, and would rather come on my YouTube channel. It's only available to Patreon supporters. Pathetic thing I've ever heard in my entire life. So we life. just listed seven celebrities. I hope everyone take note of that. Let's follow this. I want to see if he gets any of those people on that he just said. I want to see if he can get one of those fucking people on Beer on the Balcony. I'd be shocked. Jesus Christ. I'd be shocked. And those weren't all A-listers yeah. either. But I'd still be shocked. Well, if they even had two seconds of due diligence. Oh, they want me on that show? Let me look up what that show is on YouTube. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would never hear him. <laughs> Who would hit play on that and be like, oh, that's a show I should be on? Hey, Jay, Jay Leno, you want to watch me get drunk? <laughs> yeah. All right. Last thing. Jay Leno, did Dave Letterman ever use the N word? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last thing I want to play because I want to remind everybody that Stuttering John will be at Side Splitters oh. in Tampa. And don't forget, if you're in Florida, everybody. On uh, February 24th, I'll be at Side Splitters in Tampa. So if you're close to the Tampa area, or if you want to take an hour, two-hour drive, I'm going to be driving there from, from Miami. But I'm doing Side Splitters in Tampa, February 24th, 8 p.m. show. We got to keep an eye on this, everybody. Yeah, that's coming up. This is coming up the 24th of February. From what I've seen, five tickets have sold so far. Five? Five. It was two. What's crazy about five is that there's a single. When you go to a comedy club, you always want to just sit at a table by yourself. That's always a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Wheel. yeah. <laughs> an eighth wheel. <laughs> but, all right. Let's please keep an eye on Centering John's Side Splitters appearance. What's funny about this is that Side Splitters is a comedy club. And typically what they do at comedy clubs is they bring a comedian in as a headliner. And the comedian will do a Thursday show, two Friday shows, yeah. and then two Saturday shows. And the reason why the comedy club is set up the way that it is is because they're going to bring the headline around to do five shows. So they're going to try to get the capacity that will have the a number of people from that town who will go see that comedian over five shows. Yeah. If John's playing one show and can't sell out the room, that's already pathetic, but it gets worse. Yeah. What if he only sells five fucking tickets? Oh, it'd be beautiful. <laughs> it'd be pretty funny. Well, and I mean, he is a major television star by his own telling. He's a major recording artist by his own telling. All right. Well, oh, boy. I got to tell you, the most interesting thing to happen this week, it wasn't Dave Landau leaving the Anthony Cumia show. It wasn't even this Paris Hilton thing that happened. It was definitely my buddy, Stut Joe. <laughs> Yeah. Stuttering John was in Florida last week doing his comedy show, dabbling in some comedy down in Florida. He admitted <laughs> to selling 50 tickets at Side Splitters. Okay, 50 total tickets. 
capacity. 50 total for all three nights? Well, no. Sidesplitters was just a, a one-night gig, and then he, he had two shows somewhere else, but I don't even know if that's true. I think the Friday okay. show was canceled. I don't know. 50 tickets were sold at Sidesplitters. The capacity of the place is 300. What John said was, yeah, but the capacity was only 70 due to COVID. Now, how does that make selling 50 tickets better? So it was a third the capacity and you still couldn't sell it out. Is That's all that that tells me. It's like, yeah, well, you know, that's, what's COVID? It's only 70, which I don't even think that's true because Florida's open. Right? The, the, the club can set that limit if they want to, but it didn't look like they were when you saw online buying tickets. They were placing everyone right next to each yeah, other. Yeah, they don't have to. Why would they want to? Right. But right. Why would you, Why if you were going to lie, why wouldn't you just say it, it was, we sold 50 tickets, but that's all they'd allow due to the China virus? That's what he should have said. Yeah. They only wanted to let in 45 <laughs> people, but the demand was just too high. Plus, why would you travel from LA to Tampa to perform in front of 50 fucking people? There's no way that's a profitable endeavor. There's no way at all. The tickets were like 20, 25 bucks a piece, maybe 35. I don't know. It seems so you got silly. 600 bucks to, you know, because I assume the, the venue takes at least half. I, I would assume the venue takes some money. Maybe he had a, a guarantee and now the venue hates him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It all seems very odd. But anyway. We'll give I, you $600 and two cases of Coors. Sold! Oh, sold! <laughs> could, you see, could you imagine what his... His uh, luggage has to be like they, they inspect it when he's going through the thing. And they're like, sir, there's a, a, an awful lot of metal in here. Can we just open this up and take a look? Oh, it's just two cases of Coors Light. <laughs> Can you do that? You can't, you can't have more than three ounces. I think that would be a problem, actually, if he brought that onto a plane. Oh, 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 I used to uh, denounce on the Tonight Show. I, I need this, this medication for the flight. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a six-hour flight. I uh, need at least 17 beers. So Stuttering John put out a show, and I, I've heard that he took this down. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but when he was in Florida, he did a show, and he's taking a giant victory lap. He is so excited that he's working with a private investigator. A PI came to him and said, listen, John, I'm going to work with you pro bono. I can figure out these trolls and figure out what's going on, and John could not be happier about this. <laughs> this just came upon me. The person reached out to me and said he was a private investigator. And guess what? He found out exactly who the person is that is taking my beer on the balconies and posting it on Reddit. We know your name. We know your social security number. We know where you live. I might divulge the state at the end of this show. <laughs> he might you... divulge the state. Okay. So he's very excited. He has the guy's name, his social security number, and where he lives. And you might think to yourself, what would somebody do with that information? It's neat. It's impressive that you're able to find that out. And he answers the question. The person might even be here in the chats right now. But I'll promise you one thing. On Tuesday's show, that person is going to be blocked. So that person is amongst us right now. I think I I think maybe I even said his name. <laughs> I got your social security number and I'm going to block you. So you'd have to sign in to a different account in order to watch my show. <laughs> what a fucking moron. Yeah, it's uh, I own a glass cock. She's devious. <laughs> I think the PI is is the one also trolling John at it's, this point, right? It's very possible because he's had attorneys troll him. It's very <laughs> possible this person is also trolling him. Yeah, I'm totally a private investigator. Remember when his only friend in the world was Chad Zumak? Remember how that went? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So John explains to all of us that he's not a bad person, and he explains how you know that. I'm a straight up dude. Thank you, Marsha Janulis, for the two bucks. I'm not, ask my mom, ask my sister. I'm not a bad person. I don't wish bad on anybody. Yeah, and just ask anyone. Ask Artie or Anthony or me or Mersh or Howard or Shuli or Royce or Noel Kassler. Ask anyone if John's a bad person. They'll all tell you, just a stand up guy. If you have to say, ask my mom or my sister if I'm a good guy, that's insane. What's, what's wrong with this guy? 
that's that should be a, that's a given, right? You would if the the strange one is when someone's family hates them, right? Like like Gallagher, right? <laughs> right. That's that's the odd man out. For you, most of us, our family think has a pretty good view of us, even if we're huge fuck ups. They go like, yeah, he's a fuck up, but, and then they explain away how you're a, you are an idiot. You know that I'm an amazing person because my mom loves me. So what else? Can and I she do? tells me I'm a handsome boy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and any woman would be this lucky to cool. have me. She told me my podcast is the best podcast she's ever heard. <laughs> she actually did not tell me that. <laughs> she's never, never told me that. Uh, all right. More threats coming from our buddy Stuttering John, who's feeling very empowered with this information that he has. I thank the PI. Thank you very much. He's now working on some of these other people in the Reddits, some of these Velvets and some of these other ones and, uh, you know, Stuttering Wands and all these, all these guys. We're going to find out who you are, too. And you know what? I might not do anything. But if the hate continues, I don't mind if you hate me. But when you start threatening me and my kids... Oh, here we go again. No. So he caught himself. If the hate continues, what? What are you, you going to do if the hate continues? Like, oh, but no, no, no. I mean, if you threaten my kids... Nobody is threatening Stuttering John's kids. Nobody cares about Stuttering John's kids. Nobody cares about that. We goof on you because you suck. How do you not figure this out yet? Why are you pretending that it's something more than just us all having a laugh at your expense? Why pretend that there's more to it than that? There is not. That's all it is. And I, I literally had no idea who Stuttering John was until I started listening to your show. Right. And and I don't I don't hate him, but I do like laughing at him. He's like a clown. It's he, right. He's he's like an unironic clown, and it's a lot of fun to talk about him. And this idea that he's going to find out who people on Reddit are. I'm going to get your real name and social security number. I got news. Anyone who's on Reddit who's been bashing John, I have good news for you. John has known who I am and where I live and the company that I owned and all this information about me for years. He mentioned this years ago. He has done nothing. He will do nothing. There's nothing he can do. What the fuck is he going to do with that information? I will soil your credit score. I swear <laughs> to God. Like, what, what are you going to do? Uh, so what he's a clown. He's such a clown. So he, he's, he's, he wants to be menacing and threatening, but he also wants to be secretive about who this person is. I don't know why. I don't know what the fucking difference is at this point. Because the a day Tuesday, of reckoning is coming. Yeah, right. Tuesday. I'm, I'm going to block this person. <laughs> I can't tell you who it is. And John's so stupid. It's obviously a guy, but he doesn't want to give even that much information out. He wants to still keep it. Well, it could be anybody. It could be a guy or, or a girl, but he keeps fucking up how he's talking. You know, thanks to this private eye, I now know who the guy is that's posting stuff on Reddit. And, uh, you know, the guy or gal, um, he's been in the chats today or she. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> but, but I know who he is or she, where he lives. <laughs> I know his social security number. I mean, I, I mean the guy gave me everything. His, everything. his social security number or hers. I don't know how he identifies, <laughs> but. There, here's more of this. It's, it's fucking comical. He doesn't even know he's this funny, but he is. So this guy thinks it's okay, old gal, to keep posting it. And, you know, I don't get what he gets out of it or she he's from the uh, state of maryland yeah he or she is from the state of maryland <laughs> that's where they reside and i won't give out m any more information uh right now uh you have seen him in the or her you have seen he or she in the chat room uh but now the gig is up two things there You've seen he or she in the chat room. John, that's not English. You have seen he in the chat room? I know he's Puerto Rican, but I'm pretty sure English was his first language. You have seen he or she in the chat room. And then he goes, the gig is up. It's the jig is up, you fucking moron. Fucking idiot. It's not a gig. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. He's so proud of himself. Now, uh. he is obviously a dickhead. He or she is a dickhead. And I just want to say, I don't care how muscly he is, he or she, I don't care. 
His oh. social security number starts at the three, or hers starts at the three, <laughs> yeah. or his or hers. He's got a very small penis, or she does, or she does. I don't want to divulge <laughs> any more information. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. And then people are in the chat, and uh, they're just they're so all, all excited about this. They can't wait to find out who this is and what he's going to do with this information. Uh, Aunt Edna, can you have him arrested? I can have some of these people arrested. Yes, I can. For what? And I might, <laughs> I might do that. What? What, what the? F- he's going to have people arrested for goofing on him on the internet? I would love to see him try this. This is hysterical. I might do that thing I'm lying about. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's so transparent. <laughs> These threats never stop. This has been going on for three and a half years. Just threat after threat after threat. Nothing ever happens because there's nothing he can do. He's handled this wrong from the get-go and just keeps doubling down on how poorly he's handling this. And it keeps getting worse and worse. How do you not see this, John? How do you not just come on your show? If I was stuttering, John, I would come on my show. The very next show, I'd just be like, guys, I'm a fucking idiot. I, I can't believe <laughs> I got butt hurt over people goofing on me. I'm not the most talented guy in the world. I'm just trying to make a fucking living, trying to put on an entertaining show. You guys want to goof on me? That's cool. Like, he could, he's, I, I don't even want to tell him this because if he did this, it would ruin all of our fun. He's so fucking stupid. He does not know how to deal with haters at all. And he was on the Howard Stern show. How is this possible? Oh. But he's a good how guy. Do you get, how do you get to be an adult man at that point? I mean, like, I think of the way that I interact with my friends, and it's just it's just us constantly tearing one another down. Right. Like, we went out we went out for uh, to play pool and hear, listen to some live music this week, and, like, and every time one of us would miss a shot, it would just be like, you fucking suck, you fucking loser, you are pathetic, you'll never make anything out of yourselves. <laughs> I just, how do you, how as a person do you grow up with other men and never like grow a thick enough skin to handle being made fun of and not just laugh along with them when you fuck up? Well, that's what I mean. I know Suttering John from him being on the Howard Stern show. He got goofed on all the time. How do you not develop a thick skin from that? I don't understand why he has this mentality. And why he handles this the way that he does. It's just the exact wrong way to handle it. Uh, Threatening to have people arrested on Reddit? I mean, trust me, Reddit will take you off of their platform if you do even the slightest thing wrong. Reddit's all over that shit. Either you're going to have somebody arrested for what they said about you on Reddit. That's insane. You're a moron. See, I get it. I get it with Opie, right? Because Opie was in charge of the show. So every time... If if you piss him off enough, he'll just ax you from the show. So you have to pull your punches. But John was at the bottom of the totem pole, so everybody was was making fun of him. Did he just like go home after every recording and like, oh, they made fun of me today on the show, and you know, I'm working really hard, and I had this great bit. Yes, and I, you how know do you live I know like that? that? You know how I know that that's true. He still talks about the time that Howard said he should have his kid aborted. He's still butthurt about that. Like, dude, that was a joke, you moron. Uh, all right. Last thing I want to play from our, our buddy Stuttering John. Because not only is he going to have people on Reddit and Twitter arrested, but he's also going to go after YouTube. This is just the funniest fucking thing. As you guys know, there's a, there's a person who has been able to figure out a way to kick people out of John's chat or off of the stream while John's doing his show. And because- he or she. <laughs> he or, yeah, he or, sorry, he or she may or may not live in Maryland. So because John is a bona fide retard, he believed Hale Sparks <laughs> when Hale told him, YouTube has an algorithm that when you talk about right-wing things, will kick people out of your room or off of your stream. And it doesn't even make any lick of fucking sense that YouTube would just go in there and an algorithm would hear something. It would take out 20% of the people who are watching your show. It doesn't, I mean, think about that for a second, John. Why do you think that's true? That's, it's not true. That's not what's happening. But John is sure that that's true. And he's got a lawsuit ready to go. As far as the booting goes, please complain to YouTube people. Please write a complaint. 
complain every time. I take screenshots every time. I'm going to continue to fight the good fight. And if I have to, <laughs> I'm going to call my attorney, okay, the great Michael Popak, <laughs> and see what legal avenues I could take about how YouTube is booting my people on my show from my chat room on a regular basis. And I have issues with YouTube, and some of which could have legal ramifications it's because issues. YouTube has got to stop this. Did you say he had issues with, with YouTube? It sounded like he said issues. Let's hear that again. And I have issues with YouTube. <laughs> and some of you should scratch those issues. It it's really... like when you have a scratch and a sneeze at the exact same time. Issues! <laughs> of which could have legal ramifications because YouTube has got to stop this. And when I complain to them, stop giving me your automated answers and telling me that uh, there's nothing, they don't see anything. You are booting people. I have so many screenshots of people like Nikki B and Mark P and Jillian New York City 212 all getting booted nine times, 12 times. YouTube, I'm sick of this horse shit. It's almost like maybe YouTube has nothing to do with it, John. Maybe the automated response is because there's so many retards like you messaging them about nonsense that they don't want to hire someone to man those complaints. And they just send you a thing that says, no, idiot, why would we possibly, what would be in our best interest to kick people out of your stream while you're streaming? We're YouTube. We make money every time someone super chats you. Why the fuck would we do that, you moron? And John just is not understanding us. So I'm serious. Stop picking on the little guy. Just because I don't have a million subscribers doesn't mean you should turn your head and allow my people to get booted from my chat room. It's BS. Oh, man. And, and at some point, you got to own it. I'm going to tomorrow... I'm going to file more complaints with you. I have the screenshots. And then we're going to see. If you if you continue to do nothing, then we're going to have a bigger issue. Because you are owned by Google, and Google doesn't... I don't think they want this. <laughs> I don't think they and care. I, I might be a little guy, <laughs> but I'm not going to get bullied by you guys. You know what I just realized? You know what I didn't have in that clip? Is John explaining why... YouTube is doing that to him. Damn it. I, it must have been a different part of the show. He explains it's either because he's Puerto Rican and they're, they're prejudiced <laughs> against Puerto Ricans or it's because of his politics because they don't like left-leaning politics or they're uh, against stutterers. I think was his other claim. Like, good luck with that lawsuit. I'm sure that'll go a long ways. In his mind, right, he's talking on his stream and he says something about like, you know, Donald Trump is bad. Yeah, and then YouTube, YouTube is scan constantly scanning his all the streams. Constantly, there's probably a, a hundred thousand streams going on at any given part of the time of day. Sure, they're scanning all the streams at the same time. They hear Trump is bad, and they say, "Well, we don't want to not allow people to hear this, but we only want to allow a certain percentage of the people available to hear this." So then they kick off twenty percent of his of his viewers for a minute. And even if he was saying things that were more right leaning which is what youtube bans from their platform anybody who says that you know maybe this uh, vaccine that fauci is trumpeting isn't the best way to handle covid if you say that on youtube you get kicked off yeah and john is saying the opposite of that and he thinks that his politics are what's getting him kicked off or or a, like you said a percentage of people he's Probably the dumbest person on the planet at this point. Can we all agree that Stuttering John is the... And I don't know. It makes me want to not drink anymore because I'm like, is that what I'm going to turn into if I keep drinking Coors Lights? Because you look at Maddox. Coors, you got to do something about your image. You got Maddox drinking your product. You got Stuttering John. They're both have lost their fucking minds. They seem like, they seem like they're brain dead. Coors Beer, the number one beer for delusional former celebrities <laughs> streaming on the internet. Take it from me. Taste st the Rockies. St stuttering John. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man. Wow. I guess the, the, other, the other option for that is that the YouTube is constantly monitoring streams. And they're like, oh, he got a little bit too Puerto Rican in here. <laughs> Kick out 20% of his viewers. <laughs> Does he not know you, that YouTube exists in Puerto Rico? 
where it's all Puerto Ricans? <laughs> they think that they're they're banning entire countries? Like, what the fuck's he talking about? Uh, I know, it's what a territory. A, what a, a lunatic. Country. Whatever. Whatever. What are you going to do? With that, I want to uh, transition to this. <laughs> I feel so bad. Somebody sent me this clip and I was trying to figure out who it was. Chrissy, I'm sure you go through this too. You look at your email, you look at Twitter, you're on the subreddit. You're, it's like, I don't know where I got this from, but somebody went back to the archives and we had Eric Nagel on the show. And Eric Nagel and I were talking about Stuttering John. Now this is going back to, I think, December of 2019. So this is before... Stuttering John was a guest on the Chrissy Mayer podcast. And Ooh. this is interesting right here, Chrissy. But John, and I like John. John has always been very cool to me. Two very boring minutes later. I don't, I don't know. I've never <laughs> seen John stand up. Um, no one has. I, I didn't realize he was doing. I knew he dabbled in it. Like he would go and do um, <laughs> when he was invited on people's uh, sets and shows to to do some stand-up i didn't know he, he said he was doing it for 20 years i wasn't aware that he was doing wow. stand-up for 20 years can you believe that the dabbling actually came from iraq was he he was the initial dropper of the d-bomb does he get any flack no <laughs> he dropped the d-bomb if, if eric nagel wants to tell me that i'm dabbling in comedy <laughs> i'm sorry what did you say I mean, you said I was cool, but did you say that I dabbled? <laughs> I know. You're right. That's the only thing you'd pick up on. He's like, I like the guy. He's always been nice to me. I, I guess he dabbles in comedy. You motherfucker. <laughs> you know, I'm doing your show. I'm here. I'm doing you a favor. I actually have bad figured... news for you, Chrissy. John is learning. I, it's taken three and a half years, but God damn it. The guy is finally learning. There's a guy who puts up a super chat on his show this past week. And the super chat says, Hey, John, did you hear Anthony and Gino were making fun of your trans kid last Thursday? And this is his response. DJ. Let's see what he wrote. Uh, uh, okay. Thanks for the super chat, but I'm not going to say what you, I don't care what they did. Uh, let's see. Oh my God. You see how easy that was, John? I can't believe it took you this long to figure out. Not to fly off the handle when people are lying to you about shit. Wow. It sucks. Oh, it's going to be boring. Early late but... never. Chrissy, I'm so distracted. Did you see that the um, combination oh, the of, you, of you yeah, and Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> it's it. one of my headshots. It's my hair. I hate it's... it so much. Whose beard is that? It's a ginger beard. They must have changed the color of my facial hair to... <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I think it's my eyes. I can't tell. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would do that person. Let's not reproduce, <laughs> I guess, is what they're trying to tell us. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's Carl, is that right. what your sister looks like? A little bit. Carl Mayer. Isn't that a real person, Carl Mayer? Uh, yeah, he played bass for the Grateful Dead in 72, I believe. He's also a, a German general staff officer and Adolf Hitler's immediate superior in an army intelligence division in the Reichswehr. You know what? We should talk about this. I don't know if people know this about Chrissy. She didn't just look <laughs> that up. She knew that off the top of her head. You were involved in the insurrection on our state capitol on January Apparently. 6th. Were you not? People can't tell the difference between being in D.C. and, like, you know, taking a shit on Pelosi's desk. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait. You're admitting that that was you shitting on her desk? Do you still oh, yeah, have It was all my idea. <laughs> I was there covering the protest, getting interviews. I was there as like kind of like a neutral media person because uh, I'm, I'm friends with some folks at the Blaze and they're like, oh, come in this media section and get interviews or whatever. And uh, so I'm, you know, and then everybody kind of marched over to the Capitol because it was a planned march point. But everyone because they're just watching mainstream media and they're like, oh, well, Trump made everybody do it. And it's like, no, it was a planned marching point on o'clock at the Capitol and there were just like a few hooligans who, you know, brought wire cutters or 
sledgehammers or whatever and just like broke in but 99.99 percent of the people there was just like hanging out with their dogs and their kids and having a picnic and playing music and waving flags and it was like very chill so you were handing people wire cutters interesting very (laughs) interesting that's all i needed from you chrissy this was all an elaborate ruse this wasn't actually a podcast i just wanted to get your confession i'll be sending this into the fbi idea yeah i knew it all right this is fun stuttering john comes on his show on tuesday and uh he's a little sleepy on tuesday it's been a very tough day for me i got up at 6 a.m why because i had to get my colonoscopy so i had to take an uber to the hospital and then uh dealt with the whole thing have hadn't eaten but uh so now i'm here they found two polyps and they removed them. So now I don't have to get another colonoscopy for five years. So that's good. But they found one on my hemorrhoid uh, that I have to go to a different doctor. I can't believe this guy is single. It really is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. He's such a prize. He's the whole package. <laughs> a polyp on his hemorrhoid? I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> You're not turned on by that, Chrissy? No. Ugh. <laughs> you know, it's just like, we don't need to hear about your... It's just like when people are like, oh, women comics need to stop talking about their vaginas. It's like, yeah, stuttering Johns need to stop talking about all their like icky body problems. <laughs> I'll stop talking about my vagina. You can make it hilarious. John stops talking about his hemorrhoids. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, what a treat he is. What a treat. Don't you get those from like squeezing, like pushing poop out? Like, don't you get that from pushing too hard? Like your butthole just gives up? Yeah. When you're a raging alcoholic and you're constantly shitting liquid. Yes. That's. uh... Maybe I'm thinking of uh, when like the porn stars get from anal sex, like when they sort of turn their buttholes inside out. Maybe I'm confusing it with that. No, no, no. You were right. Yeah. That's a pro laugh. You were right the first time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, oh. Like when you turn your butthole into an infinity scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard it described that way before. I like it. Uh, this is John gets a super chat in the middle of this thing. And you know, John is the super woke left guy and all the people on his channel are super woke left people. And there's a person who's concerned that there's no longer going to be a mask mandate in Texas. Hey, Lenny, pray for us in Texas tomorrow. The rat lickers take off their masks. I will, Lenny. Thank you. And the reason why I played that clip is because I want to point out when John was in Florida on his big comedy tour, every picture I saw of him posted was him hugging a fan with no mask on. John pretends to be this guy who's all concerned about COVID and coronavirus. I mean, Heather W. and I have talked about this before. He doesn't give a flying fuck. He's lying. He's, He's a liar. He's pretending to care because that's why people sign up for his Patreon and watch his stupid show on youtube it's most of the left is just them pretending to care yes so i don't want to get into this Meghan markle thing but god damn it i have to because john's such a fucking moron do you are you following this at all chrissy i didn't watch the whole thing but i saw enough clips to know what it was about yes okay I know. They're trying to create fluff and this whole oprah interview so that people don't focus on prince andrew eating fucking cereal out of some girl's butthole on Epstein Island. Basically, they're trying to distract away from the Prince Andrew thing. It's working. Because all anyone's talking about is this fucking Meghan Markle interview with Oprah. So Pierce Morgan now is the only person in the world who thinks maybe the actress Meghan Markle is acting and that this is all fucking horse shit. And uh, John has to respond to that. Piers... Goes off on Meghan Markle, doesn't believe that she was suicidal. And, you know, it's just, it reeks of racism to me, Pierce Morgan. So when you don't believe someone who's half black, that's now racism? I can't keep up with what's racism anymore. It seems like everything is racism. Racism is whatever you want it to be, Carl. Oh, good. Okay, (laughs) well, that makes it easy then. So John goes on and bashes Pierce Morgan nonstop and has the balls to say this. But but instead of Pierce having some empathy, compassion, he decides to trash. Yeah. 
He should have empathy. And then John, right after that, says this. You know what I did? I tweeted out mm-hmm. this morning. Fire Pierce Morgan. Just like I tweeted out. Fire um, uh, Doug Peterson from the Eagles. I said he will be fired. Everyone goes, they're not going to fire him because he threw it a game against, you know, against against the Washington football team. They're not going to fire him. You know, he won them a Super Bowl. They fired him. I was right. And I said, fire Pierce Morgan. They fired him. I was right again. Because you can't have that kind of freaking derelict duty in reporting. <laughs> oh, my God. Derelict duty. <laughs> I feel like John is so superstitious that he actually believes that like his Twitter, like people are looking to his Twitter for what to do. Yes. I, I believe that too. And it's so if ridiculous. If I tweet it out and say Beetlejuice three times in the mirror and <laughs> turn around five times, it happens. It's so ridiculous to me that John is so gleeful of people losing their jobs. It's such a weird way to live your life. That you're so rooting gross. for people to be fired and lose their jobs because of an opinion you didn't, you didn't like from Pierce Morgan, the guy's who is always has crazy opinions. That's what he's known for. It's why he's famous is for having ridiculous opinions. And John's like, well, we, you got to fire the guy. He's not allowed to have that opinion. It's different than my opinion. And therefore he's fired. Let's just bring people who are unhappy and uncreative and are washed up and over the hill and all the other words. It's like they want to destroy everybody around them. They want everyone. They want no one to have success because they want them to be like how he is. And it's so obvious. It's not even like they're trying to cover it up. This is him again. After he does these two long interviews, he gets back to talking about Pierce Morgan for some reason. But to have Pierce Morgan go on there and just trash Meghan Markle, he is a despicable human being. If you can even call him that, it's, I mean, it, it's a despicable man. If you can even call him that, he's just a horrible piece of shit. And for him to trash Meghan Markle, and I called it, I was like, this guy is a piece of garbage. I tweeted directly to Pierce. Sometimes he would actually answer me, but oh my he God. hasn't. I'm like, how dare you? How dare you, Pierce Morgan? And then I, I called for his firing. I said, I said, get rid of this guy. Who the hell is he? To question Meghan Markle about her suicidal tendencies. She, she was feeling suicidal. All I wanted was a Pepsi. Just one Pepsi. And she wouldn't give it to me. Just a Pepsi. She went through it with her knees. Got to be like, Pepsi. 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 <laughs> with the band yeah. no they're, they're called the suicidal tendencies oh the that bad. i was I, just imagining <laughs> stuttering john putting printing out a tweet putting it in an envelope and then mailing it to pierce <laughs> <laughs> i sent it straight to him i love that he's like sometimes he responds to my tweets this guy's tweeting at pierce telling you to go fuck himself it's like yeah every now and again someone's gonna be like no fuck you like, it's not that impressive wow what a piece of shit john is this guy had to get fired because he didn't believe everything that Oprah, who's an actor, was talking about with Meghan Markle, who's an actor, about the royal family, who are all pieces of shit. Don't get me. I'm not taking sides on this one. I just don't understand why John has this really strong opinion about Pierce Morgan getting fired. It doesn't make any sense to me. He wants to join the club. He's like, oh, wait, look at the, let's see what the billionaires are saying. I want to be like that. Right. I want to be successful. I'm in on the but conversation. Thinks, yeah, I tweeted the Instead of creating peers. anything of value that people want to buy or be fans of or be a part of, he's like, no, I'll just parrot Oprah, <laughs> and that'll be my way to success. Yep. Ugh. It's, it's working, John. You're killing it. On it, man. You're killing it. He's very excited about his Patreon members. Friday's beer on the balcony. I don't know yet. I'm looking for another great comic. If you missed last one, become a Patreon member. We're picking up a lot of Patreon members. I want to thank all of you. So I happen to know exactly how many Patreon members he has. It's 62. Ooh. The answer is 62. Okay. That's more than me. Uh, Pretty good. Well, it's, he's been on Patreon for a year. Mm. He's got 62. Let me see. Can I see how much money he's making on this too? Let's see here. Uh, oh no, he didn't. The guy who sent this to me didn't send me the money. Send me the the amount of money he's making. Yeah, I'd be very curious to know. All right, because this is all he's doing. Well, this is the thing: is that 
Chrissy Mayer was never on the Howard Stern show. Chrissy Mayer has had to make a name for herself and she's on True. Compound Media and she's doing her thing. And she's on all the big stand-up shows. Stuttering John is Stuttering John. He had an audience and he has 62 people. It's almost like I'm 12 times more successful than him. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I I'm just so. doing that in my head, but it's a little odd. All right. So speaking of Howard Stern, the last clip I want to play here is uh, John, of course, talking about how the royal family is the firm and that's what i used to call the howard stern show and then everyone else picked up on that because i started it i used to refer to being at the howard stern show the firm in fact baba Bowie picked up on it and he would call it the firm as well it's like you just can't get out there's no way to get out and and if you get out howard's gonna beat the hell out of you on the air which he did to me and which he has done to a lot of people i want to point out that because someone sent me this clip too which i should go through at some point when Howard bashed Stuttering John on air after John left, it was because John went on the Adam Carolla show and motherfucked Howard Stern. So <laughs> John acting like, yeah, you know, and then Howard just trashes you when you leave the show. That's It's the exact opposite. Howard Stern will never mention your name. He hasn't brought up the word Brent Hatley. He hasn't talked about Shuley since Shuley left. He just pretends you never existed. It's not like they're talking about Artie Lang every day. They never talk about Artie Lang. The guy was the biggest part of the show for a decade, and they pretend it never happened. So this um, idea that John's like, yeah, and then Howard bashes you. It's like, no, John, you instigated it. How do you... Uh, anyway, I don't know why I keep getting upset about this. I should be over it by now. He's not self-aware. So he sorry. lacks He lacks some self-awareness. But there's another person who you cannot get enough of. <laughs> That's right. It's our friend Stuttering John. We've been doing some deep fake videos with our buddy Circus Midget and starring producer Chris. Mm. We've put two of them out and they're fun. They're up on our YouTube channel. We'll be putting out a few more that we have ready to go. And uh, I just got to say, what is with these guys like Opie and John who pretend to have all of these fans and followers and yet it's the same people all the time that they end up calling out who it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I keep getting all these people who are donating to me. I know there are a lot of people good as gold and a, a lot of other people who've been on the Patreons and the YouTubes. Have, you know, good as gold. The list goes yeah. out. You know, you know what I mean? Jail King. Yeah. Yeah. And then not long, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then not long after that, because if you donate to his Patreon at the $20 level for three months, you not only get an autographed T-shirt, which is fucking retarded. Mm. But you also get a Zoom call or a phone call from John. He wants to promote this again. Wow. I'll do a Zoom call. I'll do a personal call if you want to have Zoom with your family or your friends, anything like that. And then we'll just have a good time. I've already done one with Good as Gold and Mark P. <laughs> and we had a great, great, great time. It's the same people over and over again. It's good as Gold, Mark P, yeah. Hockey Puck. And then he <laughs> even goes as far as to lie about who's donating to him. Fudgical 2018 is not a fan of Stuttering John. <laughs> he does not donate to Stuttering John, and yet John continues to say that he does. Like uh, Fudgical 2018, he keeps on sending me PayPal's, and he just did one uh, the other day for twenty bucks. But totally, he's probably done like four or five hundred bucks. So I wish you weren't a liar. <laughs> so this is the equivalent of putting a five dollar bill in your own tip jar. Yeah, you know, just to let people know. Like, by the way, some people are tipping pretty good today. If you want to go heavy, here's a ten that I yeah. threw in there. He's going. This guy's giving me four, five hundred bucks on PayPal. I mean, that's that's what people do, and we know it's a lie. <laughs> Pick a different random name that we don't know, and then we might believe you. I mean, I wouldn't, but yeah. this is probably not the case. He's such a fucking moron. Yeah, <laughs> he's also like just straight up panhandling on it's, it's super chat saturday yeah i know if, if you're listening on saturday you gotta do a super chat he's fucking panhandling it's fucking you're borderline homeless dude why is this okay I, well i don't know i mean if you're stupid so enough bizarre. to give him money then go ahead i mean i do but <laughs> yeah, you're, the only right. person, you're the only person in this room who's giving him money you and vinnie paulino i give him way too much money vinnie's giving him a lot of money too which yeah. is ridiculous but 
Last thing I want to play. I didn't listen to um, Stuttering John this week. I just ran out of time, and it wasn't that important to me. Yeah. It's it's pretty. It's a lot to put up with to kind well, of the mine inter- out the like, interviews. The you can, you got to go right through all that. Well, they, yeah. the interviews are fucking mindless. Well, he had another guy shit. on the, while I was watching, waiting for him to you know start paying attention to the chat. This guy just doing the worst fucking impressions. Mm. Oh, like, did yeah. you see oh, that? I did see that. That's what yeah. on the Reddit. Piss poor. He was doing his Barack, Barack Obama. Obama yeah. Yeah. And he was like explaining and how Bernie he did Sanders. It. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not that good. If, if you, the first thing you have to do is go, this is uh, Bernie Sanders. If the first thing you're yeah. doing is saying yeah. the impression hey, that you're this doing. This is Jack Nicholson. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the way that I do Jack, a lot of people don't know this, but the way that you do it. It's all in the nose. Yeah. I take my Christian Slater impression and I tune it down a half. (laughs) What I wanted to do is I wanted to watch the episode from Tuesday because his guest was his buddy from the pub. Uh, I didn't get around to it, uh, but that's how bad it's getting for John now because there isn't a lot going on with the dotard anymore. So there's a lot of people who are out there bitching about the dotards and he's running low on guests and... Hell Sparks has better things to do both days. <laughs> so he had his buddy from the pub as his first guest, which I have to go back and watch. I just didn't get a chance to do that. But last thing I want to play, he had another guy on. And I'm not even sure who this was. He looked like he was sleeping in the video that I saw. And John was explaining why he was so good at the celebrity interviews back when he was on the Howard Stern show. It's so funny that you say that because somebody was complimenting me about my interviews on the Stern show and said, even if, you know, some of those questions weren't mine because a lot of them were written by Jackie and Fred. All of them. But they were saying, but John was able to do it. You know what I mean? Like he, mm. and even Tom Cipassano, like the general manager said, as many as they try to do what you do, they fail because you have a certain charm and mm. innocence. <laughs> but all we can talk <laughs> about is the would you ever use the word charm to describe stuttering John Melendez? I mean, you, you're just, you overwhelm people with your charm. Yeah. And they have to answer your ridiculous questions about their penis size. This guy's gotten five total compliments in his life. Yes. And he brings them up. He remembers over, all of them. Again. This is a guy who's been punched in the face. He was assaulted by Sharon Stone's uh, bodyguard yeah. and won a lawsuit over it. He's like, ah, the reason why I was able to do it is because I'm so charming. Yeah. <laughs> But in Jackie didn't write them all. When I asked Sharon Stone how she was doing, I came up with that. Yeah. <laughs> when I said, I really like the, <laughs> the way your pussy looks. <laughs> oh, wait, that's right. Howard wrote that one. Uh, uh, Doug, we're going to do something a little different than usual right now. We're going to bring on a guest. This is Adam Goldstein. Adam Goldstein from adamgoldstein.tv. What's happening, buddy? Hey, what's up, Carl? Can you hear me? I can. Coming in loud and clear. Hey, what's up, Kazaru? How you doing? Hey, thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on the show. I'll I'll do a quick setup, and then you can say your piece. So Adam came into my uh, view when he posted a hilarious video where he's interviewing Stuttering John, but not really. And he does like a five-minute long clip where it's just John's reaction shots. Because as we know, John (laughs) will sit in silence for six, seven minutes at a time as his guest prattles on about nonsense and he'll just make faces and act like he's involved in the conversation. So Adam did a brilliant job of taking that footage and then pretending that he was interviewing John. And I guess John didn't like that very much, huh? So, yeah. So I mentioned, um, stuttering John on my YouTube channel and I was covering his videos and doing reaction videos and I didn't think it was a big deal. I just figured whatever to be fun, something to do for the WATP audience. Maybe they'd check it out and think it was funny. Yeah. So I mentioned Heather W. actually jokingly on the interview that you referenced, and he did not like it at all. Mm-hmm. He got really, really mad, and I guess he uh, DMCA'd three. It was actually four of my videos, and I'm still waiting to hear from YouTube now. I actually wrote them a letter, which is available on my website, uh, adamgoldstein.info. So you can check that out. And I wrote an open letter to YouTube, and I explained to them basically what John does and how he abuses the DMCA process. He's known for this. Well, I, I, what kind of case does he have on this? I'm as far as I'm concerned, none. But I got a, um, a little bit of an inkling that he supposedly there is um, there is this, like I guess the word is that he was trying to get a lawyer to just scare me so that he could shut me up. But I mean, I'm not going to stop, regardless of what happens with the DMCA thing. If he takes down my YouTube channel, I'm just going to keep putting those shows up on my website. So 
I'm going to keep making fun of John, and I just hope that people check it out. Check out the shows on my website to try to make them funny. But it's just um, – it's one of those things where I'm waiting for YouTube to get back to me now. But I think they should rule in my favor. There's no reason they should take my channel down. It's bullshit. Well, don't you already have two strikes against you? So two of those actually went through. Yeah, and I did dispute them, but uh, it said – counter notification rejected for two of them and then for the third one it's like kind of hanging in limbo right now so it kind of sucks because anyone can make a claim against anyone else and then it's on you to prove that I, this happened to me with tom myers so i posted a video really? where i was pulling clips from tom myers stand-up comedy and goofing on it and tom uh -huh. dmca'd that video and i fought it and won which was fun but Good. Yeah, because, it, you know, it's obviously fair use for something like that. And he was, I think he was trying to use, because it's on an album, I think he was trying to claim, like, music copyright's very different. You can't clip a right. portion of a song and put it in your video. You will be taken down for that. Anyway, I'm really sorry to hear that, that uh, he's going after yeah. you like that. And I can't believe he's not going after our deep fake videos. <laughs> Shh, well, I, keep that. I know I'm... I know about the revenge of the Sith. I know, and I love the videos where he's dressed up as the cockroach. That is just brilliant. Yeah, uh, it really. I don't is. know, producer who did that, Chris. But I, uh, I love it, and you got know that it, costume. Thank you. Yeah, and you know it gets under his skin too. So he's just, he's such a thin-skinned individual. It's just ridiculous. So if anybody wants to see the letter that I wrote um, to YouTube, they can check that out on my blog, which is available on my website, and all of the videos that he tried to take down. Those are available on my website as well. So I think some of them are funnier than others, but I think people should definitely check them out. And I definitely want people to hear Heather W's story too. You know, I'm trying to, I'm hoping to get her on my show uh, soon, but I love, thank you so much for having her on and doing the bonus episode. When I heard that she came on, she was coming forward with John again, I just, I thought it was awesome. I was so excited. Yeah, she's interesting. She definitely has an inside perspective on things. In fact, there's a video that I never played and I really should have where John acknowledges that he sent a text asking her for payment so that he could pay his mortgage. And this is really, really funny. I don't know why I've never played this before, but this is great. This is not like an episode of Centering John. This is just him hanging out somewhere in his shitty apartment. And he's got the camera. It's probably his phone. It's like right up in his face. There's no microphone. So I just want to <laughs> set the scene here a little bit. Here is the truth, yeah. and it's all documented in my, all in my text, all in my DM, uh, you know, DMs. It's very simple. She told, you know, she, she wanted to donate. She wanted me to buy, you know, a new computer. I go she wanted him to buy a new computer. I'm going to stop right there. John wanted oh a new God. computer and asked somebody to help him out is what happened. She wanted me to buy a new computer. And you never know what he's really spending the money on. It's, uh, I get the sense that he's really not being honest about what he's spending that money on because it doesn't look like he's putting the money into the show, that's for sure. That's a good point. He's talked about all this stuff he's going to buy, lighting and that phone doohickey so he can take phone calls. None of these things are happening. A new camera, none of it's happening. Like a, he's got that crappy Radio Shack microphone that looks like a carry. It looks like an old 90s like karaoke microphone. <laughs> Like, I, I spent $60. Like, I'm a nobody. My show is just so starting up right now. $60, dude. My microphone is 60 bucks, and it's, it's, it looks a lot more professional than that thing he's using. And we all know that you just want shit to look professional. It doesn't have to be professional. Just look professional. Yeah. All right, back to the video. Yeah, I know. If you wanted sure. me to buy, you know, a new computer, I go, all right. You know, so I bought the computer. And then... She said she was, all right, well, yeah, I'll send you the money. I go, all right. I go, well, well my mortgage is coming up, so, you know, can you send it? But it, cause, so that's because she told me. She <laughs> well, hold on, stop it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought Doug fell okay, asleep. She, <laughs> she, she, well, I didn't want to be rude. No, she, she wanted me to buy a new computer. Yeah, wow. And I'm like, yeah, my mortgage is coming up. Can you hurry up and send it? <laughs> that That transition oh to how you get from getting a new computer to him paying his mortgage, he... You call him a scam artist, and to me, scam artist implies somebody that has skill in dis right. deceiving somebody. He's, he doesn't have that. This is his defense. Yeah. Good this, point. This That's is a good point. insane. I'm He's too going. Much credit. Look at you, you guys think that I was asking her so I could pay my mortgage, but I was just asking her for money because I bought a computer that I couldn't afford and then needed to pay my mortgage. Okay, <laughs> Coincidentally, okay. What's the my mortgage is due. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the. Sorry, video. my mortgage is coming up, so you know, can you said it. 
but because that's because she told me she was going to pay for the computer. But it doesn't even matter. That's the donation that she wanted to make. You know, what am I going to say? No. Remember, he made a half a million dollars a year for 10 years. And in order to pay his mortgage, he has to have one listener or viewer of his show send him money. He doesn't have enough money saved up to pay his mortgage when it's due unless a listener sends him PayPal. This is where we're at. No, and he's I, like, I don't know why you guys are making fun of me for this. You don't? <laughs> it's pretty fucking funny. I know. He really has no excuse. He should have been so much smarter with his money. I mean, it's just like, who do you know that, that would... How many people do you know that made half a million dollars a year? You know what I mean? It's just, it's ridiculous. He's so stupid. But can I pay my mortgage without her paying? Sure. Okay. But she wanted to pay for my computer. So, that, so you know. <laughs> Let's watch. You know, but, and it's all, then uh, she lies <laughs> saying I asked to pay, for her to pay child support. It's all bullshit. You show me any documentation where I said that. All right, time out again. Who cares if it was child support or your mortgage? Either way, it's fucking hilarious that you're begging Heather W for money so that you can pay your bills. It's even worse that it's for stuff like that. He should be able to figure that out on his own. You know what I mean? That's pathetic. Yes. So, Adam, I don't want to be a, a big timer here, but I never made half a million dollars a year, and I could pay his mortgage. Yeah, dude. It's a oh load of bullshit. But, you know, these people can run away with it. You know, go ahead. I pay my child support for the last fucking, what, 10 years. You think I need this fucking crazy fucking... This is like a Chris Rock sketch now. The guy wants credit for paying his child support. <laughs> You're supposed to pay your child support. <laughs> you want a medal? <laughs> I want to take oh, the fucking pay my mortgage and child support. It's ridiculous. You want to hide money from Suttering John, just put it in your books. Yeah, I put it under some soap. <laughs> Good as gold. I'm glad you pay... I'll gladly... Uh... Pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. With also, how funny is that? That every single comment is good as gold. It's like there's like two people watching <laughs> his show at, any, at, at all it's, times. It's, it's the same five assholes that moderate his chat. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, what kind of life do those people have? Oh my God. I don't know, but I love it. I love yeah. it so much. Uh, Adam, so <laughs> people should support you. Your videos are very funny. Check out your blog, check out what you're sending to YouTube. Give that URL again. Yeah, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. It's yep. Sorry, go ahead. Give that URL again, buddy. Yeah, it's uh, adamgoldstein.info. So I'm going to be doing my shows. I'm going to try to do it every week. Don't really have a set schedule yet, but I'm going to figure that out. So I'm going to do the shows. I'm going to do the blog. I'll keep everybody updated on what's going on. And hopefully YouTube should resolve this. I think I should have my channel restored. It's just, it's completely ridiculous. I agree. And looking forward to having uh, seeing you with Heather W. That should be a lot of fun. Oh, um, thank you so much. I appreciate that. While you're here, though, I think we got a couple clips that we wanted to play from, yeah. from Stuttering John. Uh, Doug, you, you were checking out an episode, right? Yeah, his his most recent episode, he had Bishop Talbert. I don't know if you know who that is. But... I do. So Bishop Talbert Swan, and he spelled it in the description, Talbot. He doesn't even spell the fucking name <laughs> right of his guest. But uh, yeah, so this guy is... Um, He's a African American gentleman who, again, not so fond of white people. Yeah, I, I would I would go so far as to call him a black supremacist. Yeah, supremacist. yeah, okay. I, I think that's about right. Uh, so if if you check out the bishop's uh, tweet history, you don't have to go far very far down, and you can find a gem like this. You mayonnaise drippers are doing somersaults to defend a racist cop who described the mass murder of Asian people as a white man having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> you mayonnaise like, drippers? I've never heard yes. of that. Mayonnaise, oh my God. <laughs> All right, I like this guy That's now. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I think I follow this guy anyway, and I did before this, just because I like to know what people like that are thinking. Yeah. Um. So John started off the show by asking him, in reference to the Atlanta, Georgia uh, Asian massacre, about gun laws and where we're at now, number 50. This is not a partisan issue. It's an American issue that will save lives. Congress needs to act, but nobody seems to do anything. Why, Bishop? Well, we, we all know all you got to do is follow the money. Um, at the end of the day, the reality is this. Um, the gun lobby is a powerful lobby. Um, it's a rich lobby. It throws around money, mostly to Republicans, but to some Democrats as well. And at the end of the day, 
these politicians are always going to choose politics over people. And so the interest of the lobbyists and those who put money in their coffers is always going to speak louder, even than those who vote for them. Um, and so at the end of the day, that's that's money talking when when they refuse to do anything about it, that it's a, it's about the almighty dollar. I know. And that is and that's the crazy part about it. You know, I mean, is that it all comes down to money. Right. John had no idea how <laughs> what his thoughts were on this until this guy gave what he considered to be a logical answer. And then John just gloms on to it with, yeah, I, that's what I was going to say. He's half listening. Yeah, too. nice hot take. He, he heard like one buzzword. I was like, oh, oh yeah, my money. You stop talking. I just noticed. Yeah, money. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, he's terrible off the cuff. When, when I knew the Bishop uh, Talbert guy was going to be on there, I, I understand how, you know, I don't listen to John, but I know how he acts where he basically, he's very malleable. He becomes uh, aligned with whoever the guest is that he has on. Right. So number 51. You know, Atlanta as well, with uh, you know, in Georgia, because this is all like the white privilege with that freaking cop. <laughs> that was like a well thought out uh, statement there. <laughs> You, when, when you're talking to people like that, you don't have to be well thought out. That's true. That's a good point. Well, this guy, what I enjoyed about this is there it seemed to be a theme this week because uh, Bishop Swan has a very similar stance on racism as our friends from Yo, Is This Racist? I mean, just he, he's just completely clueless and oblivious. And then when they get called out on it, they want to make you the bad guy for bringing up the fact that, hey, man, that was some racist crap that you just said. They play the victim. Yeah, absolutely. Every single time. It's it's almost, it's not even almost. It's, they are more offended at being called racist than actually being racist. Yep. Yes. John, what kind of answer is that? (laughs) The guy goes, if you call someone a racist, it means they're definitely racist and they should not be allowed to defend themselves. John's like, yep. I uh, 100% agree with that. Makes perfect sense. What a fun word. I 100% agree with whatever's going to get me super chats. <laughs> right. And uh, by the way, I'm watching this video. And once again, this conversation has been, it's, it's been done. Um, I, we need to ban assault weapons. And, you know, it's just the same shit that you hear all the time. How are we not getting this done? And I'm watching his chat. And the chat is just people not even paying attention at all. They're just like, hey, what's going on? I don't know what's up. The one person in there going like, uh, there's no such thing as an assault rifle. There's no such thing as a, it's a semi-automatic. It's not an automatic. That would be an Uzi. And everyone else is just like, hey, what's going on, Mark P? I don't know. What's up? Yeah, he just, he really, it's, it's, he's got like no, he just doesn't know what the hell he's talking about with politics. He should just avoid it. Yeah, he's only doing it for him. the super chat money, like you said. It's working for him, though. He was able to pay his mortgage that one month, and uh, he got that new computer. Yeah, well, when is Hal going to wake up and distance himself? You know what I mean? I can't imagine that Mr. Wokely and all his Hollywood friends really would appreciate the uh, you know, the way that he's behaving. It's really out of line. It's got to happen soon. So once again, yeah. last, last clip I have is this bishop wants to blame any violence on Asians. They're all trying to spin it that it's all Trump's fault that this is happening. Donald Trump is a racist. Yeah. And Donald Trump, by calling it the China virus, even after so many people came out and said, don't do that, it is going to incite violence against Asian Americans. He refused and kept going. It wasn't the China virus. He was calling it the Wuhan flu or my favorite Kung flu. That's what he was saying. It was hilarious. We can all agree on that. Yeah, it, It's normal yeah. to to call a disease by from the area from which it came. Ebola, West Nile. Gay AIDS. It it's normally <laughs> the San Francisco AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. You got anything else on here, Doug? I got one more stuttering John, number fifty two. Like, let's get to the point, Bishop. And 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 I've been saying this, uh, and I DM you this. Donald Trump and his rhetoric was racist. <laughs> <laughs> I DM'd you that, Carl. <laughs> I remember I DM'd you that. So that's remember. Uh, The description of his show now, because it used to be take down the dotard known as Donald Trump. Now it says, as we continue to defeat Trumpism. 
So I guess this can go on for as long as possible. If it's just Trumpism, whatever the fuck that is, let's defeat oh, it. Let's God. take it down. All right. Well, Adam, thanks so much for coming on, buddy. And uh, we'll continue to follow you and, and your channel over there. Thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, check out my website, adamgoldstein.info. You can get all the stuff there. And I just want to tell all the listeners right now, sign up for the WATP bonus episodes. I did it, and it's worth it. It is so worth it. I love the crossover episodes with Dick. Just really great job, man. I love it. And I love when Anthony and you do the crossover thing, too. That's great. This guy's making a lot of sense. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> all right. Thanks, man. Glad that... Uh... Anthony enjoyed that. The other thing that Anthony has enjoyed, and producer Chris is the star of this, that would be our Stuttering John deepfake videos <laughs> up on YouTube. Kevin, have you seen these videos? I have not seen them yet. What though. the fuck? <laughs> All right, we gotta get we gotta send to Kevin a link to these videos. Yes. Uh, this is uh, Ant's take on that. They've been doing these deep fakes of Stuttering John where they put his face on somebody else doing the Stuttering John show, and people actually think it's John. They, they go like, they think it's fucking John. It's fake. And I'd be like, I would watch John's show if this was it. Because it's hilarious. It's like stuttering John dressed up in a cockroach outfit. <laughs> and, and he's got this beautiful house, like inside of a house behind him. And then it goes, and you see it's, the green screen falls away. And it's a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these podcasts? It's fucking hilariously funny. <laughs> and I got to give credit to Circus Midget who may or may not be the guy who calls him as Cuomo, who actually put those videos together. And that was all him on the green screen fail. That was very funny. He did some, he put some nice touches on those. So, Quality job. Yeah. You know. I saw somebody else photoshopped Cedric John in a cockroach costume. I don't know who that was, but I saw it on the internet as well. I just want to give it up to the person in the discord a month ago that put up some dude dancing around in the, in a cockroach costume. And that's what I said, hey, can we buy one of these? So whoever did that, uh, thank that you very much. That was the inspiration. Much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that exists? Of course it does. Of course it yeah. does. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Gagia! Stuttering John was on the Bob Seska show. And actually, Heather W. sent me a link to this as soon as it happened. And I'm not familiar with Bob Seska, but apparently he's a Washington, D.C. guy. Been a broadcast. Actually, let me pull up his website because I just I thought his um the shit he's taking credit for was really fucking funny. Because I you know I like to research and see what's doing and see what people are up to. Try to understand what I'm listening to and why I'm listening to it. So this guy, Bob, he's got his uh, Bob has done just about everything in the world of politics and entertainment, especially after he first started working on the Internet in 1997. Let's do this list. Number one, successfully won a local election in 2005. Number two, designed numerous websites, including the one you're reading now. That's number two. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just fucking made me laugh so hard. Like, wow. I need to stop there. I know. I looked at the office, and I made fucking a Wix website. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive, sir. Very impressive. Uh, there's other things out here, too. Produced and directed music videos for bands like Yes and Meatloaf. Now, based Ooh. on this guy's age, I'm guessing these weren't videos that they put out in their prime. I'm just going to throw it out there. It wasn't like <laughs> bad out of hell. I'm just going to throw it out there. The Number four, ordered groceries online once. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I don't know. Did his taxes by hand. This poor Bob Seska guy's catching shrapnel just because he had fucking Suttering John on. But he deserved it. Like, Suttering yeah. John is not a guest that you get on your show. He's a guy that you yeah. goof on incessantly <laughs> for Patreon money. All right. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is great. Right at the very beginning... I'm falling over in my fucking chair laughing when he explains why John's famous, how you might know him. You might know John from his legendary role as a cast member on the old Howard Stern radio show. And, of course, there was John's brief gig as the producer of the Stephanie Miller show. No mention of the Tonight <laughs> Show! What? He was on the Tonight Show for 10 years! This guy's like, you know, Stuttering John, Howard Stern, Stephanie Miller, here he is! Stuttering John! That's Not even John fucking <laughs> brought, brings that one out. 
So I thought that I, I was told fucking... you I, for, I forgot I forgot about that that credit. <laughs> <laughs> that was fan fucking fantastic. Oh my god, you think John forgets anything? He remembers the first time he made Howard Stern laugh, not on the show. Not like a bit that he did, just the first thing that he said that made Stern laugh. First time I made Howard laugh was when they asked me if I knew how to drive a stick and I you know I go yeah so wait the uh, the brake is on the right the gas pedal's on the left and you know and then Howard laughed <laughs> that's terrific that's terrific so you hear Bob in the background really selling it and yeah uh, Fudgical 2018 thank you for reminding me that Bob got his start in radio as an intern for the Don and Mike show so I guess fake laughing at bad jokes is something that you learn when you work for the Don and Mike show, I'm guessing. It's a, probably, got it's really craft. Good <laughs> probably got really good at that. Yes. All right. <clears throat> the very first question. Now, I think this, Bob, this guy, Bob, is a good broadcaster. He sounds like he has shit together. He has almost as many Patreon subscribers as we do. So, you know, he's doing pretty well for himself. And uh, the contrast here between Bob and Stuttering John is glaring it's very obvious that one of these things is not like the other you know i know exactly what you're talking about when you're doing your show i uh i'm just like you we're both like one man bands right you do all of your own booking and all of the production and everything like that yeah it's a it's a real challenge isn't it yeah i got i mean the guest i mean getting guests is not the easiest thing in the world no you know i mean especially when i'm you know you know i'm trying to book congressmen congresswomen i mean I've been very successful at it, but it's not, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a walk in the park. <laughs> but being be, 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 be the one man band is not easy. You got to play the bass drum. Yeah, Bob is like getting guests is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's it's like playing. You know, if you 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 you, 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 you have to do everything yourself. You know. <laughs> Oh boy! And John doesn't even know how words are pronounced. You know, you know, I was able to start making good money, and then I became like, you know, I, a fixture on that show. In fact, so much so that in the advertising packet that Channel Nine sent out to potential sponsors, there were three people on the cover: Howard, Robin, and myself. So wow. I, I became an integral part of that show, and and and, and that's the way the news goes <laughs> integral part of the show not integral. integral i became an integral part he was on sales collateral and he won't shut up about it you don't even understand channel nine on their sales collateral had a photo of me whatever that's not an impressive thing <laughs> now it's uh everyone knows that the reason why Senator john got the internship on howard stern is because mitch fatel was an intern on the show and mitch got into a car accident could no longer drive to his internship. So he told Gary Delabate, hey, there's this guy I go to NYU with, Stuttering John. He's got a stutter. You'll love him. Well, I didn't say Stuttering John, but John, the guy who stutters a lot. You'll love him. You should interview him. And Mitch gave John some interviewing tips. So with Mitch, did he warn you about what it would be like to go and work at the Stern Show, that it wasn't your ordinary internship? Um, He, like, you know, I, you know, he was a fan of Howard just like I was, so he didn't really warned me the, the one thing he did tell me to do was before my interview with baba Bowie, he told me to get a haircut and you know and you know and wear like a nice suit jacket and uh and everything else and so things that everybody knows about interviewing <laughs> is you should get a haircut and look nice he's like yeah, yeah he you know, told Mitch me. Helped me out a lot he told me to wear pants you know i mean <laughs> He told so me, I did. He told me, don't jerk off during the interview. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> he'll do that. <laughs> Great. I, John is just the worst guest because all of his stories are the same shit that you've heard a million fucking times. Of course, he had to bring up the thing with Howard saying that he should abort his first kid. But there were multiple occasions where I wanted to lay Howard out. I mean, I'll just give you the most probably popular one was when he told me to abort my first kid because i wasn't fit to be a father oh my god i mean, I mean it's the greatest hits of stuttering john he just always plays <laughs> them every venue that he goes to it's all the, the greatest hits he talks about what a toxic environment it was to work on the howard stern show and can we just have one month where people aren't a fucking victim just 
I mean, Centering John, this guy has fallen into success backwards throughout his entire life, and he's crying like he's a fucking victim. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm not I'm not playing along with that. I don't know. Like, even though people will say I'm thin skinned. Yes! <laughs> we will say you're thin skinned. You get very butthurt when we goof on you. You get attorneys involved. That's called being thin skinned when people do things that are not illegal in any single way that you still want to try to sue people over. Uh, people say I'm thin skinned, but <laughs> he talks about the nicknames that he used to have. And <laughs> I didn't. Maybe I forgot, but I like these. Growing up, I was called Stutterface. I was called uh, Skip. Uh, I was called <laughs> MC Stammer. <laughs> MC Stammer? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was called Thin Skin. <laughs> I, was, I called was called Needle Dick. <laughs> Sue Happy. <Needle> Dick. <laughs> Sue, <laughs> Sue Everyone. Lots of Sue ones. I was called a no talent fraud. I was called a Mary Sue. <laughs> Recorder hero. <laughs> Jesus uh, most likely to uh, be at the roast of. Uh, 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 <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce that word. Korea about do Jabal. Korea dream do Jabal. Yeah. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Pamela Anderson. Pamela. MC Stammer is a fucking funny one. It's pretty good. I like that. So John's friends grow up are funnier than John. There's proof right there. He's jealous. He's jealous. Oh, man, Stutterface is also kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but that's... It's they, not they clever. Dun- <laughs> Dunderhead, Dunderhead, <laughs> retard. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. So he talks about his issues with YouTube. And uh, ugh, this is always fun. I just... I love the logic here. We've talked about this a number of times, but since he brought it to our buddy Bob, I figured I'd play it. I'm telling you, you know, Bob, I, you know, first of all, YouTube makes it extremely difficult. I don't know if you have had this experience, but I- I've complained to them, but they purge my chat room. Like if I get up to like 500 people live in the chat room, yeah, out of nowhere, it'll go down to 350. And then everyone complains that they got booted by YouTube. And, and I've asked them on a number of occasions to help me with the issue and to no avail. <laughs> no fucking way. John still thinks that YouTube is purging people out of his channel because he's just, you know, so Let, controversial. Let's wait till he gets to 500 and then we'll... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 150 off. Yeah, I know. I love that too. He's got the numbers in his head. He's got it all figured out. As soon as I start talking, it they all drop. The numbers <laughs> drop. <laughs> oh boy. So then John explains how to troll him on YouTube, which is a service. I, I appreciate that he did this. It, you know, like even though you could block words, mm-hmm. you know, from chat, you know, like they give you that opportunity. So I could block, for instance, the N word or the. Yeah homophobic f word and you know i could block that but but my trolls then come in with the name seven times as the n word and i can't <laughs> block the name mm-hmm. <laughs> did you hear bob laugh he's like wait the, the guy's name is the n word seven times <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he wants some attention <laughs> That's fucking amazing. The guy's like, wait a second, what was the troll's name again? Well, it was, it was Edward, but seven times in a row. Ne- Nicholas shit. Cage, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. I love that he explains it. So, so I block these words, but if you make your username that word, then I can't block you. Words that you could make your username are the Edward, the Epsler, Susanna is a con. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, anything. <laughs> oh, fuck uh. me. John also doesn't understand how phrases work. The first thing I want you to say is when you're, you get to him on the phone is, hi, I'm a stutterer. Just take that, you know, uh, you know, elephant out of the room. And then as soon yeah. as you do that. Take the elephant out of the room. Take that 800-pound gorilla and the elephant. And both of you guys get the fuck out of this room. <laughs> 
you got to make like a tree and leaf. <laughs> make, like, make like a tree and elephant out of the room. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We, gotta, we just got to get this elephant out of the room, Gavin. That's, yeah. that's how you get over <laughs> your, your stutter. Boy, if I could be a 800-pound gorilla on the wall uh, doing that conversation. All right, so this is John about how he's not bitter. This is not me being bitter. This is just me telling the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, sure. <laughs> I don't think John's bitter in any way. Do you think that? I mean, the fact that he mm -mm. rails on Howard Stern and everyone that he worked with who won't talk to him anymore incessantly and nonstop when he's not talking about the dotard and Trumpism. I don't think he's bitter. And I for sure know that he wouldn't do something like what he's accusing Howard Stern of doing. Howard's going on about how people should set up 10 fake Twitter accounts and reach out to guests telling them that, you know, Howard is the best. And I mean, and they should do the Howard Stern show. Now, Bob, I know this is hard for you to believe that Howard Stern would be, you know, uh, you know, someone who would champion people and on his staff setting up 10 fake Twitter accounts. But believe me, that p picture is in my book. So John, who we know sets up sock accounts to praise him and call out people who don't praise him is, has the balls to be, and you know what Howard Stern tell people to do is to set up fake Twitter accounts. Can you believe it? <laughs> John, That's actually, actually a really good idea. Actually. I, <laughs> I know, right? It. I think it's where he got the idea from. <laughs> it's his internal monologue. So oh, wait, yeah, you're saying that Maple Leaf fan and Yankee fan could both be like, I don't know, huge fans of the Suttery John podcast? All right. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good idea. Maybe Sal D could get out of this action, too. Maybe he's a big fan of the Suttery John podcast. John is very careful in this interview. He doesn't want to say anything that can get him sued. So this is not me saying anything libelous or slanderous. John, ah, figure out the difference between libel and slander. You can't say anything that's libel. I don't know why he keeps saying this. And, you know, it's both uh, slander and libel. No. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I, it just gets me very annoyed that he doesn't look this up. Because he keeps saying it over and over again. And he loves talking about the law. And it's pretty basic shit. And this is it when he's talking about how there's misspellings on the presentation. Did you ever see that video, Kevin, of Howard Stern in 2013? Oh, yeah, yeah. The one through his staff or yeah. whatever. Right? Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. And the the PowerPoint is garbage. And he's talking about how, you know, the, it's got misspellings in it, which is hilarious coming from John. Yeah, you know, he's got this PowerPoint. There's misspellings in it. He calls the PowerPoint presentation a spreadsheet. <laughs> this, this guy is so fucking stupid like you can't goof on people if you don't understand what the fuck you're talking about at any point uh, 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 he opened up Lotus on one two three and put it on the screen for us <laughs> if he would have said that I'd give him credit for knowing something <laughs> uh, alright so this is then John has to talk about how close he was with Howard like, I'd, I was in Howard's inner circle. I'd go out to dinner with Howard. Our wives were friends. I would sleep over his house, and we would have great times. I would go jogging with Howard. I'd work out with Howard. So I was, like, one of the few that were in his inner circle. You know, Gary wasn't. Gary was never invited to any of those things. It was like, you know, there was only a, a certain few of us. Something weird about an adult bragging about sleeping over at another adult's house. <laughs> I mean, before this podcast, producer Chris and I were good friends. I'd sleep over at his house. What? That's called, that's called getting drunk. That's what that is. That's not a, that's not a good thing. It's not it was an, an, an amazing host. He, he, he put out, a, he put, 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 put out uh, 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 chips and salsa for us. Uh, we, we, we'd sit in sleeping bags and we'd watch, uh, we'd watch cartoons in the morning. He talks specifically about the people that would hang out with Howard and the people who didn't hang out with Howard. And he was one of the guys who hung out with Howard. Meanwhile, all he does is talk about what an asshole Howard is and how Ellen DeGeneres doesn't hold a candle to Howard Stern and the work environment and the toxicity. I don't understand why he's like, but we were best friends. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe you want to leave that part out if you're trying to say what an asshole he was. I don't he went know. jogging. He kept trying to run away. I don't get it. <laughs> But John has a problem with everyone he used to work with. Don, Buck, Don Buckwald is the devil. <laughs> Mel Carmazin is not much better. And, you know, and they were just really 
you know, uh, like, you know, a bullying place. Oh, you think the Howard Stern show was a, I, I listened to the show. Yes. They ripped on people a lot. Yeah, it was it was on air. I know. <laughs> they're all fucking backstage shit. Can you believe I go in the studio and they're telling jokes about me? <laughs> what kind of what kind of work environment is that? This is it's untenable. <laughs> Damn it. Oh man. You know what I liked about this show though that I listened to is that this guy is old fashioned. The Bob Seska show. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well done, Bob Seska. Uh, do you want me to do a, a WATP one like that? WATP. You know, I think we have. Let me look at my jingles page. Actually, yeah, didn't isn't there one? I thought that there was one from. Yeah, let me see what point. I got here. I got I got uh, this. WATP. WATP. That's something like that. And then there's this. <laughs> what the fuck? Are they talking about? <laughs> this is gonna make you should use that. <laughs> I know we're going back to season one again. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, oh before fuck? you killed off Kevin. His cobra commander is gonna rock ya. His Yakov Smurf is gonna shock ya. Then he's gonna make with the waka waka. It's Kevin's funny voices. It sounds like a gay porno in here. <laughs> oh boy. Ooh. All right, let's get back to this compelling interview that I wasted my time with and now I'm wasting your time with. So <clears throat> apparently this Bob Seska guy is connected to Stephanie Miller. And the reason why this is important is because after the Tonight Show, John worked on the Stephanie Miller show. He didn't last very long. I believe he wasn't a great employee. Let's put it that way. I don't want to be slanderous or libelous. So uh, apparently... <laughs> There's a feud that was going on between Bob and John because Bob's connected to Stephanie and John had this issue with Stephanie. There was a period of time not too long ago where I felt like um, you were trying to develop some sort of um, some sort of fracas, some sort of rivalry between you and me. And it, it sort of circulated around the Stephanie Miller show and things like that. And between I just, you and me. Yeah, yeah. You were talking about the uh, Stephanie Miller show on your show, and um, I feel like I was being drawn into it to a certain degree, uh, and maybe it was partly my fault. I don't know. But uh, what I'm trying to get at here is I'm not necessarily... I, I, the, the only thing I remember is that I was trashing Stephanie, and yeah. then you said, John, <laughs> I can't be on your show if you're going to trash Stephanie because, you know, I'm I'm a regular on her show, and then... And then I recently, and then I just backed off for trash and, you know, Stephanie, but yeah, I mean. Yeah. He's such an asshole. This person who employed yeah. him, who he was a drug producer for, he's like, well, you know, I was trashing Stephanie. It's part of the I job description, trashing. right? <laughs> this next clip, it's even funnier that he's like, wait, we have a feud. What's going on? Why do we have beef? I, I, I was, I didn't know, but I was asking this girl on, you know. Uh, on Twitter, hey, you know, you know, where do you live? Uh, you know, you know, I want to grab a drink, and then I found out it was your girlfriend. <laughs> you hit on Kimberly on Twitter. <laughs> was hitting on this what a girlfriend. Dick. <laughs> but Kevin, I, I want you to know that he didn't do that on purpose. I mean, here's the thing: I would never hit on anyone's girlfriend. That's the whole thing, and that's yeah. why I was like, oh man. I wish you weren't a liar. He would never hit on someone's girlfriend, obviously. <laughs> I was like, hey, you want, you want to get a drink or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I've seen the DMs between him and chicks on Twitter. Pe girls who are a million times out of his league, and he just tweets at them, DMs them incessantly, and hits on them. And it's funny, too, because you see the timeline, and it'll be like, hey, you want to grab a drink sometime? Oh, I have a boyfriend. Two months go by. Hey, you still got a boyfriend? Yeah, I do. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, that's literally what the fucking conversation is going back and forth. <laughs> when someone says they have a boyfriend, whether they do or not, they're blowing you off. <laughs> that's what that means. I, I, I used to, to, to jog with, with how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> I used to chase after Stern. <laughs> yeah. One time, one time we were jogging, and uh, Howard had to tie his shoe. I was, I went six miles without him. He, he, he went the other way. <laughs> oh, Missy says that John hit on her right in front of Anthony. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> He's the worst. What? 
I wish Missy would come out and talk about the time that John went over to their house and played poker and drank all their tequila and uh, and passed out. That would be fun. But Oh, also, he didn't have to borrow money from his friend because he didn't even bring money for the poker game. <laughs> oh my god who goes to a poker oh, game like, oh I don't have any cash uh, is that a problem I just brought <laughs> chips do, <laughs> potato do, chips do you, do you take MasterCard <laughs> oh I don't have that either players club <laughs> do, you, do, do you take discover <laughs> this is all a legend I don't know what the truth is I don't want to be libelous alright <laughs> alright um uh, so this is fun, talking about John's uh, drinking problem. You know, because when I did tweet those angry things towards Stephanie, like, of course, John, you know, you know, everyone goes to the same, you know, the same thing with me. And, like, I was on John's show when he said, you know, I guess you were drinking. And I'm like, no, John. Like, everyone assumes that I wake up with a bottle of beer in my hand. Like, I, I don't know... <laughs> Like, I don't really know where this comes. I know I make jokes about me drinking beer, but he doesn't wake up with a bottle of beer. It's a can. It's a rail. <laughs> he goes, I don't know where this comes from. He celebrates his alcoholism all over the Internet. And then he's like, I don't know why people think I'm drunk all the time. And he's very brand loyal, right? He, very brand. We all know what his brand is. Everybody knows. <laughs> He wakes up in the morning, rolls over, and a cockroach just hands him a beer. <laughs> that, thank you, thank you. That's the next video. <laughs> thank you, Kevin. You thank, know you made you. it when you, this happens. Yeah. <laughs> I love it that he does something embarrassing on the internet that no one would do in their right mind. And people are like, well, John's probably drunk. And he's like, fuck you, I did that shit sober. <laughs> like, well, okay, but that's not good either. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> So this is another lie. I do my show on a regular basis. I don't drink before or during my show. The only one I do <laughs> is beer on the balcony, which is in, in the title. This just reminded me of the time he had two guests on that were political pundits, and he was on, he was trying to be serious, and he's drinking his Coors Light, and he had to tell each guest, I play this on my show, he had to tell each guest, uh, listen, I'm, I'm drinking a beer today, but it's just because there was a lot of traffic and I, I drank too much coffee and then I had a Mountain Dew and I just got too wired, so I got to come down. It's like, John, pour the beer into a cup and pretend you're drinking Sprite. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Hiding alcoholism is not that difficult after 40 years of it. You can figure it out, but this guy cannot. I did. Started a, a podcast in an in, in island, island called Cores on the Moors. <laughs> John has had some strokes lately. Or I don't know how recent this is, honestly. I don't know a lot about John's health issues, except for that he looks terrible. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> anyway, this is Jesus. <laughs> I know. <laughs> as soon as it came out, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I have to cut a lot of this out. Anyway, this is why you listen live, people, because I say shit that I'm like, ah, oh, this is not good. <laughs> This is John talking about the first stroke that he had. So I have my first TIA, which is a mini stroke. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> on on, I was closing up my set at the uh, Bart Reed's comic strip in El Paso, <laughs> and, Jesus, and suddenly <laughs> I love what? that he was, Bob laughs at the gig that he was playing. Oh, no. That wasn't the joke. No. <laughs> <laughs> Play it again. <laughs> I just killed it. Sorry. Oh man. So. John has had multiple, he's telling the stories how he has had multiple strokes. He can't feel the left side of his body. And the place that he goes for health advice is, of course, the pub. And I catch the ball with my left hand, and then my whole left side goes numb again. Yeah. So then I'm at the pub, and after two days, people are going, John, go to the doctor. So I go to the hospital. They immediately check me in. <laughs> so it turned out the losers at the pub were like, John, you should probably <laughs> check this out if you can't feel half of your body. There might be, like, a health concern there. He's like, all right, I'll go to the fucking All the party. day drunks gave him good advice. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're like, yeah, you should probably get that checked out. I know. I'm picturing the uh, the Ditka guys on Saturday Night Live. Where it's like, I just <laughs> having another heart attack. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do a couple push-ups. <laughs> You'll be fine. Uh, so John is explaining at the end of this interview <clears throat> that 
he wants to get away from talking politics because as we all know this political show is a kind of a new thing for him over the last couple of years before that he was trying to do this comedy show i guess i think it's i think it's still under comedy the centering john podcast but he just can't get away from it because i would have changed the format of my podcast and just went back to entertainment mm-hmm. but the problem is is that Trumpism is still alive and well. Oh, so there's people who still want civil liberties, and that's why John, with his all-important show where he talks into an echo chamber, has to continue to interview these guests about how terrible Trumpism is. The the people need me. You know, the guy who can't even be on Facebook is taken down off of Facebook. That that guy. Like, we gotta we got to really worry about him. The guy you cannot hear from if you want to, who's been banned from everything. He's the Alex Jones of presidents. That's the guy you're worried about? <laughs> okay. I got I caught him on the phone one time. All right, last thing that I thought was funny. I'm confident of my intelligence. <laughs> do, I to, do I have to explain that one? <laughs> I'm confident of my intelligence. You shouldn't be. It sounded like that was followed by a butt. <laughs> yeah i yeah, know yeah. it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't he was talking about what a great interviewer he is and he's just like i let people talk and i listen and i'm confident of my intelligence but I, maybe i'll learn something if i listen and he goes out to talk about how he gets people on with different points of view i'm like no you no you don't what are you talking about anywho <laughs> that's the stuttering john segment and i'm sorry that went on so long but i had to listen to an hour and 10 minutes of it so you had to listen to some version of that. Speaking of sticking up for Stuttering John. These transitions I do are just so flawless. I've got to get the PD in here to tell me how great I am. All right, I just have one quick clip from Stuttering John because I've been talking about John way too much. Right? Yeah. We went on about it when Vinny was on. We did the crossover episode. Vinny oh. talked extensively about something he was working on behind the scenes with Ooh, Stuttering John. That's yeah, fun. yeah. That's a fun thing to talk I about. I hear this. Uh, I talked about Stuttering John with Drew and Mike this past week. If you subscribe to our Patreon, you get the mini bonus episodes. We talked extensively about Stuttering John on there. But this clip just, I my ears perked up <laughs> when I heard this because Stuttering John used to get legitimate gigs. Yep. He's stuttering John from the tonight show and from the Howard Stern show. Yeah. And now he's getting booked to do a private party and he's bragging about it. And uh, I just booked myself. I'm doing a roast for a party on Saturday night. So that should be fun. Um, They just reached out to me. So I'm doing that on Saturday. I love doing roasts. You know, I was the head writer of the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast as well, <laughs> oh, and I did. I didn't know. I've done the Howard Stern show roast, which, where I totally kicked ass. Uh, oh. I've done plenty of roasts. I roast Randy Jackson from Zebra. I just did a roast with some attorneys. I I love doing it. Uh, <laughs> Wait so a minute. This should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Eric, oh, wait, loser. And did he say Andy Jackson from Zebra? He said Randy Jackson from Zebra. Didn't Randy he? Jackson. Okay. Is that, I, I don't is that know. The Randy I, I, Jackson, the one from Journey, who's also on uh, American Idol. American Idol. Now he's on that show. Uh, name that tune. It can't be. Can't be. Do you know I is, I, Eric? There, well, there is a band called Zebra. It's an old school hair band. Right. So it's and so I'm trying to. Somebody. Yeah, it's Randy Jackson from the. I'm looking at it right now. It's from some band. dude in the band Zebra. <laughs> that is you. You don't say. Oh yeah, man. I. Uh, uh, I roasted Randy Jackson, you know, from Zebra. What the fuck? <laughs> no one ever heard of. That's insane. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Well, uh, the other funny thing in that clip is he goes, "I'm amazing at roasting." I was, I did that Howard Stern roast. That's on the internet. He bombed. Yeah. It's... So famously on that roast, go watch it. No one laughed at a single thing he did. He was all over the place. He was nervous. He was sweaty. He was trying to do prop comedy. That's that whole brag, that whole brag thing. Yeah, I'm funny. Uh, I'm not a whole. I, I, I'm a great roaster. Oh, I'm ranked you... 234th on Patreon. <laughs> 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 All those idiot. stupid brags yeah. that people do. It's so fun yeah. to fuck with them, though. I did. I tried like a slow burn 
bit with him where I changed my profile picture on YouTube to Sal Volca- Sal Volcano. Yeah. And I changed my name to Saul Volcano <laughs> and tried and I was like, hey, write some bits for us and uh, call our production office. And I put the WATP phone number in there. Oh, that's I was amazing. Just, like, that trying would be great. to get a reaction that's out why, of him. That's why Andy's the GOAT, man. This guy goes above and beyond. <laughs> oh, fuck. Saul that is Volcano. <laughs> Oh, that's God, that, that is perfect. He wouldn't know who that is, though, would he? I was hoping he would. You know? Maybe he would. He's know. so busy looking at the chat, though. It's interesting to watch him react to the, those things. That's why I thought maybe he would do something. I don't know. Try uh, something different. Oh, right. Always, what a, uh, uh, one more thing, uh, Carl. Yeah, I'm always ahead. amazed. Sorry, I, did, I didn't mean to Chad Zumach interrupt you there. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm always amazed at how he keeps going because of the fucking every week these haymakers come right at him. And he seems to, I mean, he doesn't necessarily shrug it off, but I would throw myself out of a fucking window. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm glad we don't have a bit about Eric Zane every week on this show. Oh, shit, man. Oh, fuck. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, stuttering John Melendez is up my ass this week. <laughs> it's fucking incredible. <laughs> so he starts off, he, he does an extra show on Wednesday. or No, this was the Tuesday show. The show on Wednesday was with Brent Hatley. The Tuesday show, he had a little space in between the guests. Mm-hmm. And he decides he wants to talk about how people, somebody doxed Nikki B, which is one of his moderators. Mm. And he's very upset about this person who docks Nikki B. And apparently they're calling her bad names, which is terrible. And John is going to be the tough guy here and stick up for Nikki B. Bully me, you mother. You know where I live. You know where I hang out at Pickwick Pub in Woodland Hills. You want to bully somebody? You come bully me. We'll see how that we'll see how that works out for you. Stick to me. Adam Goldstein says, Nikki B where the B stands for cunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, well played, my well friend. Played. Well, AdamGoldstein.info. <laughs> so <laughs> John's going, he, t- he just explained where he hangs out. Yeah. He just told everybody and he's telling people to bully him, which I don't know if that's the best move to make. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he, that's what Guys, he did. I gotta go. <laughs> and then his other moderator is Hockey Puck and he fucking throws him under the bus. You want to bully Sean Hockey Counter 25? Bully him. Whoa. He's a guy. He can handle it. Let's meet you and him fight. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I love that. He's like, yeah, but I mean, why don't you fucking dox Hockey Puck over here? He's like, what, what did I do? Why, why are you doing this to me? Oh, wow. <laughs> so that was fun. Okay, let's get into the, the meat of this episode. And this is time to get buy some boots to shake it, everybody. Another person i won't mention the person's name although i know where he lives and i know who he is has now committed libel and slander against me on his show i have talked to my attorney the great michael popak you my friend will be seeing a lawsuit coming down the pike for making up an egregious lie that could hurt me financially by actually having the audacity to lie and say that I was fired from Stephanie Miller because I was a drunk. Wow. I've never seen Chris laugh so hard. Oh. Also, audacity yeah. and rudeness. <laughs> the Jesus. guy who spends multiple hours a week <laughs> drinking live on the internet is upset. All right, sorry, go ahead. Well, you just came in at libel. Oh, yeah, that's right. Now you'll be hearing from the attorney. I think what producer Chris was laughing at is he goes, I know where you live, and I know who you are. Yeah. Like, I, I know the exact house. I just don't know which one in the house yeah. is this person who did this. <laughs> well, he's pro-doxing sometimes and anti-doxing oh, yeah. other times. Yeah, oh, I dude, it. I have a fucking example of that. So this is, he goes on beer on the balcony. And fr- this is uh, Friday night. And... He forgot to make it a private video. Of course. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm going to pause this 
throughout the clip, but this is just so fucking funny. You know, I get these trolls like, t you know, they try and hate on me for so many things. And I don't really give a shit. Once in a while, you know, Sean will tell me if he, and he don't even go on there anymore, but if he does, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, goof on me all you want. But there, they, there are certain things that when you say, now the trolls, believe me, I'm working on finding them. <sighs> and believe me, it's coming down. I should know the names of the recent ones by Monday. Wait a second. He doesn't care if you troll him. He can take jokes. It's not a big deal, but he's going to find out your name by Monday. Wow. Okay, now it goes even further. And do you hear that, Yuri Kremlin? That you, I will know where you live by Monday. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and I am not an attorney. Is that a threat? He's sending merch to them. Oh, maybe he's sending them autographed t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't that sound a lot like a threat? I will find out who you are, and I will find out where you live. What are you going to do with that information, John? You will find out. Yeah. That at, at the very least, that's some legal gray area. That's it's, some it's murky ominous. shit. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But especially when he, right after he said, I don't care if you troll me. I don't even pay attention to the trolls. Hockey puck doesn't pay attention to the trolls. Yeah. However, what we are doing is employing a private investigator to find out where you live. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, but here's the thing. I don't mind. Fucking say all the shit you oh, want. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. It's so confusing. <laughs> Patrick Michael makes more sense than this guy. <laughs> but there, there are, you know, there are repercussions for when you lie and say things that are not true. Oh, yeah. For instance, Santa's listening. Saying that my, I can only see my kids with adult supervision. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Okay. So I'm going to point something out, John. And I would, I've never said that. I've, I don't know anything about your family situation. Yeah. But you should have ended that thought right there. Instead, he goes out to say this. I've taken my kids on vacations, just me and them everywhere. I see my kids at least once or twice a week with just me and my kids. But they lie. And then you have this loser in rock. All right, I'll get back to that. So, Crouch, if someone said to you, you're not even allowed to see your kids, you would just go, well, that's not true. Yeah. You wouldn't go, I get them on Tuesdays. That's right. Every other Thursday. Every other Thursday. I'm allowed to take them to the Burger King <laughs> and back home. <laughs> I know. It's like, I, I feel like you're giving too many details, John. It makes yeah. you sound like maybe you're guilty. Yeah. And this is why people troll you. Yeah. And you have this loser in Rochester who decided to finally make the key mistake by actually saying that I was fired from a show, which I wasn't, for being drunk, which is now a defamation of character. <gasps> Libel and slander. Oh. And guess what, you fuckface? I got enough money to pay attorneys all day and i got good ones <laughs> <laughs> so another thing he's projecting he's projecting i'm gonna be like you don't have money for attorneys no, no, no i do have money for attorneys uh, well, who would say that I, and by the way i do have money got good ones winning attorneys so oh. you better save your fucking shekel <laughs> they don't just lose i'm coming after you you prick don't make lies like that you know why because they're untrue <laughs> he knows his vocabulary yeah man i shouldn't make lies that are untrue what a and it's fuck. a defamation of character and it could affect my work in the future <laughs> and those are the damages because if you hurt me from getting hired because you're fucking lying you got a problem and i look forward to that case me too buddy yeah we all do we all do Okay, so that was from Friday night. Holy Skip back to Tuesday. Fuck. I know. Man. Skip back to Tuesday. But he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Well, yeah, he no, doesn't care. he was waiting for me to slip up oh, and say something yeah. he could see. That was the key mistake. Yeah. Key mistake. He laid out a trap. He's playing 40 chess, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> sure is. First, I took down the dotard, yeah. and now I'm taking down the K-tard. <laughs> We've underestimated this man. <laughs> Producer Chris, we've underestimated him. <laughs> Quick.
quick, abort, hit inject. Well, he does have your number. You are a fuck face. Uh, I know. Fair enough. I quit Stephanie Miller. That's the first thing. I quit. I wasn't fired. I was never fired. So I am going to clear the air on this. I do have clips of him explaining what happened with Stephanie Miller. In fact, John's bony arms on Twitter sent me <laughs> the June 25th, 2019 episode where he talks all about the Stephanie Miller show. So we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. We'll figure out what actually happened. Cause what I said was not correct. Secondly, I have never ever drank ever on the job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds fair. (laughs) All right. So this goes on for a while. He's talking about specifically in episode 252, the curse of Silverthorn. Now I have since edited this out of the show because if I've said something that's incorrect and it could cause harm, I wouldn't want that to still be on the show. No. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) However, I was joking it was a joke. This is a comedy show where we yeah. tell jokes about public people, and this is proof that it was a joke. By you saying that, you admitted before you said it that it was libelous and slanderous, yet you still said it, and now I have tape of it, and you are going to get sued, and you don't even think it's not going to happen, and don't think I don't have the money to make that happen because you're very wrong when it <laughs> comes to that. Again with this bullshit. I know. Dude, you can't pay your gas bill. You're begging people online for single dollars. You are borrowing your neighbor's Wi-Fi. You're upset that YouTube can't send you $15 twice a month. You can't flush your toilet. You don't (laughs) flush your fucking toilet, for God's sake. So the fact that I... He goes, he even admitted it was libel and slander. I know the definitions of libel and slander. So the fact that I set up the joke with, I don't want to be libelous or slanderous, but blah, 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 proves that it was a joke. That's how you know it's a joke because it means a lie. And I know that it would have been slander, not libel. You fucking moron, figure it out. You still don't know the difference. Ask your attorney. Yeah. He'll charge you a certain amount of money to yeah. return your email, but you got it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how do you set up a joke? I know this is lost on him I don't do a political show asshole this is a comedy show where we goof on people anyway let's get back to this all you know is the bullshit that you want to spew and the hatred that you want to spew but now it's going to bite you in the ass because now I got you you said something that I don't mind you could goof on my stuttering goof on that at one time in my life I had cockroaches that were probably one of the boxes oh my god you can goof on those things. The oh one time God. in his life you got crutches. Can I just point out, so we, <laughs> he keeps using the word hatred. Yes. When you listen to WATP, it's us assholes laughing. When you listen to his show, it is pure hatred. Thank He's you. like accusing you of being full of hate, and his whole show is, fuck this motherfucker, I'm going to sue the fuck out of him, that son of a bitch. Well, th- good point. I have been called a smile talker, so there's not a lot of <laughs> hatred going on over here. Also... He pretends that we're goofing on him for his stutter. Yeah. N- we're never. goofing on him for being a, a talentless hack. Yeah. And and when we first goofed on him, he wanted to sue us then. And his co-host Royce was like, well, you know, they're allowed to play clips. They can't play clips of my show. Meanwhile, he's playing clips of the Howard Stern show. And he thinks he has the right to do it. But yeah. we don't have the right to do it. I think what he's upset about is that he has zero talent. And this Mr. Magooing into lucrative jobs yeah. has ended for him. Yeah. I think that's what the problem actually is. Yeah, of course. We, we, don't, we make fun of your stutter in uh, that's not the main fucking factor. Yeah. That's not our main focus for this stuff. All right. You think you could get away with that without having legal, legal ramifications? You're oh out of your fucking God. mind. So just keep in mind, it's coming down the pike. Holy shit, this guy. Yeah. He's so angry. Yeah, it's unbelievable. There's a lot of hatred there. All right, let's see what else he says. And you know who you are. <laughs> and that better that show better get deleted. Immediately. Immediately. Because I know you're watching. And believe me, Michael Polpock has the tape. We then, know it. Then what's the difference? Yeah. And he's the one who said, yep. 
You could sue. You could sue. Oh, an attorney He's said smart. you could sue? That's yeah. like asking your dentist, hey, should I get uh <laughs> Yeah. Should can I get, get some fillings? Yeah, can I get some implants? Caps? Oh, should I have my God. wisdom teeth removed? Uh, yes. Yes, you should. Thank you for asking. Yes. <laughs> can we sue this guy? Yeah. I'm going to charge you whether we win or not. I'm a professional yeah. sewer. <laughs> yes, that's what I do for a living. Of course, I would be more than happy to sue this person for this. All right, so let's find out why what I did was so egregious. When you lie about somebody's work ethic and call them a drunk <laughs> and say that is why they get fired, when it is 100% false, you, my friend, have committed a crime. <laughs> and the crime is you've slandered, you've libeled me, you've oh. lied about me oh. and my work ethic. And if any, hey, I know you have a lot of Patreon followers. Maybe some of them could be employers, future employers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So his argument is, here's my resume. There could be an executive from Netflix yeah. who follows us on Patreon, yeah, and he won't get the job because I lied about him. Not because he's proven oh. to have zero talent, and every clip I've played has proven that he has yeah. zero talent. That wouldn't be the reason. Not because on his resume it says he has experience with Cool Edit Pro. <laughs> That's not why he's not getting a job. It's because I once said that he, he drinks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the fucking dumbest thing you've ever heard? I mean, yeah, anyone that would be interested in hiring him puts his name in Google. Anywhere they look, it's him just being terrible at whatever he's trying to do, whether it's telling jokes on Twitter, making videos, podcasts, etc. Like, we're, we're the ones talking about you, John, and we're the only ones. I know. Even in his own chat room, no one's talking about John. They're yeah. saying hi to each other. Yeah, no shit. This is funny because this is pretty much him saying, my mom said you're not a good friend. <laughs> you know what my attorney called a moon? Where I am a sun. I admit my own light. <laughs> your light has to be taken from me. You receive your light from me because just like any troll, they're moons. They're moons because they don't they they don't have the talent to emit their own light. They have to get it from others. Is you know, he talking about your ass? You know what my what accountant happening? said? My accountant said that I'm like rubber and he's like rubber. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever he says. <laughs> I, love, I fucking love that Stoner John is is frosting at the mouth yelling and then going on about love and light. No, because I'm a light. I'm a sun emitting happiness among the fucking world. Dude, he's so talented, he does a show three days a week where he bashes a guy who's no longer the president <sighs> with other people who are deranged. It's the only way he's able to get viewers on his show, and yet he's the talented one. Yeah. Congratulations, John. And uh, let's see. What's going to happen with this lawsuit, guys? So you mark my words, brother. Coming down to Pike. Have your address. Talk to my attorney at length. Sending him the retainer, ah! and we're going after you. Yep. The because you committed there it is. a libelous and slanderous thing against me. And Dang. you will be punished. And I will win. Oh, I will win. Trust me. Who mentions in their threat to sue you that they will be paying the retainer of their attorney? Yeah. yeah Who's yeah. ever said that, that before? Look out! I'm going to pay his retainer this time. Yeah, that was the key right there. He told me I was going to win, and then he gave me a bill. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. he buttered you up and then charged you for the privilege. Con so John, congratulations. John used to have an attorney named Vince who uh, was a co-host on his show for a little while. I've been in contact with Vince. We're going to do a, uh, a show this week. Oh, I'm gonna have nice. A little, I'm going to have a little video chat with Vince. So. A bonus show? Yeah. Oh. Well, I'll put it out there for free. Oh, okay. I want everyone to see it. But yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, that's funny. And just, just to get his take. So it's on the Patreon for everyone to see, just right? To, <laughs> yeah, just to get his take on all of this. Now, I do want to say, John, or Hockey Puck, or Nikki, whoever's listening to this, I know that you're a fan of Star Wars. So I will say, if you strike me down, John, I will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Go ahead and look up Maddox versus Dick Masterson, the original lull suit from the internet. See what happens when a public figure 
tries to bring a lawsuit against someone for talking shit about them. It does not go well. You will lose money and I will gain notoriety. I got emails from Radio Inc. coming into my inbox asking about this lawsuit already. This is going to be a much bigger deal than you want it to be because everyone's going to be like, what's this? Who are these podcasts show? What, why? What are they saying? Oh, they're saying John's a buffoon? <laughs> I, I might want to check this out. What? <laughs> what? Why are you drawing so much attention to us, John? Yeah. Anyway, go ahead and, and serve it because I haven't talked to an attorney about this and that this is probably a really bad idea. But I did look up the definition of defamation when you have a public figure involved in it. Three things have to be proven. And this is all on John and his attorney to do this. Yeah. One is that what was said or written was false. So I said he was fired. I said he was fired for drinking. That is false. It was a joke, but okay, they got that. The second is the person who wrote or spoke falsehoods against you did it with intention of harm. Unlike you, John, I do a comedy show. I was making a joke. There is no intention of harm. I want you to get employed because that's how I make my living when you have a show. <laughs> yeah. Do you not understand yeah. that? Yeah, I don't yeah. want to, it's like when Patrick Michael, oh, you just want me to quit? No. Yeah. I don't want anyone to quit who I make fun of. I'm glad Fred Hatley's doing a new show. Like, keep it going. Keep the content coming, people. And who talks about you more than WATP? Right. That would be suicide. Yeah. That'd be su- I'd be throwing out the baby with the bathwater if I was like, I want John off the internet. That'd be stupid. Yeah. Makes no sense at all. And then the final thing, the third thing, they must prove that harm was actually occurred. So this will be impossible because it's not like John was getting hired by all these media companies. Yeah. You know, CNN was banging on his door to be a correspondent. And then they heard WATP. Yeah. And now they want nothing. You to hurt do my that. feelings. Well, <laughs> you told a joke that he used to drink 15 years ago. Currently, he does a show where he drinks live on the internet. You can watch him get fucking plastered every single week. I know. I know, John. Oh, Johnny. <laughs> so uh, then he has Brent on his show, and he tells Brent that he's suing me. And I don't mind people hating on me, but what I do mind is when they say things that are a defamation of character. And that's when I, I get my lawyer involved and people think, Oh, John doesn't have money. To, well, yes, I do. I have plenty of money to Over freaking defend, defend my rights and, and my name. And when you're going to start making up bullshit, then, you know, and that's one of the shows that you're doing it coming up. I'm surprised you're doing it because the guy's a real douche. Well, we had Brent on the show. He was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we used to have a channel Well, we have a channel on the discord dedicated to Brent. I have a feeling that's going to go away. This is what you should have done years ago yeah. when I invited you on the show is come on, show that you have a sense of humor about oh. yourself, and we could have figured this all out, but you're a fucking moron. Yeah. And you and can't figure it out. Just, not that I know Stuttering John or I've ever met him, but I know him, yeah. and I've worked with him, and I've had him in my family. Yep. When that, <laughs> when that microphone turns off, he sounds the same. Yes. He's still, he's keeps saying the same things over and over again. Right. He's been saying that all day to his cold, empty, lifeless apartment. He'll be saying that later on tonight to his fucking pile of empty beer cans. He'll be telling that, the dead hooker in his bathtub, yeah. oh, that's defamation. Oh. I've never killed a hooker. You need to find a way to hate without defamation of character. <laughs> You're right. <Yeah. laughs> oh, God. That was a joke. I don't think there's a dead hooker in John's apartment. John couldn't attract a hooker. Come He'd be on. embarrassed to show a hooker his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wouldn't. All right. Let's rewind back to June 25th, 2019, when the Stuttering John show with his co-host Royce we're talking about Stephanie Miller yeah. and the falling out they had. I pulled this clip just because I found it interesting. John has talked about what a toxic work environment it was at Howard Stern and how Howard Stern was a terrible person, yeah. worse than Ellen DeGeneres. He told him that he should abort his first <gasps> child. Oh, my God. Are you serious? The things that, that That's so terrible. Howard Stern said to John were brutal. And then he says this. Well, now she was just, you know, I got to say, the most difficult boss out of all the bosses I ever had, not Howard Stern. Not Jack Cohen, the head writer of, of the Tonight Show. Certainly not Jay Leno. He was he you know he was the best boss ever. The most difficult boss I've ever had in my life was Stephanie Miller. And I know this is going to get John Fugel saying is going to is ain't going to want to hear this, and you know Hal Sparks wouldn't give a shit. But she was so crazy. Okay, crazy. Now we got to get to the bottom because I in my joke I said he was fired. He quit. Yeah, he was not fired. 
and let's figure out why he quit. I'm going to go through four things that got him to quit. Okay. So he's talking about emails that would come into the show that Stephanie Miller would get about John's on-air performance. Okay. <laughs> okay. 25 emails. Some of them duplicates or some from the same people. So it's like 10 people <laughs> saying that I sucked on the air on the Stephanie Miller show. And she would give them to me and say, try and improve. And I would just be like, are you fucking kidding me? John, that means she agreed. Yeah. That means she agreed with the emails and yeah. was trying to give you some advice on how you could be better. Yeah. Because Royce after that goes, no, oh, you're going to listen. You're going to let's take notes from the listeners. Like, no, no. The host gave you that note. Yep. The host forwarded that note to you because they thought it was important <laughs> that you read that and process it. That wasn't an accident. So the host... Stephanie Miller didn't think he was good on air. All right, what else was he bad at? And when I would print out her prep, she would go, don't print out these pictures. You know, and I'm like, well, I, the, you know, the picture's a visual aid for this stuff. You know, like, you need it, kind of. You could show the picture. Sure. And she'd get mad, you know. And then if, like, it printed and there would be, like, one paper that didn't get anything, like, like an extra page printed, why are you fucking this printer up? Like, get all crazy. So he wasn't able to print the prep correctly. Yeah. And if I'm understanding this and I'm making this up based on what I've just heard, I'm guessing John is printing web pages yeah. that are formatted, not for a printer. Correct. So yeah. you got these images and these banner ads and all this fucking nonsense, and it's hard to read and it's cut off, and you got to pull out the next sheet instead of copying the article and then putting that in a document that you can print easily. Or there could be on a lot of these sites print this article functions yeah. that'll well, pull out a PDF very easily for you. You've got a boss who's an on-air personality; they need text formatted a certain way to operate on the air. You Correct. know what I mean? Your job as a producer is to provide it in that format and That's let's say let's say stephanie's an idiot and she should have had these images she didn't want them yeah she was giving you notes on what she wanted this is the way she operates you work for her yeah all right let's see what else you know like you know she took me off the board and the board was difficult because it was like it's not like a regular radio board yeah. it's like she's got like two that she has serious and then she's got some paid stations and, and, and you have to hit a button, and then three seconds later, hit another button. Then you got to do the research. Then you got to work the all the commercials. It was a lot of fucking, you know, juggling, you know? Oh. All right. So, so far, he's been fired from being on air. Yeah. He's been fired from doing prep. Yep. He's been fired from working the board. Yeah, which he cannot do. What which else? he admitted he can't handle. What else? And then I was just a producer, and then she started getting irritated, you know, by my talking. So then she, then I was... Just doing her happy hour show, booking a guest. And then I booked her a name she didn't know, who's a famous person. And I booked, um, fuck, I'm going to blank, uh, 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 Gozel Green, who has a billion YouTube downloads, has millions of Twitter followers, millions of YouTube s subscribers. And Stephanie was like, who the fuck? Is Vanessa Rumbles? I, don't, I mean, not Vanessa Rumbles. Who the fuck is Glows Out Green? I don't know this person. Why are you booking it? I go, Stephanie, I quit. I'm done. So every job she gave you, you failed at. Yeah. But you quit. Okay. All right. Listen, yeah. I agree. I wasn't there. John says he quit. He quit. I'm just saying... She oh, didn't man. like anything that he did. Yeah. Every job she gave him, he failed at. Imagine someone's describing their job to you, and they're like, and my boss kept giving me less and less and less responsibility every time. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. You... She was trying to figure out a way to use you, yeah. and you couldn't do anything that she needed. Couldn't fucking hack it. All wow. right. I want to back up real quick to this Brent Hatley interview that he did, because John's insecurity shines through in the questions that he asks. Yeah. Brent, like this. Well, wow, this is a lot of fun, Brent. I didn't know, like, I, I, I didn't know what to expect because, you know, I get so many trolls, and I'm like, all right, is this gonna be where he's gonna come on and go, "Fuck you, John, you asshole." He thought his guest was gonna come on oh, and tell me sucks. <laughs> Could you imagine being that insecure? Like, if Nick Bailey had come on just now, I'd be like, "Yeah, I don't even care about smartless, Carl, you fucking suck at your job. Go fuck yourself." Wow. <laughs> I don't even consider that. That's, That's all John's thinking. My guess might tell me I suck at shit. Wow. <laughs> That's really telling. It is, isn't it? That That's jumped like, out of it. He he sits down at a first date and is like, well, I'm so amazed you showed up. I thought you were gonna stand me up, and then I I'm amazed you're You know you never you Googled Suttery John's feet pick, did yeah. you? Because <laughs> <laughs> I've trimmed my toenails since then. Yeah. And I can afford this meal. Yeah. <laughs> I can afford Red Lobster. 
<laughs> I, ex I ex thought you that you would be able to afford it. I can! I yeah, can I but no appetizers. <laughs> <laughs> That's on you. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's the best. <sighs> oh, I can't wait for this lawsuit. I'm gonna be like fucking Opie with a Zoom recorder in the courtroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Chris will be next to me, hammering on the table. <laughs> what did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Can we get more drinks over here? <laughs> <laughs> Producer Chris is ordering us another round. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta do a show of tequila every time he stutters. Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> I'm wasted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then our friends over at sketchy press had brent hatley on and sketchy press is talking to brent about how he's supposed to go on stuttering john show and there was a little bit of a confusion with that and um so have, so you haven't done stuttering john yet that's later no that's uh that's later he he confused uh pacific time with eastern time that's a shocker <laughs> <laughs> He's still doing that? Yes! He, he, two he's, years ago, we, we were making fun of him Gross, for this. I don't even play every time that this happens. It happens oh. all the time. He thinks that everybody lives in L.A. And if you don't, that's on you. Oh. It's like, how did you not know that noon my time is three your time? How did you not know that? What a fucking idiot. Isn't that great? Dude, how many times? <laughs> so many times. How many fucking he doesn't times? Learn. Jesus Christ. He does not learn. Uh, so then Sketchy talks to him about how John's going after us. I, I, I guess on a previous ep episode, Carl on WATP said, I guess, said that uh, John was fired from some show. And he, I, according to John, what he said, it was he's, a, he's saying that Carl said he was fired for, quote, being a drunk. And so he's going to sue him for defamation or something. But I think John actually verbally said that about you. Didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> I mean, he had the drunk part, but uh, uh, yeah. How funny is that? John goes. Oh. Brent said that he quit, but he was fired. John said that about Brent Hatley, oh. and now he's pissed at me for saying that he was fired and didn't quit. He's is that amazing? Yeah, he's always got one finger pointing out, and those three fingers pointed <laughs> right back at him yeah, every that's time. Right. Oh, my attorney told me that when you uh, when you judge others, <laughs> <laughs> those in glass houses should not be throwing up. The the rocks. <laughs> this, guy, this guy's the best. Uh, this is a two-parter today. You know what I mean? Yeah. This this whole... I I don't know if he can sue me every month, but it'd be nice. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is really working out very well for us, and I, I do appreciate that. What is happening? Rubber dicks, bag slappers, cuzaroos, bonus episode... I had a conversation with Vince, who was Stuttering John's former co-host. He's also an attorney, and he was nice enough to sit down with me for about an hour and talk about defamation suits in general. Nothing specific to our case with Stuttering John, but in general, if someone were to sue someone for saying, I don't know, maybe that someone was fired for being drunk, something reckless like that. What might happen? So this is a fun conversation. If you haven't listened to part two of episode 254, where I play all of these legal threats from Stuttering John, please go do that because it is so much fun. And this is the exciting conclusion. Well, I can't say conclusion. We're not there yet. But this is our conversation about Stuttering John's latest threats of a defamation suit. Hope you enjoy it. Podcast, well, Vince, I assume you're doing this as a favor to Shuli, and I thank you for that, my friend. Thanks for coming on. Um, you're welcome. You once had a stint as Stuttering John's co-host, or at least a reoccurring guest on his show, and that's probably when I first got to know you. I loved you on Stuttering John's show. I loved when you would talk to him about the uh, ROTC guys. I actually went back and uh, watched again when uh, you were laughing because they were doing the British John bit. And uh, what was great was you were telling John, like, yeah, these guys are pretty funny. And he was not having it. That's the beauty of John, because why I am such a fan of John is because he's enduring, he's smart, but he's so naive as well. Right. To the point where... 
he knows that he's right and he knows that something's going on, even though it's not, and other people can see it. And I've definitely been accused of being a, a troll on John's show. Yeah, I thought you I'm were sure. trolling him on his show. That's what people in our uh, subreddit were saying. I was telling John, it's like I spent my whole career building up to the point where I control you. And then I don't know what the payoff is going to be, John, because <laughs> he believed it. So whenever yep. people would tell him via Twitter or however, they would say Vince is a troll. And basically, that's probably why I got fired. Although I, I was a co-host for, for two or three shows. Really, I came in as a consultant for his channel. Right. And I wanted his channel to grow and do well. And believe it or not, I loved his original podcast. I, I'm i not sure like what your your channel's angle is relating to John, whether you like John or not, don't, don't like John. But to me, I liked his podcast strictly as a fan. Yeah. And then when I consulted with him, I, I've represented a lot of people from the Stern Show and a lot of entertainment clients as well. But with John, I really did want to help him. Yep. And you did a good job for him. I know that you're doing a great job for Shuli now. And you definitely helped him grow his YouTube channel. Yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of, and these are just small channels, both John and Shuli, right? So we have some clients that have, you know, once you get over the million subscriber mark and they've been doing it for a long time. And there's, there's some elements that almost anyone that wants to make money doing these podcasts, even including yourself, mm -hmm. uh, the main thing is time. And the people that were doing it eight, nine years ago, we're putting in the time and now they're getting the results. Another thing is consistency and then another is theme. So with John and Julie, they have a name. So it's, I, I think I've heard you say once that it's easier for someone who's famous to come in and start. For and sure. that is true. But ultimately for the long run, you have to have some form of good content and some form of really, really specified theme. So if yours is literally going over a different podcast that's great if it's making fun of john's channel and that's your theme and that's all your channel is that's great in my opinion mm -hmm. because it will keep you very specified well the reason why we've had success is because of our show format and i truly believe that we picked a show format that was we're going to pull clips from other people's podcasts we're going to analyze it we're going to laugh about it it's a roast style show and we've stuck with that and like you said consistently every single week put it out even when there were 200 people listening to now we've continued to do that. And that is the recipe for success in this for sure. Yeah. The coolest thing about how the law has changed. I mean, I don't know if you realize that I was one of the group that started the high pitch Eric 24 hour live channel. I do. I, I, re I listened to Stern back then. I, I remember that whole okay, uh, saga. So, so even that was about four years ago, but to try and do a live channel, try and do a live show. Now people have a hard time even going on zoom. We had a 24 hour, 1080p camera and microphone running in, in Eric's room. Yeah. And he, a lot of times he wasn't cooperative too. So we would have to send people in to do certain things. He now YouTube at the time. He wanted to murder you. <laughs> he was threatening you nonstop, even though you were helping him out. The coolest thing about well, my, my personality is that I won't take offense to what you say, to what Eric says. Obviously Eric has, you know, he's, he's mild, mentally retarded. The, and that's a technical term. Sure. Uh, his IQ, I will say that when I saw it on the show, it came out at 66. I'd say that's about right. And a lot of people don't believe that he's mild, mentally retarded, but he is. So I don't hold what Eric says at all. He's threatened myself, my kids by name. The coolest thing is on the show, actually, Shuli was on it too. Howard asked High Pitch how he feels about how my wife looks. And he goes, eh. Not my type. <laughs> no, <laughs> the cool. My wife's got a good personality too, but I still play that for her uh, every other month <laughs> to knock her down a little bit. You know. <laughs> See, this attitude you have of being very laid back, taking things in stride. This is why you and John never were going to be successful working together. Hundred percent. It's quite and the what, opposite. And it's a great point you make too. I say that if, especially at your level, if you're below. I don't even know what level, but if you're below 25,000 subscribers on YouTube, I'm not talking any other platform mm -hmm. because to me, YouTube is the real platform that I can judge because it's, it's just so much harder to manipulate. And also that's where the money is. Now, if you're below 25,000, even a hundred thousand, and you block anyone on Twitter for anything, I mean, <laughs> anything, then I can't work with you because it's just not worth the time because you don't understand this industry at all. Right. 
Yeah, and I remember you telling John that you're like, I, I keep telling you, you got to stop blocking people. I know, I know, I'm going to, I'm going to stop blocking people. I know. He and that's why you got to love John because you know that he won't stop blocking. <laughs> he never, he never and, yeah, he'll never stop blocking people. And on Twitter too, I mean, ultimately he's got people that are really following him, but then they love to troll him as well. I say I'm not on Twitter, but I, I just it's just something that. I could see happening because people send me that John blocked me, John blocked me, John blocked me. Now I send them to my work email, you know, it's fine. But the whole point was with John is that if you're going to grow, you need to actually allow the haters to come in. Right. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is that the way he reacts to the haters makes it grow because we did a show on his show back when he had Royce as his co-host. And it happened to be a pretty funny episode where he was going back and talking about his accomplishments in second grade, uh, an A that he got in fifth grade. It was just the funniest shit that he was bragging about. So we're playing the Glory Days song and we're goofing on him. This was a one-off episode and then we move on to another podcast that we review. John got so butthurt and responded in such a weird way with threatening lawsuits, threatening to break my legs, that immediately I'm like, oh, I got to keep listening to this guy now. And now we've had this ongoing feud going for years just because of the way he reacts to it. I didn't know if, I didn't know what your background is with John, but first about you, how old are you? 43. All right, so we're about the same age, and you're a Stern fan? Huge Stern fan, yep. And right, o so, o a yep. Right, so ultimately, like, John, to me was amazing on the show. I, mean, sure. I go back and I listen to all the old shows. You know, a lot of times I fall asleep listening to old shows. So that's really how I know a lot about, about him and, and the whole history with him. But relating to your feud with him, I mean, you, I don't know if, if you told me or someone told me that there's claims of defamation and lawsuits. Uh, is there anything actively outgoing right now? Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. And I don't know if you've listened to his recent show, where he did threaten uh, a lawsuit against me and told me it's definitely coming down the pike. Have you heard that? I didn't hear it, but all right, let me just, I'll play a quick clip for you and you don't have to react to anything here. I know that you've worked with John, you might have agreements with them. So totally cool. I, you're, are, you are a very successful practicing attorney. You have your own practice in Manhattan. So I wanted to talk to you and just get your opinion on some things. If you're open to that. But just to, to set this up, uh, this is what he was saying on his show. Another person, I won't mention the person's name, although I know where he lives and I know who he is, has now committed libel and slander against me on his show. I have talked to my attorney, the great Michael Popak. You, my friend, will be seeing a lawsuit coming down the pike for making up an egregious lie that could hurt me financially by actually having the audacity to lie and say that I was fired from Stephanie Miller because I was a drunk. All right. So this is what he's been saying on multiple episodes now is that he has put in his retainer with his attorney and that the attorney is writing up the paperwork for this lawsuit. Um, I want to start out by asking you, can you explain your understanding of defamation as it relates to a public figure? Sure. Well, ultimately, I'm just going to give you general advice. This has nothing to do with John and actually has nothing to do with anyone because attorneys can't technically give legal advice without actually being retained by the client. So this is just generally. Okay. Uh, he mentions libel and slander. One is in written form. One is in verbal form. I don't believe, have you ever written anything about John? No, I don't think he knows the difference. All right. Well, anyway, ultimately, it's not about you and John. It's about anyone. So yep. if, you, if you write about someone, it's a certain form of defamation. And then if you speak about them as well, there's an issue of whether you can be sued or held liable for defamation if you are speaking about someone who's in the public. Now, that varies from state to state. And in, in any case, if you're on the Internet, it's, sometimes it's hard to figure out which state's law to apply. Right. Ultimately, though, a public figure just doesn't mean that you're a celebrity. Generally, it will mean someone that is in politics or someone in, on that level. I don't know if, unfortunately for either of you, if you're going to qualify as a public figure. The, the real issue is, the practical issue when someone comes to me about defamation claims is, one, were you damaged? So right. let's just assume that someone says something about 
Howard Stern and they say it and it's false and they know they know it's false and Howard wants to sue for defamation. Well, Howard needs to prove that he was damaged because of that false statement. That's the key. Right. So, and it's easy for anyone to say to get to that point, you have to pay for the lawsuit, pay for the attorney's time. And generally attorneys aren't going to take these cases on contingency. So you probably are paying hourly, but let's just say you have a friend that's going to do it for you. When you file a defamation lawsuit, be prepared for whomever you file against to have the initial discovery taken against you, including a deposition. You're going to have to turn over all your financial records because ultimately you bring a financial case. So you have to prove that you were financially damaged. That goes for almost all cases civilly. So if, Howard wants to bring a claim against you. Let's say you said something about him. Well, guess what? You get to look at all of Howard's bank records, generally his credit card records, and then he's got to show, he's got to prove that he was damaged. So that's one thing a lot of clients don't understand initially when they come in, they say, well, I want to sue for defamation. Well, first of all, were you damaged? And second of all, do you want people going through your financial records? That's worth it right there. That's amazing. I had no idea. Yeah, so I wonder if John knows if that's the case or not. So, how difficult? Again, I'm not speaking about you know, and John. I'm speaking I know, generally. I understand. So, how difficult is it to prove damages? How would one go about that? Well, not to get so technical, but if you make a claim about someone's ability to work, yeah, which let's say you say this say about Howard that he got fired from Sirius, and that's about his ability to work, then you don't necess- necessarily have to prove damages initially to have a valid claim, but you do have to prove them, Howard will, to actually recover any money. Right. So in a general sense, if it's just you and I were just normal people, I say something bad about you, generally you have to prove that you were damaged financially and then prove by how much. So if it's about your work, your ability to work, if I say that you work for an internet company, if I say that you don't know anything about the internet, you suck, and then... You don't have to. You don't have to prove that you were damaged. You were damaged per se automatically, mm-hmm. but ultimately you're gonna have to prove the amount. Right. There has to be a dollar amount somewhere in order to make a case for this is how much the person would owe them. Exactly. Now, what I love about John, I know you mentioned his second grade and fifth grade, and I don't know if I heard that, but it's I know great. Royce told him as well. John, stop giving your resume. Yeah. Have you ever gone and looked for, and I'm sure you heard about the cream Abdul Jabbar roast that John <laughs> that course. John wrote for and the poppins that he were, wrote for on on Jay Leno's show, and then also how he made uh, Obama laugh. See, so, like this is why I love John because yeah. and a lot of people have that insecurity where they have to keep somehow proving that they're in the entertainment industry or proving that they're a comic. And bottom line is John was super successful he in was. the entertainment. I don't know what, what you said about him in the past. I maybe don't want to hear that, but in reality, he doesn't need to keep proving it. Right. Why I love him is that he still has to prove it to you. And he'll tell you, I mean, how would I know about the cream Abdul Jabbar roast? I've heard it probably 50 <laughs> times. I never actually went to look for it, but I do want to check it out. See how good it was. It wasn't even televised. That's what's so funny about it. It was like a private event that somebody threw. But yeah. that's still like top of his resume. Also, I don't know if you know this, Vince, but he once prank called President Trump. Did you know about that? No, I know that. Oh, I, I you know do that. know about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah he's mentioned that a couple call. times. No, I'm joking yeah. with you. He's, he brings up the same <laughs> things over and over again. It's so funny. And I agree with you. A huge Stern fan. I loved Stuttering John back in the day when Private Parts came out and he did that little cameo at the end. I thought that was great. John, there was something endearing about him. And he's totally flipped on that and really turned people off now with his current attitude. Agreed. So one thing that why John's show will probably stall is he doesn't have anyone to counter him. That's why I liked Royce on the show. Royce yeah. had a good voice, a good personality. He wasn't as extreme as John. Right. And where me, I can take the, the side of a Trump lover or at least to counter what John was saying. That was what I said that I would do for him. And, you know, a lot of people email me that, oh, I loved you on a show. It wasn't really on for that long, but I was able to give it back to John, at least a countering voice, which this is why you love John and hate him too. He doesn't want to hear. Oh, yeah. He He doesn't deal with that very well at all. Right. 
So he just wants to hear how Trump's the everything is Trump's fault. I mean, we all know that John flew on his chopper, got a massage with, I believe it was Karen yeah. on Trump's dime. Now, oh, he also advised John on whether or not to buy a place down here in Manhattan. This is John and Trump. Uh, they were best friends. And now, <laughs> right. as you see, but po- politics, not best friends, but they were, I, they were. He makes it seem I, like they were very close, right? No, no, I won't say. I, 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 I'm that's a misstatement. They weren't best friends. He, they were at least he knew him, right? right. And he wasn't an enemy. Now, actually, in fairness to John, AJ Benza threatened to kill Trump on on the show. AJ Benza fought with Trump over a black girl they both loved, which somehow the media forgets. But Kari Young was the girl that AJ Benza and Trump were fighting over. And now AJ Benza is the hugest Trump fan that's and hugest Trump supporter. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's like they, they flip flop and that shows you how strong politics is. Right. And ultimately, people will choose their general political party of choice when it comes down to it. All right. So I want to ask you this. And again, this is just in general. It's not about a specific case, but you have clients. If a client came to you and said, I want to sue for defamation because a podcaster said that I was fired when really I quit. Would you advise that person to go through with the lawsuit? Potentially. Now, ultimately... Like I said before, because we're talking about his ability to earn a living, there are different standards. Now, that's in New York. I don't know what it would be out, wherever, whatever law would apply. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's this is for John or whomever else. Right. However, you have to show damages. So even if you can prove a case for liability, the second part is damages. And third part is, can the person pay, which they don't teach you in law school, but ultimately... I don't know. I mean, it looks like you got a fancy place there with that wood paneling. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, the, the, that's in the ba- basement of my grandma's house. Yes, it was nice uh, in the but, 70s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be a, an estate over there. So, <laughs> so obviously that that element is satisfied, right? So John knows or someone would know that you have money. But the issue is where are the damages? Yes. So let me ask you this. Let's say because damages can't be proved that they don't win the suit – could the person who's being sued potentially counter sue for their legal costs? Uh, it depends. It depends on the, the law that's applicable. Okay. And generally the answer is no, but in certain cases, defamation sometimes is one of them where in our country, we do allow the losing party to recover attorney's fees. That's the huge issue. So when we say costs, it's really attorney's fees because there are certain cases where even if you win a dollar, you can recover attorney's fees, even as a plaintiff. So if either, let's just say it's hypothetical and, but it's mirroring you two knuckleheads, I would say, <laughs> end it, don't bother. And then I would say, probably bring it to some form of, of, of fun court, maybe a Shuley's court or, or Vince's court, and we can put together a jury and decide the case. Oh, I, I actually, it. let's, let's do that. Maybe do that. you can communicate with John. Let's have a fair, we'll have a fair jury that you, you could pick out of mostly whack packers, but they'll decide the case <laughs> legitimately. And it will save both of you the time and trouble because ultimately you end up, you, you, hypothetically, you'd end up getting virtually nothing and spending money. Uh, I don't think that now there is a few defenses. If John or someone that we're talking about, if you actually said something that was the truth and you have that ability to put that as a defense, then there is no case. There's no liability, even if there is damages. Right. So let's just say Howard was fired from Sirius for drinking. You say Howard was fired from serious for drinking. Howard sues you for defamation. Well, there's no claim because you hear truth is a defense to defamation. Now the issue is, though, if you guys bring the case against each other, where would it be filed? And what would the attorney's fees be? It's something you everyone's got to consider when they go into these cases. Right. So the other piece of this when I was doing my research and obviously I'm not an attorney, but the other piece is that you have to prove that the person had an intention to harm. Is that part of the defamation when there's a uh, public figure? Potentially again, every state is different. So it depends on what law applies. Okay. So there's no real federal law that's going to apply to defamation. It's, it's a state law. And even if you file in federal court, they would apply one state's law. And that's a, another issue as to what state's law would apply. Um, where do you live now? I'm in New York. What state? Okay. So if you're in New York and someone's suing you from Texas, it's a question of who's 
which state law would apply. So there's a lot that goes into these cases. That, that's why you don't you don't take them lightly, uh, and you don't file cases where there's no real damages. Uh, in the situation, the Howard case that we're talking about, he's got to show that for some reason your statement was one that that is causing him not to get work in the future, and that's a harder thing to prove. Right. I would I would imagine that'd be very difficult to prove. You'd have to show this employer was going to hire me and then decided not to. Yeah, exactly. You Which, see, you're clever. You know exa exactly what it is. That's why it's tough to do. Now, like I said, if some states, New York in particular, where you live, they do that per se rule when you talk about someone's ability to earn a living. So you got to be careful when you're speaking about someone's ability to earn a living uh, because you can be held liable for defamation. But again, they still have to prove the damage amount, not necessarily that they were damaged, right? but the damage amount. So Let's well, just say you talk about Howard's ability to earn a living. He doesn't have to prove that he was damaged because of you, but he'll have to prove damages to get something out of the case. Well, the other thing that's interesting here, and you said that you don't know that either of us are public figures when it comes to this. So, yeah. you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but John has another suit going against Sirius XM. I think you might have been working on this with him at some point. But anyway, neither here nor there. But in that suit, he's claiming that his celebrity is such that he has owed money from subscribers and advertising from the Howard 101 channel where his voice is still heard. Yeah. And again, I can't I can't comment on anything with the pending lawsuits, unfortunately, in this situation. I know. I, I just wanted to bring it up. <laughs> but, but generally, like, let's just say but just because someone pleads something, it yeah. doesn't mean that it's actually true. That's true. Right. So on one level, they may plead that I am a public figure and then another I'm not. Um, pleadings in a lawsuit are not factual findings. So it wouldn't really matter so much. I mean, technically you can use it, but it's not definitive. So I guess my, my first defense on this is that I do a comedy show and it's kind of roast style. So we tell jokes and I didn't mean anything that I said to be taken as gospel. I was actually trying to make a joke, which is why I set it up. I think you've heard the clip. I set it up with, I don't mean to be libelous or slanderous, but John was fired, blah, blah, blah. So that kind of proves that I was telling a joke on that. So if my intention was to get somebody to laugh and not get somebody to be unemployable, wouldn't that have something to do with whether or not they would be able to win that case? Potentially. Now, the clip that you did send, I would say that you are potentially facing some liability, but I can't give you any advice one way or another. Okay. The time you hear people say, and, and Trump knows this as well, and Howard knows this as well, you know, in my opinion, opinion, opinion. So if it's your opinion and it's not a fact that that you're certain of, right. then fine. So you qualify with a statement with, in my opinion. Now, let's say you did make a defamatory statement against John. You can retract that statement. So, I, okay. and I don't know if you did or didn't, but I'm just saying hypothetically, someone can retract the statement and potentially that could eliminate any claim for defamation in Thank a general you. sense. That was going to be my next question because what I did on my, the next episode was I documented how he quit Stephanie Miller because he talked about it back in 2019 in June. So I pulled clips from that episode and actually documented this is what John says happened. So I, I believe that's kind of a retraction or at least could be taken as such. Yes? No? Maybe? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. no. I thought you were going to play a clip for me. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I didn't have that queued up. But I do have a clip for you that I want you to react to. What kind of goddamn show is this? I do have a clip that I'd love <laughs> for you to react to here because there are things that John does that I think he's getting a little bit loose with the law himself. This just came upon me. The person reached out to me and said he was a private investigator. And guess what? He found out exactly who the person is that is taking my beer on the balconies and posting it on Reddit. We know your name. We know your social security number. We know where you live. I might divulge the state at the end of this show of where you live. So that sounds like a threat to me when you say I, I know where you live. And he's been saying this on the show a lot lately about specific trolls, people who goof on him. And he says, I know where you live. Is that a threat? Again, I'm not going to give the, <laughs> the legal advice, but let's just say hypothetically something was similar to that. Yeah. I know where you live. It's, it's all about context, obviously. Sure. And knowing where someone lives generally is not going to be construed as a threat. But if you say it in a, in a manner that's aggressive, 
uh, not specific to what John just said, but I know where you live, you know, as opposed to just saying, I know where you live. Uh, potentially, it could be construed as a threat. Now, I've been threatened a lot, not just by high pitch, which to me is is a right. different situation, but it's something you got to deal with. And and when you get big enough, you'll see people will come for your, at least I'm talking in terms of YouTube, they will come for your channel. They will come oh, yeah. and they will try to take you down copyright strikes. They'll, they can SWAT you, which is like, so ridiculous in terms of SWAT, meaning people calling the cops on you. How, actually, High Pitch did that to me once, uh, unfortunately, because he, I mean, people were doing it to him, yeah. which is unfortunate as well. Like there's certain, I love, I'm very liberal when it comes to comedy, but doing that is just absolutely Not, yeah. insane. But you're going to deal with that in this. So if you can't deal with that, I say to most people, get off Twitter, get off YouTube. Why even on it? Because you got to be able to deal with that aspect of the business. Otherwise you're not going to be able to make it long-term. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I uh, totally agree with that. It's weird that you would get into these pissing matches where I know that whether it's John or someone from John's camp is going around and giving in these uh, DMCAs on YouTube for people's videos that goof on him. And then, they ultimately have to give up their home address because of that. And then they have to make a case for themselves and go through the YouTube court, which is really just a huge pain in the ass. And they, they always end up winning, but it's just, it's like, come on guys. We're all just trying to have fun here. Yeah. I mean, on certain levels, but I mean, um, for, for everyone who's creating content, obviously you don't want it to be reproduced illegally right? in sure. theory. Right. Although we all listen to Howard's <laughs> hours and hours of Howard on YouTube. Of and there's a whole nother issue dealing with, with that type of, replaying but for you and everyone else obviously the laws change and, and if you're commenting on someone's content uh, the law is clear at least around here in new york that that won't generally be a copyright issue yeah it's so that's what you see a lot now everyone's jumping on 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 the reaction videos yeah. and because that's the court specifically had had ruled recently on that so that's something that's sort of new in the legal field and i'm just talking of youtube in general yeah. law but you see a lot of reaction videos now because of that protection that they have. What about getting someone's social security number? Is that, is PI is doing that? Is that legal? It's so easy to get someone's social security number. I mean, like within a minute I can have yours, right? Okay. So it's not hard to do. A lot of people don't get that. Like our parents guard a social security number as if it's like the end of the world, they would never give it up. Meanwhile, I can get all of theirs, right? So including, you can get the president's social security number if you want. It's so easy to get. Now, for me, I've had high pitch, high pitch that ran into some bad people. I mean, like bad criminal people that were working with him. And they released my social security number, my wife's social security number on Twitter. This is back when uh, we, we talk about like Twitter censoring uh, during the whole Trump issue. Back in the day, they were allowing a lot to go. We couldn't even get that off for 30, 35 days. So my social security number is out in the public wow. domain. Yeah. So I had to deal with that. I mean, high pitch giving my phone number out. I just dealt with it. Right. But the social security number went too far. And that's when I had to take legal action. But but absent that, um, I don't think someone's going to publish your social security number. But if they do, uh, you got to be prepared for that as well. Right. Did you know? So your question was, what was your question, though, if... Well, saying that I, I got somebody's social security number, I don't know. Maybe it's easy to get, but is that something that's lawful to obtain? Generally, there has to be a legal reason for it. So if in a private investigator, it, potentially they can get it uh, in terms of your social security number, what they do with it. Obviously, if they broadcast it or communicate it, uh, that would be foolish right. on their end. That would sure. be legal. So I, it's more of a threat that people get scared about. So another thing I tell people in, in your situation, you may have these idiots call up and they'll give you grandma's last name or something that they find on a little bit better search than what you can do on like Ben verified or any of these services online yeah. where you can get someone's information and they may even give you grandma's social security number. And, and, and I say, so what, what are you going to do with it? Right. No, but I, they're, they're there to scare you with it. Right. So the point of someone saying that is to scare you. Can you get over that? Can you recognize that and not react? Right. I agree. So Chad Zumach, I don't know if you know who that is. He was going to yeah. do Stuttering John's show and then said he was backing out because someone threatened to dox his aunt. And I'm like, what? why are you taking that as a threat? Who cares if no one, someone knows where your aunt lives? 
I don't even care where you live, let alone your aunt. It's a difference. Right. Yeah. I don't even know what that is, but ultimately that's true. A lot of people can't deal with it. So then yeah. why, why are you on here? Right. I mean, what's the point? Even say a lot with Twitter, especially, and then that's what John and I would, would, would quarrel over. It's like, why are you blocking people? Now, when it came to the YouTube channel and YouTube's got different parameters now, but for, for the most part, people should be able to say what they want. And when I go through Shuli's thing, I, they say that I look like, uh, like I'm dead, like I'm a Martian, my voice sucks, you know, and it, it's okay. Like that's cool for Shuli because it's growing the channel for him. Right. Yep. I'm not going to block anyone for that at all. I mean, at all. I, the people who goof on me the hardest are fans of the show. I've heard yeah. everything about my physical appearance you could possibly say. So yeah, you just gotta gotta deal with it. What but, would they say? Uh, apparently, I have very big teeth, and uh, I've, there's some issues with my hairline, and uh, there's a number of things going on. I got a good hairline. Thanks, buddy. Te- I teeth are a little. Yeah, I, 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 I can see the teeth <laughs> issue, but you can see the hair is fine. Oh, real quick, I I want you to react to what high pitch Eric said on my show. Since you're bringing up high pitch, welcome to who are these podcasts? White power. <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, with high pitch, it's fun because when we quarrel, him and I w- will go a year without talking, and uh, then all of a sudden we'll we'll be in right behind home plate at the Yankees game. And I don't know if you if you heard that whole segment, but it went on like high, what high pitch ate at the Yankees game. But then like they found out that he was with me, so. I, you know, I get the tickets so purposely were on TV. So it's going to be funny like yeah. for the show. And then high pitch will not talk to me, but we'll let's say we'll purchase a cameo with words in it. So that eventually it may say Vince sucks, or I would never listen to Vince's show. Don't listen to Vince's show, but then we can edit it so that it, it turns out to be Vince is great. And listen to Vince's show. Right. Uh, so you can get high pitch really to, to say anything. I don't even think he understands what, what white power would be. That was actually Shuli. <laughs> that was? Yeah, he does the best. Bullshit. Let me hear that again. Yeah. That did not. He gave me bullshit. a, he play, gave me play a that again. These. All right, here's, here's this one again. I'm, I got a couple more. Welcome to Who Are These Podcasts? White Power. Wow, that is Shuli. Here's yeah, another, I didn't, I, here's that's another good. one. <laughs> Who Are These Podcasts? The Holocaust wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> I know. you. He's got it so keyed in now. It's impossible to know. So I, I'll I'll tell you this, Vince. I love your idea about if we're gonna have this out, let's at least make it content. Let's do it on the Vince show. Let's do it on Shuli show. You know, let, let's have this defamation suit come apart. I'm all for it. I'm telling you right now, let's do it. John will never go along with it because he's not a fun person. He doesn't he doesn't have fun like this. It depends. If you now, if you challenge some aspect of John's ego which he doesn't have a, he's not vain. This is what I love. He's not vain at all. You, you make fun of his apartment. It's dirty, but there is a cool aspect to <laughs> someone who's like that. Like he's yeah. just, he's not a vain person. So people like they, they see John, he'll, he'll, he'll t- stories of when he's picking up a girl, it's like, why are you driving this old car? It's all dirty, things like that. And John has no clue that most guys will try and at least clean their car before a girl comes over right. certain issues. So like, he doesn't have that, which makes him very endearing and, and authentic. I mean, authenticity is the best when it comes to a lot of things, especially this industry. So he's got that aspect to him, but yeah, I agree that he probably won't do it, but he probably should now. If you if you two wager something that is is valuable, right, onto the outcome, and you swear to the outcome, you hold to it, and it's a legitimate process. Uh, potentially, he would. I don't know what you two would uh, would wager, but something that that you both want, and see what the outcome is. Because yeah, potentially you do have some liability. You have to speak to an attorney and find out you yourself what you said potentially is that defamation uh and then john if i'm advising someone like john not not him in particular is it worth it was there damages that's a it's a common general question that most states are going to have to answer right well i love the idea i'm all for i would guess that what john would want is for me to stop talking about him i'd have to think about what i would want in, in case i won that's actually a good thing. He would want that, yeah. and that would be cool. So then That'd you'd have to think of something else, and we can put together a jury pool, and you can make your selections and then have the case tried and make the decision, and we'll see how it goes. Because, I don't know, I, you two both seem like good people. Uh, why can't you work it out beforehand? Settle right. your cases uh, out of court before? I agree with that, but... Uh... 
Vince, so thank was this, you. So this whole thing is like, so your channel a, a lot was ran, making fun of John and John's show? Well, yeah. So we what we do is we make fun of a different podcast every week, but now we have some reoccurring segments like Opie from Opie and Anthony, uh, Centering John. There's a couple other people. Brent Hatley, except for he came on the show last week and made him. That's what's so funny. Brent Hatley, we goofed on a few times. He messaged me and said, Carl, I want to come on and rebuke this. I'm like, great, come on. And John could have done that too. This would have all been buried years ago. Yeah, but that's not in John's personality and then, for, for better or for worse. But now say that John did not get his his start easy and he had a fight for that job uh, for on Stern and fight for the job on Leno. This was not something that Leno did and in, in some way to go against Howard Stern. It's so fucking lame when I hear people say that they say, well, John only got on Leno because Leno was trying to get back at Stern. It's not true. John almost didn't get that job. And John's an example of someone where you follow up. He had a follow up and follow up. I mean, you heard that audition tape, but that was just the beginning. I mean, obviously, when you hear that, you want to hire whoever is you know, P- P- Pamela Anderson and, and Nicholas Cage, right? <laughs> but as as funny as that is, and you would think that that would get the job automatically, but it didn't. The reality is they didn't even really want – most of the people there necessarily didn't want to hire John straight away. He had a fight to get that job, and he did. So f- to be on a network show that big – I don't know how anyone can make fun of John. I mean, I know it's fun for you to do, but let's face the reality. The chances of ever you, I, anyone getting on that is virtually nil. Well, so you have to give him Vince. What we make fun the angle that I take is that he got to that point and look at him now. Cause that's really what's amazing to me. Yeah. And then that's, that's a sad thing about this type of industry, right? Because ultimately you're not an owner, you're just a performer, yeah. right? So there's workers and there's owners and it's hard to be an owner in the entertainment world because you know, Howard Stern is, is rich, but he's not wealthy, right? He has some form of ownership, but he's not at that level uh, of, of wealth where you're talking billions of dollars. So you ultimately your, your time is going to run out as a worker and in this industry. So it's tough, right? But he did it. He took the risk and he did it. There's, there's no doubt in anyone's mind, John was successful and not just the cream Abdul Jabbar <laughs> roast. I mean, that's a <laughs> highlight for most people, right? Sure. But he was on a network television show. Yep. And I don't, did you ever hear the Stephanie Miller show before John? No, no, I never, yeah, I, don't know, I don't even know who that is. I never heard of it before John. Yeah. So I didn't even even try to look it up or anything. I didn't never knew John was any relation to it. I think she was on Sirius XM or maybe she still is. So it's pretty popular. It's very progressive. So it'd be on one of those left leaning political channels. Well, do you know who her dad was? Oh, I did look it up. He was a famous politician. Who, who was he? I don't even know, but I know that John got in trouble for not knowing. That's <laughs> I think right. He was, That's right. Right. Like she asked him that. The weird thing about John is he is intelligent as naive as he can be and is. He's also intelligent. Okay. So I know it's, <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing, but he is. Right. Yep. So there are some people that you'll deal with that have super intelligence, but they're naive in a lot of situations. Yeah. And, and John's going to hear this and get pissed. Whoa, 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 why, whoa, why are you saying uh, I'm naive? I'm not naive. And, and the beauty of it is that he is on certain levels. Like, when I was on the show, there's a, a bunch of things that I would say. I don't even know if you ever picked up on it, but at one point I asked if if he was if his Susanna's husband or husband to be at the time mm-hmm. would allow him to travel in July. Like some fans would write in and I'd ask him that question and he'd answer me legitimately, not even picking up on my <laughs> my humor, you know. Right. Like, like well, wow. so things like that with John are endearing, but he is smart. Okay. I'll, I'll take I'm, your I'm word telling for you, it. Smart. I, I probably listen to more Stuttering John podcasts than the average bear, and I don't see it, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it took it, it definitely took a turn when he got political. Same yeah. thing with Howard, right? It could be argued. But with John, he, there's no way about it. it. Trump's horrible, and I get that. But for his show, that's not why people want to hear Stuttering John. Like I was listening to hear Stuttering John. His day to day life is interesting. You know, hanging out at the pub. When he's, I mean, we know the name of his pub, right? That he hangs out at Pickwick pub, Pickwick pub. Right. So obviously he's got a following and look at us. We're talking over about John's pub that he goes to, but then when he starts talking about Trump, that's where his, whether it's not, whether he's naive or lack of understanding what people want to hear, he wants to tell that. And it just turns most people off, especially because he has no balance. It's right. just completely one-sided 
And it was cool for me to try and come in there and say, like, I have no problem even coming there and say things that are specific to him and his kids. And if it had to deal with, like, he, that's another thing. Like, people like talk about kids. Now, my son, my daughter, their names are on in Howard's records and serious because high pitch is threatening them by name. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. So, and then there comes a time when high pitch is threatening my son. Uh, he's going to go to his school, tie him up, stab him. Now, look, most people will get offended by that. Yes. I don't. Right. I mean, cause I know who high pitch is, but still if high pitch said that about, if you had a child and he said about it, most people will get offended by yes. it, especially on national radio. So can you deal with that aspect? Uh, I don't, John is, is sensitive about those issues. Which, understandably, and I've never gone after his family or anything like that. I only make fun of his broadcasting, his broadcasting ability, his current show. And I'll tell you, that I don't know if you're paying attention to where he's at now on the Centering John show. Have you been tuning in no. a little bit? So he's actually, he's gone 100% political, and he has these guests on, a lot of politicians and political pundits who come on and spout the like extreme left thing. And there's, a, there's an audience for that. You know, he, I think he's kind of gotten rid of the comedy audience, people like you and me who want to hear about Stern. And now it's just people who want to talk about whatever the left or, or the politics with democratic party and people come in to watch his show and he'll have two, 300 people watching live on YouTube and you watch the live chat. No one's paying attention. They're all just have the same political mind and they go in there and, and they just chat with each other the whole time. It's, it's All right, really so he's getting two to three hundred live viewers, which yeah. is good. I mean, it's a good start. Sure. But the thing with his chat is, does he still have people moderating and blocking like yes. non non extreme? Yes. Yeah, right. So like, there's one thing where YouTube will even have an, now an automated system to block extreme stuff like violence that you're going to kill someone. But right. if you write in there, John, you suck. He'll block that, or someone will block that. Yes. I'm out. Like I'm yep. telling you, I told him. I'm out. Even though I got fired, so I can't say, John, fire me. I don't want him to sue me for defamation. <laughs> I'm out because it's not worth the time. If Because you're never going to grow past a certain amount uh, if you do that. So for me, I mean, I envision John to have at least 100,000 YouTube subscribers by now. It's been I mean, even a year since I left them. So I don't know what his channel is doing and what how many views he's getting per video. But... I'll look it up right now. It was like 11,000 last I knew, but let's see what he's doing. The Stuttering John channel. Where are you? There it is. Uh, 13.6. Yeah, and it sucks because, I mean, he is, he has that that fame level. I don't remember when he was fighting with Revenge of the Nerds guys. Yeah. Uh, what, what their... Uh, what their number was, but I think it was like 15,000 at the time, maybe even 20,000 at the time. This is when, so I was telling him like, it's good for you to go after them yep. and have some form of conflict, but he, he's taking it seriously, like serious conflict. I just wanted some, some back and forth banter if, if at all. You and I right. did like the, and the thing with John, the fun thing about John is, you know, if you say, John, I like a bit that someone else is doing, that's making fun of you, like British stuttering John, which yeah. I did like. <laughs> it was funny. I, yeah, most people go on and they'll kiss John's ass and they'll say, all right, they won't even say anything or those guys suck or fuck those guys. But I did like it, but I knew I intentionally said it. Right. Right. So like I didn't intentionally say it to get some troll value, whatever people were saying. But John had in the back of his head that I was a troll for someone, you know, whether well, it was those guys or someone else. Vince, I'm glad you're bringing this up because I just refreshed my memory on this specifically. So you're bringing that up because... This is how you get these things going. Now, Revenge of the, the Nerds, the, Revenge of the Sis, has 39,000 yeah. subscribers. So they're about three times the size of John. Right. So you saw this in advance and said, if we can mix it up with these guys, we'll get people watching our show, watching their show. It's good for everyone around. And when you brought that up, that, eh, that bit was actually kind of funny. The look on John's face, he was enraged that you said that and then changed the subject immediately. It's like... You got to milk that. That's your chance. Like, go go back and Vince and say, what do you mean, Vince? These guys aren't funny. You know, you could have, like, mixed it up a little bit right there. That's what, all right. And and why John is great is because he was pissed at me for doing that. <laughs> However, he's got to get over the fact that we have to be able to fight and fight it out and then move on to the next show. That's why I told, right. uh, if you ever hear, like, I, I tell Shuli at the beginning of our shows, you can say anything you want about me. You can say stuff about my kids. I won't give a fuck, right? I don't expect Shuli to do that, but anything. I mean, anything, like, whatever it is, you sure, make fun of it. Anything you want, I will never get mad at you at the end of the day, right? Because it's just, but it also has to be real. So you can't just go fighting people. I didn't know who Re Revenge of the Sith were. I don't know who they are now. But at the time, 
it was something where it was an authentic fight, which is great. But if I said anything good about him to stir John up, to stir some some good show, uh, he wasn't going to take it. You're 100 percent right. I think he fired me right after that. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. <laughs> or close to that. <laughs> I think within minutes he fired me from that. <laughs> so the, the look yeah. on his face is so funny. Just like he wanted to murder you after you said yeah. that. Oh, and wow. the thing with John is like, he'll come around and like, he'll eventually not apologize. Well, yeah, he'll apologize. Like John's good like that. Like he's not, you're not dead to him. I hate people that do that. Like right. they never speak to anyone ever again for no real reason. Uh, he's not that sense, but no, he didn't get my, my aspect of what I wanted to do with his show. So, and that's the beauty of, uh, of what it would have been, but it didn't happen. So look, I hope John's doing well. I have I can actually, I can talk to John, and I have spoken to John, not about this, but in the past, you know, after he fired me, because <laughs> I did uh, represent him on some certain issues uh, or, or at least we consulted. So it's yeah. like, and with a lot of people, I can't get into details, but, you know, e- even that sense, I have no problem them coming back to me years later, even if they need help. Well, Vince, I really appreciate your time today. This has been a lot of fun and uh, informative for me. Is there... So how do we get... Yeah, so the question is, are we going to... Well, I don't know. Do you, do you communicate with John directly or just through, through legal legal papers? We haven't communicated through anything legal papers. He's been threatening me for years with a lawsuit. I've never gotten filed anything. Yeah. Uh, in general, when I when we deal with any type of litigation, um, the threat doesn't do much. You know, like either you file and hit him with surprise, right? Or I just I, just I was on the Drew and Mike show yesterday. And they're going, Carl, you're being very cavalier about this. He's threatening a lawsuit. You're just talking about it. You haven't even seeked counsel. I said, people who threaten lawsuits are not the ones who are actually filing lawsuits. If you're going to file a lawsuit, you just do it. I don't know. John, <laughs> John may hear this and, and think that he does have a case now. So he may he may actually go through with it. Look, John, I'm, anyone can file a lawsuit, right? Let's be sure. honest. In, in terms of my industry, it costs a few hundred dollars. Anyone can file a lawsuit against you for anything. Sure. It's a matter of, are you going to be held liable? I mean, you haven't made it. And it's true. You haven't made it until you've been sued. So, I mean, <laughs> High Pitch Eric's guys and his, his crew, they, they sued me. Um, it's in for like $5 million, something like that, you know? And you deal with it. You just got to deal with it. And it sucks sometimes because people bring it up throughout the rest of your life. They, they Google search your name and there you are with, with a lawsuit for $5 million for whatever it may be. So it's something you got to deal with too. It's a, it's another aspect of this industry. If you want to get bigger, you're going to run into this issue. Well, I'll tell you from experience, there's a guy who I'm friends with named Dick Masterson and he has a show called the Dick show. Now, Dick Messon, actually, I met the guys from Revenge of the Sis down in Tampa. We did a live show with myself, Dick, those guys. Dick was sued by his former co-host for $20 million because he was talking shit about him on, on his show. And it cost him, it cost Dick a lot of money to defend himself, but it was ultimately thrown out of court. And these suits don't t- typically go real well for the person who's suing because it becomes a huge fodder for everyone on the internet. And when you lose, you look foolish. So I, I'm with you. I mean, part of me wants him to just go ahead and go through with it because I don't know how he's going to prove damage. It's going to be impossible. Well, maybe you did damage him in certain ways. Who knows? We'll just have to see. But, <laughs> I like that. You, 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 you seem overly confident. I, like I don't know. <laughs> you don't think I should be? Fair enough. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you'll be able to find an attorney in New York City or New York. Are you in the city or outside of the No, I'm city? up in Rochester. Okay. That's cool. I went to, You're to Syracuse. University of Buffalo. Oh, you went to UB? Okay. Yeah. Nice. So you for, know this uh, area. Undergrad. And I went to Syracuse for law school. Yeah. So, so you're, you're familiar yeah, with I'm this a, shitty area. I love a upstate and Western New York person. But yeah, you'll be able to find an attorney. I mean, again, it's about damages, right? Is, yeah. is John going to be able to find any money after he wins his suit? That's an issue too. Right. So this stuttering John lawsuit thing, I'm, we're going to talk about this a lot today. I can't help it. Fine. All right. Of course. Revenge of the Sis. My buddies Mersh and Royce over there started talking about the stuttering John stuff. Uh, Rick Royce says stuttering John is actually suing. Who are these podcasts? Is that true? He is suing Carl. Like he legitimately. Carl it's not one of those like fake. Carl said that he is getting. He's been served. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. For what? 
Nothing Carl's done is illegal. He's allowed to comment on stuttering John shit. Yeah, but I mean, that's what John's been going on like a fucking. Uh, John's been, uh, as Chris D'Elia says, he's been getting real litigious. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's been going after everybody. He's uh, he's Saul Rosenberg now. Sue everyone. Sue everybody. Suing them for what though? For because he was very very hurt. Claiming defamation. Yes, he was. It was very defamation hurtful. never flies. I know. John's just gonna waste money. Is what's gonna happen. <laughs> yes, I agree, Merch. John wait. is can't wait to waste his money on this. Did he actually serve you? Or are you officially being sued? I have not received the paperwork yet. And as uh-huh. I talked to, as I said to Vince, typically if you're gonna sue someone, you just do it. You don't like ramp up to it. You know, like, yeah, no. oh, I'm gonna start printing up this paperwork. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Watch yeah. out. <laughs> No one believes you, John, because uh, like a year ago, or maybe it was even two years ago at this point, you were like, oh, there's papers in the mail. Yes. They've been mailed. And then no- nothing ever happened. I mean, I believe him that he knows where I live. That part I believe. But the rest of it. Um, all right. So <laughs> Merce tries to help out John here. Defamation and slander never flies. And by the way, unlike John, Carl has money. Sirius XM has money. <laughs> like, who are you going to sue? You're going to run out of money first, dummy. <laughs> yes, correct. I am not concerned about what this will cost me. I, I plan on counter suing for whatever I, it costs me, this silly lawsuit. But... Uh, Which you'll never see any of. So, So in the chat on ROTC... People are saying, well, you know, Carl said that he's a drunk who can't hold a job. And uh, they thought this was pretty funny. Somebody says for Carl saying he was a drunk who couldn't hold a job. But he is a drunk who can't hold a job. Yeah, I mean, in my (laughs) opinion, see, see, this is the best way. This is how you do this. In my opinion, Stuttering John is a drunk who I do not believe personally can hold a job. Yeah, you could say that. Or Why aren't you, you allowed say, to say that? Or you just say, John's a drunk who can't hold a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, allegedly. That's not even some... It would be one thing if you were like, yeah, that guy's a pedophile or something, and you go, whoa, dude, you can't just go saying that about people. You're going to get her... You know what I mean? Calling somebody a, a loser and a drunk is not... That's not even defamation. Isn't that all he used to do and does? <laughs> Like stuttering John does that to people all the time. Mm-hmm. The things that he's called that he's called Donald Trump are slanderous and defamation. Way more than anything that's ever been said about him. Not only that, but the things he said about Howard Stern, and then forget about that, because obviously, if you want to hate Howard Stern, I certainly don't blame you. He's turned into a cunt. But um he he's gone after every person that works for Stern. Like just people that are still there. You know what I mean? Like, whether you like Stern or not, whatever, but are you, are you going to really hate, like, the other people on the show? Like, are you really going to hate Fred from the Howard Stern show for just keeping his gig? <laughs> like, these people have families to support and shit. And this is a good point, and this is the thing that we always forget about, is that Stuttering John goes after everyone all the time. <laughs> Like just that's guys what who his like, whole show is. That's what his whole show is. Just just guys like like Fred Norris who's like, and fucking Fred. You're like, this it's just Fred. What do you mean? What are you talking about? What are you yeah, talking about? Fred, for? Trump, people in the chat, everyone. <laughs> it's very, it's very angry. Like if, for people listening, they tune in, they're like, oh, he's interviewing some senator, and then they zone out, and then he starts interviewing, or he just starts going off about chat, and then he's like, yeah, that's when everyone's donating, I think, right? Yes, that's when his show gets exciting. When he's all worked up about the trolls and the twittiots. <laughs> All right, last, last, so clip, last clip that I want to play because this was brought to my attention by Vince. I didn't realize that when there's a civil suit, it starts off with discovery where we get to find out all of his financial records. We get to uh, see. Really? Oh, dude. I don't know if you, you heard the show I put out this week, but Vince explained to me that when there's a defamation suit, the first thing is discovery where we go in and we see how much income he has credit card statements, you name it. Because he has to prove that there's damages. So in order to prove there's damages, what, what what's going on? What do you got? Where, right, where's the start, income? We need to start slandering John even more. He sues so we get this information. Thank you. You know what, John? I think he's a... <laughs> oh, wait, I... <laughs> <laughs> you said I think. I, I think that works out well. I don't think that John Damn it. diddles children. I would never say something like that. He's pretty lazy. <laughs> so... Uh, anyway, this is, I didn't hear that episode because I was too busy listening to Matt fucking Farley all week. That was your idea. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but it was still, don't blame me. Okay. 
I blame I mean, you this for. Is, this is my know. sixth day podcasting in a row. Just so you guys know, I'm on fumes right now. <laughs> uh, all right. This is um, the last thing from uh, Revenge of the Sis. He's going after Carl, and Carl's just been laughing about it. He's like, all right, but then we're going to Discovery, and I'm going to fuck. He's going to, he's like, it, basically, if they go to Discovery, Carl's going to sling so much mud at John and call witnesses. Like, John's basically playing the worst chess game ever because this is going to end with John's business and dirty laundry being aired out and none of Carl's. <laughs> so it's really not smart. Very not. Not smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's very not smart. <laughs> Playing the worst chess game. He can like barely color inside the lines. You think he's even <laughs> thinking about chess? I know. Oh my god. So anyway, I appreciate that, Mersh and Royce. Thanks for uh, the kind words. And I love that all of us are experts on on the law now. I still have not talked to it. I mean, I talked to Vince, but I haven't talked to an attorney about this. I just I'm not taking this as seriously as I probably should. Oh, I don't think you need to worry about it. Didn't, didn't he also threaten to sue uh, Wrench of the Sis guys a long time ago, too? Oh, yeah. Well, wait. It was like a fake cease and desist, right? I don't I don't remember oh, exactly what it was. Oh, yeah. It was on Twitter. <laughs> oh, did, did he right. send him a cease and desist that wasn't real? I think so. And then they goofed on Allegedly. him for it. Allegedly. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. It's, in my opinion, he I did. I may have dreamt it. <laughs> I think it came in a Twitter DM, right? That, that's right. Yes. That's right. It was DM'd. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> he wants to scare people off. It's so obvious. Like, we all know what your move is. You're not doing anything. You're trying to scare people away. I, I guess it's working because we're talking about him. I, uh, that's got to be what it is, right? He just wants people to talk about him. There's no way he's actually going to see you because he has no money. Like, he's well, begging people for $2 in chat so he has enough to buy his next case of Coors Light. Well, I mean, you never know. Someone could bankroll him. I don't know, good as gold or someone might want to like pony up the money to get this thing rolling. You never know. Someone's already, you think he can find someone else to bankroll him after that serious XM lawsuit? Someone bankrolled that, I'm assuming. I think that the attorney took that one pro bono for some reason, but he's not going to just start suing everyone without getting paid. That's why he kept saying, I got to pay him a retainer this time. <laughs> Please just gotcha. get out of my office. I'll represent you. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, can you please put your socks on? <laughs> As there's like just cockroaches like dropping out of his pocket. Like, we don't want an infestation here, John. Get out. <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to the next segment of our show. And you'll know that because we have a stinger. Cringe of the week. Cringe of the week. Because this is a well-produced show. Cringe of the week is where listeners hear something on a podcast. They go, oh, that's cringeworthy. They send it to me. And then I play it on the show and we comment on it. This comes from Heather W. It's the Hail Spark Show. You familiar with Hale Sparks at all, Julie? Uh, I I've met him a couple times years ago up at Sirius. I know I know he's uh, I know he's a regular on John's show. Yeah. All right. So yeah. th this is coming from the Hale Sparks show. Listen closely here. Um, and they can't. Why is why is stuttering John calling me right now? I'm I'm on the air. Hold hold on, dude. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm streaming right now. What are you doing? Oh, shit. Are you, uh... Well, I'll call you back. Are you free tomorrow? Um, I... Uh, mm, possibly. Let's talk. I'll call you back. Because I have regular family FaceTime and rehearsals, and I might have another rehearsal because we're getting close. We have shows next week. So, um, everybody's saying put you on the stream and say hi, and this is as close as I can get is you on my iPad. So... Say hi. I thought that you were. I thought you streamed at three o'clock. I'm. I am East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. But that, so you're going up against me, man. Well, oh, I, I, I started later yesterday because of that. We'll talk. I'm. I'm only on the East Coast temporarily. This is for our regular plan. Leave me alone. I got rehearsals. I'm doing Twelfth Night for Christ's sake, man. I know you. I'm All right. Kid, I'm only kidding. Hal. All right. I know. I'll talk to you later. So this is beautiful for two reasons. <laughs> One of them is John is booking his guests the day before the show, which means one of the state senators that he was going to have a riveting conversation with for an hour must have dropped out. Oh, shit. I got to get Hal Sparks on the show. <laughs> Calls him up. Hey, can you can you come out tomorrow? I was like, John, I can't just do your show every fucking day. I have other things going on in my life. I but thought also, he had a PR department that booked his people, but okay. Well, I guess I was wrong. No, you didn't know that John does all of his own booking? 
<laughs> he doesn't even hold his nose and pretend it's a different voice. You know, do that thing. I represent the uh, stuttering John <laughs> uh, Show, and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, that's got to be our next deep fake bit. <laughs> it's John pretending to be a booking agent. <laughs> oh, Those are great, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> they're they're really endlessly awesome. entertaining. As uh, as Anthony Kubia said, I watch me name drop. As Anthony Kubia said. Way better than the actual Stuttering Chat show. If he was actually doing that on his show, it'd be watchable. Agreed. How's the lawsuit coming along? Oh, I still haven't gotten served. I'm still waiting for it. So looking forward to Don't that. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, Shuli, thank you uh, for getting Vince connected and on the show. That was uh, a lot of fun talking to Vince. And that dude's hilarious, man. He just loves trolling people, including oh, yours man. truly. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Stuttering John, I don't even know what episode this is from, but he's talking about somebody asks him if he has any stand up gigs coming up. <laughs> any upcoming comedy gigs? No, because you know why? My agent sucks. And you know, I love him, Dante, but you haven't booked me shit. I mean, come on already. Wait up. Got my gigs, you mother. Uh, Dante the Comedian. Follow him on Twitter and go, why are you booking John Giggs, you lazy bastard? He just told everyone to troll his agent. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Dante the Comedian. Let's all tweet at him and ask him, what the fuck? Let's get Suttering John some gigs already. Now, unless I'm mistaken, if you're an agent, you make money if your client makes money, right? <laughs> Correct. So he has no vested interest in keeping John away from all these comedy opportunities. Right. It's not like he's turning things down or not making John aware of right. things that are coming in. I think it's just hard <laughs> to get John booked on shows because no one wants to see him. Missy's seen John do stand-up comedy before. Uh, that, that was the terrible. It was at the brokerage. Uh, it's one of Governor's sister places. And uh, I, uh, I saw him, I would say, maybe five years ago, four years ago. I'm sure that and... the act has changed a lot since then. <laughs> no, it's, it really it looks like he just recycles everything. They're mostly just dick jokes, uh, how poorly he is at fucking. He <laughs> used my name in a blowjob joke, which uh -oh. I think later on I realized he might know someone by the name of Missy, but when I first heard that, I was like, that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Did he do his uh, Kardashian material when you saw him? Oh my God. He's no, still... I don't even want to know what that is. He still talks <laughs> about the Kardashians. Anyway, uh, all right. Another a clip that I have on here is him talking about Brent Hatley was supposed to come on his show, but canceled. But I am going to book guests. Here's what happened. I had Brent Hatley booked for beer on the balcony. Yesterday, Brent did not get back to me. So I'm like, I called him. I DM'd him. No response. You know, I booked these things weeks in advance. So then I asked him today, and he can't do it. So, hey, David Koresh with the badge. So I was like, all right, screw it. I asked Hal if he could do it today, and he couldn't. And, it, you know, look. I'm booking three shows a week with two guests each show, sometimes three, sometimes even four, then be on the balconies. But I, I promise I'll I'll do another uh, be on the balcony next week with a prominent comedian. Maybe it'll be Heather McDonald. Who? Yeah, who's that? <laughs> Did he say David Koresh, like the religious leader from Waco, Texas? <laughs> he did. Sure. What? Yeah, he, he what did. does that have to do anything? <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. So I went ahead and emailed Brent Hatley because I go, dude, congratulations on blowing John off. Beer on the balcony, you're going to be seen by 15 people at most. Like, what a waste of fucking time that is. 
And Brent wrote me back. He goes, yeah, man, doesn't he know that I'm a swinger? And I have better things to do on a Friday night. Like, <laughs> good answer. Hey, <laughs> good point. As aside from his malignant narcissism, Stuttering John is defined by being put upon constantly. Yes, correct. Right? Yes. It's a good he observation. full-blown narcissism. Uh, and then this last clip from the subreddit that I have to play because it's talking about the comedy shows he did down in Florida how you enjoyed your recent trip to florida and whether that was your first time coming to florida that was not my first time i've been to florida like i don't know so many times uh it went great you know you know yeah, like here's the thing ken and you know and benny i get all these trolls right and they're oh you know we're gonna go there and heckle john it's like you know can't these people get lives <laughs> like what <laughs> you know it's like so like First of all, I don't give a shit about it. I mean, go ahead. Go heckle me. I'll fucking handle you. But it's weird, man. It's weird. But I had a great time. I killed every show. <laughs> so first he goes, there's these hecklers that come out to all of my shows and heckling me. <laughs> but I killed every show. And he killed cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> because think about this. I've heard Bill Burr and Greg Fitzsimmons and great comedians talk about shows they do. And they're all the time. They'll be like, I just didn't have it this night or the audience wasn't with me or, you know, whatever it is. They know that not every show is their a game. John hasn't done stand up in over a year. He finally gets booked to go back. He's probably a little rusty. He's getting heckled and he says he killed it. <laughs> I doubt it. I want to live in the world he lives in where like everything I do is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Again, it's like Patrick Michael. I watch him do his show and I know that he sucks at that and he thinks he's good. So I'm assuming he also sucks at stand up and thinks he's good. You know, it's just a logical conclusion. He takes conclusion. his stomach out and shows everybody. That's not <laughs> comedy. He lifts his shirt up and he takes his fat fucking gut out and he just shakes it and then like like he does like physical comedy to get a laugh. Like it's a desperate, desperate move. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yeah, somebody just posted a, a gif of Bert Kreischer. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to sum oh, that no. up. Hey, listen, I'm not going to shit talk Bert Kreischer like someone we know. <laughs> Chat Fair, enough. Fair enough. All right, Missy, let's get into your clips because uh, uh, you I did got... my best. I, I thought I wasn't sure if uh, they were too much. <laughs> let's get into it. Where, where do you want to start? Oh, I mean, let's do it. Let's do clip one. Ready when you're not. Yeah. So he, he has a guest on. He's starting up his show. He's talking to, you know, he does his thing. Good as gold is here. Jillian NYC 212. Hey, mom. You know, he does all that shit, which is really fun to listen to. Well, I love the, the world famous. I mean, the enthusiasm is there. Yeah. The, the, uh. So then he brings on his first guest, this guy, Zev Shalev. Ugh. And he doesn't know how to pronounce the guy's name. So rather than bring him on like you normally would, like introducing someone, saying hi to them, he puts him up on the screen before the guy's ready. And this is the most awkward conversation to start an interview. That's why. Let's let me ask my narrative host guest, Zeb. Oh, wait, wait one second. I'm not uh, fully there yet. All right, Zeb, is it Shalab or Shalib? Hi. <laughs> is, is, is it Zev Sh Shalev or Zev Shalev? Zev Shalev. Why can I hear myself twice? Shalev. Shalev. I don't know. Uh, do you want to? We want to want to figure it out. I, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll take I that. I know what's going on. I know what's going on. There you go. Okay. Now I'm fine. Now, I, now I can just hear you. <laughs> How you doing, John? Wow. He could have cut all that out. If he wanted to, right? It's like two separate conversations going on. Well, that's on. also like, the that's time. the beginning of his show, like actually going. That what blew my mind when I first, you know, this is my first time watching it was he had, I thought I accidentally clicked another video because he just has that beginning song by the US singers. Yeah. And not only does he play that, it's like a screen recording of another video. So you see other YouTube pop-ups and the play window and the controls <laughs> all showing. And I'm like, so confused. I was like, wait, what's going on? Like it was already a mind fuckery from 
the second I clicked it. And then it's already, I don't know how many minutes it is. It's like six something minutes. And I don't know if any of y'all know how it works when you watch a video. The first 30 seconds are is where you really get your views. Yeah. So he's probably lost people at, uh, like well before then because they're like, what the fuck am I watching? Like nothing's grabbed <laughs> me yet. So he's just, uh, uh, I just, like we want to help him. We really do. He's just can't, he can't. That theme song goes on for four fucking minutes. People <laughs> bitch at me about my own theme song and how long it was. And it was, it was a little long. But Jesus Christ, it's four minutes. It's, it's nothing to do with John's show. It's just a song. It's just a song it's with like good. really weird imagery from just like some vat of just copyright free videos. <laughs> right. Uh, always good to start a show with B-roll. And so that's what people want to see. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's great. <laughs> All right, Missy, where to next? Uh, where do we go next? I mean, I guess I'll, I'll still go. I'll go down to the it's too easy. And I, I set it up that it is too easy because I saw the super chat and I love John's excitement and mesmerization of these super chats because not only are they colorful, as he loves to talk about, but, you know, they weigh money. So, yeah, he I saw the super chat come up and it said the word naivety. And I was like, oh, fuck. He's going to have a tough one with that. And I said it to Ant. I was like, he's he's not going to be able to read that. And he's going to read it out loud in the first go. And he does. You called your shot. All right, here it is. You know, we've got some other things you want to work on, you know? You know, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, a question. And I have a, I have a very important question to ask you. But first, B Buccaneer, thanks for the 10 bucks. Zev, who do you think is more responsible for Trump? The uh, uh, naivete of mainstream media or the failure of the security state. By the way, Zev, you look like the next James Bond. <laughs> Today, Junior? Sorry, I had such a low blow. I know it is, but like, come on. <laughs> I, I got a new thing for Trucker Andy because he likes to troll John from time to time. He should put in super chats with all words that John will not be able to pronounce. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh, that's fun. fun. Oh, I'll play Scrabble with him. It's worth five bucks, right? <laughs> Like Scrabble. <laughs> For somebody who who's so sensitive about his kids, right, and the yeah. transgender stuff, yeah. Like for uh -oh. him to call Donald Trump dotard, it's like, dude, you realize that's calling somebody retard, right? It's like it's the same thing. <laughs> yes, you're just putting dough in front of it, but that's not offensive to him. Oh, everything this guy does. In fact, this next clip that Missy has plays right into that, where John is a walking contradiction. Well, yeah, it's just, you know, it's like, I have to just, it's, it's just hard for me to see what is going on. And it's hard for me as, you know, look, I'm a liberal, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about peace and acceptance. <laughs> what? It's about peace and acceptance? <laughs> this guy is threatening people all the time. That's what he spends most of his show doing. I've never seen such an identity crisis case as John Melendez. <laughs> And the other thing too, Bri, is uh, he calls me Carla because that's supposed right. to be an insult. But why does gender have anything to do with being? Like, it doesn't well, make. What any are sense. your pronouns, Carl? What are your pronouns? <laughs> my my pronouns are uh, still he him. I'm weird like that. <laughs> Go figure. I hope that's on Twitter so everybody knows. It's very important for you to know this. <laughs> yeah, it's my out. email signature. It's on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll figure it out. All right, Missy, oh. keep it going. All right, let's go. You know, I love when John does Glory Days, and he had on his show from May 4th where he had Ted Lou on, and he sheds his glories onto Ted, and that's oh. clip nine. <laughs> this is great. I, I called this one resume time. He has to read his resume to his guests it? for some reason. <laughs> Here's the other problem, Ted, and like I always say that I'm trying – this show, the first – uh, I don't know if you know this. I, I I used to just do an entertainment show. Like I was on the Howard Stern show. I was on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno for 25 years. Now I you know I was a, I was the announcer for Jay. I was a staff writer, and then I pranked the president Donald Trump on Air Force One, and it made global news. I mean everywhere. <laughs> That's my favorite. It's a constant cry for him to be like, please take me seriously. <laughs> yes. You know? He self-sabotages himself like better than he does promote himself. Oh, for sure. <laughs> That's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it goes without saying. He can say it for us, right? Yeah. <laughs>
Well, let's actually show in clip 10 with John jockeying to be right against a congressman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. That's a great point, Congressman. Then the last thing I'll just say is just something that was really funny to me. You and I had a disagreement on Twitter because PEMDAS was trending. For, and you know, <laughs> we and did. for everybody who doesn't know what PEMDAS is, it's the alge algebraic equation for what you solve first. And 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 I guess you were right, although someone broke it down and said we were both right, depending how you write the equation. But it was funny because I was so sure I was right until you called me out on it. <laughs> Comedy gold. Yeah, good stuff. So wait, I'm blocked by stuttering John on Twitter. So I'm missing out on all this basic algebra talk. That sucks. <laughs> and, I, and I was arguing with the senator about calculus that the first derivative of a function is the reverse of an integral. What's, what are we talking? Why is he talking about that? You can't say those words, Carl. Stop. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> Why are there not a legions of angry PR people who, 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 I mean, people who are mad at their PR people, like a congressman, like, why would you book me on this show? Like, why would you do that to me? Like, That's what's his exactly name? What Stuttering John. <laughs> Ted got off. I know, like, you see, he's got his politician face and he's all upright very and then as soon as he probably was like are we off holy shit what the <laughs> fuck was that never put that in again like you know for a fact like he had to confirm that he was off camera to probably deflate and complete disappointment and disgust he probably had to go take a shower after that what a waste of his time what a super waste of his time. <laughs> right <laughs> John, when he talks to these people and these, the, like, especially politics, because I mean, you know, he's trying to stop Trumpism, like it's fucking pandemic. He loves to talk like he's like a, a miserable housewife, like on the line of a target with rollers in his hair going, can you believe? Like, <laughs> right. And this idea that his goal is to defeat Trumpism. He's going about it the wrong way. He's speaking and he's not debating people who are pro Trump or have different views of him, of him in any way. He's just having people on that are all like minded, talking to an audience that's all like minded and going, We're going to defeat Trumpism. It's not it the way really you would is. do that. And it's not insightful. It's very, well, what did I say? Two confident morons speak in euphemism, euphemisms. Wow. <laughs> Call yes. me fucking John Melendez. Uh, <laughs> speak in euphemisms about politics. It's just like, you guys did no insight. You have no facts. It's okay to have facts. I'd be like, hey, on this website, it says that the percentage of this. So what the fuck are these Republicans talking about? Like, at least like have an actual base. It's just like, these like the view just bitching it th th there's no substance in fact they even say things that if they had someone else in the room who could counter them would be so easy to counter you uh talked about the asian virtue signaling that's happening oh, here God. yes i mean i've been saying this for quite some time by donald Tr trump calling it the china virus i knew everybody knew it would cause anti-asian american violence and it has it has. And this has got to infuriate you. So, so this is an Asian gentleman who he's talking to. And I don't, I don't want to get into politics. I know that annoys no, people. No, no. But the people who are violent against Asians are not Trump supporters. They didn't vote for Trump. All right. It doesn't appear that way. <laughs> it's not looking that way. And like you said, Brian, if you want to pull up some statistics, or maybe it was uh, Missy, pull up some statistics or something, you could say like, well, actually, when you look at the data. I can't believe the nativity of these people. <laughs> well, I think That's Missy really nailed good. it. It's like the guy is just not, he's not insightful enough right. to do the show that he's doing. Correct. He should. He has no business talking politics. He's no business. <laughs> better off calling it like muttering Melendez, like just <laughs> that. You should just call the show. Send me super chats. <laughs> Send me super chats. They're colorful. I love it. I love colorful super chats. Oh, we got to play that. Cool. Where he's, he's explaining what super chats are. This is a great clip here. Yeah, it's hard for me. Like, and I'm not trying to get people to super chat me, but. It's hard because there's so much going on and it goes so quickly. But if I get the super chat, it comes in a different color and then I can see it. You know what I what, mean? What is the super chat? That's when they'll send me $20, $10, $5. Well, they, they send you a message and it pops up on the screen. Yeah. And, and with, it'll with come money. With the, it, yeah. It'll come with a color and then, you know, a different color. And then I'm able to see it, you know, because, because ultimately, look, 
I'm focused on talking to you guys. I mean, that's essentially, but if there is a lag or, a, or something, I'll look over just real quick and see what somebody's asking. You know, you think he's not getting distracted by the uh, chat, Missy? Distracted? <laughs> oh my God. When he had that, I don't know. He was from West Virginia, ex-military guy. He, John, you, I you could just see, and it's not good that it, this is visual. He should not have a visual entity of his show. He you see his eyes, but in this dumbfounded, like sidetrack, looking at the chat the whole time while this guy is talking about fighting in <laughs> Afghanistan, <laughs> trying to kill Bin Laden. Like you're like, wow, this guy was in the shit. And John's like, uh, there's someone thank you for the two dollars. Yeah, I have that clip. So <laughs> this guy Richard Ohida is on. He's a veteran. And he's making some good points. He's like, why are we even still in Afghanistan? It's the military industrial complex is the reason why we're there. Blah, 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 blah. And yeah, this is, this is John. He's really paying close attention to the conversation. You know, we're not there because of the Taliban. The Taliban can't do shit for us. They can't do shit to us. The Taliban is friggin' still partying like it's friggin' 1492. You know, they ain't doing jack shit against us. But we're there because the friggin' at the military industrial complex is making a shit ton of money while we're in Afghanistan. And that's the only reason why we're there. It's good that we finally have a president that finally says, you know what, I'm gonna end this shit. And we need to end it. Yeah, and uh thanks D World for the two bucks. And- <laughs> two dollars. <laughs> yeah, he goes, he goes, oh. yeah, and uh thanks for the two dollars. The guy's like <sighs> Passionately saying, we should be out of Afghanistan. This guy's been over there. I was scared of that guy. I'm watching him, and he would like crack his neck, and he. I'm like, I'm scared. I'm really scared. He was like a pit bull. Is it possible? Is it possible? John's a sociopath. Like he appears <laughs> to care about nothing or anyone yes. aside from himself. Does, does oxygen keep you alive? <laughs> <laughs> Missy, actually, I had a convo with Missy yesterday, and she got into a little bit of the psychology behind stuttering John just from her few interactions with him. Uh, yeah, and not even just like physical, like personal interactions. It's just like watching him. Now, John, Opie, and my mother are like the same person. So I think I have a pretty decent <laughs> insight on these characters. And John just is, has identity issues, full-blown narcissism, and he's just constantly battling with himself. That girl you had, Eliza Jordana, last yeah, week. Yeah, Elisa, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, Elisa, excuse me. I I was getting so frustrated with her insight on John because it was so like, like she sat like, it was wrong. It was almost like way too pitying in a way where it was just like, you kind of like make exceptions. It's like when you have a really shitty child and you just like make exceptions. That's how she described John. Well, hold on a second. I'm going to cut you off because I, I think I have some insight into this. Elisa wants John to come back on her show, Kermit and Friends. She was trying not to burn any bridges. So that's why she was like, oh, I love the guy. He's great. He's the best. I don't think she meant that at all. No. Yeah. Because I could see that she, she didn't know how to choose her words. And I was, I, it was very like frustrating, but yeah. So yeah, John is just constantly battling with himself. He's just, which is why he's so incredibly defensive. Yeah. He's very insecure on top of being so braggadocious in that way. And I love when he, has to give you so much details into something if it is true because he is always lying to himself and he knows it so on top of that that's why he drinks right you drink because you try to flee the reality of things he just knows he's lying to himself all the time and it's sad because he just wants to live in his glory days right (laughs) i think you're spot on with that he even makes every question about himself when he's talking to his guests. How does it feel, guys? Because, you know, like for me, it was so like I never thought that I would ever meet a famous person. And then <laughs> and then and then suddenly I'm interviewing famous people and meeting them on the Stern Show all the time. And then suddenly I'm meeting George Clooney and. <laughs> And, and, you know, and all the Jerry Seinfeld and they're all like, hey, John, it's a Tonight Show. And, <laughs> and it's, just, it's, it's, it's so weird. How does it feel for you guys to do this Midas Touch? And then now you're interviewing uh, congressmen and senators. I mean, I, I mean, how does that feel? I thought I was going to say cockroaches. 
<laughs> I, think, I think he wanted to say me. Now you get he to talk so to me. Was. His, his lips were pursed, like to say me, but he's like, go send in a mud and a cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. So you guys are now get to interact with famous people. I met Seinfeld. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was just like, I've never seen such like name drop vomiting. <laughs> I know. It's so weird. Seinfeld acknowledged my existence one day. Did he? Neat. Good for you. Oh my God. And I, I, so he'll brag, right? So John will put himself at this high pedestal, but then he's so quick. Like it's just manic the way he just, digs himself so low to show how incapable he is. Clip 14 when he's fishing for book advice. Oh, yeah. He's, he's trying to figure out how to book guests for his show. He's talking to the the Midas Touch brothers here. Oh, I wanted to uh, apologize because I because I was supposed to have you guys on at four. Brett, oh, no and it, you know, but it was it was, you know, it was hard getting Ted on because I because I moved the show. I'm doing it later now because i got a gig so that's why and then it was hard you know, like i don't know you know who you know who books all your uh shows us so uh so it's just uh, me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Interrupts. <laughs> but then you know john is gonna jump and start talking about how great he is in clip 12. I have to pat myself on the back, guys. I did a hell of an interview. Let me just say, I only had 30 minutes to fit all, all of those questions in. And for a stutterer, that's a huge accomplishment, okay? I give you props, man. <laughs> in fairness to John, who else is going to compliment him? <laughs> Good point. Yeah. His mom. There's a vacuum. It's funny. He's he, there all the time. He just had a boring conversation <laughs> with a congressperson. About nothing, because Congress people aren't interesting people. They don't say anything interesting. It's not their job to do that. And then he pats himself on the back when the next guests come on. I just did a great job with my previous guests. Like, <laughs> good on you, buddy. All right. But it it only was because of its um, it it's oh it's a congressman. And I talk about politics. Oh, so that. But I do love if back in clip seven when. Because John loves to get the first-hand accounts of things. Yeah. Because he he loves that association. Because that by association heightens him. So that's kind of what he's bragging in with those those two guys. As so, I love in clip seven where he's like digging for those first-hand accounts. Well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I'm like, you know, do you know Joe? Have you talked to Joe? Is anybody reach? Is why have you asked him? I have. Well, yes, I actually, I have asked him on social media to say that exact thing. I think the reason is if he were to say that, the same thing would happen to him as Liz Cheney. The Republican lawmakers would try to take him out as leader. And so he is simply not saying that, even though he knows it's the truth, because he wants to cling to power. What did he, how did he respond to you after you asked him to say that? Uh, so he hasn't responded to me directly. I know that he has also waffled back and forth on this very issue. Uh, if you look at his statements right around the insurrection, they are different than they are now. Uh, so it's not clear to me what he actually believes. Well, as my mom asked, uh, say hi to my mom, Osa, Ted. <laughs> Hello, mom. <laughs> this is the this is the interview he's patting himself on the back for by the way <laughs> did you did you talk to that person i tweeted at them and what did they say they didn't respond to it okay <laughs> real insider info there oh run hot take hot take uh let's talk about movie history with stuttering john melendez you know younger people don't understand when we were kids and the first Star Wars came out. We had to wait three years until the next installment. So when it, so when Empire Strikes Back came out, and we found out, well, Darth Vader says that he that he tells Luke that he's his father. We had to wait three years to find out if it was true. Where now all the kids can find out just by because they started Episode One, they already know. Kills the whole surprise. That was the best surprise since Planet of the Apes, the original one. And uh, uh, the sixth sense. 
Why does John need proof about what Darth Vader said to Luke? Like, it was never proven. We just were like, fuck, that's true. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We, we, it wasn't like, well, we'll find out in Return of the Jedi if that was true or not. Like, they kind of confirmed it at the end of Empire where he's going, father, and then he, you know, whatever. Whatever! My favorite part about that clip was the very end when he tries to pronounce the words sixth sense. The sixth sense. <laughs> what the? F the sixth sense. <laughs> There's so much saliva in this guy's <laughs> mouth at oh, all times. That's another thing with him that I noticed. So, like, I've only listened to him, right? Like, with you guys, like, with your show and yeah. everything recently. But he is, his face just leaks. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to, it's, it's a good way to put just, it. It's his spit. His fucking head, his drool. Like, I'm just like, what? he's always wiping his face, his hair and he's all that. And sweaty. I'll give it to John. At least he has a decent head of hair. So good on you. He's a very sweaty man. And there's a fan blowing on him. I don't think his AC works, which is not good in LA. But what are you going to do? What gives it away that he has a fan on? Is it the dangling hair that constantly <laughs> moves throughout his entire stream? <laughs> yes, that's, that's what gave it away to me. You picked up on that too, I assume. No, so, God, it was so distracting. <laughs> so John had to move his show because he's a substitute teacher or whatever he's doing now. It's his other job that he's all proud of. He has to move his show. He records later in the day now. And because of that, it's cutting into his happy hour. But that won't stop John. He's got the Midas Touch Brothers on. And as soon as it hits five, he pulls out a beer. Oh, Talk from all that time. It's five o'clock. What does that mean? Happy is that... hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. Hey, hey. I, got a, I got a sparkling water. I'll join you. Skull. <laughs> he pulls out his cores. They were sitting next to him the whole time. He had it ready to go, ready, locked and loaded. <laughs> it's like five o'clock. Yes. I can start drinking now. I can degenerate. God. I love it. But he's never drank on the job before. And how no. dare I say that? Well, because you don't want a lawsuit on your hands. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's great. I do want a lawsuit, so let's please keep that. How long coming. does it take How to write it? up Have a lawsuit? Have you heard anything? Sorry, sorry, Brian. That's okay. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, I mean, he said he was going to serve you some time ago. Like, yeah. how long does it take? <sighs> That's a great question. It shouldn't take that long. Right, I, I, I would think, think so. a week or two, I would think. It's almost like it's not going to happen. It's almost like it's just another one of these threats that isn't real. Right, right. To try to get me to stop talking about him. I don't know. <laughs> Is John known for following through? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he was doing his podcast with Royce, we pointed this out years ago. He goes, you know, we're going to have a whole morning show. It's going to be just like a regular morning show of a news person on, and we'll have different segments. And I'm like, at, at that time, I go, there's no way it's going to happen. He, he would just do it. He wouldn't be talking about it. He would just do it. Wait, who else does that? Someone, they, like, talk about what they're going to have. <laughs> I don't know. I don't and, know like, it's going to be a great show. I think they were on Westwood One once. Yeah. Oh, they also had this amazing <laughs> show, Opie and Anthony. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who you're referring to. I might okay. I might have some clips of that person later on in the show, but I'm not sure about that. If you refresh my memory, that'd be cool, yeah. I, I'll, I'll send you a note afterwards. The other thing that I love about Centering John is his misunderstanding of how time zones work very well documented on this show <laughs> and he's taking credit for explaining it to his mom i'll be back on thursday at the same time at 4 pst he's trying to explain to my mom pst what pacific coast time that is not what pst stands for and he's wrong it's pdt as crows would tell you it's so fucking frustrating when this guy's like he never understands time zones. He always gets it wrong. And then he's like, yeah, I to tell my mom what PST is. And he's still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, idiot. today, John was supposed to be on at two, right? So okay. Eastern time. So I turned it on to see. He didn't come on until three. He had like people waiting in the chat room for an entire hour today. Those poor trolls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Good as Gold has so much better things to do than wait around for an hour. <laughs> Not really. In the in the super chat, let's say you ask him a question that's like offensive to him, and he's yeah. like, "I'm not reading that." Do you still pay, or does uh, does he kick the money back? Oh, really? Yeah, the money goes through, and then you'll probably get blocked. <laughs> it's what happens. <laughs> Great return. His it's a good system. 
So he brings on Richard Ojeda. And, of course, right out of the gate, there's technical issues. And he's blaming his guest for the technical issues, which is always fun. And then he goes into an ad read that is seamless. This guy is a pro. He's been doing this a long time. He's a broadcaster. So it's just perfect. Airborne. All right, Richard, I think that's your phone. Is it making the crackling, uh, the uh, cracking noise again? Crackling. Yeah, it, it is. It, but I, it, my phone wasn't doing that. Something's cracking over there. I don't hear it now. I don't hear nothing now. I don't either. Uh, wait. Every time you move it, it kind of does that. It, is that your phone or your computer? I'm on a phone. This guy's yeah, hilarious. That's what it is. It's that freaking phone. Hold on. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. good. That's the wrong one. Hold on a second. I got to find. I have so many, so much copy on my desktop. Again, I thought oh, he was going to say cockroaches. It either. Where the hell is this? Hold <laughs> on, Richard. Uh, where the hell did I save this one? Uh, oh, this has got to be it. Oh, I'll read this. Oh, yeah, this is it. Uh, BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Can, can he be less organized? Did you hear the air of victory when he found it? <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. Um, this is it. I'm a pro. He's like the personification of discombobulated. Yes. <laughs> you can't say that word either. <laughs> the yeah. thing that blows my mind, though, with John is like at the end, I want. I wanted to. There was two things I would love to make a super cut of. Is when in his in his shows he will always like try to. You know, he's always thinking of the question as he talks. We know that. Yeah. But he also loves to start it with like that. You know, I don't understand. And so he says that so many times. What I don't like, understand you know, is these Republicans. <laughs> yeah. What I, yeah, it's just constant that. And then my favorite, honestly, is the end. I mean, we all love it when it ends, but he doesn't even finish his kakia. Oh, and I know. I think that's a complete disservice to the viewers. And it's just like kaki. He's a little trigger happy with his close button finger on this one. So I will see you all. Here on Saturday, this is Stuttering John saying, Kiki. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like that better than the real one. We should use that as our uh, sign off for the creep off from now on. Maybe his neighbor's <laughs> internet suddenly went out. <laughs> yeah. All right. I just have one more clip on here from, uh, from Stuttering John. And this is just, again, more irony. Wow. So much fun. What a great guy, man. I, I just, uh, you know, I love having these guests on because they're so smart and we learn. And that's the whole point. And we have to stay strong. I liked his message there. You know, we can't be the victim here. We all have to be strong together. John is always the victim. What's he talking always. about? <laughs> I like his message. Don't be the victim. And also, stop trolling me all the time. <laughs> I got these guys. They just keep trolling me. Oh, oh Missy. Anything else that you've observed from your times playing poker with uh, John or uh, hanging out at the Listen, comedy club I, with I've him? I've only played poker a few times with the boys when they come over, but most of the time I just like, I like to, I like to cook. So like I'll cook them food and just feed them. So I, I play host. But when John did come over, it was quite the, uh, cause I just, you know, Hey, how you doing? He, he definitely has the, classic napoleon complex because he is very uncomfortably short and like rotund so <laughs> and he's oddly lengthy too i i mean in my twitter feuds with him at the time i don't have twitter anymore but he's just a toad i think he's a toad <laughs> and i i hate john i really do i really don't like him at all and like i that's my own personal issue with him for like what he's done but I just like think he's just incredibly rude, desensitized from just regular social interactions. And he, he will, he, but he always just, because he's so self absorbed when you're talking to him, he's just constantly in the, the tune of, do you know who I am? And that's all you get from him. And, but then it's also like he'll do self deprecating humor, which isn't like, 
you know, Jimmy Norton self-deprecating. Like, at least that's like Jimmy owns it. He doesn't own it because if you bring it up, he will immediately defend against it. So he is the most complex creature out there uh, next to uh, that guy, Opie. <laughs> oh, and, that might be the name. I couldn't think of it. Yeah, it's fleeting. Yeah. And, but, you know, but John, I don't know. I just don't think John's a good person. I, I'm sorry. I just don't. And I, I don't know why I'm apologizing. But he just <laughs> is not. A, he he takes advantage of his friends who do put out money for him. Uh, one of the guys that actually comes and plays poker with Anthony a lot, He he's a friend of his and he's asked him for hundreds of dollars and and so i'm sure the dinner that he went out to at the end of one of his shows two days ago i'm sure wasn't on his dime oh i'm sure it was otherwise he wouldn't be going out for dinner uh, i would have brought more dimes <laughs> <laughs> i agree john yeah. has a very like do you know who i am attitude when really it should be do you know who i was <laughs> Yeah, he has yeah. nothing to currently support it. He has nothing, and yeah. he he's like living off the fumes of it. And it's it's sad, and he knows it though. <laughs> That's the sad part is that he deep down knows it, which is why he's constantly lying to himself. And he heavily drinks, and he's also an incredibly lightweight because his lips get very loose. If you notice the first, like the end of that first drink he has. Yes, although he was able to drink all of your tequila though. He did drink a lot, like that. So that's like how I even got talking to him, right? Because like I went downstairs, like drop off a plate of food, and you know, like, oh hey, how you doing? And he's like, want to do shots? And it's like, all right. <laughs> so we go to the bar section, and we sat there and having a shot. But I just, I do remember, like, like I said, this is six plus years ago. I would say that like this encounter happened, and um, I do just. I can't remember verbatim of his words, but it, I just remember feeling very uncomfortable. Like, does he know that I'm Anthony's girlfriend? Like, he didn't care. It was just like, you're a female. I'm going to fucking flex and shit. Yeah, people want, in the chat want to know if he hit on you at all. He was hitting on. Like, oh, he, okay. he, was, he was absolutely hitting on me, but it wasn't anything that, like, was outrageous. Like, no reaching or anything but it was i do remember like if it was like oh we should have a drink sometime but like because he always throws it out chrissy mayer got it yeah oh chrissy wanted to know i was talking to chrissy the other day she wanted to know if you ever found the shorts that were taken from your home she's hilarious yeah no <laughs> see yeah whenever you're like there's parties here like things go missing but um yeah i had a pair of shorts that just it, it, i know but to answer no yeah i never found them um, Sounds like a good party but, if you're losing shorts afterwards. But I, knew, I wasn't there. That's the crazy part. I was oh, okay. actually in uh, Ocean City, Maryland with my best friend celebrating her birthday. So I wasn't even there. Um, and yep. I remember I forgot them when I left because I remember I was driving going, fuck, I wish I had those shorts. But yeah, no, uh, we don't know where they are. Not so. as fun a story then if you weren't there. I about it's, Yeah, it's not as fun of a story. It really is just one of those like shit, what the fuck, but. Hey, it is Missy. Thank is. you so much for coming on the show and talking about our friend Stuttering John. I've enjoyed this conversation. He, uh, he's so special. I, yeah, I, I, so. I don't know if I hope to meet, see him again soon. I don't know. It'd be fun. It'd yeah, be fun. right. I, I could come back content. on the show if I do. Right, right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Please videotape it if you do. Uh, well, anything... you got that picture. I should, sorry to cut you off, but you do have that picture uh, I sent you, and that is. From my camera roll, unfortunately. Yes, it's pretty. If you're, I uh, I welcome you to post it if you want the uh, original God. and the beautiful Photoshop version. I think I did put that in the Sterling John channel, but that was a while ago. I'll, I'll uh, pop okay. it back in there again. This is a very important thing that we need to talk about. <laughs> Stuttering John did a show on Tuesday, mm. and it was a disaster. <laughs> really? Oh, dude. Even for him? Even for him, because now, as you know, he's pissed at Hockey Puck, and Hockey Puck is no longer modding for him, and I think Nikki B wasn't around. So John has to figure out how he is going to moderate his own show. Oh, boy. While he's hosting it. Oh, boy. So Nikki B showed him how to slow down the chat. 
So it kind of gives you a chance to see it before everyone else does okay. and, and block and whatever you got to do. And he starts off his show. I kid you not. Three and a half minutes of trying to find the button to do this <gasps> on YouTube. God damn it. This is just a part of this. I'm just going to play you a part of this. But this is what he, this is what he thinks is a show. I don't know where the hell this thing is. Oh, damn it. <laughs> well, that just threw me a, a whole loop here. Sorry, people, because I can't find the way to do this. And it's now it is disrupting my show, but it's okay. I understand what's going on, but I have to find out how to do it. And I don't know how to. And I'm trying to. Uh, okay. I I can't. Yes, Jesus. Get on with it, John. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. Nick, I album. can't do it right now. <laughs> Seriously, if he put that out, it would sell more. Uh, get more downloads. I wish he would collab with Seamus's freestyle song. They have something. There. That would be. Maybe we can pull that together for them. Jesus Christ! If he literally Googled how to do it, it would have been more entertaining than what he was just doing. <laughs> well, this continues. Oh, good. Until, until he figures it out. No, until he gives up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, can't. I can't figure it out. And I've. And I've wasted enough time time with it already. I am I'm not gonna thank you, Luigi. Great show. I know it's uh <laughs> it's just Okay, anyway, let me just get the show on the road here. Oh god. Uh, what a broadcaster. Sonnery John Melendez. You are you're amazing. You spent those fifteen years on the Howard Stern show. Yeah. You learned from the best. Oh. You really figured out how to do this. Very impressive. So now he's just signaled to all the trolls that he does not know how to moderate his own chat oh, room. Boy. Oh, boy. And I was boy. excited when he started list reading the list of people who are in the chat room. Yeah. Rebecca Hawthorne, Eli Montoya, Jazz Maniac, Texas Yankee 33, Nightwolf, and Animal Crossley. My mom yeah. is here, John Def, Mega, <laughs> Haymaster. Animal Crossley is there. Wow. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So there's this other guy in there whose name is Hank Sinatra Jr. Mm. And I think that they might both be trolls. Uh... Hank Sinatra Jr., thanks for the two bucks. Animal Cross leaves a snake in the grass. Well, aren't aren't, aren't there so many? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Hank Sinatra Jr. These guys were fucking with John. That was a deep cut. The I entire like that show. One a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. But it's hard to explain the funny trolling that's going on. You have to take my word for it yeah. and John getting flustered and stuff. So what I want to talk about instead is the content of John's show. Once he starts doing a show. Now, he's supposed to have this guest on. And the guest is one of the three people he ever has on a show. It's uh, Major Richard Ojeda. And uh, he doesn't show up. Mm. So now John has to figure out what to do on his own show. Because, as you know, his format is he asks a question and then shuts up for five to six minutes at a time while the guest filibusters. But... Then he comes in with some hard-hitting analysis like, that's c -c crazy or that's r ridiculous. Oh, my God. Since you said that, I have some examples of the level of John's political discourse yeah. is brutal. Ron DeSant, I mean, Joe Manchin, you're a piece of garbage. And Kristen Cinema, you. How dare you? How freaking dare you? Just unbelievable. Just freaking unbelievable, and and you know I I am it, it's hard to stomach actually, because I don't you know, or to it, say it's just amazing to me that that these two people are gonna hold up the proper stuff, the proper <laughs> legislation. Yeah, he's got a real good grasp on the issues, though. He really does. He just says that Republicans are garbage, and how dare them. Has he ever heard a real political show? Yeah, but they're 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 crazy, Carl. Have you heard them? They're like, they're, 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 they're crazy. This is a show for nitwits. <laughs> yeah. And I understand confirmation bias. I'm guilty of it as well. But wouldn't you want to hear some analysis or rationale on why these people suck? I, I think I have an idea. I want to do like a libertarian show. 
where I just get out and I'm just like, Duh! and the government is being very governmenty. They're crazy. I don't like that there's government. <laughs> They're disturbing. It's too much. It's too much government. And these clowns in Congress. This Can you gerrymandering. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go. At a certain point. In the chat, people are talking about Michael Flynn. Mm -hmm. John doesn't know anything about it. So he Googles it, gets to a Washington Post article, and immediately starts spouting his opinion. Oh, oh yeah! This guy should be... Oh, yeah! This is this is a crime, what he's doing. This guy's crazy! <laughs> Can you believe this guy's crazy? It's like his fucking political analysis yeah. is the worst I've ever heard. Here's another example of that, where he's talking about... Because he's very upset about these voter suppression laws that are happening. Here are some of the things that I tweeted out on on Memorial Day, I said, it's time that we abolish the white supremacist Republican Party as, the, as we support those that served and died for our country. Many were people of color, yet so far 14 of 22 states have passed voter suppression laws to make it difficult for people of color to vote. Remember that. So he's reading his tweets, which were incorrect. 14 states passed 22 laws. He says 14 of 22 states. Why would it be of 22 states? It'd be a 50, if anything, right? I like that. Yeah, I like that's how he spent his Memorial Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, did you know the people of color were in the army once? <laughs> Happy Memorial Day. <laughs> and then somebody, because there are people trolling him in this for once. Like, it's not just an echo chamber that he's got going in there. Oh, echo chamber, Carl. Huh? Echo chamber. Is that what he said? Huh? Hey, what? I could jammer. So somebody says, John, what about these laws is racist? Can you please explain this? And again, John's analysis is brilliant. Yeah, Will Arroyo, I looked at the rules and it is it is voter suppression laws. It, it and and if you don't see, Will Arroyo, that it's voter suppression, then you, my friend, are a racist. You are a racist if you can't see how they are singling out people of color and making it harder for them to vote in their precincts. And if you don't agree with me, it's because you're stupid. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, okay. that level, it's comical. Like, that would be an SNL skit. Yeah. Well, how is the law racist? You don't think it's racist that you're a racist? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. I guess I, I guess I agree with you because I don't want to be a racist, so... That makes sense. I mean, you could always like, I don't know, talk about what the laws actually say. Oh, yeah. no, 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 never mind. I forgot I said that. Just if you're wrong, you're stupid. You <laughs> I don't think he under I don't think he has a good grasp on it. I think he reads these opinions from other people and then repeats them. I think he reads the tweets. I mean, yeah, right. he, he like yeah. not even a headline understanding, <laughs> like just the, the the tweets about the story. He doesn't know what the story is. He probably are. thinks the laws are actually called voter suppression. He probably yeah. thinks, like, I can't believe they passed this law. It's called voter suppression. Yeah, wow. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's, there's no way he understands what he's spewing out. Well, he doesn't seem to have a good grasp of it because when people call him on it, he's got nothing. Uh, that, which reminds me, we got to do another Stuttering John video. Okay. And we should have, we should get Chrissy Mayer. Yes. To do a side by side. Mm -hmm. And that could be what we do is they have a political debate. Oh. Because Chrissy's very libertarian yeah. and she gets into it. And I would love to see what John's reactions, you know, hypothetically sure. might be to some of her questions. And if you don't agree with me, it's because you're a cunt, gunny. <laughs> do you want to get a beer after? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, dating Republicans. So he's talking about he did beer on the balcony. Guess who his guest was? I'll tell you, it's Hale Sparks. Yeah. Oh. So he has Hale Sparks on beer on the balcony. Now, these two have spent thousands of hours talking to each other on the internet yeah but this is the episode you have to see because it's not political john does an interview with hell sparks and he really digs in and asks the questions that we all want to know about hell sparks but um what a freaking beer on the balcony how sparks revealed everything we learned how old he was when he lost his virginity he was 14 years of age to Don't an older all, woman man. uh <laughs> Stage dog, you were born on 10-4. Your name should be Roger. Roger that, stage dog. Thanks for the three bucks. Oh. But what a revealing interview. We talked about love with Hal, about if he could ever date a Republican. We went through everything. And then we talked comedy, music. The shit that matters. Comedic inspirations, his music inspirations. 
He became a Kiss fan at five years old. Who gives a shit? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> By the way, five years old is the average age someone becomes a Kiss yeah. fan. <laughs> they drop off yeah. at nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seven's the average age they grow out of it. <laughs> this Kiss Army thing is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's like wrestling. <laughs> Like, you, you turn seven, like, hey, this wrestling's pretty cool. You watch for six months, you're like, ooh, boy, this is fucking retarded. Shots fired against Vinnie Paulino. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Controversial episode today, everybody. Oof. Watch out. So, again, I'm going to bring it back to the experience of being on the Howard Stern show. He doesn't understand what makes a compelling interview. We found out he was a Kiss fan when he was five. I'm not yeah. going to pay for that content. Yeah, who cares? That sounds terrible to me. And it's Hale Sparks. <laughs> this isn't Madonna. We're talking like, oh, Madonna likes Kiss? I had no idea. No, it's Hale Sparks. I don't know why I said Madonna. I guess because I'm a boomer. She was popular. Well, even if she did, who gives a fuck? No one wants to hear that kind of shit. All right. All right, so uh, as we all know, John's been bragging about how much money he has lately. Oh, yeah. By the way, thanks for the three bucks in the chat. Oh, I should point out, Heather W. has been blowing up my phone over this, so I'll, I'll put out her, her thing that she wanted everybody to know. She's surprised people aren't picking up on this. So he was bragging about how he paid for eight tickets to the Yankees game <laughs> yeah. on June 19th. And, um, you know, $800 out of his own pocket. Let me look at the text. Because cause I guess uh, Heather knows who he's bringing to this Yankees game. She's got the whole list of people. I guess he was, I guess he was talking about this. He is bringing his mom, his sister, his brother-in-law, himself, of course, uh, Michael Popak, a high school friend, and two guys from the pub. Yeah. Okay. That, that, okay. That's the list. Heather points out that that Sunday is Father's Day, and John is not bringing any of his kids. Oh, yeah, there you which go. Which is a little, you know, I don't care personally. The kids are older; it's it's yeah. fine. But I, she wanted to point that out because he does bring up how he's father of the year, fucking nonstop. Yeah, what a great daddy he is. Although it's always good, like when someone treats you to a to a game or an event or something, and then they keep holding it over your head how much they spent. <laughs> I on know. It. Remember when I bought you that ticket? It was one hundred twelve dollars. You remember? You remember? Yeah. That's Do you think he's of... buying the airfare for the guys from the pub who are going to the game? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh. All right, so John's going car shopping, and he's really excited. about. He, he talked about this a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I'm going to have a new car. He's I'm been under. going on and on about this. Yep, yep. He still, still hasn't gotten the car. But let's enter into the world of car shopping, because someone asked him about this. And first I went to Tesla as a suggestion from Kinky Streets. And I have to set up an appointment for a test drive, which I'm doing tomorrow. The only thing is you got to plug those things in every 300 miles. No shit. But but they are good cars. Well, that's... Then, oh, no, let me pause it real quick. That is funny because four. this fucking idiot lives in an apartment complex. He can't plug his car in. So a Tesla is... Like, you can't own a Tesla if you're stuttering John. No. So, yeah, I guess that's out the window. Why did you go to the dealership? Oh, because uh, Spanky Bank's 37 yeah. said... <laughs> They're pretty good cars. Scotty, fuck, fuck. Scotty, fuck, fuck. How, how, how did he, how did he not know that he had to charge a car? <laughs> I know he answered like this is news to everybody. Yeah. But, you know, I guess they were on electric or something. Yeah. I, who would have thought? You Tesla. know, you got to plug those things you know, in? It's crazy. it's crazy. You know, Carl, my cell phone's great. I love it. But it runs on electricity. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I went to Ford, this to Ford out here, uh, and... Guess what? They only had two brand new Ford Mustangs. And guess what colors? White. I've been driving around in a white Mustang for the last five years. Before that, I had a white freaking Toyota Corolla that I gave to my daughter. I don't want another white car. Then I went to Chevrolet to buy a Camaro. They didn't have any available. All right. So this is a guy Fuck who has zero ass. preference over what type of car he buys. I've never met someone when they're car shopping. They're like, maybe I'll get a Camaro. Maybe I'll get a Tesla. Maybe I'll get. And the thing that deterred him was the color of the car. Yeah. Well, I can't buy that. It's white. I don't know. So also, I live in a smaller city than L.A. There's more than one Ford dealership where I live. <laughs> There's multiple Ford dealerships. If he's looking for a Mustang. Yeah, weird how that and works. And one doesn't have one. You could go somewhere else. Ugh. Well, it's great to hear that John's supporting black cars, so. <laughs> Wait, what? <Yeah. laughs> Wait, what? Uh, stupid black business joke. Okay. <laughs> Look, they can't all be winners, Fair Carl. Okay? I, I'm just confused. <laughs> I'm just confused. I know, it's been a long show. Uh, so then he says he went to the Chevrolet dealership, and they were all out of Camaro. So I just did a quick search on the internet. I found a downtown L.A. Chevrolet dealership with seven Camaros on their lot, brand new, ready to go. 
I, this wouldn't be difficult to figure well, out if he wanted to. Look, Carl, you're acting like anybody could just search the internet for stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm, silly me. When I want a car, I just start driving aimlessly to dealerships and asking them what they got. <laughs> so then he decides, and this is really the kicker to all of this, because he's going for some range here. When I was looking at these Camaros, you, you can go up to $50,000 for these cars, you know, when they, when they get souped up a little bit. So then he says, well... Maybe I'll do this. Then I went to Toyota. I said, you know what? I'll get another Corolla. I don't care. I love Corollas. They're dependable. They hold up in value. And couldn't even find one. Yes! Again, I did a search. They have Corollas in LA. And I love that he's gone from, I'm either going to get a Tesla, a sports car, or a shitty sedan that's like anyone's first car that they would get. Yeah, well, I mean, this this whole thing of... of He's been big timing for weeks. Oh, I've been test driving this. I've yep. been test driving this. I don't yep. think it's right. Oh, it's too small for. He's gonna come home with some used three thousand dollar piece of shit that barely fucking runs. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is all performative. I don't know what the fuck his deal is with this. It's so weird. I love that John is without a net here. He doesn't have a guest. He's trying to figure out content. Yeah. And someone brings up aliens and the UFO sightings that are going on. And John, he, I didn't pull out of this. But he goes deep on this. He talks about it for a while. Mm. You know, th- I know it's going to be hard to wrap your head around this, but this is this is true. So wrap your head around it just for a second. When you look at our inventions, right, they go like this. So you go from the light bulb to the airplane, you know, the automobile. It's all a very slow trajectory trajectory the telephone oh. everything is very slow it's a small small gradation not a great example of a white bulb to the airplane it's really slow <laughs> this progress that we have guess what his uh, premise is for all of this the computer chip is alien technology oh give me <laughs> Fucking great. God damn you it. Fucking asshole. Dude, that's the one thing we developed in the 20th century. We got all the schematics. You can go through the whole century. I know. I mean, I work at a gas station. What do I know? <laughs> no, he's convinced that it wasn't until Roswell that all of a sudden we understood how computers might work and we started building machines that could compute things. That was, what, 48? Yeah. Dude, we already. 47. We had transistors by then, you fucking <laughs> dipshit. You fucking dipshit. I just wanted we to... already had television by I then. I just wanted to play that for Crouch. Jesus and this one I had to play for Christ. Gonzo, if Gonzo's still hanging out with us. Gonzo Shitcock, who uh, is a fan of this humble brag that John has. You know, he's been playing the stock market because he's got oh, so much money now. Great. And he's, he's making a killing. Stutter and John is back when it comes to the stock market. Now, what's going to come back after COVID? COVID is people are getting all, everyone's getting vaccinated, right? So, uh, so what happens? Stuttering John goes on his stock account. Get to the point! Buys a shitload of AMC movie theaters. And I bought it at $9 a share. You know what it's at today, peeps? Get to the 30. That's right. 30. So this guy's pretending that it's because he's so brilliant. He could see the future. AMC is literally called a meme stock. Yeah. This is because of Redditors yeah. running up the price on purpose. This has been well documented. It's been in the news for months and months. And they're yeah. doing it again. And John's like, I got the stock market all figured out. He doesn't even acknowledge the fact that this is one of the few stocks that have just like increased ridiculous amounts that are, are not sustainable in any way. I hope he's selling. I hope this guy's selling right now. <laughs> because they're going to get totally fucked. AMC is fucked. They're <laughs> fucked worse than GameStop. Right. And, I mean, but it's the same thing, company, though. Like, it's the same thing. The yeah. stock inflation is. Yep. But movie theaters are a thing of the past. Well, so, I mean, so is GameStop. Yeah. No shit. All right. So then he's bitching the entire show about this guest who didn't show up. Major Richard Ojeda, who comes on his show all the fucking time, gives John so much content, fills so much time for him so he can get his super chats. Yeah. And he is such a prick that he goes, I guess he's not showing up. And then he lists all of the other people who turned him down, which is funny. Well, he is late. I don't know why. I've reached out to a number of people. Aaron Rupar couldn't do it. Justin Horowitz from 
really American couldn't do it. Greg Olia couldn't do it. Zev Shalev couldn't do it. And uh, so Give we're it up just for all the people who couldn't do here. it. I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can't keep on waiting for the Army Major here. Why the fuck wouldn't you just be like, oh, I asked Tom Cruise. He couldn't do it. I asked right. him. Or he do it. George Clooney was busy, but he'll be here next week. He's I'm... like, I asked Brandon from Shitty Saga of the Week. He was busy. I asked my kids. <laughs> and then he explains that this is the guest's fault, not mm -hmm. his. Because he has to make sure that he lets everybody know that he's not the one who screwed up. Yep, 715 <laughs> EST, I'll be there, and he's not here. So he must have screwed something up, but he's not here. Okay. There's no EST. You, you're already screwed up. That's true. It is EDT at this time, but whatever. I, I love that that pisses you off so much. I, You've gotten me to stop writing the S or the D. Yeah. I just put ET now. Just put down the fucking time where you are, and then <laughs> we'll move on with your life. <laughs> Makes so, life way easier. So anyway, John, because he does screw up time zones a lot, yeah. has to go back and check his messages, and he goes, yeah, yeah, he confirmed. He was supposed to be on, and he continues to bitch about a guy who he's friends with, and he just shows with all the time, just throwing him <laughs> under the bus. Army Major, you shafted me today. I love you, though. I don't know what happened, but uh, you're not here, and uh, I don't know what happened. Any other questions? <laughs> so Somebody in the chat, one of the trolls, goes, oh, he's over on the Midas Touch Brothers show right now. Just like, what? He said he was doing my show. He gets oh, up and stuff. So this guy finally comes on the show. At the very end of the show, Major Ojeda comes on, and John has to make him feel bad in the introduction. He can't be like, oh, I'm so glad you're able to come on for at least a little bit. Great to have you for some time. No, he says this. Army Major, man, you let me down, brother. No, nah, man, that's it. I tell you, man, this is what life is like when you live in West Virginia when connectivity is absolute garbage. No, it's all right, man. I, I was just like, you know, uh, you know, I, I was just like, oh, crap. I, you know, I, you know, I wonder if somebody said that you were on with the Midas Touch Brothers. No, no, I'm not. I'm not, not any time. No. Last time I saw them was on your show. All right. So then people would just freaking screw with me as usual. <laughs> he never <laughs> yeah, learned. No shit. I, love it. I love this guy. He's calling this guy out, his friend. Oh, he's fucking doing their show. And then he gets, gets him on. He's like, dude, what the fuck? What's your problem? The guy's like, it's so frustrating. And I know this because, obviously, Brandon, your buddy Red lives in West Virginia. Yes. I've been on shows with you and Red where the same thing happened to him where he just lost internet. And he gets so frustrated. Yeah, West Virginia is fucking terrible for their internet. So this guy is frustrated himself. He gets on the show and John's like, what the fuck? Yeah, what's wrong with you? fucking me over, man. What's your problem? So ridiculous. So he's only on for a short time, but he goes off on a rant. And while this is Major Ojeda, and while he's ranting about whatever the fuck he's ranting about, his phone starts going off, and it's quite hilarious. A, a medical person was providing first aid to this 13-year-old kid that was an ISIS guy, and this guy walked over, and he, he cut the guy's, started stabbing him in the damn throat and killed him. That right there alone is absolute, should be, should be, he should have never been pardoned, should have never got out of, gotten out of prison. I'm going to say the timing was perfect for that. I didn't sweeten that. I didn't sweeten that one bit. That's amazing. Is that fucking funny? Oh. Uh, anyway, so... Let me just get serious real quick because I want to say to Stuttering John, who's been being a real fucking prick lately, this fucking guy has been so fucking up my ass. I just want to say, John, if you even try to fuck with me or my fucking friends, John, I, I swear to fucking Christ, John. <laughs> you boob. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. All right. Well, that's why Stuttering John ran for this week. Oh, always fun. Always a good time. Oh, my God. All right, guys, let's get into it. All right, let's, let's talk about what's going on with our friend Stuttering John Melendez. 
Uh, it's my always my favorite. My favorite thing to talk about with Carl is John. It'll it always be, <laughs> it'll always be a fun topic to talk about with John. He, he's Carl. now he because you know he he was always like oh why are you guys bothering me? We've stopped talking about him. And Mike could attest to this. He's been in our show every single day in the chat room, going like oh these losers, oh you losers don't want to talk about me anymore. <laughs> oh <laughs> Wait, yeah, John, really? Oh John, John. <laughs> oh oh yeah. yeah, John misses us, man. John misses us. <laughs> He's yeah. in our chat room every single day, and it's him. Because I thought it was I, but he was in there. He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm going live at, at a 4 p.m. Pacific time after these losers in our chat room." The plug is stupid show, and we ignore him because that hurts him more. I will say, guys, that there are people who are able to hack his account, and it's possible that that's not John. But either way, it's fucking <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, even better is, I think the best time that ever happened on ROTC, Royce, was remember when Adam22 came into our chat? Yes. From from No Jumper. The the official No Jumper YouTube account. Adam22 is in our chat one day like, Oh, hey, what's up? Just checking out the show. And I was like, beat it, rapist. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and everybody was like, that was really Adam 22. And I'm like, I don't give a Whatever. shit. Fuck him. That was your Opie moment. <laughs> Hanging up on uh, Reese Witherspoon or whatever the fuck that was. Uh, all right, let's get into some uh, clips from our buddy Stuttering John. I'm sure you guys have listened to, or watched all the episodes this week, so you already know all about what he's talking about. I don't miss them. Are you kidding me? <laughs> all right. This is John doing some math for us. I like when he does math. I think it's good. I mean, it's amazing. Three out of ten Republicans still think that Trump is going to be uh, put back in as president. I mean, that three out of ten. If you hit three out of ten in baseball, you're a Hall of Famer. Three out of ten. It's almost half. A Republican okay. still think Donald Trump. It's actually Trump is almost be... a third, but okay. <laughs> I know. I was thinking the same thing. Thirty percent is almost a third. It's not almost yeah. half. It's not even close. Yeah. It's that's not some, even. That's some Scott Steiner math. <laughs> <laughs> He's fat. <laughs> a Republican still think Donald Trump is going to be uh, somehow magically put back in office. I'm Hold telling on, you. Give me a country... second. Give me a second. Juan, Juan has to reset his router. His kids are playing Fortnite. <laughs> yeah i hang on hang on no this is how he does it he goes hang on i gotta reset the router and then he pounds on the wall of his apartment <laughs> turn it back on <laughs> just talking to my tech crew over here yeah so sorry my producer no, he's not he's the guy his wi-fi you're stealing i'm telling you this country is going to hell in a yeah, you know, uh, you know. You know what? You know what, John? Tell it what? Tell it what, John? Tell it what, John? You fucking retard! <laughs> he didn't know the saying. <laughs> he got real flustered with that one. <laughs> Wait, what was he trying to say? I could. Tell it a hand basket. Hand basket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a go to hell to hell. Foot hamburger. <laughs> yeah. Going to hell in a backpack or whatever they say. <laughs> whatever it is. I love when the trolls who have been trolling him quite a bit recently because he's losing his mods and they're not moderating as much as they used to. So he's been talking about buying a new car. We all know about this saga. Yeah. John is just flush with cash. He's going to go buy a, a new car with cash. He was looking at the Miata and Yabba Dabba Dolt asked stop, him. Stop you. I got to stop you real quick, Carl. Yeah, go ahead. He, he is really looking to buy a fucking Mazda Miata? Yes. Can you imagine? Yeah, but am I, hang on. Am I, am down am the I, street in a convertible Miata? Dude, hang on. It might be the MX-5 trim, which is it's way more Miata. badass. Oh, so. God. I, oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'll mute myself. I'm sorry, but <laughs> so yeah, this is Yabba Dabba Dolt <laughs> asking him about the Miata. I am I uh oh Yabba Dabba Dolt. Uh, oh. <laughs> thanks for the two bucks. Did I buy the Miata? No, I did not. Too small. All right, so that was, he, he was claustrophobic in the Miata. You know that the sports car made for girls. So now out. I'm looking okay. at maybe like I don't know maybe a McLaren or something. <laughs> so no, listen to what he had to the bike. I've decided between the McLaren and a PT Cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> you guys won't believe this. You know you won't believe this. He went and looked at uh, what was it? The Ford Mustang. He was looking at Tesla. 
Teslas, Dodge Chargers. He was looking at like these muscle cars and right, these right, sports right. cars. But then he oh, also and I said, bet they're all pre-owned too, right? I bet they're all certified pre-owned. Well, then he also goes, <laughs> I might just get a Toyota Corolla. Those are reliable cars. They keep their value. <laughs> like, wait, what? None of this by makes the, sense. By, by the way, when you're shopping for that kind of like wildly variating yes. cars, that means you are shopping for a pre-owned automobile. Right. It doesn't make it like you're just you're showing up to the lot and seeing what they got. Like, well, what else? Yeah. You got? When you're when you're getting a new car and you're in that bracket, you go, no, I'm definitely getting a BMW. I've just right now I went and I looked and I don't know. The SUVs are kind of cool, but I really like that M4. You don't go like, oh, I could get a Toyota Corolla or a Mazda or I looked at an Acura the other day. I like the Genesis. Well, you know, I just found out that uh, Saturn doesn't make cars anymore. <laughs> I was going to get a really good Saturn, but they don't do the warranty work anymore. Well, it's so funny. So he goes, uh, someone in his chat room suggested a Tesla. You know, he's like, uh, Scotty fuck fucks and I should check out Teslas. He goes, but the problem with those is that you have to charge them every 300 miles. <laughs> like, yeah, no <laughs> shit, it's an electric car. That's how that works. <laughs> so John now tells Yabba Dabba Dolt what he purchased. I, I instead um, am, am buying a Tesla. Actually bought a Tesla, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to having it. It gets delivered straight to my freaking door. <laughs> Which is by CarMax, than... I know. Yeah, we know a car. <laughs> I, know, I know how CarMax works. And he's getting a used. He's getting a fucking used Tesla. Is what he's getting then. Am I, Which am is I... like the worst thing. Remember, you know when you buy a fucking refurbished phone, but nowadays you can't take the batteries out, so there's not even a fresh battery in it. Yeah. So you're getting you're getting a fucking battery that's already been charged and used so many times that it's just. He's getting a he's getting a refurbished phone equivalent of a car. I can't wait till he gets caught running an extension cord into his neighbor's house to charge it. <laughs> oh my God, Royce! Why is my power bill three grand? Royce, thank you for saying that because I pointed out when he was talking about Teslas, like he lives in an apartment complex. There's no way there's a charging station in the parking lot. He doesn't have a garage. So thankfully, one of the trolls in the chat room asked him about this. I'm gonna bring on. Uh, uh, do they allow car charging at your car condo? Thank you for the two bucks, Yabba Dabba Dolt. Yes, they do. Anyway. <laughs> no, they don't. Wait, what? <laughs> what? What? So somebody asked him, do they allow for you to charge your car at your apartment complex? Yeah, yes, they do. I bet he was thinking like, oh, shit. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, my God. He's already he, trying to call them back. he doesn't realize panic. what's involved. <laughs> right. I, I, just... don't, I, don't, I, don't, I forgot. I changed my mind on the Tesla. Oh, uh, The Tesla showed up. It was very dented. <laughs> and, it was, <laughs> and it was white. I don't like white. <laughs> I can just use can the car take... lighter to charge the car, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there an adapter? <laughs> it's like it's like that meme where the person plugs the surge protector into the surge protector. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I, I created a perpetual energy machine. So I don't know if you guys know this, but John's been bragging about how much money he has, and he's buying AMC stock, and he's got all this stuff going on. Oh my God, he's not buying AMC stock <laughs> oh, right now. Dude, somebody, oh my God, he's listen, not. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen to this, Mersh. Someone asked him if he sold his stock because he's like, I bought it at nine. Now it's at 30. I'm crushing the oh. stock market. Listen to this. Uh, Officer Banfield, yes, I am still. Uh, I'm still uh, holding my AMC stock. So if you need, uh, yeah, so if you want any stock tips. Yeah, uh, you want stock tips from me? <laughs> I got. Uh, t -t -t the diamond hits. Dude, John, sell the <laughs> stock. It's artificially inflated. What are you waiting for? It's like, I'm, I'm holding on to it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep going higher. The movie theaters are the oh. thing of the future. <laughs> you're, 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 you're trying to trick me. I, I, got, I got diamond hands. <laughs> sell it. He, he, he likes the stock because much like his popularity, it's artificially inflated. <laughs> <laughs> it is troll stock. You're right. This stock is like just trolls buying it and propping it up. Yeah, they, they, everybody, the, the fans have been telling me about this dog coin. I, I, I bought a lot of dog coins. He's, he's really fucking retard. Holy he's really shit, diversifying man. his portfolio. Listen, if John says he's buying something, that is a fucking sell signal. I'm just letting <laughs> no you guys shit. know. I just love that he's holding on to it. He's bragging about how much it's, it's raising value. Like, John, get the fuck out, buddy. What, anyway, so now he's talking about Patreon. He appreciates all the support he's getting on Patreon. And he wants to tell us what he's doing with his Patreon money. I really do appreciate that we have more Patreon people because that money is going to, I am going to, 
end up flying my ass to Washington, D.C. and interviewing these freaking lunatics. So I just got to get so I'm glad that everybody is, you know, um, I'm getting more and more of those patrons because that money will go to causes just like that. All right. So real quick, I don't understand. He was begging for super chats on the 10th because the 11th is when YouTube pays out. So he's back to doing that again. He's talking about Wait, Patreon the money. the day before? Yes. He's like, Jesus. you guys know it pays out on the 11th, so if you can get those super chats in today. And then he's talking about Patreon money so he can fly to Washington, D.C. But at the same time, he said, I, I bought a Tesla with cash. It can't be all of these things. It can't be. Wait, Wait he does, I just, he, he I does, just he, realized he, something. He, he doesn't does make it public. Is, I'm looking at his, his Patreon. He doesn't make how many patrons he has public. No, he does not. Wait, He's a little embarrassed. Can, can I can I um ask a question? Because mm -hmm. I'm having a realization now. <laughs> yeah. So John knows that YouTube pays out. By the way, John, you're a fucking idiot. YouTube pays out on the 21st, not the 11th. Uh so he's he's he thinks that they let's say they paid out on the 11th. Okay. He thinks that YouTube tallies from the 10th to the 10th every month. Is that what he thinks? <laughs> Apparently, they yes. pay out later because they're still calculating the entire month prior, and that takes a week or so. Wow, I hate John. Oh my God, I'm looking at his Patreon. I mean, so the thing is, it doesn't tell you how many patrons he has, but you but it does show you like how many likes or comments he has on his post oh there you like go like his, his june 6th post has six likes <laughs> there you go nice <laughs> killing it oh my god i'm gonna i might set up for his 20 dollar tier because uh all right my friend you got everything on this one a shout out a personal phone call an extra episode of beer on the balcony a signed t-shirt after three months a zoom meeting with you and i 15 minute zoom setting with you and four of your friends I, am i your friend royce can i be your friend for this one <laughs> I can I tell you because this is the best part. I will dole out twenty dollars. Do you know that? And I will dole out twenty dollars. So he has to call me. Yeah, Vinny did the same thing. My buddy Vinny Paulino was uh, a twenty dollar Patreon supporter for three months, and he got a phone call from him. A very oh drunken God. phone call, by the way. Am I allowed to say <laughs> that? My attorney here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, that, I think that's like one of those. That's one of those Mike David moves, too. I know Mike David's done that before where he's – I think he did that to Josh Denny years ago. He signed up for his $100 <laughs> tier, and nobody had ever signed. He had, like, one patron that was, like, 5 bucks, and then he had, like, a $100 tier. So he signed up for the $100 tier, and it was like, you can help me write bits, and you can help me produce my show. And he hated Mike David, but Mike <laughs> David signed up for the $100 tier and then was like – Hey, so when do we get to brainstorm for the next show? <laughs> Since I'm basically your boss now. That's a good troll. That is funny. <laughs> and he returned the money to Josh Denny's credit. He was like, no, fuck you, dude. He was broke at the time, and he was still like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> John ain't doing that. <laughs> well, Royce, I will support you in whatever you want to do. So you let me know. Yes, I'm gonna, I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out after the show. I'll figure this out. So oh, his idea, call. guys, let's get back to what his big idea is. He thinks he's going to go to Washington, D.C., and he wants to interview Republicans the way he used to interview celebrities for the Howard Stern show. Now, what he doesn't realize is that he doesn't, A, have press credentials, so he can't actually get into an actual press conference to ask people questions. So he's going to try to confront them while they're walking around on the street, and they will, what truly did, ignore him and walk away. That's what this show will be, him yelling stuff at Republicans and them walking away from him. I don't know. It's going to be a great format. Not, not only does he not have press credentials, he doesn't have anybody writing for him like he did before. <laughs> hey, hey, Jackie, what should I ask Mitch McConnell? <laughs> yeah, and I don't, like you can't reach out to Jackie. I mean, he's not doing much. Hey, Fred, I, I got Ted Cruz standing next to me. What, what should I ask him? You know, to Jackie's credit, he probably doesn't even talk to John because Jackie he ended up he ended up being really smart with his money, and like. To, to his credit, I saw Jackie recently on some podcast, and he looks pretty good. Like, he just looks like he's – I think he quit drinking, too, or yes. whatever, and he's, like, actually really healthy now. Yeah. And he just seems like a nice dude, and it's like, wow, he got out of the Howard Stern machine alive. He's one of the few. You ready for a crazy name drop right now? I was talking to Chrissy Mayer. Mm, drop! And she had Jackie on her show. And, uh, yeah, he's, like the, he's just a happy-go-lucky, nice guy. He doesn't drink anymore. He wants nothing to do with stuttering John. They do not talk at all anymore. Makes perfect sense. I don't blame him. Like, <laughs> yeah, no I mean, shit. <laughs> you watch five minutes of John's show. Like, why would anybody talk to him? John gets asked the question, and it's one that I've asked many times, because the whole point of his show is to defeat Trumpism. 
he's trying to win the hearts and minds of the voters because we can't allow someone like Trump to get elected into president ever again. And the way he does that is by talking to like-minded people for like-minded people nonstop. So someone asked him, would you ever have a Republican on someone who has different political beliefs than you? And maybe you guys could debate things or have a conversation. And this is John's response. Joseph Corson, would I ever have a Republican on to argue against? Sure. I've asked Scott D. Pace a billion times, but he's too afraid. The only person he knows who has right-leaning views in the world is Scott DePace from Howard TV. And Scott doesn't want to do it. So I don't know what else to do. What else can I possibly do, guys? I tried. Well, you have to be careful with John because I don't know if I told you this, Carl, but uh, one of, and this is 100% true. Mersh could attest to this. <clears throat> one of our videos where we I clipped it where we were talking about John, some big YouTuber did come to, to his defense, and I swear to you this is true. Okay. The official Smash Mouth account on YouTube. <laughs> oh, my God, saw, that's right. I saw your guys' video on that. That was fucking hilarious. The official Smash Mouth account was like, hey, John's really funny. He prank called Trump once. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Smash Mouth is the person that's standing for you? Oh, my God. What a weird, like, I, I'd rather have the guy from the Mighty Mighty Ballstones. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Uh, let's get into the spicy political talk he has. As a guest, Major Richard Ojeda. Which is oh, shocking. it's not Hal Sparks this time. And, well, it's funny you say that since you said that. I'll play you. Um, he was only able to get one guest on his show, so he did a shorter show on uh, Tuesday. You know, and unfortunately, I tried to book a guest after you today, and I and everybody's busy. Hal's spending time with his son, and Andrew Loffa couldn't do it. Uh, Lincoln's Bible couldn't do it. So I'm just going to end the show early today, and then and then. And then have a, uh, and then go back to the two hour shows on Thursday. Everybody's busy. Hail that other guy, and what's his name? So, there's, what else can I possibly do? That's it. That's all I got. Yeah, Hal Sparks is uh, disturbing looking. Did you guys hear the big news? He, he actually announced it, I think, on Stuttering John's show that Hal Sparks is running for mayor of Los Angeles. Yeah, but I mean, that's like literally anyone can do that. What's the problem? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You're not it's not like he it's not like he's running for mayor of los angeles and polling at 30 <laughs> percent. you know what i mean first to be fair bubba sparks is polling higher so <laughs> All right, i would rather point. have mayor bubba sparks to be honest all right so let's get into the conversation with major ojeda and there this guy by the way this guy's run for public office and stuff he gets fired up and he calls people out and it gets a little nasty here. Fuck you, Kentucky. Fuck every one of you people from Kentucky. You toothless Whoa. inbred motherfuckers that keep voting for these assholes. Fuck you all. <laughs> I, you know what? Wow. I, I got to tell you, Richard, you, you, you're spot on. I love that response. Fuck everyone in Kentucky. And John goes, that's spot on analysis. That's perfect. You nailed it with that one. So here's the fun uh, uh, kicker on this one. Guess where Major Ojeda is from West Virginia and he's calling people in Kentucky toothless hicks seems a bit odd to me so he's just go oh he's has an all-out war with an entire state now or? the entire state cool that's which, gonna work out well which I say Royce what about the chicken though can we agree on the chicken what about, what about and the derby what about the, the derby the derby's you know? great the hats everyone loves it it's fun <laughs> it's festive <laughs> oh it's, it's, that's that's literally what the political conversation is on the show is that everyone who thinks differently than them is stupid. And John even comes out and says that. I can't understand then. Please tell me this. If they're so smart, how could they be a Republican? This is one of my least favorite things that people who are into politics get into is when they think that your political leanings have anything to do with intelligence. Like there's, there's smart people on the left. There's smart people on the right. How do you not know that? You really think that just your leanings that tell you how smart somebody is? He's doing the old Jim Cornette because Jim Cornette's the same way where it's like, oh, man, you know, I, I used to love this wrestler, but I don't like them be now because of Jericho I might like Trump. And it's like, who gives a shit? Who gives like, a shit? Who cares? Who gives a shit?
gives a shit. Like, you know, obviously I lean to the right, obviously, but but my point is, is that so what? I have friends that are on the left. I can be friends with anybody. That this weird, just like, oh, how could you? You're so smart. How could you be a Republican? You're not a genius like me who's gonna get a Tesla where I can't charge it and I can't put my gas <laughs> bill. Yeah, well, yeah. You, you, genius is like stuttering John. He doubles down on how smart he is because he is a Democrat. And look, I'm proud to be a Democrat, but I mean, seriously, Democrats seem to be the smart ones. I'm sorry. It just, I mean, we're the ones that care about climate change. We're the ones that care about the infrastructure. I mean, we're the ones that care about voters' rights. We're the ones that care about proper gun legislation. Where are the Republicans? Always on the wrong side. And they'll always be in the wrong side of history. Well, I mean, there was Lincoln and freeing the slaves. But yeah, I mean, right. Yeah, the Republicans are always on the wrong side of history. It's like he, it's like he almost doesn't understand that there's nuance to these arguments and there's maybe uh, ideas on both sides that have merit. It's almost like he doesn't understand that. Maybe he's dumb. It all has imagine to be- if we were doing a show bitching about Obama two years into Trump's presidency? <laughs> Right. Because the black president. He's gone. What are you bitching about? <laughs> so Major Richard Ojeda throws something out there, a reference I've never heard before. Guys, tell me if I just haven't heard this and I've been under a rock because I found this to be hilarious for real. And John doesn't react to it, but I thought it was funny. The union leaders in West Virginia are absolutely as crooked as Gargamel's dick. That's crooked as Gargamel's dick. Gar- Gar- oh, I'm sorry, Gargamel. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Gargamel from the fucking Smurfs. From the Smurfs. I got. I'm think sorry. That- Was Gargamel known for having a crooked dick? Did he watch the long Smurfs? I don't know. I don't think they're as crooked as Gargamel's dick. What? 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 <laughs> I thought I was alone on this one. I'm glad no, I'm I've not. never. I can honestly say I've never heard of that phrase. I want to start using it, though. <laughs> I'm just afraid someone will call me on it. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, oh, I don't know. I just heard it somewhere. It was funny. <laughs> well, where did you hear it? Uh, Stuttering John's I, show. I heard it on the Stuttering John show. <laughs> you have to leave now, sir. <laughs> You're, uh, the light's yeah. going out of the back. Your uh, five minutes is off. <laughs> not going to win the funniest person contest, damn it. All right, last clips I want to play. Because he's talking about Hunter Biden's laptop, which I was surprised he even brought this up. Now, when he does talk about it, he says, we all know that it's fake and it's Russian what? disinformation. I'm sorry. When was this show from? I got to ask. This, from, this past week. A couple, couple days oh, ago. this past week. Oh, cool. <laughs> a couple sorry, days ago. I'm a Republican. I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because they both agree that this is disinformation and this is the Daily Mail is making all of this up and there is no laptop. But as you guys know, there are the news that came out where they have the actual screenshots of the text messages between Hunter and his attorney, and Hunter is calling his attorney the N word because Hunter who hasn't done that though. Hunter's so funny though. To be fair, well, that's what's so funny about this is that even though they're saying it's fake, John feels the need to defend Hunter Biden, and they're claiming that they have uncovered texts where Hunter Biden is calling his attorney the N word. But, you know, not with the E-R at the end, but with the oh, A, okay. like, you know, like he's my, you know, like as, you know what I mean? Yeah. Say it, John. So, see hey, the, the, big, see the big thing now. See the line, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking funny is that? He's like, yeah, but, you know, it wasn't the hard R, so it's fine, whatever. He's like, yeah, it's not like he said an er, he said an uh, but he's just saying it over and over again. It's like, oh, God, John. I love it. I love the level of, of political discourse on this show. So of course, but like he's yeah. he's so he's a crackhead who likes foot jobs, and and uh, likes the n word. But if if could you imagine if Trump got a foot job from some Chinese woman while smoking crack or or just calling uh, uh, uh calling Roger Stone his uh you know whatever he they would he John would be crucifying him. Well, hold on a second though, because I'll tell you, Mersh. And this is what uh, Major Ojeda said. Hunter is not running for office. We got to leave Hunter alone. In fact, in fact, he brings up who he calls 
Donnie Dickhead Jr., which is another hilarious nickname. Oh, that's a good, nickname. Oh, that's a good one, dude. That's a pretty good one. Like, Buried good. that fucking son of a bitch. He, <laughs> he's never going to recover from that. He call, Jr. ETFO'd, bro. He calls out <laughs> Donnie Dickhead Jr. for tweeting about these text exchanges between Hunter and his attorney. Donald Dickhead Jr. is actually calling out Hunter Biden for using the N-word, okay? Mm-hmm. Richard. It has been said by many who have witnessed, including Noel Kastler, mm-hmm. Donald Trump has used the N-word on multiple occasions. Mm-hmm. And really? his father, Based? Fred Trump, was at a KKK rally. Uh, and what? you have Donnie Dickhead Jr. <laughs> who's tweeting out about Hunter Biden. So, so let me, so stuttering John Honestly, because, you know, QAnon gets a lot of shit in this show. QAnon's fucking retarded, right? Yeah. But Stuttering John, is does he go, so he go to these left-wing versions of the QAnon sites? Because, yeah, you know, actually, I have footage of, of Don at Bohemian Grove yelling the N-word at Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know why, but the visual of, of him angrily calling a corpse the n-word like, like the amount of the amount of visceral hatred you'd have to have in your heart to yell at a dead guy and call him the n-word yeah they bring up a lot of things that are, are i mean from what i know about the world are blatantly false and they all just repeat it like it's totally known fact. Like, well, you know what Donald Trump did? You know, he did rape and murder that 13-year-old. Well, yeah, yeah. So what the fuck are we even talking about here? Like, wait, what? What happened? I'm I'm not uh, familiar with that news story, I guess. <laughs> I would feel like that would be bigger news. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I don't we know all about remember, We all remember a time to kill. You, the people don't know Donald Trump was one of the guys at the beginning of that movie. <laughs> Yeah, they based American History X off of Trump's childhood. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, a lot of people don't know that the, 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 the Keith Sutherland character is based on Fred Trump, his father. <laughs> you know the docu-series American History X? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So that's what I have for, uh, for Stuttering John this week. What is happening, Bag Slappers and Cousin Roos? Welcome to Who Are These Podcasts? Thanks so much for tuning into the show this week. Very special episode. We did a bonus show on Stuttering John called Stuttering John's The Betrayal. And Vinny came over a few weeks ago. We recorded that. It is important. It is important content that I felt I needed to make available on the main feed. So this is a bonus episode that if you are a supporter on Patreon or Supercast, you probably have heard this. If you're not, you should be. These episodes are great. I'm releasing this because I really do feel like this is something everyone needs to know about. And also, it's just a lot of fun. And uh, my band, The Isotopes, played a show on Saturday, so I didn't get a chance to record a brand new episode. However, Kevin, who is the announcer for The Isotopes, recorded some jokes with me. And I, uh, impromptu, started doing a little Who Are These podcasts with Kevin. So there's some bonus content after the Stuttering John stuff. Stick around for that. Uh, Kevin and I actually listened to some of uh, Patrick Michael's karaoke work. So that is uh, certainly worth checking out. And then we have voicemails, brand new voicemails to listen to, too. So check that out at the end. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Oh, I don't want to talk about Sutter and John. He's my friend. Are you guys still friends? Because this is going to be a problem. No, I'm angry at him, actually. <laughs> hey, I had a very nice little uh, chat on the, the Twitter with Dr. Steve. Oh, did you? Yeah. He's a sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. God bless him. He is a great guy. He is. Yeah, why would you talk about anything you can talk about here? No, I just thanked him for uh, offering to pay Stuttering John to go do that show with me, The Creep Off. We were going to try to pay him a yeah. $1,000 to come and do a show. Yeah. And he refused. And I... The no, he didn't refuse. Why, he counter-offered. Yeah, he counter-offered. But <laughs> yeah. I was just so upset that he was like, like, what am I to you, John? Somebody's offered you a thousand dollars to talk to me. Am I that bad? You don't just take the thousand dollars. Well, you're gonna I find out. I am personally offended. You're gonna find out today that John has plenty of money and does not need your one thousand dollars. You ready to get into it? It's showtime. Podcast reviews, 
Slappers and Vinny Paulino. How's it going, buddy? Hola, creepo. Welcome to another bonus episode of Who Are These Podcasts for all you fine people who support the show. We appreciate it. We're going above and beyond this month because Stuttering John on Saturday put out a show the same time I was doing my show and then followed up with another gem on Tuesday. So here we are Wednesday night and I have to cover all Everything that happened over the last two episodes. Now, are you telling me that Stuttering John is finally hitting his podcast stride? Oh my gosh. If this was what John's show was, I'd really listen to it just for the entertainment value of it. Because he's out of fucking control. Okay. He, he's at war with his mods. What? Oh, you don't know about this I yet? don't know any of it, anything about uh, it. Oh, yes! I was hoping you would say that. I was hoping you were coming in here not knowing what was going on with I'm John I'm going to tell right you now. something right now. Yeah. I'm coming in fresh. The only yes! thing that I have seen <laughs> is the one clip that you asked me if I saw from Hal Sparks. Yes. Someone sent me that, and I laughed really hard at that. But I don't know anything about this. What's going on with the mods? Before we get into that, I'm going to tease that, because okay. that's exciting. Before that, though... He had his attorney on, Michael Popak. The famous Michael Popak. I like this guy. I like him Professional. too. Professional. I like his attorney. I really do. But uh, as you know, this is the guy that was under the retainer that was going to be suing me. Right. So, first off, let's explain that John makes his buddy Michael miss the Yankees game to be on his show. He declares this right at the beginning when he pulls him up. I'll bring in my attorney, good friend, who actually missed a Yankee game for me today. No, no not just, can you hear me? Not just yes. a Yankee game. A, a Garrett Cole a, classic. One where they're winning, but oh, I, I'll ruin it for the fans. 6-0. I know. Uh, I, uh, Michael, I showed up late because I was I watched until <laughs> until they made out in, the, in that, you know, Glaber Torres is on fire again. Oh, this guy Christ. wanted to go to the Yankee game, and John's like, "Yeah, sorry, I'm late. I was watching the game. What a fucking game!" Huh? He's like, "I would have been there." You know that John, <laughs> if you wanted to watch the Yankee game, you could have just scheduled your show later. Everybody could have been happy. He was late anyway. I don't know what the difference is. Wow. But he explains that this proves how much he cares. I hope about he gets a bill for this. How much? I he hope this guy oh, bills. I hope so too. <laughs> Yankee game. I said, I'm going to go. And then you brought me back to reality and said, you promised that you'd be a guest on my show today. You got to do this. And, Michael, here I am. Yeah, and, and Michael, could you just say, isn't that proof positive that I care about my show? <laughs> you do. <laughs> it's proof that you care about yourself. Right. It's proof that you're selfish. Well, it is the stuttery John show. So yeah, I guess. Honestly, Vinny, if you had messaged me and been like, oh, I just got tickets to go do a thing tonight. I would be like, come on, Vinny. You promised, by the way, Kevin's blowing me off this weekend. <laughs> you would have had more like, Vinny. Vinny, Vinny come, come on, on, buddy. No, nah, I just would have gotten producer Chris over here. We would have done a half-ass show. It would be fine. Yeah. It's the difference. Sure. Could have gotten Jenny Jingles and producer Chris out here. Probably. Sometimes I can get Jenny Jingles on the horn. Yep. And get her engaged in something. So, John is explaining that he is going to go to a Yankee game because he's not broke. All right. There's a lot of talk about how John's not broke on this episode, which I always find amusing. I don't know any other podcaster who talks about not being broke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what a weird topic to have. There is a horse trade, though, because when you're in New York in a few weeks, we're not only going to the game, but the hot dogs and beer are on you. Well, guess what, Michael? The horse <laughs> trade has already begun. I might have a ticket for you paid, by, oh. paid for by me. See, this already worked out. <laughs> June 19th. I bought eight tickets. 
for all yeah. these people. All these people think I'm broke, Michael. It's yeah. so funny. <laughs> I'm buying a new car on Monday. Nice. I, I own my condo outright. I own my motorcycle outright. Oh, John's broke. Yeah, okay, I'm broke. First of all, he pays a mortgage. We know this for a fact. He's asked Heather W. for payment so he can pay his mortgage. I own my condo outright. That's not what having a mortgage means. Right. Uh, can I get one of those tickets, John? June 19th is my birthday. Oh, yeah, it is. June I, I want to go to the baseball game with Stutter and John. <laughs> you might have an extra one. Oh, that'd be fun. Floating around. So how funny is that? He's like, I got eight tickets, and that proves I'm not broke. What, because you bought, bought tickets to a baseball game? I mean, not for nothing. Yankees tickets aren't cheap. Well, he explains exactly how much they were here, Vinny. Oh. I think I might have an extra ticket for you. Please. All right. I'm in. And and by the way, just so you know, I have a very good contact at Yankee Stadium. So we will be sitting in great seats that I get for $100 a piece face value. So that's right. $800 I spent on this game. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm done but, here. But I'm you broke, know? Michael. But I'm broke. You probably are after those three I think I've done my job. I'm done. Good night, everybody. He seems so excited that he has $800 for a Yankees game. That's not impressive. Can I tell you this? Michael Popak is like a hundred dollar ticket for a Yankees game. I don't know. Well, it's like, funny that John's like, I know a guy. So I was able to buy tickets. I was able to buy tickets <laughs> at face value. <laughs> <laughs> impressive, John. You must have an in over there at Yankee Stadium. Congratulations. Is, is uh, fucking high pitch Eric still working at the stadium? <laughs> High pitch is sitting in front of John. He's got better tickets. <laughs> that was cameo money. Yes. Oh, you know High Pitch has way more money than John at this point. So God, how would you feel if you Oh God, poor John. I hate to say this, because I don't want to alienate anyone, but eight hundred dollars for a sporting event these these days. Like I bought four tickets to the Sabres. I was gonna right. bring my wife and my parents. Unfortunately it was canceled. But it was eight hundred dollars for four tickets to the Sabers. Right, that's what Major League Sports cost. Sports costs. Right. And John's like, people think I'm broke. I I spent eight hundred dollars on tickets, and I never once bragged that I bought Sabers tickets. I wasn't that impressed with myself at the time. I didn't feel like I had to go on my show and explain that to everyone. What now? Which episode did you uh, pat yourself on the back to your <laughs> guests for? I forget for spending the face va- for buying face value tickets. I can't remember now. All right, so now. They're talking about the Sirius XM case. And John says that there's someone on Reddit or somewhere on the internet, and people are saying that John's already lost the case. And Hockey Puck, his moderator, right. believed this to be true and went to John and was like, hey, look at this paperwork. It looks like you lost the case. So John has to explain to Sean that he's a dummy. John, I, I'm sorry. I, I guess you lost a Sirius XM lawsuit. I go, what are you talking about? We didn't lose anything. And he goes, <laughs> Well, there's a lawyer saying, and he and he has the documents. I go, Sean, was it signed by the judge? Right. Yeah, and then I, and then I email you. I go, Mike, you know, uh, you know what's going on, and you and, and you said the exact same thing, John. Is there a signature from the judge? Let me translate what actually happened. Uh, he talked to Michael Popak. And he said, John, the judge didn't sign the paper. That he went to Sean and said it. Right. John freaked out. He's like, what is this? I thought we still had a case here. Sends it off to his lawyer. What's going on here? Okay, he goes, John, do you see that there's a, a, a signature from a judge? Oh, oh, okay. And then responds to Sean like, exactly. you fucking idiot. There's not even a signature. And he acts like he came up with that first and then was reinforced by his attorney. No way in hell that's the, the case. I would imagine there was some screaming and crying <laughs> while waiting for a Why aren't you telling me that we lost the case? Why uh, aren't you telling me? So then Michael Popak. To be in that circle, what a treat. What a treat. Could you imagine? <laughs> this poor this poor guy. I don't know how long he's going to be hanging out with John, but. Well, he's got to get through your case. I know. I know. So Michael Popak explains that. This case is going to take years. This is going to drag out for years, just so everybody knows. Well, I don't know. Stuttery John has plenty of those left. And they talk. Yeah, right. Oh, John might not, <laughs> he might not make it. <laughs> so John's explaining that Sirius, if they were to win, they would appeal. <laughs> and it would go to another court. And John explains, but Sirius knows that they're in the wrong. We are going to file an appeal because yeah. Yeah. because we are in the right. 
Sirius knows that, correct? And well, I don't know if they know it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't know it. Right. The I'm pretty positive that nobody thinks they are wrong. The there. attorney knows that Sirius has a case, <laughs> that they have a very good case here. I don't know why John thinks that if this is a, a slam dunk. But then Michael Popak goes on to explain that he's hoping for a settlement. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is telling. This is a telling clip right here. Wow. Then they're going to have to have a serious conversation with us, no pun intended, about resolving the case in your favor in a settlement posture. And if they, because that's just the way litigation works. And if they don't, they want to take it all the way to trial. We'll take it all the way to trial. You'll be a great witness. We'll, you know, we'll have jurors lining up to be in the jury box to hear Stuttering John's case. I'm not worried about that. I think in the David versus Goliath of Stuttering John, John Melendez versus Sirius XM, against a a jury in new york i'll take my chances there's a lot of posturing. i don't know if i want to gamble on that a lot of posturing wow. going on holy shit number one did he say stuttering john would be a good witness yeah oh people be lined up to hear him testify against i can't XM. think of anyone else who would be a worse witness oh the John's an idiot. Heard, i mean if john was <laughs> under oath before he started a podcast he would have been locked up already <laughs> like no shit. i mean this is preposterous. He sir. talks in circles. He'd be a terrible witness. You can't coach the guy. He doesn't right. know how to talk. Right. There's like, a lot of reasons why he'd be a bad witness. He's got a pop of Coors Light can out of his jacket. <laughs> that's that's libel and that's slander. I didn't say he did it. Oh, he said I he said might. said he could do. He could possibly do that. Because yeah. he does enjoy Coors Light quite a bit. And the odds are in our favor. <laughs> so then he shows his hand. He really shows his hand on this clip. Look, the, the, the amount that you are ultimately seeking, and I'm not here to declare what that is on this podcast, but the amount that, okay, there you go. <laughs> the, the amount that you're, that you're seeking ultimately is a rounding error on their daily interest on their bank accounts. It's, yep. To you, it's important, not the money per se, but the principle. To them, the money is, is pocket change for any senior executive at the company. Yeah. So- this guy's trying to say, just let's just make this go away, guys. It's not a lot of money. Let's just settle. It's not a big deal. But he doesn't understand that this would open up an entire can of worms. For every person that's ever appeared on Howard's show. Every single person who's ever been on the Howard Stern show has ever been on uh, Sirius 101. Fucking crazy cabbies coming in to collab. Oh, he's the first one. Fucking uh, Jeff the Drug Slate going to want some money. For sure. Are you oh. kidding me? What about a guy named... Jackie Martling? Do you think maybe he might deserve a few bucks? With the amount of fucking airplay that he has on those channels? Fucking Fred hasn't even gotten a raise. Fred is, yeah, Fred. <laughs> no, honestly, this is insane. This is insane that, that this is what, this is obviously what their game is, though. You can tell by the way he said that. This is so silly. Yes. You can tell by the, and I think Michael Popak is, is a competent guy. I, I like him, but. No, he's a very competent guy because his strategy is exactly what it should be. Right. If you're going to take a case like that, it's get him to settle. Yeah, look, That's guys. All it is. We won't even tell him how much you gave us. Let's just make it go away. It's like, no, dude, they do that. And they're going to have a wide out the door of people waiting to get. Wet their beak. So getting big corporations to settle to get you to go away yeah. is does not a good lawyer make. Like he's always going. <laughs> you can going, do it, I guess. I mean, I, exactly. <laughs> right? It's like this, you're not some great fucking litigator because you could get a fucking corporation to get you to go away. Right. So John explains that even his mods are against him in this case. Again, that's where, like, I don't – I just hear from my mods sometimes. Like the trolls will – for some reason, sometimes they'll they'll side against me. And I'm like, really? You're going to side with this big corporation against the guy who's getting screwed here? I'm the little guy here. You know what I mean? So that's not how that works at all. Here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so he must have heard this from Michael Popak because then he reiterates it. I don't see how people are lining up behind the billionaires and trillionaires against John Melendez. I don't, really, I don't see how that lines up. But okay. Oh, well, they have, they have more money, so they should just lose the lawsuit. Right. Like, I don't know why poor people don't just steal from Target every day. Oh, wait, they do. But you know my point. Like, that's still illegal. Like, you still can't get away with that right. shit. It doesn't make any sense to me. They're like, 
this is um what's his name your your buddy there the uh socialist who bernie sanders you what know, are you talking about, my buddy? <laughs> you know, your buddy Bernie that you I'm always just, vote for I in the primaries? Never voted for Bernie for anything This ever. is like Bernie. All you have to do is be like, the billionaires and the trillionaires. It's like, oh, fuck those people. They're obviously terrible. Let's give the money to John the Melendez. One, the 1%. The 1% of the 1% need to pay their fair share to stonering John Melendez. And his great attorney, Michael Popak. <laughs> that would be some platform. <laughs> Oh. I'm going to go ahead and call that one a loser. <laughs> it's a loser. Boy. I, I know Jackie Marlene is rooting for John in this. He has to be, Oh, right? he have to be. Yeah. Because it would open up the door. Although, I don't know. I think Jackie's so, like, more if I'm Jackie Marlene, if I'm any of these guys, any chance they get, I would just be like, go get him, John. I guess. But you know what? Honestly, I think that people like Jackie are more at peace with where they're at in the world. Like The reason why John is going after this is because he's frustrated. Like, Jackie has the career that he has now and the life that he has now. And every time I see him on anybody's show, he loves reminiscing about his times on the Howard Stern show. He knows he fucked up, but he's over it. Yeah. Like, John's not over it. But John didn't fuck up. Oh, yes, he did. John failed upward. Big difference. <laughs> yes, that's true. No, John fucked up. He was given a huge opportunity to make a name for himself. On the Stephanie Miller show. <laughs> <laughs> but then he had to go and quit. Right, Vinny? Did he quit that show, I believe? That's what I understand. That's how I understand how things went down. I believe he yes. quit. I understand that Did he you quit. hear me, Michael? <laughs> All right. This my is... My name is Vince Paulino of my <laughs> sound mind and body. I understand that Chad Melendez quit the Stephanie Miller show. Do you have any more statements to give to the jury before we dismiss you? Carl did it all maliciously. <laughs> <laughs> Objection! Objection! So... Once again, because I'm not being facetious or sarcastic, Michael Popak is a smart guy who knows what he's doing. He explains to John something that a lot of people have explained to John, and he just never fucking gets it. I don't really, I mean, I don't get the benefit of somebody like you falling down the rabbit hole of following, you know, trolls into their basement and their where, you know, I, I don't get it. Just ignore them. That's why we're late today <laughs> for, that, for that production. I had to get that in there. Yeah. Seriously, John, what the fuck is your problem? Why are you worried about the trolls? And then they start talking about me, of course. Right. Michael, I, I have shows. Right. People try, dedicated to, to trashing me. They actually are trying to get fame out of trashing me. <laughs> What's that podcast one? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, that guy. That guy. That's the guy that we were going to sue because he actually, huh? because he was spewing falsehoods. He has he a was, we're going to sue. Spewing. We're going to sue. I heard that. And then he went, oh. Because he was spewing falsehoods. He has he a whole angry. business. He has a whole business model where all he allegedly does yeah. is review and critique other people's podcasts. <laughs> this is like the old joke about if you if those that can teach teach and those who can't are gym teachers. So he can't. Okay, good one. That's a good old joke. I don't open with it. Are you familiar with Mystery Science Theater Three Thousand? <laughs> Our gym teachers. So he can't have a successful podcast. So he just critiques from the sidelines. And I thought by the okay, well, maybe that's a business model. All right. Then I look on his Twitter feed and he's got like 92 followers. I mean, I he's not even that popular. I don't I don't know. I don't get where he gets off taking you on or anybody else. Shot fired. That's, that's what I've been saying to Carl behind the scenes since I've known him. <laughs> is who do you think you are, sir? Look at you. Look at you. That face, that hair, those club feet. My 92 Twitter followers? Who the fuck do I think I am? What the (laughs) fuck do you think you're doing? Well, I don't have as many Twitter followers as a guy like, say, stuttering John Melendez with his career on the Howard Stern Show. But for some reason, I have way more Patreon support. And the Tonight Show. I have way more Patreon support. So that's kind of weird, right? Maybe a lot of those Twitter followers are fake, disengaged. I don't know. Just throw it out there because you have all these fucking people or and maybe, no one wants to give you five bucks a month. Or maybe just a bunch of boomers who like the Howard Stern show and just follow yeah. everything that went with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Disengaged. Disengaged. Don't care anymore. 
You're washed up. I don't up. care. I don't care. <laughs> but he will. Don't worry, Betty. He will sue me. But here's but. the thing. If they're going to lie and say, oh, I got fired. <laughs> Wait, I got to play that again. <laughs> but here's the thing. But here's the thing. But here's the thing. If they're going to lie and say, oh, I got fired because I was drunk, I'll sue the fucks. Yeah. I mean, I don't care. I told you. Just so everybody knows. I said, Mike, I'll, I'll pay you. Don't worry about it. Because I'll, I'll fucking take this fucking guy. I'm because, gonna don't, because don't start lying. Yeah. Because that could because that could hurt my career. If you're gonna, I have never drank on any show I've ever worked on. Don't start fucking bullshit. He's still doing the tough guy talk to me. I've laughed in his face over and over again. He's still doing the tough guy talk. Don't you don't think I don't have money for a retainer? Let me tell you something. Fast forward two years, there's gonna be a phone conversation between the two of them where Popak is gonna be like, John, I'm. I know you said don't worry about it, but I'm going to need to get paid. And John's right. going to be going, I got you the Yankee ticket. The, Yankee, the Yankee ticket. You didn't come to the, the thing, but I bought the tickets for $800, Michael. I love that John's like, this guy lied about me. I said he had stink lines coming off his feet. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it again. Are you he going to sue me? Are you going to sue <laughs> And then John says something that only a complete asshole would say. But when you lie, you yeah. know, when you libel and slander me, that's when it becomes a bigger issue. You know what I mean? And I will sue. I have no problem. This series is not my first lawsuit, and it's not going to be my last. You hear that, pal? Is he proud of that? This is not my first lawsuit. And it will not be my last. I'm suing everyone. Yeah, that's why your lawyer is missing the Yankees game to talk to you on your show. <laughs> because you sue too much, stupid. I just think that's so funny. We had Brent Hatley on the show, and I asked him about... Who? There's this guy who used to be at the Howard Stern show and Bubba the Love Sponge. His name's Brent Hatley. I get, you know, pretty big guests on my show. Cool, he... <laughs> cool. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Crow was just really excited to talk to him. He's like, wow, Carl, I got to talk to Brent Hatley and Casey Armstrong by being associated with your show. Two people I never wanted to talk to. In my entire fucking life. <laughs> anyway, I want Brent. So, Brent... <laughs> I had Brent Hatley on the show, and I asked him about threatening lawsuits. And his response was, I've never once sued anyone. The only lawsuits I've been in is when I've been sued. Because... It's a shitty thing to do to go around suing people. It's not a nice thing. There was a funny thing in our subreddit. Somebody posted the, I will sue you as the adult. I'm telling my parents on you. It is. It is exactly that. It's 100%. Like, oh, are you lying about me? I'm so telling. You're going to get in so much trouble. You know, the problem, though, is you didn't have to pay thousands of dollars for a retainer to tell your mom. That's true. And, That's why it's and the you adult go back version. to the natural instinct of trying to go back to this. And it's just sad. And nobody ever believes you when you say, I'm going to sue you. I fucking don't. I'm sure he's scared off other people. I'm sure he can get Heather W. to be, be like, oh, I'm going to get sued. I don't believe him for a fucking second. And also, I say bring it on, as you know. Yes. This has yes. been my stance all along. But that's not going to happen because there is no case. There is no case. You you are a public figure on the Internet, and we are allowed to comment about you, John. Michael Popak has more brilliant observations if anything comes out of your mouth that's a comparison to the Holocaust, and you're not talking about the, the murder of six million people in some context, don't use that comparison. It never works. It always makes you look crass and small-minded and, and hurtful, and they do it frequently. John got real quiet there. So wait a second. I'm not allowed to say that the Stuttering John podcast is the official podcast of the Holocaust? No! No, because it makes you look crass okay. and ridiculous when you do that. I'm really glad that his attorney said that. John got real quiet. I'm wondering if anyone has examples of John maybe comparing Trump to maybe Hitler or potentially Nazis. I'm just curious. Because I would, I'd be willing to bet that John has made that comparison before because he repeats what he hears other people say. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I know that's been said many times. It really is like when you... The, the, I will agree with Popak. The Nazi comparison is always the lowest hanging fruit. It's the stupidest thing you can do. It's like what, it's what everybody... I don't, I don't like what you believe in. you're a Nazi. Maybe he's not a bad lawyer. 
I think he's a great lawyer. Okay. I really do. I think he's I think he's onto something. Plus, you see how many Twitter followers this guy has? Knocks it out of the park with his Twitter. 93. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I just need two more and I'll be ahead of him. I'm unfollowing you right I'm, now. Oh <laughs> fuck! No, I'm way behind. So this is a funny little bit here. And this is this isn't as much about the stuff that I want to cover today. We're getting off the path a little bit, but I just find it fun. Anytime I sit down and listen to Centering John, I pick up on things that I, I personally appreciate. I really enjoy watching your face because yeah. you are like a kid, yeah. a rich kid on Christmas. Yes. Who just got all the G.I. Joes. Yes. You are just sitting there ripping open packages going, ah! I'm like Ricky Schroeder riding around in the train yeah. <laughs> around the Christmas tree. Did you ever see that picture of Screech? That like There's a picture of Screech as a kid. When he was a child actor, just with every fucking toy no. imaginable. It's you right now. So wait, how did it work out for Screech? Because I'm really happy oh, right now. Oh, he's dead. Oh. But he was doing really well up until that point, though, right? No, no, no. I actually uh, opened for him at the Joke Factory once. It wasn't going well for him. Oh. And the Joke Factory was like a really popular, like, huge place. No, that, no, no. Uh, it was in uh, the uh, Holiday Inn Airport. <laughs> They had the sign out by the dumpster. <laughs> by the way, if anyone thinks Vinny's making this up, he's not. I, I went to the joke factory. I saw Jim Florentine there, and he's not making this up. <laughs> it was brutal. It was a brutal venue. Yeah, it was me and Screech. We had a good time. <laughs> okay. so Did uh, you know that that wasn't him in the porn tape? Yes. I I Because I think I did hear about that, because the guy in the porn tape had a fucking hog on him, right? Yeah, and the funny thing was, like, that's all he wanted to tell me about, is how it wasn't him in the porn tape. I oh, I like, would have taken full Hi, credit. Nice to meet you, Dustin Diamond. <laughs> hey, listen, man, you know that porn tape where it looks like I have a huge dick? That wasn't me. It's like, oh, well, nice to meet you, too. I'm going to go get a drink. I would have just asked, like, did you ever see Lisa Turtle Snatch? That's the only question I have for that guy. Everybody on that show saw it. <laughs> Fucking Mr. Belding used to have a picture of it in his wallet. <laughs> that was the original cuties, that show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, Tiffany Thiessen has still got it. Oh, I totally agree with you. Yeah, 100%. yeah. Although that I'm, big old pumpkin had of hers. I'm 90210 when she got on that show. All right, oh, I, gotta, yeah. I gotta go upstairs for just a minute. Just give me one minute. I'll be right back, guys. Uh, we're getting way off here. This is what the fun part about the No, not shows. yet. You haven't left. So this is something that I picked up on, where this doesn't happen can on we John's... Can still just talk about Tiffany Thies instead of Stuttering John? We could. I can find some photos of her online if you want to just look at that. Google.com. <laughs> All right, go ahead. So Michael Popak, they're talking about whether the House might support the January 6th insurrection investigation. You know, this is what's going on right now in politics. Are they going to set up a special committee... To investigate this thing. Well, I'm sure that John is going to call it all of the Dotard's followers. Right. Well, what I love about this clip is that Michael Popak brings it back to John and asks him his opinion. And this flusters the fuck out of Stuttery John. It could. I mean, I, to be frank, it's unlikely, but it could. Oh, really? It's unlikely? Yeah, well, well, let's push it back to you. Why do you think it's likely? Well, I mean... How can you not if you did if you spent all this all this time with Benghazi as 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 uh, representative you know uh, Tim Ryan said and now you're not going to investigate this? So John's opinion is somebody heard somebody else say right, which is completely unrelated. Correct. Benghazi, I mean, that was so different than what he's talking about here. And I just was thinking like I would love to hear John debate a conservative. Wouldn't that be amazing? That could be a pay-per-view. Have a competent conservative on there to talk to John about his stance on different political issues. Is John the stutterer a conservative? Can we get the other stuttering guy and just have them argue? Is there another stuttering conservative guy? I don't know. Can we get like him versus Candace Owens? That'd be fun to watch. Dude, I would love that. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That'd be so much fun. Because John's never challenged by anyone. This guy's on his side 100%. And he goes... Why do, I don't think that they're going to make a special committee on this. Like, why do you think they are? And he's like, oh, the Not for nothing. <laughs> I like how this guy treated him like a teacher talking to a kid in class. Like, he <laughs> yeah. just, who just read his book report. was like, I think it was good. Well, John, can you tell us why you think that? 
<laughs> it had a lot of words, so, and I found them to be good. Well, look at the cover. There's beautiful illus, illus pictures. <laughs> I'm going to back up to the beginning of this show. Tiffany Thiessen. The beginning of the show where he talks about his income again, and he talks about how much money he has, and he tells you how he can prove he's got tons of money. Uh, what is my source of income, Rob? Uh, Robert, let us put let it let let me put it this way. I'm bu- let's put it this way. I'm buying a new car, probably on Monday. I really like the Mazda Miata. Now I looked into Mercedes, but Mercedes to me is so passe. <laughs> I've had our Mercedes already. Yeah, we know you used to have money. That's why it's funny. That's the question. Like, what's your source of income these days? Oh, what do you mean? I'm going to buy a, a Mazda. I mean, I could get a Mercedes, but that's just not my style. You know, I, I already had one of those. Who gives a shit? And he goes on to list all the cars he's owned ever. That is such a weird reaction. Isn't that a weird reaction? When someone says, what's your source of income? Oh, you think I don't have money? I'm going to buy a new car. Mazda. I'm buy- <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's Italian. And then he talks about these uh, these people who are donating. Uh, I got a lot of donations lot allison siegel 100 bucks for one paypal donation fudge sickle another 100 bucks so i appreciate it i guess he felt bad he hasn't been donating lately he's so funny he pretends to be a troll on all these sites i don't know because i don't go on them but yet he donates every show it's the funniest thing and i know it's the same guy because it's the same email all right so fudge pretends to be a troll because he talks shit about him on other sites. He's talking about my Discord and our Reddit. Yeah. And he says, but he doesn't go on those sites. Okay. And he says he knows it's the same person because it's the same email. But you don't know who's people, what anyone's email address is on Reddit or Discord. Am I mistaken you on that? You would know through like Patreon, but not like through Reddit or Discord. No. Right. So everything John just said is nonsense. Yes. <laughs> Can we all agree on that? Um, I'm no, I'm no lawyer. <laughs> I mean, I'm no Michael Popak. <laughs> you don't have to be a Michael Popak to know that doesn't check out. No. And he, this has been a thing that John's been doing for a long time, where he says, "Oh, Fudgicle is always giving me all this money," and he's just fucking trolling Fudgicle. Right? I think so. I think it's a reverse troll move that he does because Fudgicle has said, "I don't give this guy fucking money." But he just loves to bring that up and then pretend like this guy pretends to be a troll, but he keeps giving me all this money. So you telling me he lied about that hundred dollars. I think he might be lying about all the hundred dollars that he says that he got. Yeah, he's just hoping one day somebody will actually go for it. The same way we have like the twenty five thousand dollar tier. Right. On the uh yes. Street Pop Patreon. To him, a hundred dollar PayPal donation would be the ultimate goal. So he just keeps saying it. It's like when you put a five in your tip jar. Like, yep. Yeah, you can tip more than a buck if you want, but there's a five in there already. Yeah. <laughs> He's just throwing it out there. You $100 see, on PayPal. You got to use psychology on the people. <laughs> Lots of people are putting $100 on our PayPal. It's the $5 bill in the tip bucket. Holy shit. That's it hysterical. is. So, yeah. <laughs> so then he goes on to talk about how the Midas Touch Brothers, who Michael Popak is associated with, He's trying to get them to fund him. Yep. And before you go, Mike, because I know you have to, you have a hard out at one, right? Yeah, I do. Sorry. I've been trying, because I just the work that you did down in Florida. I've been trying to get the Minus Touch Brothers to finance me to come to Washington for a month and do the Stuttering John political version uh, and start walking up to McConnell, Graham, Cruz, right. Hawley, and really getting into that shit. Uh, I vote for that. And I'll talk, I'm talking to Ben a little bit later today. I'll bring it up again. Yeah, please say why not? Because really, it would take maybe two or three grand to get a crew for, you know, I mean, right. it be, it's not that much money. I mean, if, if I had enough patrons right now, I would do it on my own. He's contradicting himself in the exact same episode. Okay, so... He's got all these people donating. He's got all this money. He's going to buy a, a brand new car. And then he goes, I wish the Midas Touch Brothers would fund my show that I want to do. And I only need two or $3,000. How do you not have that money, John? Okay, so do you remember when I talked to Stuttering John on the phone? Yes. One of the things he brought up was his idea to do that show. Yes. Was the Stuttering John show. And he made it sound like, and I'm just saying from my recollection, Michael Popak. 
Yeah. My recollection is John telling me that he had people lining up to fund that and pay for it. I don't think that's true. Well, it he's begging like people. It is not true. <laughs> he's begging people to help him so out. Listening to this, so and it's was not like, happening. Yeah. If and he said, I believe his words to me were, "If you only knew who wanted to fund me to go and do more man on the street stuff, but like with Washington in a political sphere." Well, he threw it out that he, that he thought CNN should hire him to do that. Yeah, I'm that's sure he not happening. Think CNN should do that. Yeah, yeah. And now we say that people are going to fund that. It's not happening. I mean, not for nothing, John. You can get somebody to go there with the fucking camcorder. It's 2021. You do it with a fucking iPhone and walk up to these people and do this. You don't need, like, thousands of dollars in a camera crew. You just have to have, make it really good. John, there are funny comedians. One of them is named Ryan Long. He's been doing this for years with no funding and has built a fan base off of just walking up to people and asking them ridiculous questions. Right. All you have to do this is, is not go hard. to D.C. This is not hard to do. One less Yankee game. Just go to D.C. Why does he think he needs two to $3,000? That's also a ridiculous amount of money. If this was like a, an operation that he needed, tens of thousands of dollars would be needed. Right. If you were going to do it professionally, <laughs> right. two to $3,000 is an insane lowball. It's ridiculous. But, it's, it's, it's transportation. But the fact of the matter is you're not making anything other than just something to make for the Stuttering John podcast, so you could probably do it for... Nothing if you have an iPhone. Wait a second, though, Vinny. We're saying that this guy has no money and he needs money because why else would he say he can't afford two to $3,000? But then he puts us in our place. I'm very, very excited to have her on. I thought she was... Oh, this is funny because it starts off with he thought his guest was going to blow him off. Yeah. Because that's how insecure he is. And then he goes into his ad read. I'm very, very excited to have her on. I thought she was blowing me off again. I'm like, oh, no, Nina, don't blow me off again, baby. But first, let me just uh, do a little ad here. Uh, you, you know, you got to pay the bills, which is how I got paid, which is how I get paid. But apparently, I'm broke. <laughs> I put all my money in Dogecoin. Oh, my point. God, it's so funny. I buy stock every single day, but I'm broke. What a weird flux that is. I buy stock every single day? Why? You could say you trade, but you buy stock every single day? That's what, weird. are you hoarding stock? That's weird. <laughs> what a weird flex. I buy, you guys think I'm broke? I buy stock every single day. You weren't far off with your Dogecoin. Yeah. <laughs> what a fucking moron. So he brings on this guest who blew him off last time, right? He mentioned that? Yep. Let's find out why she wasn't able to do the show last time. Hey, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't blow you off last time. I'm so sorry. And I'm so glad you that you've given me another chance. Actually, you have a, a great excuse. I, mean, I did. Know. I had a big family emergency. But she's doing okay. So, you know, it's that time. She's 93. And it's just, you know, you know how it goes if you've got an old parent. And so, yeah. yeah what it was, happened it was exactly? a crisis. He had a stroke. Her 93-year-old mother had a stroke. <laughs> and John is and shaming her. Guilt tripped her. Guilt tripped her right out of the gate. She's listening to this before she comes on. Oh, I thought she was gonna blow me off again. What a nice lady. And then she goes out, she's like, hey John, I'm really sorry about that. My 93-year-old mother had a stroke. And that's why I wasn't able to do the show. So what do you think John does with this information? Uh makes jokes that are not good. No. Makes it about him. Oh, okay. That's you know, you, you know, I asked Nina because I had two strokes. I had two small TIAs. Oh. I know, I know how serious they are. And right now, these two fingers, I it's like they were they were shot with Novocaine. Uh, I can't feel this side of my lips. Unfortunately, the women wow. I can't. Can. And uh, <laughs> and I can't feel the t uh, the toes on my left foot. That right. might be diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well. John, holy shit, I didn't know that, poor guy. Yeah, I know. I hope you're okay, John. I know he's usually so healthy, it's shocking that he's in poor health like that. Is that explains why he, like, drools sometimes? Because he can't feel his lips? <laughs> it might be. Yeah, it must That be. actually does explain it. Yeah. I just thought that was so funny. The first he, guy. he gives her a guilt trip, then she explains why she wasn't on the show, and then I he goes... I had two I, I know what that's like, being a 93-year-old woman who had a stroke. I totally know what that's like. I had two strokes, <laughs> and I was on time for the show. <laughs> uh, he went up to... <laughs> and I was only 20 minutes late with two strokes. Did you see the Yankee game? <laughs> All right. Now we got to get into the exciting part of the show. All right. This is this is really the meat 
and potatoes are what we're talking about. Uh, the scum stream tomorrow it's on the, the main, uh, main course. Oh, Patreon. That's right. Vinny and myself and Croge will be doing a Patreon only scum stream bonus episode if you sign up for the creep off Patreon. That's right. What's the URL for that, Vinny? Uh, Patreon.com backslash the creep off. Very good. Or you could also just go to the creep off.com and click on the link. There's a link there and vote for Carl while you're there. All right. Or fuck off. So. At the end of this episode where he talks to the poor woman <laughs> who he made feel bad and his attorney who he made not go to a Yankee game. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He this said, was a good episode. This is a good episode. Wait until you get to this part. Nobody got booted today. Interesting. Very interesting. Kinky Strings, please write to me. Tell me if you can get back on now. I'm just curious. So you know John has this issue with YouTube. Where people get booted off of his stream. Yeah, because a guy hacked his stream, <clears throat> right? Well, John thinks he's figured out what's going on. It's very important that I find out this information. Because I just went into my YouTube account. There you go, Kinky Streets. There you go, Nikki B. Join this show. I went on my YouTube account people and i noticed that kinky streets benny loco suzanne forasepi carlene martin among many others were blocked they were not blocked from me they were not blocked from Nikki B. But who were they blocked from? Very interesting and saddening to me. Okay. Saddening's not a word. Well, also, <laughs> they were not blocked from me. It's not blocked. It's blocked by me. They were not blocked by me. It's very saddening. It's very saddening. They were not blocked from me. <sighs> so he's going. Now, you were picking up on this because when he's doing the gestures, you're spot on. He's fired up. So fingers are waving. Fingers are waving. He's figured it all out now. I got this all figured out. <laughs> Very interesting and saddening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So what did he figure out, Carl? All right. Let's, we got a big. I cannot wait we to hear his. We got a slow his, reveal going today. I cannot wait for his hypothesis. We got a slow reveal. Many. We're fucking blocked from my account. Many of the fans were blocked from my account. There is one change and only one change I made today. Only one. J.M. Vandy wasn't kicked out today. This is a sad day for me. Yep. You hit the nail on the head, Nurse M65. <laughs> I have been betrayed. I have been betrayed. Judas! Oh, he's been betrayed. Yeah, this is biblical shit we're listening to right Judas here. Judas in my mind. <laughs> this is biblical. Holy shit. So, who got the 30 pieces of silver? Let's keep going. So now I know why people are being blocked from my Patreon. Now I know why. Yes, I got hacked, Ziggy. I got hacked from within. From within. Da, da, da. Don't, don't, Very sad da, day da, for me. Da, 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 da. Because during this show, I hate to say it, I went on my YouTube account and saw all the names blocked. Holy shit, Shatner has a better delivery than him. I know. This is fucking ridiculous. I know. It's maddening. I even tightened some of these clips up because there's so much space in between. It's like, all right, just get to it. So he ends this show. He has been blocked. He has been hacked from within. He ends the show saying he's made one change. He made one change. He's been hacked from within. There's betrayal. He said all of these things and now he leaves it at that. Tuesday, he comes on the air. He has his buddy Major Ojeda on. Now, Hill Sparks had a cancel on him. So it says he has Major Ojeda on. Now, this is the guy, <clears throat> let me remind you, who was booked to go on Bill Maher 
And John's response was, can you get me on? Why the fuck did they book you? And when you go on there, tell them about me because I want to go on there. But for some reason, this guy still associates with John. So he comes on the show and guess what John wants to talk to him about? The betrayal. Uh, so I don't know if you heard the drama that I went through. I don't know if you, anybody told you. Did you hear anything? No, I just know that you've had some serious issues with social media, with YouTube. Yes, but guess what? What's it up? turns out it, it wasn't YouTube at all the whole time. It was one of my moderators. What, 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 were, they, were, they, what were they doing? They were putting the show in child mode while the show was going on, which would immediately throw out 100 people. Then, then they would block some of my favorite people uh, and you know, it's not they, it's he would block and block people that, you know, that, you know, that are like big, you know, donators and supporters of this show. Was he doing this on purpose or was he accidentally doing this? No, he was doing this on purpose because he's a right winger. Whoa. Whoa. He had a mod on the show who for, I want to say over a year. <laughs> was dumping his audience <laughs> really playing the long game and why did he do it because he's a right winger and he's trying to shut down john's free speech god damn it everybody's got somebody after him don't they <laughs> all right he goes out and explains how he knows this yeah the guy was sabotaging me yeah and how i found out is you know one of the people that always watches the show and a big donator of both hal and i Benny Loco told me that she knew. And then, so, you know, I talked to her and I go, I'll tell you what I'm going to do right before the show on Saturday. I am going to, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm going to change my passwords. Spit it out. So like, that's what I had to do. Yeah. And then, and then as soon as I changed my passwords and he couldn't get in, nobody was booted. So John has decided because he changed his password, he knows exactly who this was. And we'll all find out with this clip. It's a despicable thing to do. To oh, absolutely. I mean, how close are you are to this guy? Does he, like, live close to you or something? Oh, he's in Canada. Oh, my God! It's Hockey Puck! It's Hockey Puck! Hockey Puck! Hockey Puck! Hockey Puck! Hockey Puck! Hockey Puck! He didn't do it, though, did he? No. <laughs> Hockey Puck has nothing to do with any of this. Hey, Hockey Puck, if you're listening, if you would like to be the new moderator for the Creep Off page, <laughs> just hit me up, buddy. It's he does yours. a good job, man. I got to give him that. Yeah, man. Hockey Puck, come on over. So come on over. Come on over, <laughs> Hockey. Come on over. Major Ojeda sums this up perfectly. That although... sounds like a G.I. Joe made up. It does. Ojeda? Do you have the action figure? I bet no, you do. I don't have a general Ojeda. <laughs> if there was one, you would have it. I did recently get a major blood. Wish you got a fucking major blood clot. So, Major Ojeda has this summed up perfectly just for the wrong person. I just... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's a shame, man. Some people, some people are just absolutely bitter. You know, uh, they can't stand to see other people uh, do well. <laughs> Carl! <laughs> what?! <laughs> How dare you? Uh, all right. So John goes on to say that he actually thinks it's funny that people goof on him and that their show's dedicated to goofing on him. You know, John, the guy with the great sense of humor who refused to go on the creep off and goof on me with you. He had carte blanche to shit right on your table. And also was offered money to do it. You know, that guy. He goes yeah. on to say this. I got fucking... You know, I got shows dedicated to trashing me. It's like, you know, I mean, talk about getting a life. I mean, honestly, I in the beginning I would get mad. Now I I find it funny. Like like and I talked to Hal about it and we're like, hey, let them do it all they want. They're only they're only promoting you. Yeah. Right. A John's always had a good sense of humor. Isn't that what you've been saying since the beginning? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's great. The more people talking about me, the better. And I'm suing Sirius XM because they have me on, and I want to sue Carl because <laughs> he told a joke once. And he goes on to talk about how Sue happy he is. Uh -huh. I've already. Oh, this is about hockey puck. 
I've already looked into it. I could sue the motherfucker because I would because he would be, you know, people on Patreon who know who are, you know, I got, I got a lot of smart people. They, uh... they, it is a crime what he was doing. <laughs> so he's ready to sue this guy and major. I was like, yeah, fucking totally. You should definitely do that. We'd, back in my day, we drag him out of the barracks and we beat him with a phone book. This guy did four years in Afghanistan. He's not fucking around. Yeah. We dishonorably discharge hockey puck. <laughs> <laughs> so John, once again, wants our sympathy, and he finds the best way to do it. My yeah. own mother would get booted. Now, that takes that takes a real kind of horrible person. You know what I mean? When you know that it's affecting my mother, who yeah. is an 84-year-old woman sitting at home, you know, you know, uh, you know, in the big house, in a big house, and enjoys the, enjoys this show. This is an enjoyment so for her. Successful. What does that have to do with anything? Okay, first off, <laughs> my poor mother was getting booted from my show. You know, sitting at home in her giant mansion. First what? off, let me make a point here. <laughs> if somebody did block your mother, John, yeah. they were doing your mother a favor. <laughs> no shit. It's the same reason why Sonny Corleone had a closed casket. <laughs> she doesn't need to see this. No shit, Sherlock. No shit. They massacre my boy. <laughs> Perfect. So, Vinny. What? I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to know the answer. When John found out that he had been betrayed by his buddy hockey puck, what do you think he did? Had a Coors Light. And I went to the pub. I mean, I and I got home, and I and I hit the sauce, man. I was, I was just really that devastated. Whoa! He was so devastated he got drunk that night. He must get devastated a lot. Could you imagine being his neighbors and listening to him wailing and screaming, <laughs> hockey, pop, 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 <laughs> all fucking night, just throwing cardboard boxes around. Oh, my God. The roaches are like, Jesus Christ, would you quiet down? <laughs> that was my home, you asshole. Put that down. <laughs> so you would imagine Major O'Hate is like losing interest in this conversation because it's not about him at all. You think, He's the you guest. think this is what Bill Maher is going to talk about? <laughs> and by the way, tell Bill Maher to have me on the show. Bill, oh, great. I was betrayed, Bill. <laughs> but I know who did it. <laughs> all right, uh, so, okay, John. So I want you to key in on this next clip to just listen to how... And I watched the video, so I'm watching this guy just lose interest. He's like, he filled it at the last minute for Hale Sparks. This guy was not planning on being on John's show. And then he just gets accosted by John. And it's nothing but, could you believe this betrayal? He's like, okay. He played along for like 20 minutes. And then he's just like, oh, okay. I, I got some Jackaloon who's, uh, you know, like, I, I think, you know, sending me a, a cease and desist when I haven't mentioned the Jackaloon like, in like a year. He's talking about Heather W., by the way. Yeah, and I never do, but because some of these people call with phony numbers, this jackaloon only assumes it's me. <laughs> it's just it's amazing to me. I mean, just the amount of time that people spend into this guy. All he did during that clip is go, yeah. So, John makes up the dumbest words. The Jackaloon? Jackaloon. You don't like that one? Dota. He's a fucking <laughs> bossy. Well, you do like you do like hot Carla though. Oh, did he come <laughs> up with that? I think so. Okay. He at least came up with Carla. I don't know about the hot. Oh, part. I just like the hot c -c -c Carla. Oh, I know what you like. So you might be surprised to find out, because I was for sure, that the people who mod John Show, his loyal moderators are a bit unstable. You know, that's how, this is how I know your relationship is really good, because he can still surprise you. <laughs> that was all sarcasm. Uh, Nikki B, my other moderator, was literally in tears. I mean, tears. I mean, because of... Laughing. You know, of how... Because she, she was this guy's good friend, she thought as well. Yeah. And, I mean, I mean, she was literally... She cried for, like, two straight days. Like the fucking virgin mother at the fucking tomb of Jesus. How could you betray our John? Nikki B is a cancer survivor and she's crying about hockey puck. And this is what I mean. Like these people who enjoy John's show and there's, I think one of them is actually in our, uh, 
Discord right now. Hey, what's up, Ryan? These people are unstable. They're fucking mental patients. Correct. What are you doing with your life? You're watching Stuttering John Show for enjoyment? Uh, Mr. Popak, <laughs> that was Carl who said that. <laughs> If you're going to have a class action suit of all 30 of John's listeners. I'm glad that Ryan responded with an LOL. He's a good egg. Hi, Ryan. I was just joking about that. <laughs> Would you like to be the moderator for the creep off, Ryan? So, John thought all along that the YouTube, remember? He accused YouTube many, many times of kicking off his, his followers on purpose because he was telling the truth and telling it like it is and YouTube couldn't take it. So then John explains how much time you wasted. And and I made a big fuss thinking it was YouTube. I spent hours, hours, Richard, on YouTube chat rooms, talking to, trying to get help from them. Hours. I'm talking at least five to six hours. Yeah. And all this time, that guy knew that it had nothing to do with yeah. YouTube. Yeah, sad. You know, John, you could have listened to my show when I explained to you the very first time that you said it was YouTube, that it wasn't YouTube, that you were hacked, and that someone else was doing that to you. Because they thought it was silly. Because they thought it was hilarious. And the way this is played out, I got to agree. Like, whoever <laughs> sorry, that was. Sorry, hockey puck. I thought this is fucking, fucking funny. <laughs> fucking long, long game. It's beautiful. It's amazing. This dude totally hook, line, and sinker. And poor hockey puck is just sitting in Canada going, what did I do? <laughs> Not only that. What did I do? But what have I done? Yes, right. Yes. What have I dedicated my life to to this simpleton? Well, this is why he turned on him right here. But again, he was a right winger. And, you know, and some people had warned me about him. He's a right winger. He probably hates this content. Everybody hates your content. <laughs> Don't use that as the Just excuse. Just take the help and say thank you. <laughs> Everyone um, hates your content. He's a Canadian right winger. I know. I don't think that's true, but I don't know. I don't know hockey puck at all. I just, I can't imagine that he was modding for this guy for all that time as a right winger. I, it just seems off, but uh, who knows? Maybe someday we'll find out the truth. Who knows? Um, Let's keep going with this, Vinny. I fucking enthralled. It's amazing, isn't it? Yes. I'm telling you, if John had content like this all the time, he'd be up there with Rogan and Opie. It's like I the, might the biggest join his Patreon again. <laughs> like, that's right. You are a, a Patreon. I this used guy. to be. Used to be. <laughs> yep. I'm reformed. You tried to play the long game. You weren't even close to what uh, this other gentleman. No, was this other off. guy just fucking well. So he's talked to this guy who comes on the show, who has his own agenda and things to talk about. John makes it all about him and then realizes 30 minutes in that, oh, we should be talking about what you want to talk about. But now let's get in because I only have you for another freaking 25 minutes. And then after that, I have uh, Claude Taylor. Speaking of great guests. This guy's just like 25 more minutes. What? <laughs> yeah, right. Wait, wait, 25 more minutes. I think we're good, right? Yeah, I get it. It was really fucked up with that guy. I got it. Listen, uh. <laughs> I gotta go, John. I done. Oh, uh, and then John's still talking about the haters, even though he's got a guest on he should be interviewing. Isn't it odd? Like, like you know what? I get like you know I'll get these haters. Oh, John just begs for super chats. First of all, I don't beg for super chats. You know, if somebody wants to donate, you know, good on you. Well, technically, he did phrase that as a question, so I guess it is an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Do you it find it odd? Don't you find it odd that people think I'm a loser? It's <laughs> <laughs> a question. That's fun. Jo I've literally played clips of John going, didn't get any super chats today. What's going on, guys? Let's not forget the super chats. And he's like, I don't beg for super chats. People just want to give me money. Who, me? <laughs> he's such a liar. <laughs> he's such a liar. Uh, so this at the very end of the interview, listen to this interaction. John gets blown off by this guy, and he's polite about it. He's lucky he doesn't fucking order a drone strike. I... <laughs> <laughs> Too many civilian casualties. Remember, John lives in an apartment complex. That's right. You can't really single him out. But, uh, yeah, this, listen to this. It's hilarious. Okay, uh, listen, I'm coming to New York in June. If you happen, uh, June 18th to June 30th, it's not that far if you want to, you know, uh, you know, if you want to come and, you know, you, you know, you know, have a beer in New York. 
I'd love it, brother. I'd love it, man. Let me keep me keep me up on when you're going, brother. All right, pal. He uh, just said he's gonna be there June 18th through June 30th. If you want to meet up with me, he goes. All right. Well, let me know when you're gonna be there. That's blowing him off. Correct. Now, do you know where this person lives? I'm guessing from the sound of his voice, Arkansas, somewhere like that. John's like, hey, dude, I'm going to be in New York City if you want to meet up. This guy lives in West Virginia. He goes, it's not that far. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that far. It's West Virginia. (laughs) It's insane. I mean, if he was going to Pittsburgh, I could see it, but... (laughs) The guy's like, I, John, I'm not going to grab a beer with you in New York City. I live in West Virginia, you moron. Let me just catch a fucking flight with three layovers in order to grab a beer with you. <laughs> He's so stupid. <laughs> that is so <laughs> <laughs> That really just got me. I'm sorry. I mean, it'd be one thing if he was like in New Jersey or... Right. Oh, you're in Hoboken. I'll be <laughs> right. in the city. Yeah. <laughs> Come on over the bridge. It's not a train ride. We're not, it's, not, it's not happening on a subway. Let's just put it that way. So you're telling me this guy doesn't live in Long Island. Correct. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so then later on in this episode, our buddy Mersh from Revenge of the Sis is in there. And oh, he's, really? he's trolling him. He's giving him super chats to read his questions. So this is coming in from Mersh. It's my account, and you can click the link that's in the bio, and you can... Oh, this is after his next guest, who's a bore fest. Yeah, he sounds enthralling. <laughs> yeah. Is this the guy he actually does interview? Yes. This is the guy he comes down and actually talks to him. It's my account, and you can click the link that's in the bio, and you can help us uh, help us get there. Well, uh, Nightwave Radio, thanks for the five bucks. He said, wow, this dude is so cool. Such an interesting yarn he spins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all right, well done so far. Mersh is goofy, got him. John doesn't realize that he's a troll. So, typical of Mersh, he has to uh, kick it up a little bit. I'm not doxing any. Oh, hold on. I got to I gotta get to this in sequential order. I apologize. We're going to hear from Mersh again. Okay. Okay. But because certain things happen between this and that, okay. let's, let's go in order. This is John talking about how he's got a lot of trolls going on the show today, but it's not his fault. Okay. I understand that we're getting a lot of trolls today. And I think the reason is that Hal didn't do his stream today. And since he's not on, we're getting a lot of the trolls that go on his site. Okay, so here's what I imagine is happening right now while this is going on. Yeah. Hockey puck is in, like, one of those little ice trailer shanties that they have for, like, ice fishing. Sure. Up in Canada. Yeah. Listening to this on a laptop, screaming drunk. I could have stopped the shot! <laughs> oh, Put me in, coach! Put me in, coach! Don't leave me up here to die in Canada! I just imagine he's fucking throwing fists in the air. He's very upset. Did you hear the rationale? He goes... We have a lot of trolls today, but it's only because Hell Sparks isn't doing his show. So all the trolls that troll Hell Sparks are like, I guess we got to go over to Suttery John's show and troll well, him. It's not that you don't have someone moderating it. Yeah, it's not that people fucking troll you because it's hilarious and it's a lot of fun. I don't even think Hell Sparks has trolls. I don't know. I don't watch his show, but at any time that I have popped in on there. Who cares enough to troll Hell Sparks? I, not me. <laughs> I'm, you don't even do a segment out of that's how not interesting i tried to i'm like i got a goof on hell sparks i watch the show I'm like there's nothing to even talk about there's nothing going on yeah <laughs> it's so boring um all right but uh the soup it ain't but how many trolls are there though Vinny? he just said there were a lot of trolls but how many actually are there well, there's only so many losers to go around so you know there's probably like the same 10 guys who changed their name a billion times you know, because they got nothing else to do. This is the Opie defense. So a billion trolls. <laughs> this is the this is the Opie defense. I know it seems like there's hundreds of people goofing at me, but it's the same ten guys who just create all these accounts to make it look like and by the way, the projecting here is very important because we know that John creates sock accounts. We right. know this for a fact. Correct. And the fact that he thinks that way, like, oh well, if I was gonna troll someone, I might create a whole bunch of accounts and troll them. It's like well, not everybody thinks that way. Right. 
Most people Some are normal. Some people just legitimately don't like you and say mean things. Yes! <laughs> or get you to say ridiculous shit. See, John, this, it's this thing called the internet. Right. That's what it was created for. The people who made it apologize. Like they <laughs> said, I'm sorry for creating this. All right, let's get back to Hockey Puck. So after John has his two guests on the show, he gets back to Hockey Puck and he explains why it had to have been him that was the problem. Of course. And blocking Patreon members. That's another thing I didn't tell you. He was actually, he had my Patreon password. Was, and, you know, now again, you know, I'm just alleging because you never know. Maybe somebody else was able to figure out my password, which would be incredibly hard because Susanna 69. You know, my passwords are not easy. Someone wrote in the chat his password is Coors. <laughs> I was watching this and now, like, that's pretty fucking funny. There were a lot of trolls that day. <laughs> so listen, how what are the odds that his YouTube and Patreon password were both the same? 100%. <laughs> Somewhere in the run. I mean, it might be 99.9, but it's 100%. You see, I just asked that as a question. I interviewed you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think that's so funny that never once did he say maybe it wasn't hockey puck. This is the first time he's like, and as I said... Maybe it wasn't him, but who else would guess my password? John, that's not the only way people get passwords. You don't have to just guess at it. There are other ways to hack your computer and your information. So then John goes on to what he does best, threaten hockey puck. What he's doing is downright illegal. <laughs> and, and you know what? I know his address. He's got two kids. Oh, here we go again. I mean, you know... I know his phone number. I know everything. Why did he say he's got two kids? I, I, I am talking about your kids. Amazing. What a fucking crazy. And then after that, he goes, he goes, oh, well, let's see what your next move is. Because I'm not planning on doing anything. But let's see what your next move is. Basically saying, don't go on other people's shows and tell them all the shit you know about me. Is basically what he was saying after that. Yeah. Because he's afraid. John's yeah. afraid. He's... This, this bridge has been burned, he's betrayed, and now this guy that he's shared so much personal information with is disconnected from the show. So, John, you painted yourself in a corner here, and now you're trying to tough talk your way out. Oh, yeah, that's what he always does. Yeah. This yeah. is his MO. This is what he always does. I know where you live. You got two kids. I'd hate for something bad to happen to them. What the? He didn't like, what? say he that. He didn't say that, but why would you bring up he has two kids? Why would you bring that up? That's that's threatening tough guy talk. So what he's trying to do is... He's watched Sopranos. He's I've watched to, Sopranos. I get it. He's trying to say, you can't afford a lawsuit. You got two kids. That's what he's trying to do. Okay. Thanks for playing devil's advocate. So John, of course, is... W-T-A-T. Ready to sue everybody. Contrary to troll's belief, I have plenty of money. And I'll gladly pay an attorney to sue anybody. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I can just sue everyone. Well, John, here's the thing. Don't. You say you're <laughs> going to. Don't. We understand that you'll say. What we understand is that you will say you are going to mm. sue everyone. We're still waiting to see you sue anyone but Sirius XM. That's, which, by the way, the attorney took as a pro bono case. Well, exactly right. We know that for a fact. So he He's got getting one publicity guy, out of it. He got one guy. I should mention, it. Michael Popak. Has a podcast. He wants to be famous. He's trying to get notoriety out of this. That's why he knows that suing Sirius XM will get his name out there. John, that's why John likes it too. But that's why he's doing it pro bono. John can't go around suing everybody. He has no money. I mean, he might not have a lot of money. I don't know. What do I know? I'm just a dumb guy in his basement doing a podcast. That is 100% With 92 accurate. Twitter followers. Uh, so then Mersh comes up because... He just heard this guy go, you got two kids. I know your address. So Mersh puts a comment in. I'm not doxing anyway, anybody, Nightwave Radio. That's not why I mentioned it. See, that's not doxing. I'm just saying that I, you know, that I, I could send them a, um, you know, you know, I, I could sue him because I know where he lives. But, you know, that, it doesn't even matter. I'm not even, it doesn't, I'm not doxing anybody. So props, uh... to, props to Mersh for being like, dude, what are you doing? You're going to dox this guy? Like, no, no, I wasn't threatening that. I was, I was just saying i would just say that I, 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 I could sue him. And then <laughs> Mersh hits him with this one. So it's a $2 super chat. So John's excited about it. And then he reads it. And then he realizes that, oh, shit, this guy's a troll. Thank you, Nightwave Radio, for the two bucks. You can't even pay your gas bill. Yeah, okay. 
Ah. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I mean, people. Now, that's a lie. If he went on a show and said that, then I could sue him because that's a lie. We just said that. On, I was just on ROTC, and we just said that on that show. He's like, if you said that I don't pay my gas bill, I could sue you. John, I got I to gotta tell you, buddy, that's not how this works at all. No. Just that's not. not even close. I, I don't understand why he thinks that this threat of if you lie about me, I will sue you is ever going to work. It's only making things worse for him. And meanwhile, he's getting the advice from everybody. Ignore them. It doesn't matter. At least they're talking about you. I don't know why you're worried about it. I'm not. I'm not worried about it. You said I can't pay my gas bill. I will sue you. (laughs) What? You're an insane person. So you bought all of his T-shirts because you had to for a consequence. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be mailing them out very soon. And do you remember one of them says his catchphrase? Hero of the stupid. And he explains that even though that was his nickname, it's not because he's stupid, Vinny. So I'm, I'm, I am going to end this early today. Hold on, Sidekick Entertainment. Oh, oh, look, look, another troll. I don't care. Let's see what this one says. You know, the hero of the stupid, it makes no sense when st- it, when stupid people are unkind to you. Uh, okay, okay, you know, I'm going to, like, entertain this just because it's, it, like, I enjoy it. But just so everybody knows, the reason why I got the nickname hero of the stupid had nothing to do with my intelligence. Okay. It was because the jealous Robin Quivers and I were walking down a Manhattan street on the way to lunch. And all the blue collar workers were all like stuttering John, stuttering John. Oh, it's because he's popular with dummies. Right. He just called blue collar workers idiots. Right. <laughs> Good move. And I find it very hard to believe that they weren't all screaming Robin's tits. Yes. They were cat calling Robin. Yes. <laughs> They're construction workers. That's what they do. Like one of it's them their job. like stuttering John. She goes, oh, look, John, you're the hero of the stupid. I can see her <laughs> yes. saying that. But I imagine Robin Quivers would always get more attention than you. So the guy who super chatted him and said, where's Vince McMahon going? Chocolate titties. (laughs) All right, everybody drink. He brought up wrestling when it wasn't necessary at all. So the guy who just super chatted was like, you know, they shouldn't call you the hero of the stupid, blah, blah, blah. He's a fan. He's not a troll. But John thinks he's a troll because he doesn't understand the question. So then the guy comes back and he goes, no, 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 I'm not a troll. And John doesn't believe him. And so he reads this super chat as if the guy was a troll and has the wrong inflection on it. See, you know, this guy is really trying. So I can entertainment. That was a compliment. I think you're the greatest. Your political commentary is first class. I, you know. Uh, uh, you know. <laughs> John's such an oh. idiot. He's like, he's like uh, let's see what this guy has to say. Oh, I think you're great. <laughs> okay. I think you're. I think you're really good. Okay. Okay. All right. Sure all right. you do. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what a fucking moron. Now the question here, Vinny. Yeah. The important question because we listened to Saturday's show when he explained how rich he is. He's going to buy a new car. Uh huh. A lot of big Monday. talk today. On Monday. A lot of big talk. Today. This show is Tuesday. So somebody asked the question: Did you get a new car? What's up? Maple Leafs fan, did you get the new car? Stuttering John. Uh, uh, that's interesting. Hey, Fudge Sickle 2021 is here. Hey, thanks for all those PayPal donations, dude. I don't get you because you trash me and then you and then you donate. You donated over five hundred bucks to me on PayPal. So I don't get. I don't get why. I don't get your. I don't. I don't get your end game. But hey, I'll take the money. I don't care if you trash me on social media. It really doesn't bother me. Oh, about the new car. So. You know, and then I'm going to end with this story, and then I'll, I'll go. But I, um, I actually went to uh, get a Mazda Miata yesterday. Okay, I took it for a test drive. The car is super fast, but you know it. It was just too small inside. It's like I was getting freaked and claustrophobic. It's a sports car. Did you think it would be roomy? It's a sports car for ladies. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Dainty ladies, not fat fucks. 
Correct. I don't think I'd buy one. Also, I want to point out, oh, in the chat when this was happening, someone goes, be honest, are gay. And John goes, that is not a good word to use. I learned on the Tonight Show. <laughs> he literally told this story. There was a gay guy on the Tonight Show, and John called something gay, and the gay guy on the Tonight Show had explained to him why that's not a cool thing to say. John worked on the Tonight Show in the 2000s. Oh. Like this is this wasn't news to anybody in the two thousands that it's inappropriate to call. I'm guessing there wasn't a guest on the show that talked to him. I'm guessing it was HR that had to like explain it to him. You don't think I'm it was sure, Richard Simmons? I'm sure that the guest went, was like, "What the fuck is this guy doing?" And then HR came and found him later. It was like, "John, you can't do that." Well, that is a very interesting lesson. You don't think Sean Hayes was a guest? And he's like, well, that's fucking gay. I was trying to remember the guy's name. <laughs> Sean Hayes. That's a fun one. By the way, also with that clip, he gets distracted by Fudgicle again. And he says, this guy just keeps donating to me. Remember. Deflection. And all he did there. And listen, I'm just going to throw something out here. It was a weird deflection that maybe gave him a little time to think about his answer. Good point. That's a good point. He goes, Fudgicle. Man, you just I know that you're trashing me, but you just keep giving me money over five hundred dollars. If you remember the clip that I played early from the Saturday show, he goes, Fudgical, you haven't donated in so long. It was nice to have you back again. It's like got two different stories on what's going on with this Fudgical guy. Yeah, I told you, I think he's making it up. I think he's making it up. I don't think anyone's giving me a hundred dollars on PayPal, because that would be a waste of fucking money. Well, that is uh libelous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then he explains. No, wait, that's slander. Sorry. That is slander. <laughs> I like slime wasn't funnier. So then he explains uh, how he's going to buy the car. I, as much as I love them, you know, I'm going to change it up this time. I'm thinking about getting a Camaro uh, or a uh, Audi or a Infinity. And, you know, I, I, I'm i going to buy it outright. So I don't even, you know, it's, you know, I'm not doing any of these leases or anything else. He's going to buy it outright, Vinny. He went yeah. from. I spent eight hundred dollars on Yankees tickets. Isn't that amazing? That's how he fucking cashed in a lot of empties, Carl. Well, I'm wondering if like a pension came in or something because now he's talking about like buying a five hundred thousand dollar car outright, which is odd because when we offered him a thousand dollars to do your show, he counter offered with "I'll do it for two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars." Yeah, and now he could buy an Audi outright. Does that make any fucking sense? No, this guy must have because I know he's he's mentioned many times he has got two pensions. He just turned fifty five. Is he eligible? Like, what's going on? It might be. Maybe. Because he's fucking real braggadocious about his money right now. And it's so weird that he was, like, frankly, for lack of a better term, begging so hard for so, like, long before if he knew the pensions were coming in. Well, he was living... <laughs> destitute. <laughs> it, was, it was not going well for him. Right. Uh, all right, I have a few more clips to play. I know we're going on way too long with Stuttering John. Are we? I apologize for that. I don't think you owe anybody an apology okay, for this. Okay, good. Because I know that when you're done talking about Sutter and John, I'm going to get back to my talk of about Double or Nothing this weekend. Okay, good. I'm looking forward to that. I'll turn off the mics before that happens. Don't okay. worry, guys. All right. This is him from Saturday going off on Trolls. So John, once again, can't tell who the trolls are and who are fa- his fans are, and he makes a mistake. Look at Texas Yankee here. You called me a troll last show when I said I couldn't super chat last week. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody else was super chatting, Texas Yankee 33. Everybody else was super chatting. So I thought you were a troll. Why? Because I get trolls. So he's angry at this guy who's not a troll. He's trying to give him money. How dare you try to give me money and then complain when you can't give me money and still want to give me money? Don't you understand? Don't you understand that I do have trolls? So Hell Sparks went on his show and explained that John's condo is filthy. And John responds to this. And then I get the pe- people are sending me this clip of how Sparks trashing my condo. Now, I love how Sparks. I'm not saying anything bad. But I was like, now, granted, he came over when I just moved all my all the boxes from my ex-wife's house and my ex-wife's house and and um, and uh, and. And I moved all the boxes from Royce's garage, which is where those cockroaches came from. I know as a fact. I've never seen a cockroach here before or after. Oh, get with the cockroaches. This guy talks about cockroaches more than I dress up as one. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> but how funny is this? And he goes, Hell Sparks says my place is garbage, but he just came over the wrong day. 
It's usually amazing. But usually my house is not filled with trash <laughs> everywhere. So, so somebody posted that video in our subreddit, and I'm asking the Discord because I, I wasn't able to clip this. If anyone has a link to that video of Hale Sparks talking shit about Senator John's apartment, I want to play that right here. And oh. Oh, you guys are the best. Carl's club foot coming through. And but except stuttering John, no one needs to be in his apartment, even him. John, you need to move. You got to get out of there, dude. Take your cats and just throw a match behind you. You're, I understand bachelor oh, living, but shit. this is ridiculous. Well, uh, uh, seriously, I, I mean, it felt like hoarders. Quit it. He's not trying to be funny there. That's a very serious Hell Sparks telling John that his place is disgusting, and John takes offense to this. But yeah, that hell was trash in my place, and I don't know. I would, I'm not going to say anything bad, but it was weird. I mean, I own this place outright. I mean, you could Google how much it's worth. It might be three forty, three hundred. Still, it's not, I mean, there's a lot of families here. And how told me I should just light a match? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to kill all the kids that live in this development. Sorry. Now I'm not going to light a match just because we're a little messy. Oh, literal John. I was about to say literal John. Oh, jab. literal John. Yo, hell sparks thinks I should burn the place down, but I have neighbors. <laughs> well, the, the point is, the point your place is, is garbage. The, the it should be is, set on fire. It's disgusting. If it's, you could get 340, fucking sell. Yes! Say, yes! That's the point, John. And throw in a Marshall cab, too. Take the cats. Maybe leave him. So Let John, him have a happy life. So John talks about how he has OCD. You think Stern would, and his wife would take his cats? Oh, for sure. I think so. Because yeah. that's what they take in are the cats that have like been neglected and aren't being taken care of well. That is libel and slander. slander. <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> Mittens and Snowball are very well fed and taken care of, as you can tell by all the piles of cat turds all over my apartment. Vinny, I could do this all day. I get to. I'm having a good time. <laughs> just, just keep sending the Tiffany Thiessen pictures. We'll keep going. Yep, we'll keep going all day, everybody. All right. So I got nothing to do tonight. John explains he has OCD. And people are like, well, wait a second. If you were OCD, wouldn't you be like really clean and meticulous? I guess isn't that what OCD is? And John explains that there's two different types of OCD. This is one. Of, all right. I said the hockey puck set was the best. This is maybe the best clip. Okay. <laughs> I had an argument with the date of mine. The day. Oh, he had an argument. The other night. Hold on, he had an argument with a date of his the other day. So this is already off to a great start. A date of his. I'm assuming she came back to his apartment. Okay, uh... listen to this. <laughs> I had an argument with a date of mine the other day. A date the other night. She's like, "You're not OCD. OCD people are all neat." I'm like, "Really? You know what? If to go in through 20 years of psychologists." I know, and after even getting a brain scan to show the OCD going on in my frontal lobe, yeah, no, after being on every kind of medication known to man, don't, you don't know what the f you're talking about. OCD comes in two different ways, slobs and neat people, both extremes. There's a rarely in the middle OCD. <laughs> I happen to be the slob, albeit a clean slob, as my mom will tell you. I showered sometimes twice a day. I still shower every day. <laughs> my mom, ask my mom. I'm a 55 year old man. Ask my mom how often I shower. The doctor, what? The doctor did a brain scan. <laughs> there was a brain scan for OCD. I think did a brain scan and said I was a slob. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. There's two types of retards. There's slobs. <laughs> I'm the slob. <laughs> I can't believe the doctor <sighs> said I was an obese, complete douchebag. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. <laughs> but ask my mom; she'll tell you. I am an oblivious cockroach dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my oh. my third favorite thing that happened with Senator John. Jesus Christ! <laughs> recently. Oh my God! <laughs> so this is happening to a supreme skin. They had to scan his brain, Carl. I could, At some point, they had to scan his brain, dude. To prove that he's OCD. Now we're talking. Way to go, Alex. He's like, 
How do you not know I'm OCD? Why, just because I live in a pigsty? <laughs> that means I'm not OCD. Yes! It does mean you're, <laughs> that means you're not OCD. I've never seen an episode of Hoarders where they're like, your problem is obsessive compulsive disorder. I've never seen it. I need to put this trash bag over in this corner, and I need to pile up this garbage in this corner. Ah, no. now it's perfect. No, in the southern part of the house is where I keep the animal skeletons. <laughs> I only leave kitten feces in this area of the carpet. If it gets over there, it freaks me out. No, don't you dare move those dirty dishes. That's right where they're supposed to be. There's not enough cat pee on this plate. I'm not going to eat this. <laughs> I sometimes shower twice a day, he said. He literally, he, a grown man just goes, I take one shower twice a day. <laughs> Good, John. You want a cookie, motherfucker? Holy you take shit. A shower. Oh. This guy might never get laid again. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> did you see the video of like his uh, his screen falling down? No, that's my next point. Good. Okay. Good. okay. So John had another uh, incident with his green screen, and somebody captured it, put it up on our subreddit. Well, there's a video floating around of someone reacting to this video, which is very funny because the guy's just laughing maniacally. Right. And uh, this is from the Anthony Cumia show. Anthony and Chrissy Mayer are watching this video of John's green screen falling down. <laughs> so you can't see it, which it is hilarious, but it's also funny just to hear their reaction. This is so funny. You know, um, the great stuttering John, of mm. course. You uh, you talked yes. about how he dabbled in comedy. Oh, yeah. In stand-up comedy. Yeah. And, uh, they, uh, who are these podcasts we're talking about? Uh, stuttering John and Opie. And how Opie just babbles incessantly. And they're like, oh, they should team up and do the Babble and Dabble <laughs> oh show. God. I Babble said that. And dabble. Babbler and Dabbler. Said that. That's great. Yeah, a Babbler and a Dabbler. Uh, this is funny. It's Stuttering John. He does his podcast, you know. Uh, and th they've constantly goofed, who are these podcasts, on John and where he lives and where he does his podcast from. They haven't dressed this giant cockroach. They have a giant cockroach oh, God, coming in yeah. and shit because he was talking about how his apartment has cockroaches. But he puts up a, a green screen with a cityscape behind him. It's a little closer than this. You don't quite see the window frames and stuff um, as buildings that are closer behind him. Uh, well, this thing falls down. I don't understand. Like, doesn't he tape his shows? Wouldn't you cut this out? Unless he wants it in, which I can almost appreciate. Because if, if he found this funny and thought, no, leave that in, people will find it funny, then I could appreciate it. Like, I think that's a funny thing to do. But his, his thing falls down and his apartment's in the background, and it's just abominable. Oh, we got a haircut. It's not frozen, don't worry. <laughs> oh, my God, this is so good. <laughs> What a dump. I don't know who that is in the background. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the city's back. Oh Christ. That's not even a so let me just explain this. At this part of the video, John has turned around. You see his ass in the camera as he's trying to like pick up his green screen and he's struggling with it and it's coming up a little bit. And what's funny about it is obviously you don't see a green screen. You see his background, like the cityscape background. Yeah. Just like coming up over all the fucking boxes and posters and bullshit that's in his shitty apartment. And it's one of the funniest things you could you could possibly watch. Good background. Oh, oh is that God, this is kick. so good. Was this live? I guess so. I, <laughs> New York City's back, baby. It is, it's stuttering John oh, live God. from a one room oh, fucking that's hobble. So good. Oh, oh shit. Shit. a lot of calamities going on around God. here lately. A lot of things to be concerned about. Love the shirt, dummy. <laughs> uh, Whoever this is is laughing. Yeah. It's so funny. And then look, what does this shirt not... say? Oh, it's not uh, even Nikki all the way. TV. We'll be handling it today. This is Democrat, Someone and then of course he shits on Republicans or something. Uh, yeah. so maybe he keeps saying because he's like, oh, maybe I'll get some he's donations for a new green hi screen. Hi yeah. before we I love how he's started. winded just from. <laughs> Aerial backdrop, <laughs> huffing and puffing Lord over here, breaking a sweat. <laughs> oh God, that's so oh, funny! Right. Isn't that so funny? He's just uh, <laughs> <laughs> it exposes just shit hole. 
Uh, he has a poster of a peace sign. Yeah, a like peace sign, a Marshall amp, and a fucking. Yeah. Oh my god, I loved that when I first saw it. I'm laughing my goddamn balls off. Brilliant observation how winded he was picking up his green screen. He's like, ah, all right. To be fair, it was Make attached it to just like a tower, of course, like. <laughs> they were empty, though. Yeah. Should have been that heavy. Holy shit, Vinny. What a fucking marathon. I had a fun time with you this I was, evening. I was not expecting this to go this long today when I messaged you. I messaged Vinny this morning. Yeah, I was like, uh, more time in the basement. But I actually had a good time today. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Um, actually, fuck it. I have one more clip. I'll play it for you. So Stuttering John is teasing who's going to be his guest on Beer on the Balcony. Now, you're familiar with Beer on the Balcony. Very much. He always has a comedian on there. And then that comedian gets rewarded with 17 people viewing them for an hour of their time, which is always great. Mm -hmm. So he says, oh, we got this great guest coming up. You're going to love her. She was in this video. He plays a video of her doing the cinnamon challenge. I'm not sure I know what the cinnamon challenge is. The cinnamon challenge hasn't been popular in 16 years, possibly 17 years. Okay. When I worked at E-Bombs World, this was a big deal. You would try to swallow cinnamon, and you can't. Right. You can't do Doesn't it. Doesn't it, like, kill you? Oh, hello. <laughs> All right, I got to move this monitor. <laughs> you can't swallow a big pile of cinnamon. It doesn't work. Shut up, Carl. I'm, I'm busy. I'm looking at this picture. So John plays this woman's video, and at the end of it, immediately has no confidence that it was a funny video or that it would get anybody excited about this guest. <laughs> so that is my beer on the balcony guess uh if you didn't like it you didn't like it but 57 million people grammarly helps you work more efficiently 57 million which people makes accomplish did. so she, glozell is a comedian so uh, also he hit a random thing there ahead of the ad start playing but how funny is that he goes down there he's like ha 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 well you know if you didn't like it, you didn't like it but it's got 54 million views so it must be great so come on on the show <laughs> yeah it'll be a lot of fun and it's not like she's telling jokes or you're like, oh, I got to see what she has to say. No, she tries to swallow cinnamon and then coughs it all up all over the place. Yeah. Is she going to do that on his show? I hope not. Like, what the fuck is he going to talk to her Unless about? he's standing in front of her. I hope not. Because that would be funny if he, his face just became blackface with cinnamon because she's <laughs> coughing it at him. <laughs> his face is in blackface because of the dust in his apartment. <laughs> He looks like I'm, a fucking uh, British orphan. I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a racist. I'm just OCD. I, I got the black lung. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, I, I, compared to that, I, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, I'll tell you what, Eric, I'm going to change that right now. <laughs> That's right. Stuttering John is in New York visiting his mom, going to yeah. Yankees games, hanging okay. with his brother Roy. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we do have some of the similar clips because I listened to the one with, from the 25th or yeah. The 20th, the, so um, I didn't. I just did, wanted to get to this before we get to the big news. And uh, yes. So yeah, he's doing. He's got a new backdrop. Which is an old woman's guest room. Well, it's his childhood bedroom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, where he's, it's where he's podcasting out of now, which is yeah. interesting. So uh, clip one, he's in his childhood bedroom, and he, or he says that he's got some funny stories. Um, starts drinking so alcohol. What funny story should I tell you first before we bring on the Midas Touch Brothers? Okay, so get ready. For some hilarious shit. Clip two. So I'm hanging out at Sal's place. The guy there. We start talking. Right before that, I just want to pause and, and, and fill in some blanks. Yeah. He flies into New York, meets up with his brother Roy. He goes, Roy didn't want to hang out, so I had him drop me off at the bar that I like to go to. Right. Like, your brother is seeing you for the first time in probably years, and he's like, I don't want to hang out with you. Isn't that a little strange? Yeah. A little bit. All right. Sorry. Let's get back. Let's get back his, to it. His uh, local dive bar from his yes. childhood home. Correct. Yes. His, his, his bar away from home. We start talking. And it's a sad story. 
he tells me his son was the captain of the wrestling team. <laughs> he says this kid goes to Albany for four year college. This guy picks his son up from college. Son gets in the car and goes, Dad, I want to work for Wendy's. Father's like, what? I just sing I sing in the college. I, are you heading to law school? Nah, nah, I'm gonna work at Wendy's. Plus I gotta go back to be captain on the wrestling team. His he lost his son to schizophrenia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember when I've heard a funnier anecdote. <laughs> that kid was Michael Papa. <laughs> <laughs> he promised shit. me a funny story. <laughs> why would you bring that up? And also, <laughs> this guy that he just met at this pub, why is he talking to him about Good this? Point. <laughs> Jesus Good Christ. God. Okay, so now he goes to the Yankee game, right? Yeah. And he's he's said that he's sprung for all of these tickets, right? How much money did he spend, Andy? $800. $800. He's and made this very clear. So ding, ding, now ding. we're going to hear who went to the game. Pay attention because somebody is suspiciously not on the list. On Saturday, we go to the Yankee game. Great game. I got great seats. I see Michael K. I'm waving to Michael K. And then... We all leave. Two guys from LA, you know, one of them's from England, Chris and John, and then and then, you know, and my friend Stein and then my mom, my brother, my sister in law. Hmm. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't somebody promised a ticket to this game an attorney, maybe? Somebody the, great. The great Michael Popak. <laughs> Isn't he supposed to be on this list? He explains why. Mr. Popak did not make it to the game. And I had a ticket for Michael, but um, I, I guess his mom, uh, you know, got ill. Mm. So we mm. had to go. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, he was just, he he was just recording. Traveling. Yeah, he yeah. was traveling to, to go visit her. Yeah, so I had to eat the ticket. I don't care, you know, it's 100 bucks. But <laughs> He had to eat the ticket. He already purchased it. That's not eating a ticket. You could have given it to somebody else. Yeah. Could have given it to somebody else. Almost had any anyone else. Yeah. But that's not eating a ticket. Did he expect to get paid back for it? Because that's what it would be eating a ticket. Well, it's John, so he probably does. Right. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, too. You lost me the lawsuit. No, give me the $100 for the Yankee ticket. <laughs> right. So he was trying to decide whether he should tell this uh, story about a guy losing his son to schizophrenia as a funny story or this other story. So we get to the we get to the mom's car. I'm uh, to my mom's car. I'm going to drive them. This is taking place right after the Yankee game. Right, correct. They're leaving the Yankee game with that crew you just heard about. And I believe this is his older brother, Roy? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So remember, Stuttering John is 55 years old. This is his older brother, Roy, that we're talking Stuttering about. Stuttering Roy. So we get to the we get to the mom's car. I'm uh, to my mom's car. I'm going to drive them to El Parado, my favorite Mexican place in Manhattan, because I'm taking them on a little restaurant crawl in Manhattan. El Parador is where Craig Kalman, the co-chairman of Atlantic, took me. Have to bring uh, this up. Uh, when he was courting me to sign with Atlantic. Pause it, pause it real quick. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> God forbid we don't mention the fact that he was courted by Atlantic Records at one point in time. That's why it's his favorite restaurant. Right. Because in 1994, he went there with a record executive. So it must be great food, obviously. Right. And it, you know, cannot, that can't not be said right so we all pile into my mom's car there's one thing missing my brother we can't find my brother we are going crazy we're looking all over we're calling him i assumed he went to go puke somewhere because he was wobbling his way back you think i'm a degenerate drunk how the story ends (laughs) my brother Ends up opening the door of somebody else's car and is sitting in the back seat of an SUV. My mom's car is not an SUV. And 20 minutes later, we find him sitting there with the guy who owns the car who's like about to beat the hell up, beat the crap out of my brother. And I'm like, whoa. So I put my brother away, and there it is. <laughs> 
welcome to my family. <laughs> this is uh, a made up story. Funny. Made up. <laughs> it's made I up. I love how the story about a degenerate drunk ends with him chugging a fucking bot <laughs> a screwdriver, whatever the fuck he's drinking. It's just so embarrassing. Why would you embarrass your whole family like that? He told that story on two different shows, too. Uh, he needed to make sure that everyone knew his brother Roy got blackout drunk at the Yankees game. And I right. want I want to point out, because I like going to baseball games and having a couple beers. Right. But it's not a place where you're, like, pounding shots. Like, you're not getting blackout drunk at a baseball game. You're drinking, like, a, a Coors Light or something. If you're taking it to sites. Your famous brother takes you out. You're, I guess maybe you're going to be like, yeah, I'll have uh, three. You're right. Roy is famous now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good point. Oh, I just thought th- these are the stories that Stuttering John thinks are hilarious. Break Breaking into somebody else's car and <laughs> losing your son to schizophrenia. <laughs> all, all good stuff. John sounds jealous. Better than usual, I will say. It's entertaining, I'll say that. All right, let's talk about this. So the judge has dismissed his suit against Sirius XM with prejudice. With prejudice. Yes. <laughs> Meaning it makes it very difficult for them to appeal. Hmm. So this means that the judge is saying this is a ridiculous case. It's maybe the most frivolous thing I've ever heard. Because federal copyright law usurps whatever they're talking about with this California right to publicity thing Mm -hmm. that John's trying to make a case with. It's funny. This is what you want to see happen with Sue Happy Assholes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. This is what happened to Maddox. Yeah. Which was great. It was dismissed with prejudice. Like, no, you're not doing this again. You're wasting everybody's time. Yeah. Which is great. And this is John explaining that. Anyway, uh, and also, sad news on my part. I lost the first round of my lawsuit with Sirius XM. So now we have to see and then see if we have to appeal to a higher court. But look, I'm sick of the Stern Show playing my craft and promoting me and not paying me. It's typical uh. bullshit that happens. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's typical bullshit that happens? What do you mean? What does that mean? And I love that he goes, we lost the first round. Yeah, no, yeah. you lost. Yeah, you got knocked out in the first round. It's then, over, John. Yeah, yeah. yeah there he was a actually, 10 count. <laughs> he actually says, we're going to see about an appeal. Yeah. He kind of he, he words it in a weird way. I've got, a, I've got an, uh, a clip of how John's week went. Clip forty three is is uh, kind of like before the uh, the actual word came down from the judge. So we have a great show planned for you today. I got my attorney Michael S. Popak, host of the Midas Touch Brothers, uh, and also he is my attorney who's suing uh, Sirius XM. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god king <laughs> so he's pretty pumped up right there that was on that was on what tuesday yeah and that whole episode uh, uh, there, there, there's a lot to, that i i uh, i pulled in fact this was this wasn't related to the trial or anything like that he had hal sparks on there's just amazingly hilarious awkward moments uh real real quick number 37 Hal Sparks is just finishing up his radio show that he does on an AM station in Chicago, okay? <laughs> awesome. And so, and so um, he wa- John wanted Hal on. So John, John has been, like, uh, while he was talking to Michael Popak, has been trying to get Hal, like, ready, you know? So he finally gets him on. John explains how much trouble he was going through to get him on, and then Hal fucking shuts him down. Check this out. Clip number 37. <laughs> Genius. And comedian Hal Sparks, everybody. How are you? Hi. Hal? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I was I was like texting you like crazy and I even went into your chat room and said, Hal! Hal! <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a show. That's hilarious. <laughs> you know what's funny about that is when I had the Revenge of the Sis guys on uh, a couple of weeks ago, yep. they said he does the same thing to them when they're on the show on YouTube. He'll go into the chat room and be like, hey, everybody, come over and check out the Stuttering John show. We're going to start soon. Like, this is something that he does. What a dildo. What a dildo. Uh, what the fuck is he doing? And Hale Sparks, I don't know. The guy has the patience. He's Mother Teresa yeah. at this point. Is I, Hale Sparks in Chicago? No, he's out of L.A. because oh. he's running for mayor. He just has this. Oh, uh, really? I, he just has this AM show in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, and and, and you're, I'm glad you said that because that, uh, about his patience because I get the inf- feeling like uh, John has some information on him or something. <laughs> or yeah. Uh, it, it's really odd because Hal is, is smart, and he's going on and on about whatever it is he wants to talk about, and John's adding nothing to the conversation. In fact, in clip 42, uh, uh, Hal is talking about something, and he's spent a lot of time doing it, and then John – isn't paying attention at all and drops in <laughs> something about fucking Venmo. Listen to uh, clip 42. Uh, president Trump was amazing, but not President Trump was amazing and he's still president. You know what I mean? She hasn't, I don't know that she goes there with any regularity. <laughs> yeah. Ask me if I had, if I had, if I was on Venmo, so I posted my link up there. <laughs> Jesus no, Christ. good for you. You should. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh, that's great. You weren't even listening to anything I said. How's Venmo doing? What a fucking asshole. Well, it's funny that you say that, because that kind of st- sets up uh, one of my clips here. Apparently, the numbers are down, and he scolds his audience for this. Awesome. Uh, there's the link if you want to donate. You guys have been a little chintzy on me lately. My numbers, uh, my super chat numbers are a little down. Even after I'm doing all this, even during my vacation doing these shows so there's the link even though i'm phoning it in from (laughs) long island god that makes me that makes me angry i i i that really bothers me could you imagine eric think about this you're asking people to fund your lifestyle and you're saying please support the show super chats patreon youtube subscriptions and the numbers start going down and instead of thinking should I be putting more effort into this? Yeah. What Should can, I, what, I, what can do? I do to It'll make this better, people. to get more people into this? Correct. He's talking to the same eight people and going, you fucking eight people who've been supporting me for the last year need to do more. You're not supporting yeah. me enough. What a fucking pompous and ridiculous thing to say to people. My show wouldn't suck as bad if you guys gave me more money. Right. Oh. <laughs> He's blown away by Hal's super chat on my clip 38. He uh, pontificates about that exact thing. And by the way, it's Super Chat Saturday. I got to tell you, I went yes. to the Arab. I saw that somebody gave you a hundred dollars Super Chat. I'm like, whoa! I yeah. think the most I've ever gotten was like fifty bucks. I think he's in it for the wrong reasons. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's like, this is all about defeating Trumpism. We got to put an end to this. And if I don't get the super chats, I'm just gonna stop doing it. Right. <laughs> he's going Chad Zumach. He's like, oh, you got a hundred bucks for hell? Yes. Why can't you give me a hundred bucks? <laughs> right. The most I ever got was, and then he made up a number fifty. <laughs> like, no, you have never gotten fifty. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> Lest we forget, he's an expert in the stock market, right? True. He's yeah. got, he got the AMC stock. He, he, he's need this. he he's buys good. stock every day. It is funny how he goes back and forth from, I can buy Yankees tickets. I am obviously very well off financially because I bought Yankees tickets. I can a buy Tesla. a Tesla. <laughs> and then he goes, how come no one's giving me five bucks and asking me a question while the Midas Touch Brothers are on? <laughs> it insults my intelligence. <laughs> I've never met anyone who does a bad stuttering John impression. Yeah, every time I hear you guys, so every time I do. hear you guys do that, it's fucking it kills me every time. I don't even want to try because you guys do so well with it. Uh, I'm really just doing McGruff the crime dog, but yeah. <laughs> but it works. All right. Well, oh, since we're talking about stuttering John, I have a fun story. So we, we popped on for like five minutes at one point just to do a little special bonus thing. And no one's even watching it. And he brings his mom in the room. Hey, mom, come over here. Say hi to everyone. Jesus. There's nobody there. She's like, hi, Mickey B. And he's like, well, she's not actually here right now. But no one's, <laughs> no one's here right now. It's really funny. Ever. So they're talking about John is trying to get a new iPhone for his mom. But it's very complicated. Trying. It's very difficult for him to get this because they went to... The AT&T, no, they, where did they go? They went to the Apple store first, but she didn't know her PIN number, so then they had to go to the Verizon store in order to get the account information. I tried to get Heather W. to Western Union me the money <laughs> for an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> so this is picking up mid-story here. And we go to Verizon in the mall. They won't allow us to use the PIN. They tell us to go to the Verizon on Old Country Road. 880. I put that in my phone. She said it's right in the front. So we passed one Verizon. I think that's not the one. Turns out my iPhone screwed up and it was the one. Oh, his iPhone screwed up. I, I, I'm pretty sure his phone is smarter than he is. You know how I know that? <laughs> Most definitely. Because it's defined as a smartphone. He is not a smart John. 
So I'm pretty sure his phone is smarter than he is. Wow. So this is him. Now he's having a confrontation at this Verizon store <laughs> because they can't get his mom the new phone. Then the, then the Verizon guys say to me they can't, they can't set up the phone for my mother. I'm like, are you guys kidding me? I go, I got a big social media phone. Hey, you threatening me? The guy says, I go, no, you're not. Just, I'm just exhausted. You guys are killing me here. Why would he repeat that? He told the guy, the customer service rep at a Verizon store, this guy makes twenty eight, maybe $29,000 a year. And he goes, do you know how big my social media following is? The guy's like, what are you fucking kidding me right now? What are you going to do, get me fired? Yeah. <laughs> what You're are you gonna talking about? Do a Yelp review because the phone won't fucking download your mom's contacts? Oh, we should look that up. He probably did. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. We should. We'll know by the spelling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really... That's such a bizarre reaction to something. Like, the guy's trying to help him out. His mom doesn't have the information they need, the PIN number or whatever, and he goes, you better figure this out because I got a big social media following. It's always <laughs> anybody that doesn't give him what he wants. He's like, don't you know who I am? Yes. That's, uh, his, he always says, don't you know who I am, so card. Much. What a cocksucker. You know who doesn't wow. do that? Jay Leno. <laughs> People are talented. Right. Well, don't go around going, do you know who the fuck I am? Yeah. Because people know who they are. Well, that's very true. <laughs> Nobody knows who John is. What a fucking weird thing to say. Dick. Oh, God. So when Popak was on his show, the same episode with Hal Sparks, John had long uh, uh, periods of time where Popak would be, uh, he's talking about Trump. And, 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 you know, I'm like, fuck, why is he talking about Trump, first of all? I mean, is it, it's kind of like no one's really doing that, but he does, of course. And Popak is not an idiot. He knows what the fuck he's talking about right. from a very slanted point of view, okay? Um, what I noticed is he will do long stretches of time, and then John feels the need to sum it up. <laughs> and he tries, but oh, no. it's just fucked. Okay, my clip 21, uh, this is this is a very involved thing we're going to do here, Carl. But just go ahead and play clip 21, and you'll get an idea of how this goes. And the, the full corruption that was the Trump administration is going to be played out over the next couple of years. It's just amazing. I mean, come on, Michael. Aren't you like, like you know Trump's a sleazebag, you know, a sleazebag. But this is like, this is just, I mean... It, it's so illegal. I mean, I, I, I... <sighs> it's so embarrassing. Okay. okay. Now, this is what I've done here. This is going to take a little bit of effort. I have broken that down in three or four word bursts. Okay. And I, and I, since I can speak like a normal human being, I am going to say some of those words. And then I want you, Carl, to play the corresponding clip. So the, you see how I had clip 21, 22 through 33 is this, <laughs> is this, is this bit. They're okay. all like less than a second long. Okay. I was wondering why you sent me so many clips. Okay. Now it's Absolutely. making sense. Okay. So here we go. Uh, I, I'm going to say exactly what John said, and then Carl is going to play the clip. Yeah, just go, we in, go. just go in order. I'll be ready. Yep, yep. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. I mean, come on, Michael. I mean, come on, Michael. Aren't you like... Aren't you like... Like, you know Trump's a sleazebow. Like, you know Trump's a sleazebow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know a sleazebag. You, you know, a sleazebag. But, but, this is like, this is like, this is just, this is just, <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, I mean, it's, it's so illegal. It, it's so illegal. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, I'd, well, I mean, I'd, I, 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 <laughs> how many T's are in the word just? When suddenly John says it, zero. Oh, fuck. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Okay, Popak's talking about how jo Joe Biden is moving actually faster than whatever. A lot of people always say he's sleepy Joe, whatever. Um, and then so John transitions from the whole Popak point about Biden moving fast to John moving quickly with his upcoming travels to New York. And what's weird about this is he's talking about how fast he'll be moving, but him actually getting the sentence out is anything but fast. <laughs> she's not doing it now. This is the Biden show through and through 100%. And the speed at which he's moving is Joe Biden. Yeah. And, uh, and by the way, Michael, uh, I'll be moving pretty quickly. Uh, 
on uh, 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 on next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> the, the segue key. <laughs> King of the last segue one. right there. Last one. John follows up critical race theory point made by Polpak with a non sequitur <laughs> and calling Ron DeSantis a bad name. <laughs> and then hope your hope your um, student in your life grows up to be a thinking, well-rounded human being. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, but it's just sad. I mean, Ron DeSantis is a prick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I think what you picked up on here, and it's hard to clip these things because the guests will go on for three, four, five minutes straight with John just being distracted by the super chats or whatever's going on on his computer, or cockroaches running across his keyboard. So by the time the guy stops talking, John has this mini panic thing. You see it in his eyes. And he goes, yeah, I, I know. And, and also, yeah. also, Ron DeSantis is a dick. <laughs> God. Yeah, he doesn't listen at all. Oh, no. He doesn't listen at all. I mean, holy shit. You know what's crazy? As, as I listen to John, I listen to all of that, and I also listen to Opie. John's a million times better than Opie. Uh, all right. Well, if you have a, a moment, I would like to talk about what's going on with our buddy Stunt Joe. <laughs> And I hate to even do this because last week I played a clip of John talking about the lawsuit. Really short, 30-second clip. Then I went on Drew and Mike, and I played a bunch more. I put out a bonus show with uh, Shitty Song of the Week, Brandon. And we talked even more about it. I played a six-and-a-half-minute long clip of him talking about the lawsuit. Well, we talked about it again. This is like the third time now he's addressed the lawsuit. So I just have some clips. He lost his lawsuit to SiriusXM. The frivolous lawsuit. And uh, I think he's starting to come to terms with the fact that he lost a little bit, but not quite. But he's finally admitting that he lost. Before he's going, hey, this is just the first step of the process. The judge throwing out your case is the first step of the process. That's, that's a bad <laughs> first step, my friend. But uh, he finally kind of admits it here. I uh, Yes, we did lose the lawsuit with Sirius XM. Which is fine, you know. We knew going in that, you know, it could have happened. Because we knew that, you know, this kind of thing takes time. I will talk to him and we'll think about the appeal. And he'll tell me what, you know, how we are going to move forward. It actually didn't take that much time at all. It just got thrown out. It wasn't like a <laughs> lengthy court trial that we were all watching on court TV. The judge looked at it and said... This is stupid. This is, a, this is a dumb thing to bring before me, and I won't waste any more time with it. Well, I don't think he's willing to admit anything else past that. He has to keep some of his low, low pride, Carl. Right. So instead of addressing how they're going to appeal it or why they would appeal it or what the judge got wrong, he goes off on the people who are happy that he lost the suit. This is what he keeps talking about. All these losers who are out there excited that he lost his suit. And he assumes that those people subscribe to Sirius and are the kind of people who are still listening to Howard Stern. And he starts laughing at the people who don't like him. And listen to how unhealthy this guy is. He starts wheezing as he's <laughs> laughing. Howard is taking off. For the entire summer while you are paying <laughs> for the subscription holy shit man who do i have in the death pool again who did i take <laughs> i took centering john right yes okay thank god i think i'm gonna win that one andy get your 50 bucks ready get ready to hit send on venmo so this is him now fake laughing and all the losers because Howard Stern's taking the entire summer off. <laughs> That's me laughing at you fucking losers. That's staying on the board. <laughs> That's, a, That's a really funny drop right there. I have a feeling I'll be using this for a lot of people. <laughs> 
That's me laughing at you fucking losers. Good one, John. <laughs> <laughs> he goes on to say again that if you were rooting for Sirius, then you're also happy that Jeff Bezos doesn't pay taxes. It's like, dude, what is this connection you're making in your head? You brought a frivolous lawsuit that got thrown out. We think you're a moron and we're laughing at you. It's nothing to do with Jeff Bezos paying taxes. Is he even able to call other people losers now that he lost? Well, he got his case completely thrown out by yes. the judge. Yeah, that's, thank you. That's the definition of a loser. He lost. <laughs> that's, thank you for connecting those dots that for some reason I wasn't able to. It's great. He's calling people losers. Yeah, I lost my suit, but you losers. <laughs> okay. So then he says, he, you don't need to like him. And again, I'm not, this is new content. I swear, he keeps saying the same shit over and over again. You don't have to like him. He doesn't need friends. And he proves he doesn't need friends. Look, you don't have to like me. I don't need any more friends. I have great friends. I don't need any friends. I have plenty of friends. Hung out with all my friends that I still have from high school. You saw the pictures. That's the opposite of impressive. So he went back to Long Island and had a little reunion with his buddies from high school. I did see the pictures. They were all over our subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> Your friends are a motley crew. And it's not Vince Neal. So, yes, he's hanging out with his friends from high school. That's literally where you're guaranteed to have friends because you hang out with people your age every single day. And he goes, I have friends from high school. Like, we all do. That's the easiest way to get friends. What about your celebrity friends from the time you were on The Tonight Show and you met all those celebrities? You hanging out with any of them? Because I don't see that happening. Well, he doesn't take pictures of that, Carl. He doesn't need any more friends. So I, don't, I, I don't need any more friends. I have enough friends. <laughs> You could use some more moderators, though. I think you're down to one, but okay. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Um, so he's explaining that in case you're just getting caught up now, the lawsuit is about the fact that SiriusXM plays Howard Stern episodes from the 90s and early aughts when he was on terrestrial radio, and Stuttering John is sometimes, not very often, but sometimes featured on these little clips and segments. And so John thinks that they owe him money because they play old Howard Stern shows that were, by the way, owned by Howard Stern. He purchased them from the radio company that he worked for. I can't remember which one it was, but he was able to get the rights to those shows. And then Sirius is able to play them. And John thinks that we don't believe that they're playing old Howard Stern episodes. But I don't think Sirius should profit off of me and my work. I don't think they should have the right to to get subscriptions off of my publicity and use my publicity for... Hey, coming up next, Stuttering John at the MTV Awards. We have tape of that. So don't say it didn't happen. No, we know... John, we know that they're playing bits that you did when you were on the Howard Stern Show. That's not the argument here. We have it on tape. That's They talk <laughs> about a bit that I did in 1993. And they play it on the, yes, I know. We, we're all aware of that. The judge who threw out your case is aware of that. He said that the copyright law usurps the stupid publicity law that you have in California. Because your state's so fucked up. <laughs> so then he starts reading a text message from Nikki B. And once again, I can, I can just picture Croge belly laughing at this. He starts giving out health information that Nikki B just texted to him. I want to oh, thank no. my moderator, Nikki B, who just texted me. Uh, the surgery went well. Uh, they took several biopsies. I don't know if she wants me to read this. Let me make sure. Uh, uh, she's staying overnight for observation. Uh, oh, she blocked the troll. Oh, uh, she's sick from the anesthesia. I don't know if she wants me to read this. And then he continues to read it. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this guy that's his friend he doesn't need any more he doesn't need any more he's got he's gonna talk about his friends he's he has Nikki, Nikki B. B and he's high school friends perfect so this is funny because a guy is subscribing by the way the guy's name is Justin Case It's this is not a real person if, if you're like hey Justin Case what's up Justin so this guy subscribes and we gotta celebrate that 
the only way Southern John knows how with his trumpet sound. You know, he, he puts his, his fingers together over his mouth and he makes that trumpet sound. Yeah. He's very proud of this talent that he has. <laughs> One of his few left. It's, it's pretty impressive, you have to admit. And I want to thank uh, all the YouTube members. I, want to, I do want to give a trumpet to welcome uh, Justin Case, a new YouTube member. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's another sound effect of mine that Howard played ad nauseum that I didn't get a single dime for. Holy shit, he wants money for that <laughs> trumpet sound? And if I was the attorney and he came into my office like, and he hasn't paid me for my trumpet sound, I'd be like, all right, get the fuck out of here. I'm not taking this case. Are you insane? <laughs> Could you imagine being like, I didn't even get a dime for making a weird noise out of my lips. Oh, I wonder if he had them all listed down, like every single thing that they played that he did. I did see the paperwork. They didn't put a lot of effort into it. They should have. They should have put more effort into like what Howard actually played or Sirius played. Oh, that's crazy. On He's the such airwaves. a good lawyer, Carl. It's a fantastic <laughs> lawyer. They Ma- talk all the time. Michael Popak, the great Michael Popak. <laughs> uh, I do have another clip on here that I wanted to play for Shuli, but I'll play it anyway. This is John talking about how he found out where the Howard crew was staying when they came to LA. And the infamous video of John harassing Shuli until Shuli got security to remove John from the hotel. But John is so proud of himself for figuring out where they were staying. And we're going to go out. And we're going to do it. Hey, look. Nobody knows how I found Shuli at that hotel. But if I told you how I found out where they were staying, you would call me the next Columbo. I'm telling you, it took two or three people to analyze photos and figure out what hotel they would stay in. That's how, that's how thorough we were. And I was able to get the interview. Be it, he wouldn't talk to me much like Kevin McCarthy won't and Mitch McDickless won't, but it won't matter. It won't matter because I will. I will. Find out where you're eating, and I'll wait out front with the camera crew and my microphone, like real reporters do. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, like real reporters do. Oh no! I he will, said I two will... to three people helped him. Yes, he probably didn't even fucking find the place. Correct, Vic. I love it when he says these things. He's like, "I'm fucking Columbo. You won't believe what I did." A guy sent me a note and said, "Hey, I saw this picture that they posted. This is only this hotel." And he's like, oh, okay, thank you for that. That's how that happened, obviously. That's what he just admitted to. It's the next Columbo, Carl. It's the next Columbo. You'd be amazed if you found out how I was able to do this. You know, when we were down in Tampa for the Dick Show, people found out where Ethan Ralph was staying at his his Airbnb because he posted (laughs) a photo and there was a painting on the wall and people searched through every listing and found the listing with that painting on the wall. People with time can do this sort of thing. It's not that difficult. (laughs) You just need free time and Google to figure this stuff out. But I love that he's like, he can't wait to do this new thing he's going to do where he just wants to like sabotage me. I'm going to sneak up on people and I'm going to yell boo with them and we'll have the camera crew just like a real reporter does. Yeah, he has just thousands of questions locked and loaded, Carl. Like, why don't talk to me anymore yeah like he literally says and they won't answer my questions oh well then what's the point of this you're just gonna bark at people (laughs) i mean tmz used to do that that was their whole gimmick and then they realized like this isn't getting us anywhere maybe we should be nicer (laughs) to these celebrities and actually get a conversation going what do i know why am i talking about tmz i never i've never even watched it okay What's going on with our friend Cedric John, producer Chris? Oh, man. What isn't going on with him? What isn't going on with this fucking guy? All right. So he's talking about how he wanted Howie Mandel to do a blurb for his book. So he reached out to Howie Mandel's manager, who blew him off. And I love Howie Mandel, and I've hung out with Howie Mandel, and I've had a billion conversations with Howie Mandel. 
but I was um, emailing his assistant, who I love. Uh, his name is Richie. And and I was saying, uh, could Howie do a blurb for my book? And then Richie said to me, well, you know, um, uh, you know, Howie's really busy with AGT, um, America's Got Talent. So I go, okay, I get it. You know. And then, and then what happens? AGT ends. This season ends. And then I email <laughs> Richie again. I go, well, the book, I still have time if you want, you know, yes, Howie, if he wants to do this. Oh, he's just so busy now. He's swamped. And I just wrote back to Rich. I go, Rich, and we've both been in this business way too long to have to, like, bullshit each other. If Howie doesn't want to do it, just say he doesn't want to do it. It's not a big deal. You know, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I got plenty of other people. Jay Leno, Larry the Cable Guy, Rain Wilson. I got plenty of other people doing it. Steven Weber. I mean, it's okay. John, when the guy says he's too busy, it means he doesn't want to do it. It's just another way of saying that. Basically, this is how it works out. Howie Mandel's a very busy man. He's producing a lot of shows. He's doing guest appearances. He's doing a ton of shit. And when he says he's very busy right now, he can't do a blurb on your book, you don't reach back out again when the project is over, assuming that now he's bored, and go, well, now will he do it? They already said no. That's what no means. Not just in Hollywood, just in life. I'm busy. You don't want to do it. It's what that means. I'm busy, and I still say yes to shit that I want to do. This is him on Beer on the Balcony. He's got a comedian on. She says, you should come out to my show tonight. This is how John blows off his guests. Now, remember, he just said, just tell me the truth. I can take it. Just tell me you don't want to go. This is John saying he's not going to go to the person who's taking the time to talk to 10 people on Beer on the Balcony and asking John, hey, why don't you come out to my show tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you come up there tonight? Like I said, I'll be there at 8 o'clock and we can hang out. Uh, I got to see because my kids are going to New York tomorrow mm -hmm. and I'm trying to hook up with my two youngest. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kids? No, I don't. I don't have any kids. I have nieces. All right. But because my daughter is 20 and look, I know that when I was in my 20s, I didn't really want to hang out with, you know, I didn't want to hang out with my parents, <laughs> but I still think I'm no. like the coolest dad in the world. Yeah. So yeah. Like, for me, it's like, she's like, Dad, I don't know about, you know, I'm busy, I'm packing. I'm like, Lils, come on. I want to just say goodbye to you before you go to New York because you're going to go away for two weeks. I just yeah. got back from New York. So, it, you know. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so I might be seeing them hopefully uh, tonight. <laughs> so he literally says, I can't come to your show tonight. I want to go see my daughter who told me she doesn't want to see me. <laughs> and what's great is she's going to New York. Do you know why she's going to, to New York? In fact, all of his kids are. Because their mom has just gotten remarried. Susanna is remarried now. And that's why they were all going to New York. Not at the time when their father was in New York. But they were going to visit their mother in New York for her uh, for her wedding. I just love everything about this guy's life. It just keeps getting sadder and funnier at the same time. Remember when we predicted that he wouldn't be purchasing a Tesla because it didn't make any fucking sense that he would do that? Mm -hmm. I hope that Bezos... Oh, this is, by the way, again, our, our buddy Richard Ojeda is on the show. And he's... he's th This guy is just, like, always flipping out about something. <laughs> he's, he's off the charts. I hope that Bezos and friggin' the other assholes, Elon Musk, I hope they crash into the moon. Yeah. In fact, you know, I'm not buying a Tesla anymore. I changed my mind. Yeah, screw him. Yeah, yeah, I just, it, it, yeah you know... I'm no fan of Elon Musk. Are you? He just said he wants me to fly to the moon. Are you a fan of Elon Musk? He just said. So John uses this as an excuse. I'm not buying a Tesla because I don't like Elon Musk. No, you're not buying a Tesla because you can't afford one and you can't charge it because you live in an apartment complex, John. That's why you're not buying a Tesla. The fact that he said it's already been purchased and it's on its way. And now he's, he's such a fucking liar. Stop lying on the internet. You're going to get caught every fucking time, you moron. But the ultimate thing that he did this past week is in the middle of his show, he took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> he took a shit in the middle of his show. Now, he's talking about his former attorney, uh, Michael Avenatti, 
who, by the way, is going to prison. And John's upset about that, and then that turns into him having to take a poop. Also, breaking news, my attorney, uh, Michael Avenatti, has been sentenced to two and a half years in prison for extortion. Now, I happen to like Mr. Avenatti, and uh, he got me out of this whole, you know, Secret Service thing. So it's unfortunate he couldn't get himself out of that same thing. So um, as I'm waiting for Hal to come in here, I just got to do something real quick. Um, so I'm going to just play you something, and then I'll be right back. Uh, because um, uh, I'm, ha- I'm having a few kind of, not to get too into it, I'm having some stomach problems, some stomach issues right now. So let me just play you this, you know, and and I'll be right back, all right? I just got to take care of this, okay? So just bear with me. Uh, put it on full screen. I'll be it's right back. shit show. If only we could hear shit noises in the background, you know? All right, thanks for that little intermission. I don't know. Let me just do this. He actually sounds lighter. All right. All right, let me bring in my buddy now, the great Hal Sparks. How are you, Hal? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I had to. I had to go to an intermission. I had some. I had some stomach. TMI. 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 I don't need to know. Honest to God, none of my. None of my goddamn business. I mean, nobody's stopping you from keeping a journal and publishing it when you're old. Of all these incidents, well, I just don't think. Hold on, Al. I've been drinking live. Slim fast. I've been drinking Slim Fast, and I, I think I don't think it's working well with my system. Oh, it's the Slim Fast is the problem, not the. 18 cores lights every single day. The Slim Fest is the reason why I had to take a shit in the middle of his show. And people in the Discord are pointing this out. Michael Avenatti got two and a half years because he was trying to extort $30 million out of Nike. He was let off the hook. He should have be, he should be going away for much longer than that. And here's John going, he's a great guy. I wish he could have gotten out of that. Like, he's a criminal. <laughs> he broke the law. He's a fucking criminal. What are you talking about? Oh, I hope he doesn't sue me when he gets out. Okay. Movie God, he's not begging anybody to come on his show, Chris. Okay. He never does. He does ask them constantly, but that's not what begging is. No. I'm pretty sure this clip is about Noel Kassler. I'm not begging anybody to do this show. They don't want to do the show, don't do the show. I really don't care. I'm not going to beg you. Laura Colston, thanks for the two bucks. <laughs> you know, I've already experienced that with people I won't mention. Um, it, it, you know, where they, I constantly ask them to come on and they give me some bullshit excuses. All right. I'm not doing that anymore. I don't give a shit. Okay. You don't want to do a show. Keep on lying. Tell me that you're working on something, whatever. Just say you don't want to do a show. Okay. That's it. Don't give me any bullshit. No Kessler does not want to do your show, John. He already quit. He's writing a book, remember? It's a very important book that he has to write about Trump. Oh, wait, that doesn't matter anymore. Gonzo Shitcock, are you really going on Stuttering John show? Oh, fuck. Fuck you. God damn it. I believed that for a second because of your ties to the Howard Stern show. I thought maybe you'd be able to get in on that. That'd be amazing if you could. Yes, please. Get on there, Gonzo. I'm sure you could, too. He's desperate for guests. I've seen a lot of clips this week of him talking about how he's having a hard time nailing down guests, which is why Hal Sparks is on the show and Richard Ojeda is on the show. It's just the same shit over and over again. And he talks about, this is a crazy clip right here. John explains, and this is something that I don't know who else would do this in podcasting. He went to a legendary restaurant with a date and Jay Leno called him. I've been told I use the term humble brag incorrectly. This is just bragging. This is just straight out bragging. Before we get into Trump, I do want to talk about a few things. Um, I had a nice conversation with my old boss. Jay Leno called me uh, yesterday. Wow, believe it, it was so weird. Because I'm on a date at the Smokehouse, which is a place in Burbank. It's a legendary place. It's like... Of Musso and Franks. It's like, I mean, it's like it's been there since God knows when. And I used to go there with a bu- bunch of the Tonight Show 
uh, producers and the stage manager. And, and where else? That's where I get the call from Jay. We talked about some things I don't want to talk about, but it was a very nice conversation. So this was a call back. John had reached out to Jay because Richard Ojeda is going to be in L.A. to be on the Bill Maher show. And John wanted to bring his buddy to Jay's garage to show him all the cars and stuff. Says, oh, yeah, I know Jay. I can get us in over there. So Jay called John back. And this amazing conversation they had about whatever, probably setting up a time for him to show up over there. And he's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> what are the chances? This guy, this big celebrity is calling me while I'm a hot shot taking out my Tinder date to some restaurant that's been there forever. What a fucking weird fucking conversation to have on a podcast. And he goes out to explain that his date was great because she was hotter than she looked in the photos, which to me means he'll never see her again. Yeah. And he's talking to that other woman, the, the comedian that he had on Beer on the Balcony, and he's talking about online dating. So I'm on Plenty of Fish. Oh, I'm on uh, Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble. <laughs> They're cracking. She's cracking up at that. Now, I have an awesome T-shirt idea for John. I'm going to give this to him for free. It just says, I'm on Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble. And it has a picture of John's face underneath it. And that would be an amazing T-shirt. Who wouldn't wear that shirt? Uh, John, take that one for free. Sell it on your merch store. I'm on Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble. (laughs) I would wear that shirt. I would totally wear that shirt. All right, so as you know, John lost his lawsuit, but he's not going to give up. But so I am going to further this lawsuit. Judge Crotty apparently doesn't know what the hell he was talking about. He didn't read all the case law on similar cases that are equal to mine. And he just decided to, like a lot of judges, go with the big corporation. So, you know, I have no love for Judge Crotty, and I don't think that he did the right thing. Now, Granted, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm sure my lawyer would never say something like that. But, hey, I'm not a lawyer, and I don't have any love for the uh, for the bloke. Well, um, calling out a judge is probably not going to help your case, I would imagine. I, I think that uh, the next judge who hears your case might know this guy or know yeah. of him and kind of think you're a douchebag. <laughs> For saying at the last second, he calls him a bloke. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I gotta go to the pub and meet my blokes. Yeah, all my mates over at the pub. British stuttering job was the funniest ROTC bet <laughs> of all time. So I don't understand. The judge just goes with a major corporation, like all judges do. It's like, no, no, no. He cited the reason why you lost the case. He explained to you that there's copyright law. That's going to be more important than your stupid celebrity whatever the fuck you think it is yeah, was, California law. wasn't looking out the window at who, what car you drove in <laughs> oh I'm gonna go with that guy it's yeah, prettier right. the fuck he's like this judge is a fucking moron John do you think the judge knows more about law than you do I'm, <laughs> I, I, it's just possible right it's just possible okay let's talk about super chats <laughs> he's talking to his guest no I was watching the video of this Here's a guy who's a political figure in some regard. I mean, everyone who's on his show is into politics, whether they are a politician or just into political talk. Imagine being the guest and hearing the guy who's interviewing you go off on a rant like this. The guy just looks like confused and lost. Like, what's going on right now? Like, it's so funny to me, Glenn, because, like, like, I'll get these uh, loser trolls who are like, oh, John asked for Super Chats. It's like, you know... I'm doing a free show here. I'm booking great guests just, you know, like yourself. And, and it, 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 you know, so it it's nice to get paid a little bit for doing all this hard work. And then I get crap for just getting like a $5 super chat or asking for, a you know, someone to become a Patreon member. Yet Donald Trump is grifting people for the likes of 300, 400 million. And these same trolls support Donald Trump and, and don't have a problem with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where does he make these connections? I, what does Trump have anything to do with Super Chats? And he's always shoehorning in to every guest. Would you help me with these trolls? Do you ever get this? Yeah, do you get this? Tro- Can yeah. you believe all these trolls? They're always like, oh, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And how does he know the trolls support Trump? 
I mean, oh no, he just makes these fucking. He's like, I, you guys are complaining about my super chats. Meanwhile, Bezos isn't paying any taxes. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> the fuck are you talking? How are you connecting these dots? John, here's five bucks. Shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Jesus. <laughs> Dollar a minute. Yeah, shut up yeah. for five minutes. Super mutes. <laughs> super mutes. <laughs> that should be a new product. <laughs> There's Just another, unplug there's your another mic. freebie, John. Another freebie. Wear that t-shirt. Unplug your mic. <laughs> and I'll promise that we'll promote you for that. 